Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the grand final of the Speed Run Cup. Once again, if you're not familiar with the Speed Run Cup, there'll be a link in the description to the rules explanation video. There's also a link down there to the first Speed Run Cup if you want to check that one out, and also a link to Hootie Tootie's Twitter. He's the man that organized this entire event. Guys, this is a massive day. The third place playoff and the grand final. So much insane stuff happens. You're not going to want to take your eyes off the screen. This is day three of the Speed Run Cup. If you haven't seen day one and two, go back and watch those first because you're going to miss out on all of the amazing action before then. If you guys really want to help out with the YouTube algorithm, leave a comment down below, give a like on this video and subscribe if you haven't already. Let's jump on into the action. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the final day of the Speed Run Cup. We're going to have the third place playoff and the grand final today. My name is Expected Value RuneScape. I'm here with my good friend and co-host, Hody Tootie. Nick, how excited are you for today? Oh, you know, about as excited as you can be. So, very. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we've got some pretty good matches coming up. We've had a... I mean, it's going to be hard to top what we saw yesterday. Some of the closest matches in the history of Speedrun Cup, which is technically not a lot of history as this is only our second. But, I mean, I don't know how you could get any closer than what we saw yesterday. I don't... Like, you know, we're probably never going to run one of these again. But let's say we do. That's never going to happen. That's never going to happen. You know, we were discussing the nightmare yesterday. Both teams getting the exact same time. And I was just saying to Hootie before we started, the amount of people saying it was scripted. And I was like, we couldn't have even done that if we tried. We could have spent a month trying to get the exact same time to the tick at nightmare. And we couldn't have done it even if we tried. Like, it was just absolutely insane. But... We're going to see some good matchups today. We have the third place playoff and the grand final match. I'm going to go ahead and have a look at the bracket for today. Hootie Tootie, yesterday we saw Team BDSM taking out Oztob in a 4-3. Once again, one of the closest matches we have seen in Speedrun Cup history. And then we had Ozmith taking down Turbo PVM in a 4-2 to move on to that grand final, which means we're going to see Team BDSM versus Ozmith in the grand final. But before that, we are going to be seeing Oztob versus Turbo PVM in the third place playoff, Hootie Tootie. Let's go ahead and have a look at those two teams right now. Yeah, this is a, a bit of an interesting matchup. You've got a, a bit of a Clan v Clan type of situation. A lot of these members in both teams are actually in Clan Oblivion. So... There is a bit of a, a bit of a friendship and maybe a bit of a wanting to get one up over their friends on the other team sort of scenario going on here. Uh, speaking and of, I think uh, this speaking of Oblivion, mm? you you recently joined Oblivion, didn't you? That is correct. I am oh. Obliv Hoodie. <laughs> uh, anyway. Uh, yeah, I think this is going to be a very, very close match. The third place playoff is only a, uh, a best of five. It does step back from the, the semifinals. We did see best of seven. So we're going to have a little quick, a little quicker one, uh, best of, best of five for the third place. And then before we get into the grand final, which will be a best of nine, but yeah, this, this team is stacked. You look at the team led by rookie. You've got some very talented CMers. Uh, you got some very talented Tobbers. I mean, we saw them yesterday. They are very, very good in the theater of blood. And, uh, and well, you just can't forget the Inferno world record holder, Adwam, sitting there as their specialist for the Inferno. I mean, there's just talent across the board. And, uh, yeah, Ollie, Ollie can do a couple things here and there. But, yeah, I mean, you're looking at the rookies and you're looking at the Umas and the, and the Adwams for sure to lead this team to a, a, hopefully a, a third place finish for a little bit of the prize pool. Yeah, we did see a pretty impressive performance for them yesterday. Unfortunately, Ozmith just too strong. Kevzy carrying his entire team on his back yesterday and uh, managing to get them through. But a decent performance nonetheless from Turbo PVM. And they're going to be coming up today against Oz Tob. My boys, Hootie Tootie. Yeah, I mean, this is a team we saw in the last Speedrun Cup and, and came back with a much stronger side, picking up MCU. We saw him in the Inferno, uh, I believe, and we saw him in the Fight Caves. He's just such a talented gamer with such such clean clicks, and, and he just knows what he's doing. And an unreal pickup, for sure, for Oztob. And 
I mean, led by unluckers, which is a, a strange choice because I don't think he could lead anything. But uh, yeah, he sort of is acting as the as the dude in charge, and and he's been handling the vetoes as is the role of the of the leader. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's in the name Oz Tob, very talented Tob team. As as I mentioned, uh, with the Turbo PVM, also a talented Tob team. So we're going to see a Tob in this matchup. So I'm, I'm excited to see which way that goes. Yeah, I mean, obviously a very talented top team, but then you've got the likes of Divine, the CM world record holder for solos, going into maybe even the trios with Kaplunk and Nakamichi. Naka, very well-rounded gamer. We see him at the Nightmare yesterday as well. And these guys, just very unfortunate not to make it through to the grand final as well. A massively close matchup. Something, again, we were talking about uh, just before the stream. Uh, Oztob had the fastest Zora average in the competition yesterday in their matchup against uh, BDSM, and then it got beaten. They had the mm -hmm. fastest gauntlet completion time in the competition, and then it got beaten. They had the fastest nightmare time we've seen in speedrun cup history, and then it got beaten. It was just absolutely insane from BDSM to be able to come back from that deficit and uh, make it to, through to the grand final. So I think Oztob are going to want to put on a bit of a show today and take out that third place prize, but they definitely have their work cut out for them up against Turbo PVM today. Ladies and gentlemen, they are going to be fighting it out for a piece of the prize pool, which is now up to 2.05 billion GP. Big thank you to everyone that has... Uh, Put in a donation thus far. If you would like to donate to the prize pool of the Speedrun Cup, you can message hootie underscore OSRS on Twitter. Two billion GP prize pool, Hootie Tootie. It's uh, a little more exciting during the intro. We've got another 50 mil, so we're up hey. to 2.1 bill already. Very Thanks, nice. CJ. Shout out, CJ. Uh, so, yeah, the, uh, the prize pool looking pretty good at this point. We're not going to mess around, ladies and gentlemen. We're here to see some action the Speed Run Cup. We're going to have a look at the boss draft for Turbo PVM versus OzTob, the third place playoff. As we so, uh, This graphic is actually incorrect. It says three's challenge mode, but we're going to be going to solo challenge mode. We're going to be seeing Divine versus Rookie up first. Yep, we're going to see some solo CM finally. It took I, us till day three to see it. I'm pogging at IRL right now. Finally, we get to see Divine, the world record holder for solo CMs, take on Turbo PVM, rookie in the solo CMs. This is going to be absolutely unreal. We see here the boss bands for Turbo PVM were the Fight Caves. Makes a lot of sense there, Hoodie Tootie, to ban the Fight Caves up against MCU, the world record holder for the Fight Caves. Yeah, we saw what Adwam did, and uh, it was not pretty. So I think uh, he would have been in Rookie's ear during the veto saying, please, just do not make me do Fight Caves again. And yeah, that's why we see the, the ban there. <laughs> yeah, unbelievable. We have someone like Adwam, the world record holder for the Inferno, coming in and put it on that performance in the Fight Caves yesterday. Two different pieces of content that seem very similar, but uh, it's hard to be very very good at both of them but we did see mcu in the inferno yesterday putting on an absolute clinic as well but we see the second band here from turbo pvm and that is zolra uh which also once again makes sense we saw the performance divine put on yesterday unfortunately was not enough to take out that kirby rng but uh very good at zolra is divine yeah, I mean, he, he they probably done a little more practice. I don't believe, I could be wrong, but I don't believe we've seen Turbo PVM do Zora yet. So that must have been a, a go-to band for them. And, and maybe they've not done any practice for it. You know, they, they've sort of been smart with it. Obviously, making it to the grand final, they would have had to have done Zora. But, but they've made it here without any Zora. So they've sort of skipped that content and, and they can continue to focus on, on the bosses they know and the, bo the bosses they want to practice on. Yeah, absolutely. We see the bands here for Oz Tob, and a weird one if you ask me. They're banned next. Um, bit of a strange pick, Hootie. Yeah, it's. Uh, I, I believe they uh, had just had enough of Nex after a while. They they got bored of the boss and and just said, please. It's a uh, or maybe it's 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 more challenging to to get three people together on at the same time to do their run and to practice. So maybe opting for more solo content, as we can see across the rest of the the picks. It's just. Mainly solo content besides the Theatre of Blood. 
Yeah, very, very interesting to not see Nex as a pick for them. I mean, we saw Turbo PVM struggling with Nex yesterday. Umar, probably the, the most well-versed at Nex, having to tell his teammates uh, the hit points at which Nex phases before they go into the kill. And Oz Tob put it on a clinic at Nex. So very interesting to see them ban Nex and then also banning the Gauntlet, which they had a great performance in, Hoodie. Yeah, I mean, I... I think both these sides are got incredible gauntlet runners, and uh, it is interesting to see. Maybe they are once again were, weren't too confident with their gauntlet, even though they did well. Maybe it was a bit shaky. We did see Kaplunk, you know, struggle, struggle to get the KC, very close to dying. Some mistakes there as well with his five to one, and maybe Unluck has looked towards his uh, teammate Kaplunk in the in the gauntlet and said. No, thanks. I don't want to see that again. So, yeah, opting to, to ban the gauntlet this time. Yeah, potentially looking towards his teammate. And that would have been hard for him. He had he would have had to look upwards because, uh, as we know, yeah. Unlock is four foot eight. And you know what they say, Hootie Tootie? Um, there's two, ty two types of guys in this world. There's guys mm -hmm. that are six foot and over and women. And we see the top bans from both teams, both saying, fuck the hard mode top community. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a. Uh, I mean, I think the hard mode Tob is probably probably the most RNG out of all the scales. I mean, you can argue that duo Tob has got a lot of Warhammers, but there's just a lot that can go wrong in a in a trio in a trio hard mode, especially that maiden. That maiden is very punishing in the trio scale. You're going to need two freezes, and it and it gets a little weird. So, uh, so yeah, I think I don't think many people enjoy the the hard mode Tob. You get your kits and you get your dust and you fuck off. Back to the regular. <laughs> and that is exactly what I did myself. Hard mode of can get the lot. And uh, we do enjoy seeing the threes regular as well, uh, especially from these gamers. Now we see the boss picks for both teams. We see the Cox ones CM. That is the solo CM picked there mm -hmm. by Turbo PVM. And they've picked it here, Hootie Tootie. They've mm -hmm. picked solo CM up against the current world record holder. Do you think that's a bit audacious? See, uh, it, it's interesting because I think they would have they would have not 100% been sure on who was going to be running the uh, the solo CM for Oz Tob because you, you though you mentioned world record holder Divine, uh, we have been uh, slandering Unlucker's good name, but I just want to point out he's currently the solo CM thieving world record holder with a uh, he's going to have to type in chat to confirm, but yeah, it's I don't know the exact time, but yeah, thieving world record held by Unlucker's. So you never know; they might they might opt to go for him and his and his thieving skill. But but yeah, I think rookie, a very confident gamer in in the solo CMs. You, uh, very rare that he'll be making any mistakes for sure. How about that? Uh, very good at stealing things is Unluckers, and we see the second pick here for Turbo PVM, and that is the Fasani's Nightmare. Yeah, it's a uh, another solo piece of content. We saw them doing the the trio nightmare and maybe a bit scarred from the of how the trio nightmare went and they didn't want to replay it but they're they're going to uh they're going to lock in the fasanis and we're going to see potentially the three same gamers that we saw do the trio but just sort of split up as they do their individual fasanis kills yeah fair enough and we did see the uh the mage cape tech coming in i believe it was turbo pvm we saw do it first and uh switching over to the normal spell book and back to the thralls for their fasani's kills uh oz top here picking inferno we're gonna see i believe mcu going up against the world record holder adwam once again a bit of an audacious pick here from oz top picking the inferno against the world record holder yeah, it's uh, it's going to be interesting. Adwam, very, very consistent gamer. But I mean, what we've seen from MCU so far, you can't fault him. There's been very, very little mistakes from from the man, and and I think Unluckers has seen that and has got more confident in him than any other teammate. Yeah, I would agree. Uh, this is the first time I have seen any MCU gameplay, and I got to say, uh, this guy already one of the best in the world, and. Uh, you said that he put a lot of time into practice for this competition. And I got to say, uh, you know, any more practice from that man. And we're going to be seeing a lot more of him in the future, taking out those world records. And the second pick here for Oztob is Vorkarth. Yeah, I, I believe it will be, uh, they had Jinami run the Vorkarth. And uh, I think last year we saw Jinami doing more of those solo bosses, the Zoras, the Vorkath. But we did see, we did see Divine on, on the Zalandra docks. 
uh, yesterday. So it's interesting they've opted for Jinami to pick up the Vorkath, maybe allowing Divine more time to focus on the solo CM. But yeah, we're gonna we're gonna see Jinami versus I believe we had Uma. I mean, maybe a uh, maybe word spread about Uma's terrible RNG with his uh his Zarite crossbow specs, and they said we'll capitalize on that and we'll we'll take him out for sure. Yeah, RNG definitely gonna play a factor there at Vorkath, but. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to waste no more time. We're going to go ahead and jump into this third place playoff. And the first boss we're going to be seeing is Turbo PVM taking on the challenge mode solo. And we are going to be seeing Rookie take that on. It looks as though we're starting in the crab room. Uh, Rookie, I guess, deciding not to start filming early, Hoodie. Yeah, I mentioned it briefly, that very talented inside of RuneScape, doesn't really know his way around a PC, and, uh, and unfortunately he's uh, using shadow play buffers or some sort of other technology rather than recording through OBS, so we'll see some of his runs uh, cut at the start and at the end. As we saw with the Tobs, we had to stick to a different perspective until his recording came on, but yeah, it's, uh, there's no cheating going on, as every run was watched by me. I was in I was in a Discord call with him as he did this run with his screen share up, so... So although we won't see his actual time at the end because it does cut off slightly before I was there to confirm and I did see the chat box and I saw all confirmation for what, what the run time was and that this was the exact run that needed to be submitted. There we go. It is very hard to be good at more than one thing in life and uh, Rookie here, very good at PVM, not so good at using recording software on a PC uh, using that shadow play instead of the recording. But... We see him in the Ice Demon room here. Once he gets all his stuff out in the inventory, we can talk about what he's got inside it, but we're gonna to need to see two inventories of Kindling from him here, and then we'll see him go back and pick up the stuff that he dropped back in the scavenger room. We're most certainly gonna be seeing a no prep here. Um, for those that are unaware, that means he is not going to make any of the raids potions. As he runs through this raid, he's just gonna be going straight through to all the bosses and using the supplies that they drop. And uh, we see the second inventory coming in here. 49 kindling straight into the braziers and he's gonna get one more inventory here to make the boss come out slightly quicker. Now, I'm having a look at the chat and my better Twitch TV is not working, which is a problem. So I'm gonna have to get up a different browser and pop out the chat in a different browser and hope that the better Twitch TV is working over there. Because that's a problem. If I can't see emotes, I'm not happy about it. Okay, good. It's working on a different browser. Everyone can pog as much as they want. Let's get a clap for the different browser, guys. You know what I mean? There we go, beautiful. As we see the Ice Demon come out here for Rookie and uh, he's gonna be inside the chest while he does the Ice Demon as well. I missed the specs here, but uh, we can see he did manage to hit that hammer at 21 Venge. And we see him take out the Ice Demon with the Twisted Bow here. He is on Lunas, so we're gonna be seeing the Venge. No thralls uh, by the looks of the inventory. Potentially has it inside his chest? No. I would say he'd probably pick that one up before he goes into the Shaman Room. So no thralls here for Rookie. No Spellbook Swap, just on that Venge. See the Slayer Helm on. He definitely has a Lizard Man Shaman task here. Uh, and that's going to give him some extra damage and accuracy up against these big Lizards. We see the cum shots come out from those Lizards. They come out in a 3x3 three three square. Has to avoid them uh, to not take too much damage. So some nice Tebow hits coming in here for Rookie as well. And uh, we're going to see him run against the wall here to avoid the Shamans from jumping. The more time they spend in the air, the less time he has to attack them. So whenever they go for their attack, he's going to be stood next to the wall to stop them from jumping. Having a look at the inventory here, we see the full Inquisitor. And I believe the full Inquisitor with the Dragon Hunter Lance on Crush. Going to be the best DPS on Arm's melee hand. 
Could be incorrect about that. Wow, very quick switches here. Uh, Hootie Tootie, are we sure this man wasn't AHK? Yeah, I mean, there was. there's always arguments that, you know, I said MCU had the cleanest clicks and another definite, definite contender would be the Rookstar. Very, very clean with it. Yeah, very nice with very, it. Very, very fast. We also saw Kaplunk with some uh, some really good clicks yesterday as well. Some very, very talented gamers in this competition. As we see him run into the Vanguard room with 73 hit points. And uh, he's going to start out in the southeast corner here, attacking the melee Vanguard. And straight onto the mage. Gets a nice hit there. He's going to try and keep these Vanguards within 33% of each other. We see the claws come out for the range vanguard. Puts the scythe on accurate as well against the range vanguard. Just to get that little extra accuracy, the, the range vanguard with some very high defense. So um, putting the scythe on accurate, going to allow some extra hits to come in. And we see him move down into the safe spot here against the melee vanguard. Have a look at that. Just has it trapped in the corner. And there is nothing the Vanguard can do about it. See, 83% for the melee here. Should see him turn around and Tebow the Mage in just a second. He is just going to go for the melee here up against the range. One more Scythe Swing. Stand underneath that, uh, that Vanguard. And then attack the Mage. Have a look at those clicks. Missing absolutely no hits here. Two massive Tebows. And he's going to turn back around to the ranged Vanguard. Oh, we see him take some massive damage there from the range Vanguard's hit. He's going to have to sweep up. Currently on 19 hit points with one dose of brew in the inventory. However, now he's on the melee Vanguard. Hopefully get some Sang heals coming in here. And this is where it's a little risky in the solo Chambers of Zeric challenge mode. Uh, there is the chance that these Vanguards can just absolutely put you in a spliff and uh there's nothing you can do about it but here comes the range vanguard now we're going to see a massive claw and he's going to be able to finish these off all of the vanguards now under 33 percent we see him chucking on the armor deal for the extra defense bonus here up against the ranged vanguard we see the vengeance coming in as well and he picks up the brew off the ground from that dead, va dead vanguard so he's going to be absolutely fine on hit points for now Running away from the melee vanguard as well. He is going to take some damage here though. But we see that beautiful corner safe spot coming in again. And uh, we see him take out the mage. One overload so far. See a two dose overload on the ground. He's not going to need any more than one. So doesn't matter if he gets a second drop here or not. But it would be nice for him to see two brews and one restore on the ground. In this no prep, let's have a look at the drop. He does get two brews and one restore. So the maximum drop there from the Vanguard. And he's going to be happy with that one. Coming out of the Vanguard room with four brews and two restores. Uh, he's got to be happy with that. We see Ditter Bitter in the chat. The king of Mage Bank. Here he is. Must be absolutely off his chops in Amsterdam right now on all sorts of illegal substances. As we're watching Rookie here for Turbo PVM take on the solo challenge mode raid. In the thieving room, Unlocker's best room. Does hold the world record hold uh, for the thieving room, as Hootie Tootie said before. Uh, unaware to me, Ollie actually has the, the joint world record for thieving. So, so wow. surprising we, we don't see a, uh, a, an Ollie versus Unlocker's. Yeah, but yeah. There we go. There we go. So two of the best thieves in old school RuneScape. As we see some pretty bad RNG on these chests here for Rookie. Getting absolutely no grubs. Going to start it out. Going to need 30 grubs to take out the solo scavenger. Gets, uh, I believe that is 18 per inventory here. Yeah. But getting the scavenger started as quick as possible because it can't eat all the grubs at once. Has to eat them one at a time. So we're going to see him go chuck some more in now. See so that overlay on the scavenger as well. It's going to tell him how many grubs he needs to put in that trough. And uh, he's going to need three or four more here. See the overlay on the top left as well, actually. 
All right, have a look at the inventory. We saw the Inquisitor's Mace there. That would have been used for Tecton at the start. Also going to be used for the Vasa Crystal when he goes into Vasa. The Inquisitor's Mace actually has a stab option. So we will see that. Coming into Vespula here. Now, will we see a Turbo Vespula here for Turbo PVM? Uh, yesterday, we saw Oz Tob with a 41 second Vespula in a trio, which was absolutely outrageous. He is, there's only 30 seconds left on his overload here as well. Does have the Twisted Pot in the inventory. So if the overload does run out, he's gonna use that Twisted Pot instead of the overload. But we see the Phoenix Necklace in the inventory as well, which means we are going to see what I believe is known as a Kirby skip for the rope. We're going to see him go into that rope room with somewhere between one and three hit points and use some very, very interesting game mechanics to get over that rope. We see the overload run out, the hit points go up, 303 hit points left on the portal. We see the restores coming in, missing absolutely no ticks here. Really bad Vespula so far, getting some really bad RNG on this portal. 160 hit points left, one restore left in the inventory. We see the prayer points coming back through that uh, prayer enhance. We see the prayer enhance counter. I'm going to have to get myself that plug in. Uh, it's going to tell him when his prayer enhance is going to tick up one prayer point. Oh my god. The RNG on this Vespula border has been absolutely ridiculously bad. you got to be disappointed with the RNG here if you are rookie. Done absolutely nothing wrong. Missed zero ticks here in the Vespula room. And still spending more than a minute. That should be enough there to take it out. It is enough to take it out. And we see 11 hit points here for rookie. He's going to brew up. Go over 50 hit points and then use that overload to get himself down. We'll be on 3 HP here and we're going to see the Kirby skip. Gets on his least defensive armor here going into the skip. He needs to get hit. So he takes off his armor deal, puts on his Inquisitor and have a look at this skip. The 3 hit point skip. I believe no matter how good you are, there is still a chance for this to fail. Let's have a look. And he does die. I don't think he even clicked his brew there. Oh, that is not good for him. That is not good for him. This is really, really, really bad. Now going to have to pick up this overload. He's going to have to overload on the way through. That means he's going to be leaving his brew, I believe. Going to be leaving his brew. Oh no, and he goes to three hit points again. Wait, is he is he just going to complete the room now? He still does have the Phoenix Necklace in the inventory. He's going to try and get hit by a scavenger here. Does take a 15. Let's have a look. I think he's trying to get to 51 hit points here. See a 48... A 50, bad RNG, needs a 1. Okay, gets a 2. Going to see the re-overload coming in here. We're now going to see a 2 hit point skip from Rookie. At this point, if it wasn't his run for the Speed Run Cup, you would have seen him leave his CC already. Let's see if he can pull off this 2 hit point skip. Off he goes across that rope. Okay, we see the Keystone picked up. The Phoenix Necklace comes on. The Tick Eat from the Purple Suite. Will he get it? He does get the skip. Very nice. He's going to have to go back over that rope to pick up all of his potions though. So not only dying, but having to waste extra time going over the rope. And uh, at this point, you got to think, would it have just been quicker to kill the, uh, to kill the, the bosses in the room? Very unfortunate Vespula, unfortunately, uh, a little bit of a, a mess up there on the 3 HP skip, and uh, has to come back through for the 2 HP, 
and uh, move on to the Guardians room. We see 16 minutes on the clock coming into floor two. Gonna have to go ahead and write that one down. Six minutes and 30 seconds for the first split. 16-12 for the second one. And uh, if you're Oz, Tob, and Divine, you're gonna be pretty happy seeing that failed skip there. Where's he taking the crystal? That's a great question. I had the keystone in his inventory. Getting some nice hits here on the Guardian though. We see the max cape on the back. So that means 99 mining. We were discussing the other day that apparently 96 or 98 mining is the ideal uh, spot to be for CMs. And we will see that from Divine in the next run. Uh, your mining level actually scaling the Guardian's health. So uh, not only increasing your max hit, but increasing their hit points as well. We're going to see here, Rookie will go into that Vasa room with, uh, with full hit points here, trying to get that Venge off. See, no Crystal Pickaxe either, the Infernal Pickaxe. Guardian, 25% hit points left, 50 coming in from the pickaxe as well. And another 51, that Blood Fury popping off there, getting him back to 99 hit points. So we should see him brew up here. Uh, is he going to go in at 118? Or is he going to go in at 99? He's going to go in at 99, not going to risk it here. And uh, just brew up after the teleport. Goes up to 118 hit points. We see the Twisted Pot come in as well. A 94 Venge has 70 damage straight back to Vassa. And just from that, we see Lucky he didn't brew all the way up because he did take a 5 there. And that's what he would have been left on. See the Dragon Claws coming in on the Crystal. Not enough to kill it. And we see the Inquisitor's Mace have to come out on Stab. Two extra hits. The Claws should have killed the Crystal here. Four extra hits on the Crystal. This is some outrageous RNG here for Rookie. Four extra hits on that Crystal. And once again, if this wasn't his run for the Speedrun Cup, I guarantee you would have seen this man leave his clan chat and just go next. That is some terrible RNG on that Vassa Crystal there. And he is going to get a second Crystal. Very unfortunate RNG here for Rookie. Very nice clean clicks there on the eight-way switch, though. As we see, the crystal with 73 hit point, uh, seventy-three percent hit points left, and uh, this Inquisitor's Mace not going in. Oh, and another zero, a very low hit point crystal, 140 hit points left on Vasa. Big 53 to start the next phase, though, and 51 hit points to go. He's going to kill it here. Very unfortunate to get those two crystals, but. Uh, after the third one, sorry, into the third phase, looking pretty good. We're going to see the Salve Amulet come on here for Rookie as he moves into the Mystic's Room. The Inquisitor's Mace goes to the bottom of the inventory. Not going to need that for the rest of the raid. And uh, you're going to see when he goes up to the chest just how quick he is at uh, his inventory management. These guys spent a lot of time doing uh, CM solos and uh, chest and inventory management is so important for these guys. It's going to save you so much time throughout a raid. We see the overload get dropped on the ground. That means he's confident he's going to be finishing these Mystics and the Mudadal room within the next five minutes. Because he is going to get an overload drop from the Mudadals. We see him go into the Mudadal room with 85 hit points and three and a half brews. Let me tell you, if this was me in a solo CM... With three and a half brews in my inventory and a hundred hit points, I would be going back to the chest and getting another 10 brews out. I would not be risking this at all. I'm going to see if the RNG is in his favor going into that room. Luckily, we do see the bronze axe in the inventory. Because you're shit at EV scape. Enjoy the perm. Oh my god. I, I'm not signed into Twitch. Hang on. <laughs> Enjoy.
enjoy the perm. <laughs> All right, we got him. We got him in the end, guys. It's fine. It's fine. All right, 53% left on this last Skeletal Mystic. We see Avenge come in for a three. EV skate banning someone when it registers. <laughs> when it registers, mate. All right, the last mystic. We're going to see Rookie run towards the door. We should see him uh, skip the tendrils here. In he goes. The tendrils. Nice little skip running straight through them. As the room loads in. All right. Now we are going to see in between these tree chops. Tree chops? Tree chops. We're going to see uh, Rookie here. Attacking the Mudadile. Getting it down to half hit points. Before the tree goes down. Get Mudadile underneath half hit points. It's going to eat the tree. Restore its HP, but you can get it down to half before the tree goes down, just like that. And we're going to see him use the Sang for the rest of this kill. A nice little 34. Get some really good tree there. That was very, very quick. And we're going to see the Baby Mother Dial go down. The Overload's going to come in. Still two minutes left on his previous Overload, so absolutely no problems there. And the Big Mutt comes in. 104 hit points here to start this Big Mother Dial. Let's see what he finishes it on. A nice 34 Venge there as well. Zero seconds left on the Venge respawn. Another 18. Getting some decent hits on this Monodile here. The big Matt. Hope you got your protection, you fucking Matt. Hope you get the lot. Big hits here on the Mama Dial. We see three brews in the inventory, two restores, got the overload and the prayer enhance, 15,000 purple sweets, if it does come down to that. He drops one of the brews. Says, you know what? I don't need a third brew here. What could I possibly need a third brew for? It makes no sense. And he's going to go in with only two. The reason he's done that is because of the chest. He misclicks the chest. Very unfortunate there to misclick the chest. Uh, one tick too early and accidentally moves his character instead of the chest. And that's going to be minus two ticks. All right. Going in with four brews, actually. Had two in the chest. Let's see the spec here for P1. Gets a nice hammer off. Goes for the scythe swing. Doesn't crimp the hand. And off he goes. We're going to see a nice little four zero here. If anyone says three zero, you're banned. Nice little 4-0 here on the Mage Hand. Eight-way switch for the Mage. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this is actually the 73-0, to zero, guys. Because last time I checked, Ulm hits him zero times, and he hits the Ulm Hand 73 times. Getting some pretty bad RNG on this Mage Hand. Ohm, not turning over. Oh, gets the portals. That's very bad RNG there on that Ohm hit. He's going to have to tick eat this one. Does tick eat it. Wasn't enough damage there to take him down to the tick eat health, but he's now on the off tick. And we're going to see him run to the safe spot and then back in. Losing no hits. Oh my God. Getting some real bad RNG on this Mage Hand. Unfortunate here for Rookie. And uh, that has been the story of this solo CM so far. 24-17 going into Ulm. And that's been the story for him so far. Just terrible, terrible RNG in this solo CM. We haven't, we've seen one mistake from him, and that was during the rope skip. Other than that, a perfect Ulm. And uh, 
you got to be pretty upset with the RNG here if you are rookie. We see the acid walk coming in here. He's going to get into four to one for this Ulm hand. Off he goes. The acid walk, very clean. Very clean. And we see the four to one coming in. He's going to be skipping those special attacks. So the armor deal coming on in between hits there to save a bit of damage. He's got five run energy left. Does have the stamina in the bottom left corner of his inventory. Almost missed that one. So we see the full Inquisitor with the Dragon Hunter Lance on Crush. Getting that extra damage bonus from the Inquisitor's armor set bonus. And we see him at 56 hit points. We'll see if that Blood Fury is going to proc here at any point. During this melee hand, the Blood Fury will come in nice and clutch here for that extra hit points. Although, it does have four brews on the ground, so probably not too worried about the overall hit points. And we're going to see him sweet up in between these phases here, guys. Using the purple sweets, not only for a little bit of extra hit points, but that's going to restore his run energy. As we can see, run energy going to go all the way back up to 100. As we come into the second phase, let's have a look at the Dragon Warhammer coming in. Here we go. Boom. Does hit the hammer. So very nice. Two for two on the hammers here for Rookie in this ulm. Two splashes to start the ulm hand, the mage hand. Takes a 29 to the dome. Another splash getting some really terrible RNG is Rookie on 43 hit points. Oh, no. Oh, it's gone horribly wrong. Gets caught in the flame wall. Very unfortunate there. Definitely could have avoided the flame wall. So a slight mistake on his behalf. But uh, the fact that it was a flame wall there. He typed nice in the chat. Not very happy at all. And uh, takes 62 damage. Does manage to survive it. But uh, not exactly what he would have been looking for here. Manages to avoid the electricity. And got to be honest, guys. It is absolutely all going wrong for Rookie here in this solo CM. And uh, if you're OzTob and Divine watching this run, you've got to be pretty happy with yourselves. Because this has not been ideal for Rookie. Still has potential to bring it back in these last two phases of Ulm. But... Uh, overall, this raid has been subpar in terms of RNG. Not so much in terms of skill. A very talented gamer, but the RNG just not coming in here for Rookie. And uh, wouldn't count him out just yet, though, because uh, although the RNG hasn't been ideal, um, it can certainly still happen to Divine in his run coming up. As we see the timer pushing towards... 29 minutes i'm not 100 sure what the current world record here is for solo cms i'm sure someone in the chat can let us know but that world record is held by divine who is rookie's opponent here it's 28 33 for solo cms so still a Yep. It's a, a bit of a freak time knowing that the, the second best time is 20 seconds slower. There's only two sub-29 minutes, I believe, in the game, and that belongs to Divine and Rusterman, who is, uh, yeah, in BDSM. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. A very, very good time, and uh, one that's going to require a lot of RNG to beat. We see Rookie avoid the flame wall there, uh, but crazy to think that the world record is 28 minutes and 33 seconds. And we see Rookie here already on 30 minutes and 33 seconds with still an entire phase to go. And that just goes to show you guys how much RNG can play a factor. Obviously, uh, the death on the rope skip definitely did not help Rookie in this run. But that is the nature of the beast. That is the game we play, old school RuneScape. It is an RNG game at the end of the day. And uh, even the best of the best are going to get some bad RNG at some point. All right, let's see the hammer for this last phase. We see a zero hammer here for Rookie. And a 26. Okay, so he is going to get that second hammer in. We see him run, get straight into the four to one here. 
Wasting no time on that melee hand for the final phase. Takes a nice little 34 to the dome from Ohm's range hit. And uh, we're going to see him take down this melee hand first. Final phase, we'll see uh, both hands being taken down at the same time. Did he miss a tick there? No, he did not miss a tick. Wait, he did miss a tick, and he is going to just jump on the mage hand now and uh, try and get back into the swing of things. Accidentally missing a tick on uh, on the melee hand there and having to wait three ticks for the next hit. See someone in the chat saying it was a yellow click, so very unfortunate there. For those that don't know, potentially those that have never seen RuneScape before, this game is so old and the engine is so bad if you move your mouse too fast, if you're too quick for the video game, sometimes you will click on a monster and the game won't register the fact that you've clicked on it and instead you'll click directly through it. And that is something we call a yellow click. That is the game we play. And a uh, bit unfortunate there for Rookie to get a yellow click on the melee hand there. But... You know, every cloud has a silver lining and he can take that as a testament to the fact that he is an incredible gamer uh, and just clicking too fast. Mage hand now here for rookie. 206 hit points left. We see the melee hand down on about 20 hit points and he's going to be able to kill these two at the same time. 33 minutes on the clock at the moment. Let's see both hands going down at the same time. Let's see the hits here. Beautiful. Both hands down. And we're going to see the head phase coming in, starting at 33 minutes of the head phase. See the Twisted Potion come in. If we see any hit points needing to be restored, we will see a brew into a Twisted Potion here for Rookie. And we're going to see what's known as a 4 to 1. Don't anyone correct me in the chat. A 4 to 1 here on the head phase. He's going to be doing 4 attacks for every 1 that Ulm does. We we'll see a bit of damage taken here. A burn with me. Down at 20 hit points with no bruise in the inventory. We're going to need to see a tick eat here. Manages to get the redemption off. So I'm avoiding Ulm's attacks. A 157 left on the head. Is he going to die here? Gets the flame wall. Some nice RNG there for the flame wall to come out. One more hit is all he needs on Ulm. And we don't see it. Unfortunately, the recording has stopped. Rookie, very talented gamer. Not so good at recording his run. Yeah, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. He... Stopped recording his run right before the end. Yeah. Yeah. Very suspicious. Very suspicious. But ladies and gentlemen, Hootie Tootie was in a call with Rookie as he did this run. Hootie has done an incredible job of officiating this tournament. Not only making sure that all of the players that sent in their runs, it was the exact run that they were doing for the Speed Run Cup. He was there for every single one of them. He also made sure that every player was playing on Rune Light before the client nuke. So a great job of officiating this tournament and has spent hundreds of hours in calls with these guys, making sure they're doing their runs. Hootie Tootie, a 34-minute CM solo. Can't be happy with that one. Yeah, um, somebody's going to have to get the POH audit group out here to check his marble adventure log because I just can't believe that his PB is what he says it is. But no, nah, like you said, jokes aside, that that is there is an RNG aspect certainly for the uh, for the for the solo CMs. You've got your tectons and your vases that can just go on for extra phases because uh, because you know the high defense that that is a, a mechanic sort of so to speak uh, for the solo CM. A lot of high defense, you know, the hits are. A more RNG based, your Warhammers might not go the way that you'd like, and and obviously, yeah, that thieving room can just, you know, you might just keep thieving nothing from those chests. But yeah, nah, the the rope skip definitely was a, a big time loss, and 
and yeah, not going to be happy with that time at all. Yeah, definitely not going to be happy, especially going up against the Solo CM world record holder. And that is Divine. We're going to go ahead and jump on into his perspective. And look at that, Hurdy Turdy. He started recording from the start of the raid. We're actually going to see a Tekton here. We see the vulnerability come in for Divine. Manages to hit that. It's going to lower the defense of Tekton on the Spellbook swap. And he is on the normal Spellbook here as well. So, uh, wait. He's just on the... He's got a max cape in his inventory. It's okay, guys. I was freaking out for a second. He is going to Spellbook swap after Ice Demon. Huh. So we see 232 hit points left on Tekton. 169 going into the first Anvil. That's pretty nice for him. We will see him attack Tekton with Mage. Get that extra couple of damage as Tekton is moving towards him. It gets a six on the boss. Let's see the Vengeance here. A zero in full Inquisitor. Takes a 47, 35 damage back to the boss. See him walk around with the Inquisitor's Mace. The Torture on. We do see the Torture as well from Divine. No Blood Fury. And a 51, 63 hit points left on Tekton. Gets a pretty fast Tekton. I think he's going to be happy with that. Um, not the fastest Tekton in the world, but um, definitely fast for a one and done run. So we see him coming into the crabs here. Will we see a perfect crab room, ladies and gentlemen? He hits the orb, resets it. We see him in the perfect position here. Going to pick up another crab. Every crab in position right now. We see another and another and perfect, perfect positioning for him here in this crab room. Very clean. This is going to be a perfect solo crabs here for Divine. Unless he makes a mistake, we see him constantly attacking a crab here. Uh, and that is so he can use that crab to get heals from his Sanguinesti staff. Oh, oh my God. What a save there from Divine. That could have gone horribly wrong. We see the smash coming in. Smash or pass. He's definitely going with a smash on that crab and some really nice footwork from Divine in this solo CM. I tried to watch EVscape slash speedrun cup live stream today with my five-year-old son. And I don't mind the swearing and constant sexual moans he likes to make as I'm not one to judge but I want my kid to grow up being good at video games. So I will continue to watch with my son. What? Who invited Dr. Dromi? Is this anyone's friend? He's my friend. Come get your man, bro. He is very clearly drunk. See Divine here in the ice demon room. Should see two inventories of kindling from him here. See him sweating up at all times, getting the hit points back up to maximum. So that little box on his screen there, I'm sure people are wondering what that is for. That is exactly where the withdraw all and deposit all buttons are gonna be in a CM when you go into the chest. So we'll see here as he walks up to the chest, we'll see the deposit and withdraw all in the exact right position. And there we go. Very quick banking here from Divine. This is something I was talking about before. You are... Uh, you definitely need to see some quick banking if you are if you're going to be good at these solo CMs, and uh, he is very good with his inventory management here. We will see him. We will see him uh, switch over to the Archaeus spellbook after he is done here with Ice Demon. Um, we saw Rookie on Venge and uh, Divine opting to go for the Thralls instead of Venge. 
A 45 on Ice Demon. So a very quick Ice Demon here for Divine. And that is exactly what you would expect. That is exactly what you would expect. See the Spellbook swap here to the Arceus Spellbook for Divine. Gets that Thrall summoned. And he's going to be taking on these Shamans. We'll see him put the Infernal Cape on. Rather than the Max Cape here for the Shamans. Does a... Does an Infernal Cape have a higher range bonus than a Max Cape? It does have plus one range accuracy. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. You learn something new every day. And uh, the Infernal Cape having a better range bonus than an actual range cape. That is crazy. Max Cape gives no offensive stats. Can't you put your Arthurs in it? I'm so confused. Listen, guys, I've only been maxed for like three years. You can't expect me to know this stuff. It's only the ammo pickup. Gotcha. Gives no offensive stats. Okay. You would think after being maxed for so long, I would know this stuff. But unfortunately, I don't spend a whole lot of time looking at my equipment screen. I let other people who are way smarter than me do the theory crafting. <laughs> Imagine if he dismantled the Slayer Helm for the Vorkart head and put it inside the Max Cape. That would be absolutely unreal, guys. I gotta say. <laughs> now that's big brain. That's the new tech. But we won't see him do that because... Uh, what we do see sometimes in these CMs, guys, if you didn't know, uh, players will come in with a Lizardman Shaman task with only two left on task. They'll finish the task inside the raid and then they will use the NPC contact spell to hit up Tyrael and get themselves a skeleton task. And that way they have the Slayer Helm bonus for not only Shamans, but also for the Skeletal Mystics. And that is what you're going to see from the world record holders. Takes a long time. On average, you'll only get one CM run done every 14 days. Uh, but that's what you'll see from these guys. The best of the best. Putting on a show. Putting on a show. We see Damba in the chat say nobody is that autistic. Listen, mate, I did a fucking bingo with you once. And I'm pretty sure... No, I can't say that on Twitch. See, Divine here in the Vanguard's room. Not getting the best hits here on the Mage Vanguard. And we see a 70 straight away. As soon as I say that. A big 70. Could he have potentially reset there? That would have been a close one for sure. We see the claws coming in. Wasn't sure what he wanted to attack there for a second. And he's just going to go ahead and sweep up. Not in the best position uh, to attack the melee Vanguard here. And he has to wait for it to go down. Spends a little time waiting, decides he's waited long enough and uh, manages to get a few hits off before the reset. Melee Vanguard almost going down. And here we go. Divine opting not to go for the risk there. I would think outside of a speedrun cup, he probably would have risked it and uh, just risked the HP there against the Melee Vanguard. But dying in a speedrun cup run is going to be less ideal than not dying. So taking his time in the Vanguard room, walking out with five brews, zero restores. Not one single restore here for Divine. And that is definitely not going to be ideal going into Vespula. I don't think he has a prayer enhance either. I'm not sure on the timing 
left on the prayer net, but uh, he's going to be hoping here that it will last long enough for the Vespers room. It's fresh. It's a fresh enhance. So he has five minutes now, guys. Has five minutes to uh, to do the thieving room and the vespular room. You would hope he would be able to get it done. See the first lot of grubs go in. Grub count in the top left corner. We see 14. Can we see the live standings? Absolutely, you can, my friend. All right, we see Divine finish up here in the thieving room. He's going to be going through to Vespula. Once again, not sure how long he has left on his enhance, but probably looking at around two minutes, three minutes here. And uh, we're going to need to see some good RNG in this Vespula room. If he gets some rookie RNG, he might be struggling a little bit. But we'll see as he comes in. Three brews in the inventory. We see the Phoenix necklace as well, so we will see that Kirby skip on the rope. Here we go. First hit on the Vespula portal, a 64. He is going to brew here with the Twisted Potion in the Vespula room, saving a little bit of time. And he's going to save that last dose of Twisted Potion. No, he's not, because the Overload is fresh as well. Is it? I could have sworn his Overload didn't have that long left. And now we see where the time is going to be spent. Unfortunately, with the tick restore for the prayer enhance, sometimes he is just going to have to wait a few ticks in between his hits. We see 25 run energy left as well here for Divine. The hits on the Abyssal Portal going all right. Ooh, gets the redemption off with one hit point remaining. Six run energy for Divine. He's going to have to use Purple Sweets here to get his run energy back. 57 hit points left on the Abyssal Portal. So we see the Redemption come in again. 96 XP drop, 24. One more hit left here on the Portal. One more hit left on the Portal. 14 HP. Still a faster time than Rookie's uh, Vespula here. So pretty nice there for Divine. He's going to be pretty happy with that one. Even coming in with zero restores. And now we're going to see him go down to one to three hit points for this rope. Unfortunately, we can't see what the hit points exactly are. I'm going to have to guess. That looks like a one hit point to me. That looks like a one hit point to me. That's two. That's two hit points. And he is going to be crossing with the armadillo on. Let's see if he pulls off this Kirby skip. Gonna see the Yo. Yo. We're just seeing in the chat there's a one in two hundred chance for that to happen. Bad RNG. That is absolutely outrageous. We've seen both players die on the rope skip. A 1 in 35 to die. Okay, that is bad RNG. Not as bad as we thought it was, but... Wow. Wow. 1 in 35 to die. We're going to have to see another rope skip here from Divine. Let's see what he goes in at. 
It's gonna put the armor deal on again. So I'm assuming another two hit point skip. Looks like one to me. I can't lie to you. Is two hit points. And he does pull off the skip again this time. He is going to have to cross back over the rope though. And both players we see dying on that rope skip. All right, Divine, four minutes left on the overload. We see a floor one for him was a 612 and rookies was a 630. And coming into the second floor now, rookie had a 1612 and Divine gonna tap that third floor at a 1539. So currently 40 seconds ahead of his opponent is Divine, 2417 for floor three for rookie let's go ahead and have a look at the guardians room that is a max cape for divine so not using the 98 mining account for this speed run see the crystal pickaxe though we won't see any blood fury heals here for divine he is using the torture So we will see him brew up before he goes into the vassal room to get that venge off. For those in the chat wondering, I'm not sure on the exact numbers, but the Guardian's hit point scales depending on your mining level. So not only will your max hit go up, but their hit points will scale up as well. So supposedly the ideal level to have your mining at for speedrun CMs is somewhere between 96 and 98. To get the most amount of max hits with the least amount of hit point scaling. So 97 run plays games that's going to be 97 days in the can for you mate enjoy the perm <laughs> All right. No shot. I'm sat here too busy laughing at Ron plays games and we've missed the fact that Divine has died in the Vassa room. This guy's a world record holder. Four hundred and fifty hit points left on Vassal, so that venge that he did on the way in completely useless now. Gonna have to re-overload. We see him attacking the crystal. No point attacking the crystal there, and this is gonna be a very slow Vassal. Eighteen minutes and fifty seconds on the clock. What venge? Gonna go ahead and get my vengeance here. Jacko, enjoy the perm. That's the venge. All right, so we see him come up against the glowing crystal here with full inquisitors. The inquisitors mace on stab, so it's allowing players, when that came out, to use it not only for Tekton, but also as a stab weapon for the Vasa Crystal. Going to do better DPS than your Dragon Hunter Lance. Let's 
Is he going to die again here? No, he is not. 207 hit points left on Vassa. We see the Thrall from way downtown here on the Crystal as well. Shooting it from the three-point line. And uh, I was saying during Rookie's run, if you're Oz Tob, you've got to be pretty happy seeing the bad RNG. But I got to say, if you're Oz Tob right now, you're probably not enjoying seeing this. 34 minutes to beat does divine. 34 minutes to beat. And he's currently sat at 20 minutes in the Vasa room. Not going to bother with this crystal. 73 hit points left on the boss. Can he hit a 77 here? Two hits to finish it off. We'll see him pick up the Twisted Potion and the Xerix Aids. And run through into the Mystics room. I'd just be entering the third floor right now. Yeah, just to put it in perspective for you guys, um, even though Divine has made a, uh, a few mistakes in this run and managed to die twice, uh, he is very, very good at the game. So for perspective, he's currently in the Mystics room. If you were to see someone like, for instance, Coxie do one of these raids, he would just be leaving Vanguards at the exact same time right now. That's the difference in skill between these players. We see a pretty fast first Mystic here for Divine. And getting some absolutely nuclear hits. Seventy-three on the Mystic, as he runs through here. This is pretty fast, guys. Very nuclear Mystics. Lots of dragon arrows on the ground. Not short on money is divine. I believe I could be wrong here, but I think. I heard a story that this man once accidentally dropped a scythe in a tob and went through to the next room. A kitted scythe. Very fast Mystics there from Divine. See him go through into the Muradal room. Quite a few brews in the inventory. Four should be enough. Fast chopping as well. That tree going down very quickly. Last chop taking a little bit longer than he would have liked. And didn't take too much damage here in the mother dial room. We're going to see the overload coming in. As he drops that one dose, not going to need that last dose there. So him stand under the boss in between hits. Ooh, takes a range hit at the end there. Zero damage though, got to be happy with that. Now we see him on the Mama Dial. We see the Thralls coming out as well. A resummon there. And the big mutt goes down. The big mutt. Your mutt. We'll see Divine walking into the Ulm room. It was a 24-17 split going into Ulm 
for Rookie. And it's going to be around a 25-minute split here for Divine. So we'll be around 45 seconds behind his opponent going into the Ulm room. And the question is, can he get some RNG to make up for it? Misses the Dragon Hunter Lance there on the bank as well. So 24-17 for Rookie and a 25-04 here for Divine. So he's got around 45 seconds to make up. Can he do it here in this ohm? 45 seconds, a massive deficit to make up for in an ohm room. And he hits a zero hammer to start with. Can he get the second one? He does get the second one. Should get an, uh, his spec back in time for that. All right. Let's see the RNG on this mage hand. We saw Rookie with some terrible RNG on the mage hand. We see Divine is on the off tick as well. One tick behind the Ulm attacks. Very good point from Jinami in the chat here. Divine does have thralls, whereas Rookie did not have thralls. So that extra DPS, 0.625 damage per second coming in from the thrall here. I'm uh I'm not a hundred percent sure. Someone can correct me, but I believe an average ohm without thralls is ten minutes fifteen, and an average ohm with thralls is nine forty. So saving thirty five seconds, I believe. On average, there so needs to make up ten seconds. On average, will save thirty five. So needs to get needs to get an extra ten seconds of RNG here. Does divine. And some reasonable RNG on this mage hand here. Uses the scythe rather than the dragon hunter lance because he is on that off tick. One tick behind and he's going to use the scythe to catch up. Three scythe swings there. Going for the fourth. We should see him switch to the dragon hunter lance. And there we go. Just like that in four to one is divine. See a really nice acid walk for him as well. Taking no damage. Going to need to see a 3 to 1 here from Divine to get back into 4 to 1. See, nice 3 to 1, and that's going to put him on the correct cycle. And some pretty good damage here on this melee hand. See the zombified thrall out as well. So the scythe for the last few hits. Just trying to get the RNG swings here. Going to take some damage. Getting some really bad RNG on these scythe swings. Wow. As we saw both players switching into the armor deal for Ohm's attack. Just to get that extra defense. Running around like a headless chook during this crystal phase. Let's see the RNG on the hammer spec for the second round. Another zero on the hammer there for Divine. Very unfortunate RNG. I believe Rookie did hit a hammer on every single phase of Ulm. So this is not looking good for Divine. Did have some time to make up and uh, really needed those hammers to hit to make up that time. Thrall's obviously helping him with that DPS. But will they be enough? See, 29 minutes on the clock. He's got a 34.56.4 to beat. So around six minutes to finish this arm off. A little less, five and a half minutes to finish this arm off. Getting some pretty good RNG on this mage hand though. Will not be complaining with these hits. Some decent heals coming in from the Sang as well. So 
So the mage hand go down. He does miss a few ticks there. Probably was not expecting the mage hand to go down so early, and it does. See the crystal phase special attack. He's immediately in four to one as well, so he's going to be pretty happy with that. Great footwork here from the man. Have a look at the way he slides around the Ulm room like he's skating on ice. Missing no hits and uh, being in the correct positions at the correct time. Have a look at this move here, guys. I love this one. The slide back into the Dragon Hunter Lance. And who needs hammers when you've got hits like this? Oh my god, Divine getting some absolutely outrageous RNG on this melee hand. And a very quick time here for P2. Coming into P3 here, one special attack left. Let's see if Divine can hit the spec here. He does hit the spec for the final phase, so he is going to be happy with that one. See a Scythe coming in. Going to jump straight into 4 to 1 here. Armadillo comes on for the flicks. See him flick redemption up there on 92 hit points. Divine, I'm not sure that's how it works, mate. Avoids the flame wall. We did see Rookie get caught in one of those during his arm. Armor flick for the culture. 239 hit points left on the melee hand for arm here. Very nice acid walk here. As we see him take no damage for that until right as I was saying it. Really clean on the acid walk. So the melee hand go down. That's going to stay up on a very low hit points. Has to kill both hands at the same time. 32 minutes and 20 seconds on the clock. He's got a 34.56 to beat. It's looking pretty good for Divine at the moment. Got the Mage Hand to take down. And 2 minutes and 20 seconds to do so. As well as the head. Let's see if the RNG is going to come in here. Uses the Max Cape for the Stamina Boost as well here in the last phase. Max Cape coming in handy for more than just the Spellbook swap. Let's see the RNG on this Mage Hand. Has two minutes exactly to take down this Mage Hand and the head. 200 hit points left on the Mage Hand. One hit left on the Melee Hand. And 800 hit points left on the Ulm Head. Let's see if he can get it done. Forty-seven hit points. It's one hittable. It's one hittable. That should be the last hit there for the mage hand. It does get taken down. He is going to summon a thrall, a ranged thrall for the head. Has one minute twenty seconds to take down this head here. Will Divine get the RNG he needs to beat Rookie in this third place playoff for Oz Top? Thirty-four minutes and fifty-six seconds to beat. We see another dose of overload coming in. Some really great hits to start this Ulm head. As we see the time tick closer to 34 minutes. Has exactly one minute to take down this Ulm head. And he hits like that. He's certainly going to do it. If they keep up. 400 hit points left on the Ulm head. Can hit 80 plus with the Twisted Bow. It's all going to come down to RNG. Two zeros in a row. That Thrall doing absolute work from the other side of the room. 34 minutes and 12 seconds. Has 40 seconds left to take this down. Takes a 27 from Ulm. One and a half brews left in the inventory. Has the burn. That is going to be affecting his range level. We see he's 118 instead of 120. We will see him brew up here soon. A 27. He is chanced and he dies. And that is surely it. 20 seconds remain. Can he get into the Ulm room in time? He's got 20 seconds to take down the Ulm head. 160 hit points. We see the Twister Bow come in. He's going to pick up the overload. 
Overload dose, 10 seconds left here. 100 hit points left on the Ohm head. He surely would have had it in the bag. 42 hit points left, one hit. It's a 34-54. He takes it down. What is the final time going to be? It's a 34-57. He loses by one tick. One tick. There's no way. There's no way. I cannot believe my eyes. That is the second time in this tournament we have seen someone lose a boss by one tick. You cannot make this up. He loses the Chambers of Zurich solo. The world record holder being taken down by Turbo PVM by one tick, Hootie Tootie. Yeah, I mean... It's uh, as close as it gets once again. Uh, good start to the day for sure. But yeah, big mistakes made by both. Both dying to the rope skip, losing multiple multiple seconds, close to minutes on, on mistakes alone. We saw a very long Vasa as well for Divine, which yeah, held him back for sure from, from beating Rookie by a decent amount. Yeah, massive mistakes coming in for divine there was very unlucky on the rope skip and then obviously you see a few mistakes in the arm room the vasa obviously the death there costing him probably yeah. about a minute the vanguards also uh, uh, i wouldn't say that was uh div's best vanguards he definitely misplayed that a few times and and that as well i mean you can look at almost any room and, and if you see one tick lost it's it's been the difference for sure and that is exactly what we say. One tick can make all the difference. I see people in the chat yesterday saying, oh, he lost a tick. What does one tick matter? That's why one tick matters. That exactly right there is why one tick matters. And we see Oztob are going to be down one point here in this third place playoff. Hootie Tootie, I've got some bad news for the chat. Yep. Um, I'm going to have to turn your camera off here. Because I need to go into my Discord. We are going to have a special guest joining us for the next run. We are going to be watching the Inferno runs. Let me just make sure that he's around. We're going to have a special guest joining us. I've got to make sure he's here. But uh, you guys saw yesterday... I'm probably not the most well-versed when it comes to Inferno runs. And uh, we're going to have a special guest, a professional, joining us here for the cast. Fingers crossed, if Hemis is awake, he is going to be joining us. The man, the big chin man himself. <laughs> He's Tobin? He's live at the moment? <clears throat> so guys, we're going to be jumping into these Inferno runs. I am going to be casting this one by myself. Um, hopefully we'll have him. He's joining us for the second one. Uh... Hootie Tootie, Turbo PVM, going to be run by Adwam, the current Inferno world record holder. And uh, mm -hmm. let's not mess around. Let's go ahead and jump on into it, shall we? All right, I'm going to chuck some music on for you guys for this one, because I can only imagine there's going to be a little bit of dead air. Believe it or not, I have no idea what I'm talking about when it comes to these Inferno runs. We see three-way switch here for Adwam. We have the... Blood Fury and the Ferocious Gloves for the Switch. Kodo Wand in the inventory below pipe. Hemis is coming. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. 140 prayer to start, guys, for those wondering how that is even a possibility. Using the Ancient Mace on your Player Own House portal uh, dummy is going to allow you to get up to 140 prayer points before you even start. See the Gommel's Hilt in the inventory as well. Uh... The Gommel's Hilt? Hootie Tootie? Uh, originally, originally polled to, uh, to give an accuracy uh, increase, uh, for potentially for Dragon Warhammering. Uh, that failed, and it's got no stats. So, 
So inside of combat, pretty useless, and I think they'll just be a mistake. They they t typically use it for dropping pots. You know, you drop your pots, teleport back to the Inferno Bank, get your new ones out, deposit it, and go pick up your pre-pots and, and your pots that you're going to use for the run, and just forgetting to uh, drop it and, and losing one inventory space. Yeah, very unfortunate there. I'm going to go ahead, Hoodie, and uh, Hemis is here. So I'm going to start a new call. We'll get him involved, and uh, he's going to help us out with the cast here for the Inferno. Bro, what the fuck? I was in the middle of me. <laughs> well, sorry to take you away from your uh, your maiden there, my friend. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen for you so you can see what's going on on our side. Ladies and gentlemen, the inventor of the big chin himself, Hemi, is going to be helping with the cast here. One of the only other people in the old school RuneScape category doing anything for esports. The man that runs the high-risk tobs and certainly a man that knows quite a bit more about the Inferno than I do. Alright, I see we've got fucking big man Adam out here, you know. You wouldn't believe it, but this man struggled to he struggled to get the, the Vorkath Grandmaster time. He also died during Kraken, so you know, we... some, some things have happened, but there, if there's one thing that he's fucking cracked at, I'll tell you what, it's the Inferno. Yeah, that is, uh, is the world record holder. that is something we were discussing yesterday with the Fight Caves run. Didn't see the best Fight Caves run out of Adwam. Oh, shit. But, uh, I was there, I was there. Definitely, definitely very good at the Inferno. Uh, not only on his account, but uh, other people's accounts as well, Hemis. Mm, that's, very, that's very true. I might have, uh, maybe, maybe I've enlisted in his services. Oh, shit. <laughs> No, 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 actually, we can't talk about it. <laughs> no, no, let's, let's just move on real quick. Let's just move on real quick. No, 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 I believe no, he's no, uh, no, he's no, moved no, on from no, that no. anyway. He's an accountant now, so. Accountant, what the fuck? Yeah. Right, well, at any rate, I will say he's played this, he's played, I, I am expecting a degree of uh, safe plays with this because they are given one chance. You know, if they die, it's it's basically up to the other guy. And also, like, most of the time in one run, you're not going to see these kinds of crazy paces that they normally get, right? Like, Adam might have a 44-minute run, but on average, he's probably going to average something about 48 minutes if he plays safe, I want to say. Yeah, and that's something we were discussing yesterday with those Inferno runs. Uh, you see with the world record runs, players will be taken in the Trident so that they can switch to Thralls, but not in these consistent ones, Hemis. Yeah, honestly, the fact that um, <laughs> I am happy to see that he's taking the three-way scythe because that is a very massive, like the difference between two-way and three-way is actually pretty huge. You can consistently scythe like an extra five something health earlier and people sometimes send it just from 50 and just fucking Hail Mary it. <laughs> Apologies, I do have a, a little bit of remnants from the COVID. <laughs> oh, I saw no. yesterday, there, there was a lot of people running with two-way scythe and I was like... With Blood Fury especially, Blood Fury is, uh, I'm going to say, it, it's dog shit. <laughs> I don't even want to scythe at 35 with uh, with Blood Fury. So taking this, he can scythe from like 50, which is very nice. You'll so, see that it's a big time save even on the melees. So you would prefer to see people just going in with the Ferocious Gloves rather than the Blood Fury? Personally, yeah. Especially with like some of, the play some of these big name players that we're seeing over here. Fucking Addy was the team member. Like Adam's a team member. Kev is still pretty good. Uh, if fuck, if there's a million fans, I am all of them. For Kev, <laughs> like definitely, these players are good enough that I think that they can totally take the the three way and be fine with it. Because most of the time, this only means that they go down to three brews. Yep. I will say though, um, Addy took, he did opt to bank one of the switches so he could have two range pots if I remember correctly, and that is also a pretty goddamn good idea because. The, the odds of getting the healer skip with just one brew, it's not, it's it's fine, but I'd chalk it up to maybe like a 50-50, maybe a little bit higher with the van braces now. So having that double range pot increases the, the consistency of completion by like miles. As long as you don't fuck up, you can almost always kill it with two range pots. So here we're going to see he's he's only got one, which is, I mean, I think this is, this is a pretty standard setup, but like... With this, the risk of him dying at healer skip, if he chooses to go for it, is... It's not something to forget about, I'll say. 
Now, I believe we did see Adam uh, not go for the healer skip in his run yesterday, but something I do want to ask about, Hem, is uh, speaking of the inventory that we're looking at right now, down by the rune pouch, a very strange item. Yes. Uh, he's just flexing on kids, if I'm honest. You know, like he went through a lot of a, a very hard grind. Like he had to kill 100 Kraken. He died in the process of it. Like, of course, of course, he's got to flex it, right? Absolutely. Like it's, I it's mean, if I if I had the last Gomos held, I'd be it'd be in my inventory at all times. But no one needs to see that Zuck Slayer helm. All right, it's the Gomos hilt that everyone's looking for. <laughs> that is exactly what I'm talking about. I mean, fuck. I, I, I don't want to I don't want to leak all the endeavors of Adam, but we're definitely uh there was there's a big I would say there's a big huff about when he was doing a when he was doing his Grandmaster Combat achievements. In fact, uh, I know Hootie. He's a uh, was we were discussing Shawnee earlier, and Shawnee too has come over and he's been talking about his big struggles with it too. Can someone please help Shawnee? Shawnee's like <clears throat> he's trying to get back into Inferno speed running. Fourth place or third place pre blowpipe nerf, and what is this guy stuck by? A hundred tob kc. <laughs> this motherfucker has like two tob kc, and he's he's raiding with four sixteeners every other day on Gary Gutted. He's fucking struggling. He's having the time of his life, dude. No way, Sean is in four sixteen. It's that's it's worse than that. He's wiping in four sixteen. <laughs> oh, no. Worse than it. Oh, He's struggling, man. Well, listen, Shawnee, if you are here, mate, um, I'll I'll run TOBs. I'll carry you five mil a raid. That's all it's gonna cost you. Holy fuck! Yep. That's that's the premium rate. That's a premium discount from a a prime member of Ostob himself. Exactly, Australia's yeah. finest PVM, and that's what they refer to me as. We will fucking take those. <laughs> now, but what here. would you say is the uh, is the difference, I mean, between the thralls and uh, not taking them in, like in, in terms of time difference? The time difference is actually like it's it's very big for and like everybody will tell you taking thralls is insanely good. You'll your splits are going to increase by so much. It's really good for like PB wise, but <laughs> if we're going to talk like actually. For the context of the speedrun cup, not worth it at all. Like, when everybody's freaking out, holy fuck, thralls are so good, thralls are so good. It's like 30 seconds, maybe a minute faster, right? Yep. That 30 seconds, the odds of it being the thing that stops you from, you know, winning the grand prize of 1.5 bell, it's like, the 30 seconds probably aren't going to matter. Because when you compare that to, like, let's say the death rate with thralls, you're probably... I want to chalk it up to eight times more likely to die with thralls. Wow, eh, okay. Maybe not eight. Maybe not eight. Because usually when people take thralls, they you know, you gotta play a you gotta play a little risky. You can't play like a pussy if you're gonna take a high risk strategy, right? That's the whole point. It's high risk. So if you took thralls and played very safe, maybe it's four times more likely to die. Right? Because a lot of it the main problem is a lot of it gets chalked up to RNG. These mini blobs that are gonna hit you maybe like a 10 Maybe you get unlucky, you get hit, you lose 20 health to a mini blob on one wave. You can't get that health back unless you blowpipe spec massive, right? So it's all up to RNG whether or not you whether or not you actually get through with supplies or not. And uh... on top of that, yeah, it's it's hard to play because you don't get the prayer. Like you have so few prayer, and on top of that, you also can't take that many bruising realistically. Three is the most you're ever gonna get with thralls, but most likely two because. Well, you have to take a mage cape, you've got to take a fucking a shield, you've got to take this and that. And it's, it's just way too much trouble to be worth. Yeah, as you said, a very high risk strategy. So that is something you will see from world record runs. Uh, players obviously trying to get the best possible times for those world record runs, but hundreds of attempts to go for those world record runs. And it doesn't matter if you die in the Inferno, go get yourself a new task and you start again, but not here in the speed run cup. If you die in the speed run cup, your opponent just has to finish the Inferno. As long as they finish, it doesn't matter what time they get. If you die, uh, your opponent basically gets an auto win. So that's why you'll see the players going for these safe strategies. We see a 607 wave split for Adwam here for wave 18. What's an average time you would normally see for a wave 18 split, Hemis? I, I want to call that pretty... That, that's pretty standard, 607. I will say... um. Does do we know if this run was recorded before or after the uh, 
Actually, no way. I'm brain dead. That that bat just disappeared, huh? Okay, <laughs> so yeah, six or seven. Pretty standard, I want to say. Like, nothing too crazy, nothing. <laughs> but uh, the 25 is a 930. Right now, this run is looking pretty average. Now, normally, it's too hard to tell this early as to what kind of time we're going to get. But if I just had to guess right off the bat, this is probably going to be something like a... Maybe a 48 something, maybe 49 if things don't go too well. He's kind of maxing right now. Yeah, it's kind but of insane overall, to me how early, uh, you know, these these big Inferno speedruns can tell how fast the run is going to be. Like, you're already talking about potentially seeing a 48 minute run here, and we're only on wave 28. And, uh, you know, in these runs, anything can happen. But the amount of times that these guys have done these runs, they certainly know what they're talking about when it comes to these times. So, um, a pretty average split say, so far for Adlon. A lot of it also comes down to, um, this is also because I do have a lot of trust in the players as a whole. Like, you'll see uh, maybe players who are like, maybe players who are like 47 or something. Like, if it, to a large degree, it kind of depends on how consistent they are. But because, like, I want to say maybe the top 10 players, like if you're looking at like Neen, Croft, Addy, Wham, MCU, Joel, or, or John Pelly, like all these guys are going to be mega consistent at this point. Like I know they're not going to, they're not going to fuck up on like 57 hard enough that it's going to cost them minutes and minutes of time, right? Yeah. If we're taking someone who's like just fresh sub 50 or maybe like, maybe like 48, maybe like 47, like there's, there's decent odds that maybe they're not consistent enough that they'll be able to do something. So like Kev, biggest fan, you know, I'm, I'm, Fuck, if there's a million fans, I am all million fans of Kev. <laughs> but he has just, well, he didn't recently get a sub 50, but he's just, he's on the cusp of it. He's like 49 something last time I checked. Like, if he were to get these splits, I couldn't be 100% sure that he would totally make a, that he would like be able to sub 48 on this, for example. But because it's Adam, like, I've, I'm pretty, I'm pretty consistent in it. Yeah. Also, I want to say like, uh, do we know, because I've been watching for a lot of it, but, like, I didn't get to see the full times for some of the other completions. I know we had six Inferno completions previously, right? Uh, there were six Inferno runs, I believe, and we saw two deaths, is that correct, Hootie Tootie? Yeah, so, so what we've had so far is, I believe, a fastest time from Stooge at 48.56.4. Second place was Jolening with a 49.09. Uh, MCU is just after that, and then uh, Adwam's previous time was a forty nine twenty eight. Mm. I believe. Did we Brilliant. see? Who did we see yesterday with a fifty minute nineteen second? Was that Addy? Yes, that was Addy with the slowest time so far. Yep. Yeah, put, putting him under the flame. <laughs> and he's and <laughs> also yeah. with the the only death as well is Addicon from his <laughs> two infernos. He does have the slowest time and the only death. The seventh There's place no curse. Put a bunch of the curse oh, of the shit. seventh place. Did we tell you about how um, he was like he changed his name to Rank One UK, and he's like, "Oh, no, you know, nothing's gonna fucking happen." Day later, Adam takes it from him, changes his <laughs> name to Rank Two UK, and then just recently, fucking Acid House has gotten Acid House beat him by I think a tick. He's he's not even Rank Three UK anywhere. Oh he's just, my word! I think he's just changing his name. He just changed his name back to Addy. I was like, oh shit. Uh, just struggle straight for Addy Khan. Beaten by one tick. We saw in actually the first round of this matchup, Hemis. I'm not sure if you saw Turbo PVM versus Oz Tob in the challenge mode solo. We saw Rookie beat Divine by literally one singular tick. No fucking way. Yeah. Only absolutely in the biggest insane. of tournaments will see that. That what, is what exactly his, um, right. What was his time? Oh, uh, look, we won't talk about that. Um, not saying both players, <laughs> not saying both players had um, almost 35 minute times, but they did. It's looking a lot like um, their trio CM from what I remember. <laughs> <Yes>. Oh, fuck. <laughs> you were talking about like, oh shit, Muta Dao's the only room where they come in with, uh, they go in with 15 brews and they leave with none. I was like, what the fuck you mean? That just happened on rope. You fucking <laughs> yeah. died and lost all those brews. <laughs> 
shit. Yeah, we did actually see that in the runs from the solo CM. Both players actually dying on the rope skip going in. Um, I believe Rookie tried to do a 3 HP skip and Divine doing a 2 HP skip and both players dying on the rope skip. So... <laughs> We see a 15.07 split here going into wave 35. Still on pace for that 48? I would say so. This is a 15.07. So depending on how good the player is, this is, I would, I would chalk this up as a pretty standard split for three-way scythe. I want to say with 80, 85 to 95% optimal play, like uh, 15, 15 flat, maybe sub 15 is about average for, for three-way scythe if you play it really well. Yeah. Outside of that, like with, um, you can also see a lot of variance with it. So like, this is just, this is just a good sign because it's not, it's not really on the slow side. Like you can easily get like 1530 if you just get unlucky with some stuff. Yeah. Because well, you can see you know, over the course of, you know, one or two majors getting some bad hits, slow waves, but you would hope over the course of the entire Inferno, obviously still is a small sample size of monsters, but the RNG would balance out a little bit more than just a, a singular wave or two. Oh, 100%. Uh, I think this is, we're really entering this part where this is easily probably, because like the early waves are one of the hardest sections to play, but it's also very, uh, it's the, it matters the least. I will say, I, what I saw him do right there was just, it was very beautiful because what he did was he actually he popped he tried to pop the blob and then uh and then kill the mage before it got to revive but because it ended up uh <laughs> he couldn't kill it in time what he actually did was he flinched behind the pillar to make sure that he didn't trade extra hits for the mage because the mage is hitting every four ticks right so of course he's going to he'll stand behind the pillar to make sure that this blob is only going to hit him one to one rather than getting 1.25 to one right so that's just small stuff that you'll see, like very, very niche optimizations from players who are like at the top level. And yeah. this is exactly why we've got the professional cast from Hemis coming in today. Stuff like that, I would never notice in the Inferno, saving those extra ticks on the mage hits to not get the respawn of the blob. No, he's just fucking flexing his, fl his clicks. <laughs> fucking crazy motherfucker. But honestly, <laughs> I'm... That, wow, that, I think he just like fucking three hit that. This is looking like it's honestly going to be a really, a really good run. Because early on, um, I was talking about how the early waves, like, they don't really matter that much. Once you, <laughs> once you start to reach the mages and stuff, this is where all your big time save is going to come from. And it's also where you could argue, like, it's not as much skill. Because people like to say the Inferno is the most skillful and most consistent speed run within runescape and you'd be right right like in in solo cms you can be like divine you literally have the wreck and you'll still end up fucking getting a 35 minute time just because of like bad rng sometimes but like inferno you'd be hard pressed to find anyone who's sub 50 that will still get like a 52 minute time like usually that usually like some really bad shit has to fucking go down for that but here like the reason for that is because in these runs, like, a mage can die in 20 seconds or can die in a minute. There's fucking nothing you can do about it, right? Yep. So, like, you'll see that between, like, I want to say waves 18 to 35, you'll find that the time save difference between, like, skill level is maybe, like, 30 seconds to a minute. But... Like, the amount of effort you have to put in is very, very high by comparison. And then between 35 to 50, you can, like, there's almost nothing to do optimally. You know, safe spots and fucking bats, build a mage first. <laughs> and then the, the time difference could be, like, fucking six minutes, to, like, seven minutes from 42 to 50, or it could be fucking, like, 530, right? And that's just based the on the RNG of the mages. Yeah, it, it's just fucked. And the melees too, because the melees, they have the, I want to say the highest defense out of everything here. Very, like here, very like, interesting. But one thing I do want to get you to explain, Heavy, something that I've tried my best to explain in the past, but uh, not the most well-versed at it, is the scythe tech. What is the reason they bring the scythe along to get that last hit on these monsters? Well, the, there's, so there's, there's a couple basic reasons, which is that 
The first thing is it's going to cause, so when you're naturally blowpiping something, it will always take <coughs> one tick for your dart to reach the NPC and then another tick to, to properly just start the death animation. But when you're scything something, one, because it's a melee weapon, you don't get that projectile delay, so you automatically save a tick doing that. And the other thing is that you also, you can trigger multiple hit splats on anything that's bigger than one by one. So like melees, bats, mage range, they're all gonna get this speed up if multiple attacks occur on the last tick that, that kills it, basically. That's not always going to happen, <coughs> because what has to happen is the, the hits have to register after the monster dies. So if it's the last hit that kills it, you don't actually get the speed up, but it's consistent enough that it, you can basically consider it a thing. And so that's normally, with every NPC in the game? As long as, yeah, every NPC in the game. So you'll notice that like if you claw spec something one by one, they'll actually die faster, right? And we noticed that with uh, with Vorkath even. Yep, right? yep. The, uh, I want to say another, another main thing about it, though, that makes it kind of difficult is that we're going to see... A lot of, um, oh, I, I, I gotta say, I like what he's doing here. This is a bit of an advanced chin setup. Though so he kind of got fucked over by the mage not dying. The melee's gonna dig. Something's gonna revive. Oh my god. <laughs> the mage still not dead here. And he misses out on that chin. Just quickly, I see in the chat here, really wanted to so show my students this as a cool gaming thing. But this, uh, this guy keeps swearing. Um, just quickly gonna say, fuck your students. Enjoy the perm. 89 days, baby. I wanted to say, I wanted, I didn't want, I, you know, I wanted to be nice, but like last time some motherfucker came into your chat and he was like, he's like, I just got 89 fishing, bro. I was like, oh, he's going to say 89 days, bro. You're gone. <laughs> You're fucking gone. Oh, but big man Jake just being a nice guy, not fucking banning him. Hey, you got to do <laughs> it. That was you. I'm, I'm sorry, Scott is out, but you know, it's like, I was running a tournament, 89 days, man, you're gone. Uh, Get what, this guy out of here. What can I say, Hemis? That's actually an e-girl, and I'm a big simp, so... Holy fuck. Yep, I was yep. Gonna say, I was gonna say something about the, you know, the name Skoda's Ho, but... You know what, um... I'll keep it off Twitch. I'll keep it off Twitch. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe keep that There's one to yourself. There's a professional environment around here. Professional <laughs> environment around here. Now, based on this setup here, uh, you were saying with that extra range part, we'll see players go for the healer skip. Will we see Adwan be going for the healer skip in this one based on his inventory? This is, I think this is something that we're gonna, <laughs> we will literally, he's probably adapting his plan as it goes. So if he, if he gets through with a lot of brews, then he'll probably do a healer skip because even though the range pot is extremely important, you can still survive it if you have enough brews. It's just going to be a lot more fucking scary because uh, I saw you already pay attention to this before, but hitting unplotted on Zuck is extremely, extremely important. I cover this in my guide for Inferno speedrunning, but it's literally like if you were to calculate it over the course of the whole Zuck, the difference between hitting single brood down, so 99 range versus 112 range, you're going to lose 36 seconds just killing Zuck. Right? Wow. I'm going to tell you right now, you can't live for another 36 seconds on Zuck <laughs> most of the time. So hitting unpotted is like, definitely do not do that. Right? So we're going to see if he has like, even though he's only got that one range pot, if he's got three brews, if he's got like two brews, two and a half brews, and he still has a resource, he can still live because like, that's just so much brew that that one range pot is going to last him the first I don't know. It's gonna last him the first probably forty seconds if he if he does proper dodging and everything. So after that, all he has to do is just you you know brew restore. He can do the last like hundred health. It's fine. But if it's let's say single brew left, he's he's almost out of food. Like we'll probably see him have to adapt to the situation. If he only has one brew, I I honestly couldn't chalk it up to whether or not he would um whether or not he'll do the healer skip or not. So we'll have to Force. see when he gets there. We did see two players yesterday going for that healer skip, both managing to successfully do it. And uh, Adwan, one of the best in the game, potentially going to see him go for that healer skip on Zark. But once again, guys, here in the speedrun cup, if you die, 
That is it. Your opponent just has to complete the Inferno. It doesn't matter what time they get. Uh, so potentially we'll see him play it safe, go for those healer kills, maybe even kill the mage as well. We can already see him playing safe, like even in this wave, like that was a spawn where he could have immediately done one blowpipe on the right on the melee that was incoming and then throw another chin and then he'd have chinned the melee, it would have been a perfect time save. But he played it safe here because he didn't want to untrap the melee, maybe risk taking some extra damage for it. It's, it's not necessary, right? He's not going for the Rex. He's not going for some crazy time. He's already pacing for sub 48 here. So we're going to see a lot of these safe plays coming in. And honestly, it I can I understand the sentiment. But my god, I would 100% I would fucking die doing this. <laughs> <laughs> a humble, I'm, humble I'm man. Yeah, I'm not a fan of playing safe. Like, I go for some of the stupidest risks. But uh, I also get the biggest fucking chins, so... We that's, see Adwam go for a few chins himself there on the mage from way downtown. Ultimate to go for the chin, the three tick weapon to kill the mage and ends up having to throw five of them to take it down. It's it's really a shame because it, that is the optimal thing to do, believe it or not. Most of the time you would expect that chins aren't, aren't that good, but when it has like, um, I want to say, if I remember correctly, it was under 12 health then it's, it's actually worth throwing the chin because in situations like that, he can't he can't reliably get up close to blowpipe it. And it's just not worth sending the whole the whole Tebow. But something that we do have to incorporate into the calcs is that uh, the chins lose 25% of their accuracy if you're not hitting from the correct range. So there, I guess the only thing he could have really done better was to try and get like seven tiles with him. So he'd be in the optimal distance, but... Outside of that, like that, I would chalk that up as probably one of the more optimal plays to do there, even though it doesn't look like it. We are going to see say... the South Pillar go down here and a 26 minute, five second wave split for wave 50. 2605 is actually very nice, like with, assuming he doesn't choke, like, I mean, if he gets if he gets lucky, he could even sub forty eight off of this. Like, and I I think it'd be very hard pressed for him to uh for anyone to find a time better than like forty seven something during this. I mean, we already saw earlier with most of the completions are very very concise. Like, they're all within I want to say forty nine thirty forty nine thirty and like forty eight fifty, right? Which I have to say, uh, the fact that Stooge got the forty eight fifty is I'm very pleasantly surprised. Stooge is one of the uh, Probably the most fucking entertaining Inferno speedrunner out here. He's also really shit at drawing. But <laughs> it's, I think anyone who's in a, who's an Inferno speedrunner will know that Stooge is probably the people's champ. He's the ditter bitter, except he's not in Amsterdam fucking the hooker right now. So it's, like, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty good. I will say, ooh, bit of a started one. He's not ready, but doesn't get punished. We'll take that. He might go for this uh, this chin with the with the blob. Although I think um, the fact that he has to blowpipe this ranger is going to stop it a little bit because most of the time when you're setting up this sort of chin, you have to keep the ranger with high health. Now, what's the reason for that? Uh, you the one of the main aspects of Inferno speedrunning is having something to hit during blobs, like to to get fast at it. You always need to have something to hit during blobs because every blob death animation <coughs> averages out to be about four ticks. And you, you already know how many blobs there are, right? There's like fucking... Over the course of the speedrun, you're probably going to kill 50, 60, right? And if you lose 2.4 seconds for every blob that you don't that you don't kill, if you just sat there, you know, AFKing, it's like, oh man, you're, you're losing minutes. You're losing minutes on your time by not doing it. So it's like a lot of a lot of this extremely high level inferno speedrunning is finding finding positions where you can keep something alive long enough for you to hit it twice with your blowpipe during that. Now throwing a chin can also be like a decent substitute, but it's not anywhere near as good as double blowpipe. Some of the main things you'll see is like it, all of these good speedrunner speedrunners will always try and keep two blowpipes whenever they um whenever they're speedrunning. Quite a few blobs in the Inferno. Unfortunately, I don't know how they work. Uh, I did buy my Inferno yeah. cape myself, so 
Didn't even need to bother learning that one, Hemis. If I'm honest, I don't know how they work either. <laughs> yeah, in the in the words of Tyler Bachelor, we fucking we just guess it's 50-50. <laughs> we just guess. The full government there. Tyler Bachelor was running the Inferno yesterday. Was he running the Inferno yesterday? So, uh, I I can't, I saw him at it, it is fight caves. Fight caves was I running yesterday. That's it. it. Yeah. Running the fight caves just, yesterday, taking that one down up against MCU for BDSM. Yeah, I mean, just proving that uh, you know the, we take the old Rex, man. That's that's my fucking guy out there. <laughs> he might have threatened to dox me, but who got doxed now, pussy? <laughs> <laughs> like, that's just how it goes. <laughs> now we see the players using the scythe. What kind of hit points are we looking at for them before they go for the hit? The scythe max hit probably around a 60, 70. Um, now the scythe max hit is actually like crazy high. Like most of the time you'll see one of the main questions is why, like, why is he scything? He has a, he has two way switch, three way switch, one way switch. Why are you scything? Right? It's like, you're not actually looking for like, it doesn't matter about the switches for the most part. Right? It's the fact that you're on task when you're looking at, when you're looking at like a fucking, a ranger, right? It's got like, <laughs> I don't know, 50 defense. Like, that's nothing when you're on task. And if you're potted and, and you have piety on, you can actually reliably scythe in this setup 46 health, right? 46 health and you're, you'll are you kill it probably two out of three times. So it, it's, it, oh my god, that run toggle was beautiful. Although I missed a couple ticks doing it. Looking like a, looking like a Jimmy tweet. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jimmy, I had to do that. But um, it was fucking... <laughs> We do like see in... the three-way off tick here for the boys. For the fucking boys. Can we get some for the boys in the chat? <laughs> oh, FTB. Hit a FTB tab in chat, please. For the boys. But I will say, um, this was a... Uh, is that a 3216? So he's kind of kept up the pace. He's lost a little bit of it, but... I, will, I am curious to see if he'll repot. The main thing about, about the scythe is... So like even with a one way, you can reliably scythe 35, chalk it up to 35, right? So it's still incredibly strong with just a one way and a super combat. But you, the main thing is you need to be potted, you need to have piety on. If you're scything without piety, you're just fucking trolling, right? Like you're probably not going to hit. It's the same thing with rigor. Like if you look, if you were to run it in a calc, me with, I could be fucking running out with a, a rune scimitar. I could have a rune scimitar and piety, and I'd be doing more damage than you if you had a whip with no piety, right? Like, it's that big of a difference. And it's that's that's why whenever people are telling you, oh, you know, how do I get the Grandmaster Inferno time, right? Stay potted, be, have rigor on. Rigor, rigor, rigor. Piety, piety, piety. Any of those prayers, they need to come on first priority every time. It's the same as doing like a one-way, seven-way switch, right? It's it's a one way switch that literally has the has the DPS increase of like seven switches. Yeah, you so see you, uh, you see some of those calcs sometimes. Um, like a one way switch into a Tebow with rigor is a way bigger DPS increase than a seven way switch without it. Hundred percent, and that's why like it's one of the the keys to speed running to just always make sure you have that prayer on, always make sure that. It, whether it's range, mage, fuck mage, but range, range or melee, you always need piety, you need rigor on. If you're scything without piety, you're trolling. If you're scything unpotted, sucks, but, you know, like, whatever, at least you have piety on. So as long as you have that one way, like, I can reliably scythe a ranger from 35 health if I want to, right? It's a one-way switch, but because I'm on task, because I'm potted, because I have piety on, it's that good. So... I guess that's kind of one of the things I wanted to touch on with um, the the scythe tech is like, once you get good with it, you're not just sitting here scything for, like people will tell you, oh, you know, I get the overkill and I, I save the, uh, the projectile distance. That's cool, but the main time save is really just scything for damage. It's your last hit weapon. It's like AGS specking the last monster, right? You're gonna, you're gonna hit 50, whereas like, a blowpipe, what were you going to hit? You're probably going to hit like a 20 on average, right? 
So the main time save is you get your last weapon becomes so strong that you're actually killing it blowpipes, like multiple blowpipes ahead of what you would have done. Holy fuck. Oh! See some big damage coming in there for Adwa. I'm a 42 and a 24 in the same tick. And he has gone down to around 25, 30 hit points here. Going into wave 61. Oh, oh! We're catching a death here. We might be catching a death here. He is down to one hit point here. Can he manage to stay alive? Adwam, one of the best Inferno specialists in the game, the current world record holder, sat on a singular hit point here on wave 61 and still flicking multiple minions at the same time. He's going to be forced to lose time here no matter what. Pray to God that he doesn't get the respawn. It's one hit away. Oof, he lucks out. On one health, I... <laughs> Can I just say, the nerves to not brew on any of that is beautiful. <laughs> Solves the whole wave, stays potted the whole time. That's the nerves that you need when you're, well, when you're a top level Inferno speedrunner, right? You need to not panic when you're on 10 health. As long as you keep flicking everything, you're fine, unless he dies to these mini blobs right here. Holy fuck. It's the redemption flick in the middle of that. The kick on the mage minion as well. The mini blob. He is going to take a hit here, but he did get the tick heal from the blood barrage. That's needs, something we haven't he touched needs on. To kill these nibblers right now. Oh my god, <laughs> this is this is going to be a tight one. Oh my god, the melee can hit fifties from the mage. That is a chance there for Adwam on the mage. It's very lucky not to die there. You see, he's already back. He's already composed again, though. You see, the beauty of standing in this spot is that when the melee digs. As it digs right now, boom, instant corner safe spotted, right? As long as you stand one tile northwest of any pillar, any monster that's stationary, as long as the melee digs, all you have to do is diagonal step, you're out of there, right? This melee is it's trapped. So he's he's managed to stay composed in this in this honestly crazy situation. That's beautiful. I hope he did that on purpose. That was very nice there. <laughs> Big shin yeah. into a big scythe, hitting the melee and the mini blob at the same time. Beautiful. <laughs> pretty pretty good spawn too. I think a lot of people will tell you, ooh, although he's come around to the to the other side because of uh because of the nipplers, but a lot of people generally perceive 63 as like a very difficult wave. Once you become an Inferno speedrunner, like it's it's actually not that bad because all you have to do is safe spot the melee, and then all the other things should just be naturally flipped. You've been doing them for the past 10 waves, right? So here we're going to see, like, this wave is really not all that hard for him. Although I will say, <laughs> it might be a little bit more nervous for him because he knows he only has one chance. He's on 10 health and stuff, but I, I'm honestly a little bit surprised because a lot of people will tell you, you don't need to use Ice Barrage, right? Ice Barrage is shit. I never use Ice Barrage. Personally, I think it's very good for situations like this where your pillar has like 10 health. Ice Barrage can extend that pillar that has maybe 10 health into a pillar that lasts four or five waves, right? But because he's been, you know, hard chanced so frequently lately, he's he's just been forced into blood barraging every wave or else he gets potentially one hit. We well, like, see, we can see that like, pillar right? there on yeah, one hit point. That's one hit away from dying. It's crazy. And he is going to be coming into wave 65 next. Has Adwam ever completed a no pillar inferno? Uh, I I would be very, very surprised if he hasn't. He's, oh shit, is he going to go for the chin? A <laughs> big chin, big Emmys! This fucking man. <laughs> this big fucking man, dude. A little, bit, a little bit lackluster with the hits. But on paper, this is supposed to be better. Because of the blowpipe nerf. If it wasn't for the blowpipe nerf, yeah, we'll see him just do this. We'll have to see. Scythe. I mean, Speaking in a situation of... like that, you've got to be going for the chin. Is he going to, uh, is the pillar going to live? Oh, that's free off tick. It doesn't matter if the pillar dies or not. Oh, <laughs> the pillar he's gonna, survives! He's going to keep it alive for the next for the next wave too to try and get the collapse. That's beautiful. Now speaking of the I pillar health, I uh, I was wondering one day. I was at Runefest and I ran into Mod Kieran, and I asked him. I said, "Do the pillars and the Zuck Shield in 
uh, in the Inferno. Do they respawn hit points the same way monsters and players do? And Mod Kieran with a Heineken in each hand, as drunk of I've, as I've ever seen anyone, says, I can't remember if I fucking coded it or not. <laughs> and that was it. We'll never find out. You'd never believe that that man was one of the OGs of the fucking RuneScape community out here. Oh, well, even... Can he, can he lure it? It might go down before it even... Oh, perfect. Oh, perfect God, the timing there. Got it. A nice little 72 from that pillar going down. And Adwan with a 40-52 going into wave 66. That is that is actually very good. We're gonna. I'd be hard pressed to see this turn out to be less. Oh, okay. Oh shit. <laughs> yeah, I was scared about that. That's kind of the problem with when he's trying to. Uh... Oh well, that, that's not that big of a time loss. Maybe 10 seconds or so. Nothing too bad. Definitely still very much pacing. So, uh, if you want in <laughs> a pretty decent guess about sub 50, let's say you want to you want to enter Zuck at. 43 minutes. I think that's pretty standard. From 63, you're looking at about 10 minutes from there. So you can see he's already pacing for potentially sub 40, sub 47 here, right? That's a beautiful chin setup. Now oh. you see he even keeps the buckler on, right? Because it's when you're chinning the healers that are on the corner of the of Jad, you're use you're chinning it chinning Jad based off of the healer's defense. So when you have that buckler on, you're getting that 10 extra range at you're getting the 10 extra range strength. The 18 extra range accuracy, right? And that means that you can actually chin Jad for damage. Like if Jad is on 10 health, let's say, it's better to chin a healer next to Jad than it is to actually T-bow it. Just and because it has so much fucking defense. Right? That is why kind of we are. see the players stand in the corner that they stand on there. I believe it's the northwest corner to get the healers trapped on the southwest because... Uh, Monsters that are stood on the southwest tile of another monster that is bigger than a one by one. That is the tile that need to be stood on in order for those AOE damage uh, weapons in the game to deal damage to that monster. You see again there with the chin in this triple Jad uh, doing damage to Jad as well as the healers. Beautiful spawn too. Like doesn't have to tank anything. He's not going to lose his health. He also gets the free damage on on Jad. He doesn't have to spend any extra ticks tagging with like another healer. <laughs> like this is on. Oh, like so this might be an example where it might have been even better to to chin that healer, for example. But we'll see. Here he's been very. Um, this is actually like pretty. Is this fast? And uh, no, never mind. This is just kind of average. So what you were saying just there is uh, it's higher accuracy to chin a healer than it is to Tebow Jad. Is that correct? Yeah, just because it's roll, it's rolling off of the, it's rolling off of the healer, so like you, st it, you might as well just be chinning another mini blob at that point, right? Yeah. Whereas like Jad, like even even though you have such insane accuracy on Jad, it's like his defense level is four fifty. Sometimes you get fucking three minute triples, right? Like it's, it, and sometimes you have one fifty eight, as we saw earlier from um from someone else. I can't quite remember who, but there's so much variance on Jad's. And this is why everybody's like, oh shit, you know, like Inferno speedrunning is the least RNG, but it's still RNG. You know, sometimes it takes you 10 minutes to get from uh, 63 to the end. Sometimes it takes you eight. Sometimes it takes you 12, right? Like there's still RNG at, at the end of the day. That is the nature of the game we play. I saw Adwam getting a little smite flick in there as well during the double jads, whilst also flicking the melee fair on. Absolutely ridiculous gameplay from this man. Gets two healers That's caught behind him there spawn. as well. Beautiful spawn. I think an underrated thing here is the the fact that he doesn't take any damage for it, right? Because a lot of people... Like, you might look at his supplies right now and you'd say, well, he's got a lot of food, right? And that's fine. But the, some of the things is... Wow, he, he really does have a lot of food. This is, this is a very optimal situation. I'd be surprised if he doesn't complete this right now. But ideally, when you enter Zuck, you want to reach about... Let's say 60 to 80 health. That way you can stay potted. Your blowpipe specs are going to heal you off of the ranger, right? And then you can be up to 99 because <laughs> your goal is to save as much range pot, as much brew as physically possible for your healer skip. So you don't want to brew up too early. You don't want to brew up too high. You want to save as much health as you can 
just to heal. You want to be 60 so that maybe if you get two massive blowpipe specs, I'm going to end up at full health, right? And then literally, I didn't have to touch a single brew. I get to keep all of it for the healer skip, and that'll maximize my chances of actually, well, not getting smoked here. Now, something so, we haven't seen in this tournament yet is the no set. What are the what are the odds, Hamis? What are the chances of getting a no set on a Zark? Getting the boss down to six hundred hit points before the first set spawns. Honestly, it's it's quite a crazy. Oh, can, uh, I will say he just tagged the. He tagged it with a, a blowpipe spec, which is a, a bit of a... You don't always see that because, like, the blowpipe spec moves at a different speed than the actual blowpipe projectile. So you see, the ranger right now is hitting him one tick away from the mage instead of two ticks away from the mage because he blowpipe spec. If he used a regular blowpipe projectile, it always takes the same amount of time. So they would have been set a nice, easy two ticks apart. But he's advanced enough that he blowpipe spec it first on the tag, he knows that they're one tick apart. He's now going to deal with it one tick apart. So that's that's just like another small niche detail to him. I will say he got pretty unlucky that he couldn't even deal like most of the damage in one rotation, but no big no big trouble to him. The no set is actually, in, it's, it's pretty rare, but with the introduction of the van braces and in soon with, oh, okay, good. Standard tag, he has it done fine. With the introduction of van braces and even mastery in the in the near future, we're gonna see right now. I think it's one in sixty-five approximately. But if you get uh, mastery equipped, it's gonna be like one in thirty. Right now, you'd be hard pressed to see a no set. But if we're looking in two months, let's say, you might be you, you might be shitting them out. You know, they might be coming out left and right. Yeah, one in sixty-five. That is a. Uh... Not the best chance at all. We're going to see healers tagged here already. Very quick Zuck here from Adwam. Oh my god. <laughs> the the little the little melee prayer had me scared for a second. But yeah, he's doing fine here. Zuck only goes back up to 235 hit points there after the healer proc. Really quick tag. 179 hit points to go. 48 minutes on the clock here for Adwam. Yeah, I don't. Uh, if he completes this, I don't. I I don't know if anyone's gonna beat this time. He's gonna go for a triple brew here because he doesn't. Uh, because his brew situation is looking a little bit sus. See range the damage pot. from the heal is coming out. One dose of range pot left for Adwam. Is he gonna go for another triple brew here? He doesn't. Ooh. Zuck goes down and he gets a forty-eight twenty-one point six. Disgusting, disgusting time. Insta gambles it. We all know he didn't get anything there, but that was some that was some high tier gaming. I think Osthod is gonna have they're gonna have their work cut out for them because that is not a time that I would say people should be super comfortable beating with one attempt. One attempt on the line. Not one completion, one attempt. You die, it's over. Yeah, 48 minutes there, a very quick time. Hootie Tootie, is that the fastest time we have seen in the competition so far? That is now the fastest time beating Stooges, the previous fastest time by 35 seconds. Wow, wow. So Oztob definitely going to have their work cut out for them here. We are going to be seeing MCU running the Inferno for them. We're not going to waste any time. We're going to jump straight on into it. We and say, uh, MCU has also my immense respect because um as a player he I, if i remember correctly he was the first player to sub 25 to wave 50 and that was a barrier that was very very hard pressed it was a barrier that i think even addy was struggling for a long time with and mcu was he was he was almost a pioneer to it you can see him right now taking this fucking weird ass setup with two two super combats this guy's crazy right he he, he doesn't even care about the the consistency on the skip he's he's <laughs> he's aggressive enough that he is going to bother with the scythe and taking two super combats and then he's going to noodle on the scythe or noodle on a bat three times so he's a very high tier player very aggressive i like his style he chins stuff probably more than i do right like he's known as the man when it comes to chins he sets up everything he's very very good and those chins been a huge time save this is the first time i have seen any mcu gameplay in this speed run cup and i gotta say the man is slick with it on the clicks 
Very, very smooth gameplay. We saw him yesterday in the fight caves, uh, taking in a six-way switch for his melee and is the current world record holder for the fight caves. So as you said, Hemis, the two super combats, loves his scythe, loves his melee, and uh, we're going to see a pretty interesting run here from him. I saw someone in the chat ask whether or not a fourth switch is better than a double super combat. To which I have to say, the double su the, it's almost the same thing, but I would chalk it up to the double super combat, if I'm honest. Because four, the four switch actually doesn't increase your max hits by that much. The main reason that makes that the, the three-way scythe is so good is because, like, compared to the two-way scythe, like, you know, scythe hits depreciate non-linearly, right? So, like, maybe... For, I could lose one max hit, but because it's on the on the big hit, like let's say I go from 42 to 41, right? Instead of hitting uh, 20, instead of hitting, let's say 24, 23, or sorry, 24, 12, sorry, 42, whatever you get, you get what I'm saying, like 48, 24, and then 12, right? Maybe it goes down to 47, 23, 11, and you lose like three max hits for it, right? So like the three-way scythe is one of those big gaps where you kind of need that, uh, where it's just a big jump in your DPS by taking the three-way switch. By taking the four-way, you don't get as big of a jump. You only get two max hits for it. It's not that big. It's not that noticeable. So keeping that is, um, the four-way scythe is actually not that good. Uh, but, I can't lie to you here, Hammies. You literally lost me at non-linearly. How do you, I can't even say that word, let alone what? This is insane knowledge Hammies is dropping here, guys. Wow. I'm, on, I'm taking this from, th this is the work of, you know, multiple, multiple people, you know, a lot of people, a lot of, a lot of nerds, a lot of nerds like me just playing this fucking game too much, you know, and you can catch all of our data. You don't have to learn it. You can just, you can just get the boiled down version if you're at the Inferno speedrun discord, you know, discord.gg slash suck. All the Inferno runners are here. It's, it, it shows the, the collection of and like everything that everybody has tried to figure out. So if you do want an Inferno speedrun, I would strongly advise going over there. You know, tons of people doing it. It's very pog. And that is something that, uh, you know, we kind of just expect out of the old school RuneScape community at the moment. The theory crafting from these players uh, definitely outweighs the gameplay. We see some Lewis very, Chen. very Lewis smart. Chen. Oh, never mind. Fuck. No, Sean. <laughs> Oh, no, no. What's going on, MCU? Come on. Yeah, the <laughs> yeah. theory crafting definitely outweighing the gameplay uh, from the old school RuneScape community. And you see some very interesting strats and some very smart gamers picking out those time saves. It's like these, it's these cult-like games that have a have a niche following over multiple years, right? It's like like Super Smash Bros. Melee, for example, has like a, a great scene as well. The, just people these old games that everybody thinks like, oh, who the fuck would play that? It's like, there's there's a there's a great passionate community about it. But we'll, it we'll, we'll get back onto the, uh, the gameplay. I will say the, the double super combat, I think the one good thing about it is, so normally one super combat doesn't last you the entire run. You don't pot for the waves with 35 to 50 because there's, you know, there's no ranger, it's just melees and mages. And melees and mages are the, the least effective things to scythe. As you can see right there, he noodles on three-way on a fucking melee because it has so much defense. So the the benefit of this is that, like you can actually stay potted the entire time, which is cool. He's gonna hit this chin, this is pretty free. Whew! Ooh. I'm lucky you didn't get to kill it, but it is what it is. So, oh, a 39 oh there from the melee. MCU going down to 23 hit points and is going to try and set up a chin here with the melee on the mini blobs. Spends a lot of time trying to set... Still watching it. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking crazy. Set a lot of time setting up that chin, but does get the big chin indeed. And that is something you mentioned about MCU. Uh, you said he sets up chins even more than you do. You're the man that's invented the big chin himself. And we see that a lot in the early waves here from MCU. Oh my god. He doesn't get a heal off. So here's the thing, like, <laughs> people, I think people who don't speedrun don't picture wave 15 as that dangerous of a wave. But it's, it is dangerous, especially to learn new runners, but for old runners, like, you'll see, it's not, it's not particularly dangerous for him here. 
is what most people would think. But the thing is, these mini blobs can just destroy him, right? Because when you're playing efficiently, like, you're just forced into these situations where you can't heal. He blood brush, he didn't even get any heals off of it, right? Like, these mini blobs, I would say he's pretty lucky here to not take more damage than he already did. Yeah, we he saw him right sat there, there on 25 or so hit hand. points. 25 hit points against two mini blobs, having to pray melee against the range and the mage. That's chanceable hit points there. And he manages yeah. to survive going through. But as he said, that is something you'll see from these players that are speed running. Sometimes you're going to have to sit on those low hit points and risk it for the biscuit. Nice little chin over there. I will say he's he's at wave 18. He's gone through three doses of super combat. That is not fun. The, the, I would say right now we could uh, we can probably expect Adam to be he'd be rubbing his hands together right now. You know, this, this is a good sign for Turbo PVM. Very unfortunate for MCU not to get those blood barrages off. But we are coming into wave 18 with a 647 split, Hemis. And we saw Adwan with a 607 at this point. So very early on, 40 seconds behind already. Generally speaking, I, I tell most people that early, like your early splits do not matter that much. But that's a big enough gap that like, it, it, he can still come back from it. There, make, you know, make no mistake about that. He can definitely make a comeback, but... Being down 40 seconds, almost a minute, like in the first 18 waves, the waves that almost don't even matter. It's like this is a, he's going to need to do some big moves like that size right there. If he size like that the entire time, he can, he can pull it back, but it's definitely a tough challenge right now. We see him back up to 79 hit points here. The blood barrage is going in. The blood fury with the three-way switch on that side making a lot of difference. As Hemi was saying, he'd prefer to see people going with the Ferocious Gloves only rather than the Blood Fury, but we see players going in with that three-way switch to get some big sights off and probably going to see players uh, trying to scythe from consistently around 46 hit points, Hemi. You know, I will say, like, I, I am questioning the, the use of the three or the two super combats. It's... I do think there were, there are better switches he could probably take here, but uh, seeing as how he completed the last run, and if I remember correctly, he even beat out Addy. Like, uh, I'll trust in his judgment, as he, as he is a very good runner. The first player to I do, uh, I think I already mentioned it, but the first player to sub twenty five is that's no joke. You know, that's that's a real, a real accomplishment right there. You'll see he leaves the bat alive here. Now this is something like a lot of Inferno speedrunners don't do, and it it irks me, because like even in my guide I try and cover it, but leaving monsters alive that walk towards you is very very important if you don't want to lose time because like what's he gonna do here, right? There's two monsters 15 miles away from each other. The only the only thing you have to not lose any ticks here is to leave the stuff alive that walks towards you. You have to leave these bats alive. And even at the cost of maybe losing, you know, maybe the bats are going to make you lose like 10 health, 20 health if you're unlucky, right? Like, if you want to go fast, that's what you need to do. And that's exactly what he's doing for a run where he needs to beat 48, 20, which is so, I mean, this is, this is good signs. He's playing exactly how he should if he wants to, well, if he wants to, to beat to beat Adam's time, you know. And he does have a very, very hard time to beat. As you said, players in these speed runs in the Inferno, not only gonna have to focus on their switches, but also the order in which they kill the NPCs. There's so much that goes into these speed runs and uh, a lot that these players have to focus on when they're inside these runs. This is a perfect example of um, just getting unlucky with mini blobs. Like, I don't know if you guys are paying attention right there. He lost 40 health to some fucking mini blobs, right? There's not a thing he could have done there, right? So he had to pray against the he had to pray against the big blob, he had to pray against the ranger. This lit oh my god, this is probably the most this is this is a terrible way for him. He's lost probably I want to chalk it up to like 60 health, largely not to his own fault at all. That We're is... gonna see a 1026. That is I'm not gonna lie, that's abysmal. That is fucking abysmal. <laughs> That is very, very terrible. And, well, sorry, that's terrible for his standards. If you're getting that, you're already pacing for, I want to say, Oblivion Diary right now. 
So it's actually a good time. But for him, this is going to be a tough recovery. I'd say he... Between splits of 647, like he... I think he lost time. Which So this is, this is going to be a little bit rough. His play is kind of deteriorating right here. Personally, I would say you have to run towards the Ranger on that. On that specific solve. Yeah, I'm sure there's a few people... You know, sat in the chat saying abysmal. You know, this is uh, this is really quick, but uh, <laughs> this kid's a fucking English major. Yeah. <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, we are in the speed run cup. This is the best of the best, the biggest PVM tournament in old school RuneScape. You would expect players uh, to be putting on their best efforts and uh, not seeing the best out of MCU here. A little bit of bad Big RNG. Man. That was a good play right there. So you'll see something that um, maybe maybe a standard sub 50 or might have sat there north of the ranger and just you know and just started killing the killing the melee right because it was safe spotted. But he voluntarily went out of his way to go in, <coughs> flick the range and the melee, so the bat gets safe spotted because it's actually better to have the bat last than it is to have the melee, or it's better to have the bat than it is to have the uh, the ranger. Sorry. So like by doing that, he's actually managed to. Save save himself extra time at the expense of you know just being being more dangerous with it and you know flicking this melee instead of just being like taking the safe way out and saying oh you know I'm I'm just gonna safe spot stuff. That's the level of play that you need to have when you reach these fast times because if I if I remember correctly MCU has a sub forty six now. He's a very very high level player. Now you mentioned. Ooh, you. Um... You mentioned safe spotting the bat there. Does the stat drain of the bats come into play at all? It it will for the the mage waves, so the mage equivalent of these waves. But for the time being, he's usually fine because because he's playing range against the ranger anyway. But the stat drain it it matters a bit depending on how many times he gets drained. With blowpipe, it's not particularly important. But with the Tebow, it's it's probably the most frustrating thing you can have. That's unlucky. It didn't die. We're going to see he gets this specific path he uses to double blowpipe the ranger. You can only do it from this tile or you can pull back a little bit because you uh, you don't get dragged into it. But you'll see like this is just another aspect of being a top player. Always make sure you, always making sure you get a double blowpipe instead of getting just, you know, a single chin, right? But um, with, with the Tebow, I do believe your max hit goes down by three. If you get drained one time, right? So, like what? You want to do the calcs test. Like, you lose 4% of your DPS because you got drained a single time by a bat, right? It's probably one of the most annoying things that can happen to you once you're late waves. Ooh, corner trap because the bat animation didn't finish. He's going to brew here very early, if I'm honest. I mean, kind of necessary, I understand it, but... You know, not something he's really looking forward to. Yeah, I believe he had to tick eat the ranger there um, with the brew. Uh, wave 30 sat on two and a half brews. We saw Adwan go into Zuck earlier with three brews in the inventory. So not the best here for MCU at the start. He's already down to three doses of super combat as well. And just the one sure. range part in the inventory. Right now, this is he's about where like he's let's say uh, got a little bit more super combat than someone would regularly have. So he's he's basically blown through four doses, which is uh, which is you know crazy. Because I mean, it, it just goes to show that like he made a good call, right? Because that super combat does matter a lot when it comes to your time save. But it's it's definitely not it's not looking too good right now. Not looking too good for MCU. We see 15 minutes on the clock coming up. He's currently on wave 31. And just to put that in perspective, Adwan went into wave 35 with a 1507 split. So we see 1507 go past here for MCU. And he's just out of wave 32. So he's going to be very, very far behind Adwan on this mm. wave 35 split. I'm not gonna lie. This probably I would not be surprised if this is the slowest run that MCU has had. Like if he ran for if he ran for like two weeks straight doing like three tasks every day, this probably would be the slowest run. Like this is pretty unlucky because this is gonna be like 16, maybe even 17 if it takes a while. Like, this is really, really they're in dire straits right now. 
not looking good for MCU and for Oz Tob. They're already down by one point up against Turbo PVM in this third place playoff. Uh, losing Going the tick two. Oh. losing the challenge mode solo by a singular tick. And this is a best of three. So if they do lose the Inferno here, which is looking quite likely at this point, there is still a chance, obviously. But if they do lose the Inferno, they're going to be down 2 nil in the third place playoff. And third place, obviously, getting a nice little cut of that prize pool. Fourth place, going home with nothing. God, nothing. How much... Um, oh, so what's, what's, the, what's the distribution between looking... So the currently the prize pool is up to 2.1 bill now. And I believe the oh. dis distribution is going to be a 70, 20, 10. Is that correct, Tootie Tootie? That is incorrect, actually, on both parts. It's now, we're now up to 2.2 bill for the prize pool. Another couple donations coming in. And, and first place will be taking home 60%. Second will be 30. And third place will be getting that 10% split. There you go. Another there you one. go. It's still big big moves to be made even as a third place even if you get third place that's still a lot of money when we're talking that much and it also like that's not that's not to exclude the fact that we might receive more donations you know later on so this is this is high stakes games right here you know this means a lot right now yeah 200 mil 10 percent for that third place finish nothing to be scoffed at bigger than most people's bank in this game I would say 90% of the chat, sub 100 mil. But even though they have less than 100 mil in their bank account, Hemis, I think they probably know a bit more about the Inferno than both of us. I would, I would, oh shit. We, uh, yeah, you know, ch chuck some of that off though. <laughs> I'll, I'll, <laughs> I will say, th you, you saw him right there. I think he just repotted really early on. And that's literally because of the the exact reason we were discussing earlier the um the bat drain right so staying staying 112 range is incredibly important because you know the, if you lose a bit of accuracy and three max hits for x number of waves it's like that could be the difference between you know taking one bow two bows extra on one wave and then it, let's say it happens three times maybe you lose 30 seconds just because of it if you get unlucky right yeah, and making sure 30 you stay seconds potted, is a lot. It's very important when you reach these extremely fast time segments. But it's also incredibly aids because, <laughs> you know, you only have so many divines. Every time you divine, you lose 10 health for it. It's 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 not a fun meta, the, the meta we currently uh, have for Inferno speedrunning. Yeah, the, we see, uh, as you said there, 30 second time loss, massive, when every single tick counts. We've seen twice in this tournament, uh, a team winning a boss by one singular tick. And then yesterday in the semi-final matchup, we saw a Tebow there on the Nibbler. Obviously didn't realize that his chins weren't equipped, uh, but we did see yesterday uh, in the Oztob BDSM matchup, there was a tie, an exact tie, same time for the nightmare, a 508.4. So every tick counts and 30 seconds is a huge deficit. That's ridiculous. I wasn't there for that. I, I, I remember seeing the Vorkath time and I was already freaking out where over the course of 10, it was fucking one tick. And I was like, there's no way that's just happened in the biggest tournament, the biggest fucking tournament. And they lose it to one tick. Oh, Absolutely no. crazy. Yeah, Hootie told me before I came in. Obviously, I haven't seen any of this done. Hootie was officiating the whole tournament, so I have no idea the results of anything. He's the only person in the world right now that knows the results, and he said going in that some crazy stuff happened. And after I saw that one tick on Vorkarth, I thought that was it. Uh, but we did see an exact draw on Nightmare yesterday, Hemis. We saw Oz Tob get a 508.4, and I thought that was it. That was 3-3 in the semi-finals, and I thought, no shot that uh, BDSM takes that one, and we see a redemption flick come up accidentally here for Ooh. MCU. Managed to only take a 16 from the mage, though. A little bit shaky yeah, yeah, here on wave 41. Honestly, I, I can't tell if it's because, um, it, it, oh my god, the mage is not dead either. Should still be fine. That's the, okay, good, that's the finishing hit. We're gonna see he's probably ignoring this melee blob. Chins those. Gonna pop this one. 
Okay, it's not dying. I, I would be pretty angry right now. <laughs> Dies, yep, he just lures it back in. Another aspect of, oh, being a very, uh, the high level Inferno speedrunners, you know, it's not about the damage. Fuck the damage, you know, prayer flick everything. You should be able to live on 10 health. If you have to take some extra damage to save some extra ticks, that's the play that he's going to be going for. But 21, he has he has made a little bit of time back. 21 is still not good at all, but it is um I would I would definitely chalk it up faster than 1625. If we look at the uh the time, so let's see. 440. Ah. 4 it, it's 440 is pretty bad for but for 35 to 42, he's not been getting very good RNG. Yeah, we it's see some pretty bad shame, RNG yeah. here for MCU. In the last wave, the Major not going down, the Blob not going down to several hits, and then uh, running in to get the chin on the mini Blobs, the melee pathing as well, getting out of the way of the other two. So missing the chin, the fortune, instead of only getting the three. Uh, some pretty bad RNG for MCU. That being said, he already had a very, very good time for, uh, from Adwam to beat a 48-21. So had his work cut out for him and the RNG not helping him out at all. I, I don't want to cut him out just yet because, um, you know, as I said before, the, the late waves are the ones that matter the most. The early waves, as hard as, as, hard as they are to play, like it's the time save you get from them is is definitely not the most important when you compare it to the late waves, but you know, his, he's definitely got a tough fight, but I would say you can't really gauge how quick this is going to be until we get to 60, until we get to 63. 50 is a good, 50 is a good indicator. 57 is an even better one because then that's, that's where you get a lot of your time safe. But 63 is where we get to really say like, okay, add 10 minutes. That's probably where it's going to be. You can still get very lucky with triples, you know, if you get those 150 triples, you're going to be freaking out, right? If you're getting a, a 30 second jad, a 30 second double mage, like maybe you get that pillar collapse too, right? You can, you can save a lot of time or fuck, maybe even get a no set, right? You'll save a lot of time there, but most of the time, 10 minutes after 63, that's a good guess of what your, uh, what your final completion is going to look like. Yeah, absolutely. We're talking about all these time saves here uh, with all these different methods. You briefly mentioned before the Missouri armor that's going to be coming with Rage 3. Is there any other items we might see from Rage 3, potentially even that four slot room pouch that uh, might be helping out with these Inferno speedruns? Four slot room pouch is probably going to be nice for thralls, but can we just take a look at this fucking nasty Kelvino flicker? God damn, that was crazy. Oh, unlucky, but... He'll lose two ticks for it. Three ticks, oh, unlucky. But at least he gets Jin off. <laughs> but we're looking to uh, we're looking to see some some big advancements in the Inferno speedrunning with uh, with raids three. We're expecting that people are going to use the light bearer with thralls, and then you're you're just gonna. So currently, uh, the thrall meta is to usually take a, a mage cape so you can swap back to ancients for fifty plus because if you're well, it's just not it's not as consistent when you have to deal from 50 all the way to 65 with no blood brush, right? You've seen how many times uh, the, that blood brush to keep that we were talking about earlier just saves you from dying or even if not dying, brewing, right? Because like if you're pacing, you, the last thing you want to do is lose it to bad RNG, the ranger spawned up close, right? So having that blood brush to keep stops you from stops you from brewing because you know you're not going to die out if you get chance there and that that is such a big deal because that brew means i can save that brew for healer skip you know now i get my healer skip because of it this is a weird solve um holy fuck oh my god that guy's <laughs> crazy what the hell uh fair enough yeah i didn't realize he pulled over to one tick for the other side to drag the mage in but oh wait no sorry i'm brain dead no this this just works yeah, no, I forgot there is a tile here that it does work. But, um, <laughs> like, not not being forced to brew matters so much. You keep your pots, you know, you can save it for the healer skip. You don't have to take 10 extra damage for redivining. It's, it's, it's a world of difference. But with the introduction of the light bearer, the ring that makes it so you have... Ooh, good weight. He might have tanked the uh, mage hit if he prayed too early, but he didn't. 
So with the light bear, you're going to be getting extra spec. What? I, I think it's 10% every 15 seconds or something. Yeah. So you're the light be bear, I believe, is going to double the regeneration rate of your special attack. So every 30 seconds, you normally get 10% back. So um, every 30 seconds, you get 20% back instead. I think it's every 15 is... seconds, you get the 10. Oh, I believe, really? I believe that's so what it is. So it triples the regen rate then. Oh wait, no, sorry. It, it whatever you said, it halves the time. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't double your recharge. It it um halves. Oh the yeah, time yeah. It so takes. It just, it's just twice as often. right. Gotcha, gotcha. That you see, that is still really good because already when you're doing a thrall run, you're you're sitting here, you're living purely off of your blowpipe specs for the most part. You can get some redemptions, but you know, <laughs> ideally you're not low enough health to trigger redemptions. You know, you can get some uh, some blood barrages later, but. For the first 50 waves, most of what you're living off of is just blowpipe specs, right? So doubling up is is a big thing, especially when you incorporate the fact that you're going to have mastery, you're going to be hitting harder, you're going to be more accurate, because right now a lot of people lose thrall runs. Be oh, okay, good. A lot of people lose their thrall runs because they just, you know, like they spec, they hit a zero. They spec, they hit a zero. They spec, they hit a zero. Across 10 waves, those mini blobs, those bats, they chip away at your health nothing you can do you're just gonna die so with having mastery and having the light bear you're gonna be able to you know your specs hit harder they're more accurate and you get more of them and that's gonna make basically pure thrall just viable because you won't have you don't need the blood barrage anymore right you just heal more now but i do have another question we're... but just quickly um we see someone in the chat say do you guys even know what you're talking about do you even have an infernal cape my friend Enjoy the perm. Uh, but my next question was going to be, um, will we see players bring in the death charge as well? You get extra 15% uh, special attack back uh, every minute with the death charge. Yeah, so currently we're, we're, using, um, we're using death charge with uh, taking in a, a trident of the swamp, which allows you to, you know, you uncharge it, you get the fucking... You get all these runes that allow you to summon your thralls. You have the runes for death charge, and you're just chilling. With four rune, with four runes in the rune pouch, I don't know if that's going to offer anything different. But definitely, currently, um, with with pure thrall setup, because you don't need that mage cape, because you don't need that blood barrage anymore, what you can do. Oh, oh nice chin. Is he's going to lift? Oh, that is a big one. What the big fuck? chin? That's fucking big. <laughs> but like he'll. What we'll probably see is people taking in soul bearers because the soul bear uh currently when you run a pure thrall setup you take in a soul bear it holds a thousand blood runes it has a, a thousand soul runes as well and that's that's what you need for i believe death charge and, and the other one so it's, it's pretty good now we see the current world record for adlam sat at i believe 44 33 is that correct i i don't know i just know faster than mean by like oh 38 <laughs> I, uh, I need to take every opportunity i can to flame people better than me so of course of course yeah. uh with the with the raids three rewards coming out what are we expecting that time to get down to if i'm honest so the the jump like on paper <laughs> these things are these things are crazy because on paper the van braces was a 40 second time save but there's I think mastery is a little bit stronger than that. But the thing here is it you can't just chalk it up on paper because th there's effects to there's effects to making it easier to play, right? So like even though van braces were on paper 40 second time save, like the times jumped up by minutes, right? It, it got minutes faster. It was the same thing with scythe 40 second time save, but what you see reflected in the actual times for world record is they go up so much faster because it's easier to play it's easier to play the inferno when you're killing everything fast right you don't get forced into as shit situations you don't get these scenarios where like nothing dies and you're sat here like being put into like really shit positions really maybe you assumed something was dead but it didn't die and then you're sat there like oh well i thought it died oh my god He's taking that. Got a little too eager. He should have taken a couple steps north. But um, I will say right now, forced to be being forced into a pillar off tick is almost never good. 
but his his potion predicament is probably the most scary thing out of everything. He's gone through half of his range pot. He's sipped his divine multiple times. He's got three doses of divine. He's only on fifty wave fifty four, right? Like. This yeah. is a bit of a problem. We see going into wave 50 at a 2735 split, and it was a 2605 for Adwam. So 90 seconds behind going into wave 50. And as you said, the potion predicament not looking too good. We only see two doses of that range pot left, which means we're pretty unlikely to see the healer skip as well, Hemis. Yeah, that 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 is probably the biggest predicament out of everything. 2735, a player as good as MCU, like the top players can make comebacks from that. You know, top players can turn 27, 2735 is generally accepted right now as sub 50 material. So like probably like 49, 30. If you're really good, you know, you don't troll any of your late waves, you get good bosses, you get good, you know, good bosses, good triples, good suck. Yeah, maybe you, maybe you get like low 48 off of that. That's, that's pretty good. But like the fact that he does not have the bruise for this healer skip is, is the thing that's going to solidify this as, as you know, like, nigh impossible. Because without the healer skip, I feel like you're just forced to do so much extra time blowpiping down these healers, and it's 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 not going to be fun. Yeah, and uh, you would think that if going into this, um, MCU knew the time from Abwam, he might just send it, just risk it, try and get that healer skip anyway, but... Uh, neither player knew the time from the other player going into this. So uh, MCU has no idea what Adwam's time is going into this and uh, we probably won't see him send it. He'll probably play it safe and that's going to cost him the time. But anything can happen, Hemis. We did see MCU with a 155 triples yesterday. So if any man can get the RNG, it's MCU. I, w yeah, I would not put it past him too, because definitely, uh, I, I, I don't get the feeling that MCU is, 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 a, uh, is a very safe player. I heard that, uh, I heard, oh, what was it? Did, did T-Bach, it was, it was Mr. Tyler, the one who uh, killed the mage? Did he? Uh, yeah, I believe we did see someone kill the mage. It might have been T Batch. Uh, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, mage killers. Oh, I'm going to be correct if you kill the mage. I'll tell you right now. But definitely, um, yeah, like MCU, I even though it's probably the reasonable assumption to to not go for a healer skip with two dose range pot, I would say he something about him rubs me the way that says like he's he's just gonna say fuck it, just gonna, gonna, be like, I don't just gonna it. send it. Yeah, he's, right. someone tells me he's got the balls for it. <laughs> We'll have to see, because I know Oztob taking this tournament very, very seriously this year. Last year, um, not as serious as they would like. We've seen the chat. Uncle has just mentioned that their Inferno runner last year uh, stopped yes, mid-Inferno to go make a sandwich because his opponent told him that he died and he believed it. So... Yeah, I do remember that. <laughs> going into his run... Just assumed that he only had to get the key, the KC, when in reality his opponent had actually gotten a time. We see two melee hits off prayer there for MCU. I think it was same tick for the mage and the melee, which is a bit unfortunate. Gets the chin in the nice for the boys. We see the three-way oh, off tick for the boys. Gets him for the boys in the chat, guys. Come on. Throw him out there. Oh my god, nasty player. <laughs> I think he you you are right. He he same ticked them, I think a large part because he was just panicked there. He really wanted to get those nipplers and uh in the process of that he decided uh he just wanted to not lose ticks, even though he probably had to do another blowpipe to let the melee get closer. But you know, no punish. Uh you know what they say, uh almost doesn't mean shit, so that's exactly not punished, right. not dead, we'll fucking take it. Not a chance if you don't die, as they say in the biz. As we see him go down to 22 hit points here, off ticking the mage and the range. Cool, calm, and collected. Not worried at all here is MCU on 23 hit points. You see him once again step to this tile that's one uh, northwest of the of the big mage. And he's, uh, you know, that's just in case, like, if this melee digs, you'll see it's safe spotted. Now the mage is dead, doesn't have to worry about it. Even though it digs. Oh my god, that's a chin! There's no way he set that up intentionally. This guy is crazy. <laughs> this guy is crazy. 
Oh my god. The big chin enemies! I do not hit those. Holy fuck. I, I don't hit those. Like, I just gotta admit it. I, I'm not that good. Shit. Absolutely Pally. insane. As far as I'm aware, John Pilly, Atty, and uh, well, MCU are probably the only ones that I know that can consistently set that one up. Absolutely but, insane uh, gameplay. We did see a little three way off tick there for one second. And uh, MCU putting on an absolute clinic here as he hits his Divine Bastion Potion going back down to 23 hit points. Still cool, calm, and collected. Okay, so I will say he's... This is this is what I expected from uh, the top level players, right? This is why I always tell people your early splits don't matter, right? His early splits were looking like they are 50... Uh, fucking 52 minutes. Like, uh, you know, that's rough. 1026 is like a 52 minute run as far as I'm concerned. But his 60 is now, like, it's 35.53. It's on the slow side, but I want to say it's about 40 seconds behind a 40, a high 48. Maybe, like, 48.30. So, like, if he plays everything really good, if he gets really, really nice bosses, and he goes for the healer skip, he can pull it back with good enough bosses. He can genuinely pull it back if he gets nuts enough bosses. But, like, this, this is precisely why I always tell people, the early splits don't matter, right? He was, he was like easily five minutes behind pace before. And then now look at him. He's uh, like, this is, I mean, 35.53 with MCU on the wheel. 100% that's a sub 50 in my opinion. We see 37 minutes on the clock and Hemis is saying there's a chance, ladies and gentlemen. We could see him take this one down still. It's not looking likely, but it is definitely not over yet. A 48.21.6 to beat from Adwam, the fastest time we have seen in the speedrun cup so far. He's only got one pillar left, but it, it is very healthy. <laughs> Nothing, nothing suboptimal here. Normally, I would say if if players are particularly um like you'll see a lot of like maybe fresh sub fifty ers or maybe they're not sub fifty. They'll they'll just go to that spot to try and chin those nibblers. If there's only one, do the optimal thing. You know, just off tick some stuff, blow pipe them on the outside. He's gonna lose some ticks here because of the dig. A bit unfortunate, but like I, so much of it is coming down to using the the optimal weapons at the optimal times. Right. If all you have to do is just flick a little bit more to save yourself some ticks, you should try and do it. So here, because there was multiple nibblers, chinning them is the right decision. But I have no doubt that if if there was just one, he probably would have just came out and blowpiped it. Now, we about. spoke about before on Zuck getting that, uh, that zero set, a 1 in 65 chance, you said, but... What kind of time save are you looking at there? Is that is that going to help him out if he manages to go in and get that insane RNG? Obviously, going into Zuck with a bit of a deficit, is that going to... How much time is that going to save him? So here's the problem, right? A no set actually makes it more difficult to play, although you have... Um, well, sorry, no. It, it really depends on what kind of supplies you go in with. That's double blob hit he tanks. Ooh. Killing... So <laughs> he's going for a very unconventional flick right here, and I respect it. This is, this is like top tier, like he's doing the step under off tick. Oh my God. Well, the step away, step under, either way it works the same way. But um, that was very good. It would have worked better if the main reason he wanted to do that was probably either to stop the melee from digging or to chin those blobs on the melee. Because if he popped that blob right behind it and then step back too, as you saw those, the three nibbler, or the three, uh, the three mini blobs ended up getting pulled in and he could have chinned them together. But he killed, the, he killed the melee first, so it is what it is. But it's a very high-level tactic that he just did. If we look at his split times, he's actually saved the time right now, right? Like I told you earlier, 10 minutes from 63. What's 10 minutes from 63? Ah, oh, awfully close, right? Like, he's doing, he's doing good for himself. If he, if he gets good bosses right now, I would not put it past him. He's going to let these nibblers live and damage his pillar a little bit so he can get the collapse, if necessary. So overall, as long as there's no revive here, we're chilling. But the no set itself is, it's weird because it can actually be a bit of a, a detriment because you don't get your blowpipe specs because there's no ranger to blowpipe spec, right? So if you, like, let's say you come there with really, really few supplies, it, it, it can get a little bit hard to play. 
And like on top of that, most of the time, players who get a no set are very nervous because it's like, you know, maybe you're pacing, maybe you're not pacing, but you've just got something that's one in a hundred chance almost, right? Yep. And it's like you you sat here. Sometimes people are shaking, people are missing ticks. You don't get to blow pipe spec, so you don't get to heal. You have to pick an optimal time to now attack uh, attack Zuck without brewing down, right? Because every time you brew down, you ba you should basically consider that a miss. It's zero if you if you fucking attack Zuck brewed down. So you're like finding these optimal times to brew without healing because you don't have fucking blow pipe spec. So it gets a little bit harder to play, but. Since he's got so many brews, <laughs> I would say um, he's not going to have that big of a problem. If he gets the no set, it can be anywhere from like a minute saved to 35, 45 seconds. Right? So a big time save if he does get that no set. We see the spawn here. That's not looking good to be able to oh use God. the pillar for the uh, the damage there. He's just going to go for the blood barrage on the nibblers. Back up to 81 hit points. Let's see a 41, 31 going into... 66 adwam going into single jad had a 41 28 so he is going to be quite a length behind but as you said anything can happen on those zucks and those triples we did see a 155 triple jad yesterday from mcu and some pretty bad bow hits on the majors this is this not is looking good because I'll, I'll say, like, I believe on 63, he was only 30 seconds slower, right? Like, he really pulled it back. But, you know, as always, we, like, in the Inferno, at its core, it's the least RNG of RuneScape speedrunning, but it's still RNG, right? Those three waves took him way longer than whatever it took Adam, as far as I'm aware. Yeah, we 42, see 42.30 going into Jad. Adwan was a 41.28, so he has saved... 30 seconds from wave 50 managed to make 30 seconds back still a minute behind though but as we said anything can happen in these jads and triple jads add one with a 55 second i believe single jad in his run not too sure on the triples timing but uh, a 155 yesterday for mcu certainly possible to save a bit of time there let's have a look at the spawn not the best spawn here for mcu has to attack four of the healers and that's gonna waste a bit of time we are gonna need some nuclear triples because this is not looking too good i mean uh he can still okay this might be this might be about the same time i could expect this to be about a minute if it dies right here oh does not die this is why uh personally i don't like scything chad oh you get that time save but like <laughs> oh this is the pro. <laughs> God, you see, ah! Jad has so much defense. Scything is just like the more hit splats, the more times you're you're rolling off of the defense, right? So the higher the defense, the the it's terrible to blowpipe Jad in my opinion, right? Because you're 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 rolling little accuracy multiple multiple times. Yep, and that is just very unfortunate there. Yeah, One five or six is side hits. Yep, twenty seconds slower than Adwam on. The Jad was already down by one minute. It's going to make it 120. Let's see if he can make some time up on these triples. Getting some nuclear hits on this first Jad. That was four or five hits for the first Jad. So we could see a very, very quick triples here from MCU. Potentially a bit of a time save. We're going to we're gonna need a, a fucking no set on top of this. I, I want to see him popping off like a frog in a foreskin. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did say that literally just because last time you said it, everybody's question mark. Oh, what the frog in a foreskin? Frog in a foreskin? Yes, frog in a foreskin. A frog in a forey. Fucking frog being inserted into the foreskin. Popping off like a frog in a foreskin. We see the second Jad here, not getting the best hits. Uh, but I see a 67 coming through. The healers are trapped there. Nice flicks as well. Cool, calm, and collected from MCU as he comes into the last Jad. We can keep up this pace, you know. This is looking maybe not sub two, but definitely, definitely a pretty good, pretty good triples if he can kill this one quick. I want to chalk it up to maybe a two ten. Two ten is definitely by no means something to complain about. Yeah, but, but he will have to hit. I believe Hootie was saying yesterday the average triples around a two minute twenty. So if he gets a two ten coming in under average, we'll be happy with that. Ooh. Throws the chin one tick early there. 
Unfortunate, could have waited one extra tick, but the healers come in and he doesn't tag them, has to throw an extra chin. That's going to be minus two ticks there for MZU. Whoever gifted me the sub, <laughs> I do appreciate it. And the last Jad goes down in triples. Uh, it says there are 115. I don't think that's correct. He is eating on the bruise, so the death animation for Zuck is going to start. This is looking like a 46.10, maybe? No, probably like 46.05. A 115 triples? There's no way, right? Oh, that no. might be an error. It might be 215. Wait, we see a wave split for 67 uh, was 42.30, and then waves... That says that's a 115. All right, it's a 115. Oh my god, we're gonna need a we're gonna need a the zuck of a fucking lifetime. Oh yeah, okay, no, don't worry, we're stupid. No, it's a yeah, two yeah. sixteen triples. <laughs> oh, I'm an idiot. Yeah. Oh, the split say what they need to say. Yeah, I am an idiot. You're right. And uh, the hits here for MCU at the start not looking good enough for a no set. So it is not looking good for him. 48-21 to beat, 46-42 on the clock, Hemis. It is, poss it is possible. We've seen cases of a backlog Zuck where basically you don't hit very hard at the start and then you just fucking three hit the bitch at the end, which honestly he's going to need if you look at his if you look at his potions, he's going to need it. He's only got two dose range pot. He needs to hit extremely hard post healers. He needs to fucking proc Jad right now, if I'm honest. Well, not maybe not right now, but... You know, I, I'm seeing the bow hits. These are good bow hits. The bow is going pretty yeah. nuclear at the moment. That range and not dying, one hit away from death. So an extra blow pipe there. 625 hit points left on the boss. Jad will be coming out at 480. Can proc it here. Misses the hits. Needs the T-bow to go in. 47.30 on the clock with a 48.21 to beat. He's definitely going to need to go for this healer skip as well. Is he going to pull... He will pull the mage over so that it can... Um... That stop that gives him leeway to sort of dodge so he can go to that corner. Because if you don't do that while the healer skip is occurring, basically what happens is like maybe you pull the mage and it off ticks itself and then it same ticks with Jad, right? But this is it looks like it's not even gonna matter. He has the long range shin from here. He's gonna get pulled out. Absolutely he, doomed here. Uh, that was five or six Tebow hits on 488 hit points for Zuck and did not proc Jad for an entire shield rotation. 48.15 on the clock, five seconds to go, and it looks like Adwam is going to take down the second boss in this third place playoff for Turbo PVM. And that's a GG, but we will see MCU run this oh one God. out. Almost taking a Zuck hit there. <laughs> No way he doesn't proc it here. Okay, good. Chilling. We might still see some good action. This is an eight tick tag. Uh, eight tick tag? Yeah, beautiful. Really Optimal nice tag. there. Zuck goes He's back up to 324 one. hit points. The one dose range pot. Fucking good luck with this skip. What the hell? His divine's gonna wear out too. This is a really big problem. If he doesn't kill this, he might not even complete. Looks like he's just going to brew just up. I think he knows the divine's going to run out. 15 seconds. Last dose of range pot. He's going to kill it in the next 12 seconds before his divine runs out. He's getting some big hits, though. Oh, my God. Some massive oh Tebow God. hits. Wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> I yeah. The two-dose range pot. <laughs> and he comes in with a 49.21.6. So he ends up losing by exactly one minute there. And Adwam going to be taking down the second boss there for Turbo PVM in this third place playoff match. Oztob down 2-0. He might have lost that there, but I just want to say that is a very, very respectable time. Especially when you consider how how scuffed his late waves were, or how scuffed his early waves were. That was a, a, that was a, a good comeback. And if he had better bosses, that was, that was contestable. To, you know, at no that just goes to show exactly like you said. You can never guess what's going to happen. He could have won it. Maybe it maybe it wasn't in his favor, but he definitely was. That was winnable in, in my eyes. 
So Yeah, so a very good performance there from MCU. Unfortunately, not going to be enough against the current world record holder for the Inferno, Adwam. Turbo PBM up 2-0. They are one boss away from taking down the third place playoff. We are going to let Hemis go after that Inferno cast. We've got his Twitch in the chat if you guys want to check him out. I'm going to let you shout out all your stuff right now while I go to the toilet, Hemis. So take it away, mate. This is all you. I do appreciate all the boys coming in and uh, let me <laughs> let me pull up. I would say uh, check out the YouTube. You know, you, you guys wonder why why Jake was coming in and he was saying like, man, like the originator of the big chin. I really, you know, like that was one of his favorite videos. That's because I've got got a YouTube and it's popping. Sometimes we uh, we throw some stuff on there. I'm mostly known. I mean, these days I'm probably known for Inferno, but before I was known for high risk TOB. I've ran multiple tournaments with it, multiple billions given away with it. It was basically TOB, but uh, everybody paid a buy-in, and whoever got MVP wins the pot. So your goal is basically get MVP at all costs. Maybe I kill, maybe I kill all my team members, right? I kill all my team members, and I have extremely good odds at getting MVP, right? So we have series like that. There's um, I ran two tournaments with it with the biggest biggest clans in runescape oblivion sanity infernal all of them in there 1.3 bill video is there whoever gave me the sub appreciate the balls out of it sorry i couldn't catch your name right there um you know we grandmaster combat achievements were done speedrunner we've done all that <laughs> used to be top 10 chambers speedrunner used to be second place duo chambers used to be third place chambers or whatever we even pk a little bit and we've got some guides so you know, just some just some cool stuff all around. You'll probably be seeing uh, some some more content from us with Raids 3 on release. But outside of that, last thing I'll probably plug. Oh, and if you want to get into Inferno speedrunning, I do have a guide for that. So there is a guide. But outside of that, you know, just check out the YouTube. Beautiful, oh, beautiful. Uh, I will leave a... Uh... A thing in the chat, a little command for you, Hemis. Appreciate you, mate. We may be getting you back later on for the grand final Inferno runs. If you'd be happy to come back, that would be awesome. Uh, but for now, we're going to let you go. And thank you very much, my friend. I appreciate you letting me come on, man. That shit was <laughs> that was mega fun, especially uh, giving me the spotlight to uh, flame some of the boys. <laughs> you know it's all love, but <laughs> you know I, I can't let him run away with that, Mr. Mr. Tyler. I gotta, I gotta get him out. But yeah, no, the pleasure is all mine, my friend. The pleasure is all mine, and we'll hopefully catch you later for those infernos, ladies and gentlemen. That has been Hemi's. We're gonna get Hootie Tootie back on the line here. Get his beautiful face back on the screen in just a moment. In the meantime, we will have a look at the draft for this matchup. We have seen so far. The Chambers of Zerek Challenge Mode, Solos, and the Inferno uh, for Turbo PVM taken down currently Oztob in a 2-0 deficit, which is not what they're going to be uh, looking for at this point in the tournament. Hootie Tootie, we have mm -hmm. you back, my friend. Lovely to see your face again. And, Hello. Uh, what a uh, what an impressive performance there from Adwam in that Inferno run. Yeah, it's uh it's it's quicker than his last round. You know, his last round he got a forty nine twenty eight, which MCU would have beat uh, with this round. But yeah, Adwam getting a new PB. We saw two more Inferno times. Adicon still with the slowest time and a death. So eight Inferno speed runs so far. Addy with the two slowest submissions will be wanting to to do something about that later when he's uh, in the grand final. But yeah, two two talented Inferno speedrunners. And it's going to have to be a clean sweep from here. No more mistakes for Oztob if they're going to want to take this one. Yeah, that is exactly right. Uh, they Last time we had a speedrun cup also came in fourth place. So they will be looking to take away a little bit of that prize pool today. Decent performance from MCU, like you said. Um, one of the fastest times in the Inferno we've seen so far, but unfortunately not enough to take out the current world record holder. Ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be jumping into the next boss as we speak, and it is going to be one of the favorites. We're going to be seeing the TOB 
Three's regular first perspective we're going to be watching is Turbo PVM. Let's jump into it. Once again, big shout out to Hemis there for helping us with the cast on the Inferno. Exclamation mark caster if you want to check out Hemis Twitch channel. And we see Giraffe running here for Turbo PVM. We see Yakosu. I've been told I was saying that wrong all day yesterday. And I'm just going to call him Yak from now on. We see a 51 come in here from Yak with the BGS into the three. And we also have Irma running for Turbo PVM. We see a 12 with the BGS. Must hit a 54 before that. 66 total BGS. And a 64 coming in from Giraffe, as we saw over there. So definitely, definitely going to be seeing a zero defense maiden here. We see the numbers on the Nylacast. This is definitely post uh, cheat client. Uh, what do we call it? A purge. The cheat client purge. And uh, you can now get all of these plugins on RuneLight. You wouldn't believe it. All of these players using the cheat clients for so long uh, behind Jagex is back. And then the second that they all get banned, you can now use them on RuneLight anyway. So that is lovely to see. Now we see Yak here on the free is going to get a Sanguinesti staff off on the second crab. It's going to allow him to catch threes and fours and manages to get it. A little 5 FPS angle here. Giraffes over here on 20-ish hit points, taking quite a bit of damage from the boss here. I think I might have just accidentally uh, <laughs> flashbanged everyone. I was trying to live stream uh, my desktop for Hootie Tootie so he can see what's going on. And I've accidentally just uh, thrown a flashbang grenade. We see a 153 maiden here for Turbo PVM. So a pretty fast maiden time in this uh, three is regular. They do get the 30 skip. And just quickly have to ask in the chat if there are, there's any minders. No minders? Lovely. As we yeah. see Turb, yep. I was just gonna say a little reminder that the fastest team we've seen so far for the trio top scale was this team. And I believe they got an 18, 1804.2 in the last round against Oz Myth. 1804. That is going to be a very tough time to beat if they get another one here. A 1k XP drop Chally here from Giraffe. Nothing I like seeing bigger and better than... Whoa! What the fuck happened to the bloat floor? Uma? This is a, uh, a a different plugin. Shout out Runelight. You can actually remove the lower plane of certain rooms. We'll see uh, potentially later in a Fasani's nightmare. Players will be using this same tech to just sort of see the hands or see the grasping, yeah, the grasping hands in the Fasani's. But here it's to see the falling the falling attacks a lot better and a lot easier. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. This is on Runelight, and I tell you what, I am one hundred percent activating this one on my Runelight afterwards. Is Uma going to go down here? Manages to survive, almost kills the rest of his team, and they are going to get the two down here in the trio bloat. Low detail in Skybox, ladies and gentlemen. If you're looking for that plugin. Coming into the Nylacast room here. We see the tick counter above the head there for Yak. And that's going to allow him to go into the room on the correct tick to start the Nylacast waves. And see, the problem with that one there is he's waited a lot of ticks to go in to start the waves. And we're going with overall time. So it wouldn't have mattered what tick he went on. It's going to start on the same tick anyway and save the exact same amount of time. But I guess just practicing for future runs going in on the correct tick. We still see the tick timer above the head for this whole Nilo, but we're going to have Yak here on the mage roll. We're going to see Giraffe 
on the melee roll and we are going to see Uma here on the range roll. This is so bright. This is so bright. I can barely see what's going on. Let's have a look at Yak here with the freezers. Is he going to get them? Giraffe over here with the scythe. And we're going to see Uma over the other side with the other side. They both get their uh, respective scythes off on either side. We see uh, Yak here on the mage roll in the Nylacast room. We see Giraffe here on the melee roll here in the Nylacast room. And we see Uma here. On the range roll here at Winnetot, apparently. What the fuck is going on on this screen? Is If this is what cheat clients have looked like this whole time, how does anyone fucking play this thing? It makes no sense to me. But, I digress. We continue on. We see Giraffe getting the nice little scythe there. Was one tick too late to get off the below pipe? We see some chins over here from Irma. Manages to get the chin off from way downtown. A double melee down the bottom for Giraffe. Doesn't manage to get it off. Does get the second double melee. Very nice moves there. Uma running around with the blowpipe. We see Giraffe still on the melee. 73% on that north pillar. And Yakuzo here going to get a nice little barrage off on the... I believe that is actually the south pillar, not the north pillar. And uh, we should see a few nice barrages coming in. Will we see the Dinny B Tech here from Giraffe taking out a whole bunch of melee Nylacast in the south here? The Dinny B! Love to see that popping off. We did manage to catch it this time. Missed it in the last run. And that's something we definitely should have seen on the way in. We see a lot of melees in the north now. Back to Giraffe's perspective. Will we see a scythe here? Very good scythe opportunity. See the crabs blowing up. That is one thing that isn't added to Runelight that was on the cheek lines, and that's the Nylacast tick counter. Nylacast will blow up 50 ticks after they come into the room. These players are not going to know how far away that uh, possibly is, but a nice cleanup here from Turbo PVM. We are going to see Uma with the beige. The big beige. Needs to do 50 damage here to the Nylacast boss. Does 18. Is going to go for the second BGS here. And not sure what he hit the second time, but 46 in total by the looks of it. And that's going to be four defense left on the Nylacast boss. We see a plug-in in the bottom right-hand corner there that shows the defense of the boss we're up against. So massive, massive plug-ins coming to Rune Light for TOB. And uh, it's gotten a whole lot easier now. See a Vengeance coming in for Irma. Avengers, Giraffes, half hit points, Giraffe, let's have a look at his perspective, a nice little 26, Venge, this is a good boss here for Turbo PVM, they had a 339 bloat, let's see what they're coming out of Nylacast at, So a very fast time yesterday from Oz Tob at 8 minutes, and they come out at 755 from Nylacast, so absolutely pacing here is Turbo PVM with a 755 coming out of the Nylacast room, as we come into Sodazek. Very fast Nilo. And let's have a look at the special attacks here for Sodazek. We're going to see one from Giraffe. And one from Uma as well. So two specs to start off this So This is a very, very fast TOB. And they're going to need a very fast TOB. Coming up against Oz Tob. The specialist in the Theater of Blood. See Sodaseg choosing Giraffe. Let's go out to the full screen view here. And we see uh, not the best maze. A pretty snaky maze. But he does manage to tick perfect and then just jumps off at the end to save a little bit of time. Back to the split screen. We do see two specs coming in again. So a double spec for both phases here for Turbo PVM on Sodazeg. 52% left on the boss. We see a nice little Venge from Giraffe coming in. Half hit points left. All three players on thralls. That means we will have seen, I believe, Uma. No, Yokosu was on the mage roll. Did come in with that mage cape and switch over to the Archaea Spellbook, and a much better maze this time here for Uma. Does take the skip. His teammates do survive. Very low hit points, though, and we see the specs coming out. A one and a one. That is three 
phases where they've had two hammers, guys. Two hammers for all three phases of Sodas Egg. And if you're Turbo PVM, you've got to be happy with that RNG. See the ball coming out. It is going to be a ticket here from Yak. Does take that ticket down. All three players on the south side of Sodas Egg here. And we see a big Shelly coming in from Irma. Taking out Sot. And they all survive as well. Running down towards the chest coming out of soap with a 957 a very fast time here from turbo pvm they are absolutely pacing up against oz tob and like i said they are going to need good rng up against some of the best hobbers in the game in oz tob as they come into the zarpus room here we see the tick timer go away from the top of the head for yak there and here we go the pace on these guys. A 9.57 coming out of Soda's Egg. We see someone in the chat say, that's like the fourth fastest soap time. The fourth fastest soap time in a trio scale ever. And these guys are doing it in the speed run cup. I might be capping. Great. And I've just said that out loud for everyone else. To... And that's going to be in the YouTube video forever. Why'd you say that? Come on, man. I can't believe it. Here we go. We see one hammer. I'm not too sure if the other two hit. It looked like they did. And a 52... Uh, from Yak there, we see the defense level from any of these players. No, I have no idea what the defense is for Zarpus here, but we see one hammer and a 42 from Irma. Don't see any tracker here for Giraffe, and we saw one hammer and a 52 from Yak. So, looks as though we are going to see a zero defense Zarp as well. Absolutely ridiculous RNG on the defense lowering specs here for Turbo PVM. We see some lovely five tick scything going on as well. All three players on the exact same tick, missing no hits. We're going to see the screech coming up very soon. 32% left on the boss. The thralls coming out. Players losing absolutely no time here. Two brews in the inventory. Four Yak, two brews for Uma, and one brew for Giraffe. Or two brews for Giraffe. We see the Screech. No player loses any ticks. They were all on the perfect tick. No corrections needed. And these guys are absolutely pacing in this Zarpus. We're going to see a very, very fast time for this TOB for Turbo PVM. And if I'm Oztob... I'm shaking in my little boots right now. Coming in fourth place last time we did a speed run cup and they are 2-0 down with a very, very fast time here for Turbo PVM. 13.02 coming into the Versig room. All right, let's have a look at the specs here for Giraffe. Takes a 63 to the dome, a 112 onto the boss. Absolutely pacing turbo PVM. Anything can happen here in the speed run cup. We could see a death. That could be a problem for turbo PVM, but currently on pace for a very, very quick time. Let's see the last few specs coming out. We've got 40% left on the spec bar for Giraffe. Let's see what he gets here. They're going to stay pulled up on the boss, pulling off the super girt. Giraffe staying next to the boss at 27. Did he just get chance then? We just saw a chance for sure. I believe that was Uma that just got chance then. Potentially Giraffe himself. Taking a 27, going down to 20 hit points. Versi can max a 68. So there was a chance there, a massive chance on P1 Versic in this very fast run for Turbo PVM. And a death would surely mean an easy victory for Oztop. We see a 40 to the dome for Giraffe. 
Wow, oh wow, ladies and gentlemen. That is not what you want to see out of Turbo PVM with a very fast pace going into Verzik. The last thing they would have wanted to see there was a death on P1. But as we say in the biz, it's not a chance if you don't die and Uma survives. See, so Giraffe with three brews in the inventory. Sorry, two brews. Uma with three doses remaining and Yak with a brew and one dose. So it doesn't look like we will see a death unless something goes horribly wrong, but a big chance there for Turbo PVM. Not what you want to see. We get a second crab spawn pretty early on. That's a crab to the dome there for Uma. Going to take a 24. Once again, three doses of brew left in the inventory. His teammates can just drop it for him. See the sights on accurate here for Turbo PVM as well in P2. A little bit better DPS to have the scythe on accurate for P2 and P1. But you're going to want to make sure you swap it back over to aggressive for P3. A lot lower defense on Verzik for P3. See, 13% left on the boss. I believe that was a chance again there. Giraffe's getting launched. I'm pretty sure he could have died from that launch as well. Absolutely on pace, and they are shaking. Pacing so hard that they are absolutely shaking in this Verzik. Wow. Wow. Coming into P3 here, let's see who's on the tank. We see Yak has not switched back over to aggressive here for P3. Verzik still on accurate with his scythe. A bit of a, a bit of a mistake here from Yak. We see Giraffe has switched back over. Uma has switched back over as well. So Yak on accurate on P3 Verzik here. Must already be 200 mil uh, strength XP. Just looking to get that attack up to 200 mil as well. See Giraffe's on very low hit points over there. Thralls coming back up. I only see two Thralls at the moment. Missing one Thrall from one of the boys. Yak on the tank. Going into webs, 37%. 32 on the first hit. They should proc purples here. Very early, actually. This is a very quick time here. For Turbo PVM, 20%. They're going to proc pur purples here in the middle of webs. And this is definitely going to be a yellow skip. Huge time here for Turbo PVM. Some incredible RNG in this last phase. And they take it down one hit after webs. Incredible moves. And that's going to be a very fast time. We see a 1736. A 1736 here for Turbo PVM. Getting a new PB. Wow. That is absolutely ridiculous for Turbo, Turbo PVM. A 1736.6. Uh, Jake, when you're, when you're seeing the, I believe, current record holders getting a new PB, that does mean we now have a new overall threes world record done live in the speedrun cup. There's no way. That is the wreck. We have a new world record live on the speedrun cup for the first time ever. That is absolutely insane. That is absolutely insane, ladies and gentlemen. A new world record for threes. Oh, no. I've got the wrong screen up. One second, guys. Got to get oh, Hootie Tootie face. back on. There we go. Thank God for that. Wow, a new world record. And you know what? I mean, you got to say, who did you? Oztop definitely has their work cut out for them. That's uh, a new world yeah. record. It's a, uh, I mean, and they know it because we saw the, we saw the broadcast in the CC of the, uh, of the new rec. Well, guess what? These, these people on both teams, they share the same CC and uh, screenshots were posted by the, the Turbo PVM in the C, in the Discord, the new PB, and they see they're running trios there, and they've got a spellbook swap done. That must have been the speedrun cup run. We know we're up against it. So Oztob knew going into this, uh, well, they had the good idea that, uh, yeah, we've got, to, we've got to beat the wreck, and they'll probably adapt to it uh, accordingly. 
So here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to be watching Oz Tob taking on TOB. They have not only a 1736.6 to beat, but a world record to beat. And if they do beat it, we're going to see a world record broken for a second time in the Speed Run Cup. Kaplunk running for Oztob. We have Nakamichi running for Oztob. And we have Unluckers running for Oztob. And as Hootie Tootie said, they know they have a world record to beat. And in order to do that, they're going to need to go for the best strategies. And having a look at the inventory here, we see Unluckers with 10 Phoenix necklaces in the inventory, Kaplunk with 11 Phoenix necklaces in the inventory, and Nakamichi with three Phoenix necklaces in the inventory. We see a 50 stack here as well in a trio. These guys are here to game. We are going to see a P-neck bloat. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Unlock is here on the chins. This is going to have to be an incredible time, and they are bringing the techs in to give themselves the best chance of getting that overall world record time. p for the boys here from Oztob, and we are about to see an absolute show. Back to Nakamichi here for the freezes. They will be going for the 30 skip. They have to go for it here. There's no way they can get away without it. Let's see if they do get the 30 skip. Nakamichi going for the Tebow hit. A second Tebow hit gets in with the Torva. 12% left on the boss. Unlockers with another side swing. We're going to see one more hit of 52. And a very nice spawn there. No ones for Oztob. And they managed to get the skip. So a 133 maiden. A 133 maiden. They're 20 seconds ahead of Turbo PVM already. A 153 we saw from Turbo PVM. And they're already 20 seconds up. Coming into blow. And we are going to see the P next here from Kaplunk and Unluckers. This is absolutely outrageous scenes. I oh. believe I believe with this setup, it's somewhere between a 10, 10 to 20% completion of bloat with this P next setup. Wow. So they only have a 10 to 20% chance of actually getting bloat down here. Unluckers and Kaplunk going in with those P next. We see the P next break. Will they survive is the question. 85% left on the boss. The Phoenix necklaces go down. Blood does go down. 74% left on the boss. They have survived. They are definitely going to get the two down blow here. This is absolutely incredible. 133 maiden into an incredible blow. They are going for it. 28% left on the boss. We see the double claws go in. Are they going to kill the boss in one down here? The Tiki. Are they going to go for it? No. 2.5% left on bloat. Oh my god, they almost got the one down bloat here in the speed run cup. Up against the world records. We see Nakamichi going in with the Phoenix Excellence. They get it down. The one down bloat. Oh my god. My neighbors are going to absolutely kill me. I am screaming so loud right now. This is the most incredible thing I have ever seen in my entire life. A 55 second bloat in a trio. A 251 split coming out of bloat up against Turbo PVM that had a 339. They're 40 seconds ahead of the split. Coming out of bloat, they're already 40 seconds up. This is absolutely insane. We're going to see Nakamichi on the mage roll here for Oztob. We're going to see Unluckers on the ranged roll here for Oztob. And we're going to see Kaplunk on the melee roll here for Oztob. I am Pog Champing IRL. This is an absolutely incredible run here for Australia's finest PVMers, Oztob. Wow, oh wow. We're about to see the double range wave come out here for Unluckers. A couple of chins from way downtown. Gets the 84 XP drop there. Only a 58 for the big and the small one. An 84 again for the double smalls. Nakamichi with the freezes. Manages to catch them all. We're going to see him switch over to the Arceus spellbook after this Nylacast room so he can summon thralls. Unluckers zooming around the room. Wow, the P-neck bloat, the 10% chance of them pulling it off. They knew they had to beat that world record time, and they come in absolutely zooming here. 251 coming out of bloat, already 40 seconds ahead of Turbo PVM. Absolutely outrageous. 
over to Nakamichi's perspective on the mage roll here. See a lot of plugins going on the screen and we're also watching his perspective from Mars. Not sure why we have zoomed out to the International Space Station to see what's going on in this Nylacast room, but he does get the freeze there. Unlocker is going to get the chin off on this double range. Only a 63 XP drop. Not going to kill both of the crabs. But we do see Nakamichi with quite a few freezes going on. Not going to go for the one on the pillar down there. Gets the Tebow off on the range as it comes out. These guys are the best in the world at what they do. This Nylacast is an absolute clinic here. As we mentioned yesterday, the cap in the room for Nilo. If you reach the cap on the amount of Nilo cast, the next wave won't spawn. So they're going to try and get those waves spawned as quickly as possible here. Let's take a look at Kaplunk on the melee roll. Scythe going ham does have that blood fury on for those extra heals. Four sharks in the inventory. And uh, those Phoenix necklaces taken up a lot of space. You can see the switches here for Kaplunk very minimal because he took in all of those Phoenix necklaces. Nakamichi with quite a few switches and we see unlockers down here with minimal switches as well as he gets that chin off on the double range. Another chin on the south and we're going to see a very nice cleanup here for Oz Tob. A quick cleanup as well. These guys working together very well as a team. Unfortunate with that last mage there, a little splash from Nakamichi. Are we going to see a BGS from one of these players here in the Nylacast room? We see a pot share from... No, we see a trade for the range potion here. Doesn't look like we are going to see a BGS, so most likely to see the claws from the players here. A range boss. We want to see a ranged and melee boss here for Oztob. Unfortunate to see the mage... Apparently, we are seeing a 44 BGS out of one of these players. We did. We see a 44 BGS out of Nakamichi. See the double claw going in as it goes back to melee. Oh, unfortunate to see it go again to mage here. They're going to want to see as many range and melee phases as possible. We see the range come up again. Nakamichi maybe missing a few ticks there on his range here, but still getting it off. No, there goes mage again. This is not what they want to see from the boss. We do see a melee coming out now, though. Unlock is seven prayer points. Probably not going to want to use that restore, but he does use the restore dose. Another range. This is exactly what we want to see from the last. Will they kill it here? Not big enough hits, and it goes mage again. Nakamichi with a clean six-way switch there, and they are going to take it down. One hit later than they probably could have. Let's see the split coming out of Nylacast. A 728. So, they are still up by 30 seconds. 27 seconds up on the split we saw at this time from Turbo PVM. So, still... 30 seconds ahead of their opponents here coming into the Soda Seg room. Kaplunk one tick behind his teammates. We're going to see a hammer here from Nakamichi. Hits one. Kaplunk, did he hit his hammer? Didn't hit his hammer. So a one hammer sewed here for Oztob. We saw Turbo PVM getting the two hammers on every single phase in their Soda Seg. We're going to need to see some good RNG on the hammers here for Oztob. They are 30 seconds ahead currently, but they're going to want to keep that lead. 72% left on the boss. We will see a 66% coming in. And we see Kaplunk being chosen for the maze. We see a one tick loss there on the edge, just waiting up for his teammates. Bit of a damage taken there from Unlockers on the outside. Not really sure what was going on there. Let's see the specs. We see one spec. We see two specs. So we do see two specs for the second phase here for Oztob in this TOB run. Very decent time so far. 30 seconds ahead of the world record pace, which is absolutely insane. One dose stamina potion on the ground. We see Unlockers in the top Left-hand corner, as you know, that is the unlocker square. square. No one else is allowed to stand on it. Are they going to get the ball skip here? They are not going to get the ball skip. Unlockers runs down, gets there just in time. Actually gets chance there, I believe, by the melee hit from Sodazeg. So we see unlockers on the inside. Pretty decent maze here. No skips. Is he going to jump off at the end? No, they're not going to jump off at the end. They save their time there, save the hit points. And let's have a look at these hammers. Did we see two hammers there? Uh, Unluckers doesn't have the plug in. We see one hammer from Kaplunk. I think that might have been a zero hammer last phase. Could be wrong. Maybe one of the Oztob boys in the chat can correct us there. 
Not too sure on the hammer situation on this last phase, but the boss does seem to be going down pretty quick. Saw one hammer at least. Okay, so at least one hammer, potentially two. Getting some pretty good RNG is Oztob in this TOB run. Oh, the last hit's not coming in. Kaplunk going to finish it off, and we might see a goal here as well. Nakamichi got the ball on. Is this going to be a goal? It is a goal. Sweet! Sweet! A goal here from Nakamichi as well. A 10.04 coming out of Soda Zeg, and that is all the time lost there. They are now seven seconds behind, guys. That's how quick the Soda Zeg was for Turbo PVM, a 10.04 for Oztob up against a 9.57 for Turbo PVM. So they are seven seconds behind going into Zarpus. Let's have a look at the situation. We've got three brews here for Kaplunk and five sharks. We have three brews, four unluckers, and Nakamichi doesn't have his inventory up, but it looks as though these guys are going to be just fine on the brew situation here. In this office room. Are we going to see the super girt? Says Hugo in the chat. That is the question. Will these players be pulling up on Verzik? Just taking maximum damage from the boss. In order to get the quickest possible P1 time. And coming out of Soda Zeg, only 7 seconds down. That was the biggest time save for Turbo PVM in their run. So, only 7 seconds to make up for in the Zarpus room and the Verzik room. Let's have a look at the specs here. Hammers going in. 3 hammers. Let's have a look at the BGSs. And massive BGSs for the team as well. That's going to be a 0 defense Zarpus. 130 BGS total. So they have a zero defense Zarpus. It is all happening here. We see Nakamichi taking the blood runes out of his Sanguinesti staff here. And able to summon a thrall. Five ticking. All on the same tick. Absolutely no mistakes from anyone here. The thrall coming in a little late for Nakamichi. Not a problem though. They're getting some pretty decent hits. Unluckers over here. No ragtiles so far. The five ticking looking very good. From the Sara Scythe enthusiast. That is Unluckers. Surprised he can actually see Zarpus, considering the fact that he is four foot eight. But we see 37 37% uh, on the boss. We're gonna see a screech coming in very soon. 27%. Here comes the screech. Are they gonna have to correct here? Are they on the right tick? It looks as though they are on the correct tick, so no corrections needed. And no ticks lost here for Oztob. Exact same Zarpuses. For Oztob and Turbo PVM. So it just comes down to the RNG in this room specifically. No time lost for either team. Oh, Nakamichi does lose a tick there. And as we saw, one tick does matter. Going down in that CM by one tick. But the boss does go down. Let's have a look at the split here. A 13.01 coming out of Zarpas. And it was a 13.02 for Turbo PVM. They've made up eight seconds. They have made up eight seconds, and Oztop going into the Verzik room one second ahead of the world record pace. Are we going to see the super good here, ladies and gentlemen? Nakamichi with a huge spec, a 127. Kaplunk coming in with a 112. We're not going to see the super good, unfortunately, unless... They just pull up for this last bit here. Super Gert will be the strategy where they just stay next to Verzik, getting maximum hits. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like we are going to see it here. 38% left on Verzik here in P1. They've got a 1736.6 to beat. That is the world record. Can they beat? The world record run here, 0.1% to finish there. Very unfortunate not to get it. A couple of seconds lost there with those sides. Coming into P2. Everyone looking good. All the thralls come up for all the players. And we see all players here on the Arceus spellbook as well. So no player on Venge, just all thralls for everyone. And that is due to the fact that they had to... Oh my god, the footwork from Kaplunk there. Guys, you can't teach that. You can't teach that. That's just raw talent. Both Unluckers and Kaplunk avoiding all damage on that crab pop there. That was absolutely 
Incredible footwork from Oztob. 69% left on Verzik. Nice. Wow. Kaplunk might be the best to ever do it. Two and a half brews in the inventory for him. Two and a half brews for Unluckers. And we see two and a half brews as well for Nakamichi. Let's see if they get a second crab spawn here. 50% left on the boss. 13.01 coming into the Verzik room. A very fast time. They've got a 17.36 to beat, which once again is the world record. Let's see the pop here from Kaplunk and Unluckers once again. Almost a perfect pop there. Unluck is unfortunately just taking seven damage, but very good. We see the swap over to the strength. Aggressive style here for Unluck is for the crabs. He's going to switch back to accurate for the boss. Gets back on it. We see them go into the boss at 30%. They're going to need to get it down to around 20% here to go for the... Second down, it's not looking good here with the damage. The boss goes in, the crabs go in, sorry, to the boss at 21%. Are they going to go for the two down here? They are going to go for it here, guys. 21%. You're saying there's a chance. Unluckers misses an entire hit over there. Not too sure what was going on with Unluckers, but 14% left on the boss. Very unlikely they're going to get a two down here. 73% left on that crab. We see 7.2% for the boss. They've got two hits left here. 4%. Are they going to get it down? They are not. 6.9% left. And it is going to be the three down. They decided to chance it. Unfortunately, not getting the two down which was got by Turbo PVM. So a little bit of wasted time there. We're going to have to see the RNG on P3 for Oztob. Let's see if they get all three players switching over to aggressive here. We see Unluck is doing it, Kaplunk doing it, and Nakamichi doing it as well. So all three players on the aggressive side. We're going to be watching Unluck is here on the tank. Let's see how he does on the tank without a big number in the middle of the boss. Looking very good. We see Nakamichi up top here stood in the perfect position to, to pop the North Crab if it does spawn. No North Crab spawn here. No Venge is going to be done by Oztob here. Really nice pop there by Nakamichi as well. Not missing any ticks in the North side there. We didn't actually manage to catch all of it, but very good footwork from him up the top. See, one dose of Divine Super Combat left for Unluckers. Two and a half brews. Food not going to be a problem here. Let's see these webs. Going into webs with 45% left. We saw that Turbo PVM procced purples in the south here. So very far behind Turbo PVM's pace here. And it's not looking good for Oztob. They're not even going to proc purples coming out of webs potentially not even going to get the yellow skip. The RNG just not coming in for Oztob here. It's not looking good for them. Are they going to get the yellow skip? It doesn't look like they are. 13% still left on the boss. Very nice tanking here from Unluckers. 7.4% left. They're not going to get the yellow skip here, ladies and gentlemen. And that is it. It is over. There's absolutely 0% chance they have beaten Turbo PVM here. A very valiant effort from Oztob with the Phoenix necklaces, but a world record to beat. The RNG just not coming in for them in the late stages of that Verzik. And an 18-15, they end up losing by 45 seconds. And that is just pain for Oztob. Just pain they gave it their best effort. They knew going in, they had a world record to beat. And it's tough to beat a world record. 45 seconds down, but claps in the chat for the valiant effort there from, Tur uh, fr from Oztob. But unfortunately for them, Turbo PVM gonna take it down in a 3-0. And what an absolute domination there from Turbo PVM. Hootie tootie. It's incredible. They've done, they've performed well. I mean, we saw them do so well in the top that we did see them do so well in uh, in the semi final as well. So, uh, reoccurring that the best top team for sure in this competition. Uh, they also, yeah, the Inferno very quick by Adam, and unfortunately in the semi finals we did see that band. Uh, very very smart choice by Osmith there to to take that choice away from them to run it, and you can see why it was banned because uh, Adwam incredible. Uh, yeah, just uh, an all-around uh, exceptional performance by Turbo. 
And uh, Oz, Oz Tob going to be still a, a bit salty from even the semifinals, losing that in the closest way possible and then getting put in this opportunity to, to have to verse Turbo PVM. And yeah, just didn't just didn't perform as well. Yeah, you have to feel for Oz Tob here going out in the semifinals to BDSM. Uh, the nightmare coming down to a draw. One tick difference for some of the bosses. Some really good RNG for Gauntlet. And then coming into this third place playoff, losing the CM by one tick as well. And then having to go up against Adwam in the Inferno. I mean, at that point, that's just doomed. And then the TOB, knowing that they had a world record to beat as well. And actually being on pace, going into the Verzik room and then losing 45 seconds in total in that Verzik room. Bad RNG. You have to feel from them. For them, a very valiant effort, but Turbo PVM putting on an absolute showcase here and taking out that third place. They are going to be getting 10% of that overall prize pool, ladies and gentlemen, which is now up to 2.2 bill, I believe, Hootie Tootie. Is that correct? That is correct. Yeah, we're at 2.2 bill going strong. If anyone else would like to donate to the prize pool, you can message me, Hootie underscore OSRS on Twitter, and I can come collect, collect that donation from you, and you will get your name on the screen here with the others. Now, we've got a little bit of a problem here, Hootie Tootie, uh, mm -hmm. because obviously Hootie has been working very, very hard in the back end here to get all of this organized for everyone. And... Uh, he was still editing while I was asleep last night, and he sent me the grand final footage while we were casting the third place playoff there, and I haven't even extracted the files yet, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. We're going to have to waffle for a little bit longer while those files extract. I didn't expect that one to go down in a 3-0. I probably should have started this a little bit earlier. We can uh, we can go through the teams we're going to be seeing if you'd like in the in the grand final. Very true, very true. Let's go ahead and have a look at the teams we will be seeing for this grand final matchup here in the Speed Run Cup Two. We're going to be seeing Team BDSM versus Ozmith. Team BDSM, Hootie Tootie. Yeah, I got to say that after the the performance from uh, the the quarterfinals into the semifinals, you've got to say that they're, they're the most favorite team uh, to win it. Uh, you just, they, they're just the most well-rounded. And when, when you're looking at a best of nine, it's, it's, you know, who's the most well-rounded. You can't hide behind your bands like uh, Ozmith perhaps have with their banning of the Inferno in the quarterfinals and semifinals. There's, there's no hiding from that here. We're going to be playing all nine bosses you've been seeing throughout the tournament in this grand final. So, I mean, to have a, to have a, a fight cave specialist in T-Back and a, Inferno specialist in Addy. Those are two specialists that Ozmith don't have. Uh, even going as far as the Gauntlet with Smork, you know, a consistent sub sub 515 possibly runner in this competition in Smork. It's what we've seen th throughout the quarters and semis for him. It's just, uh, it's unreal. And I mean, you just you just keep going on about this team. Kirby will be running Vorkath. He'll be running Zolra. You'll probably see him in, in the, the next kills or the or the nightmare kills. He's he's spread across, and uh, you know that's that's a, a powerful thing to have such a talented gamer that can you know slide into any piece of content and perform as well as he needs to. Yeah, and you see so many world record holders in this speedrun cup. Molgo Kirby, the world record holder for Zolra, and uh, a lot of very well-rounded gamers. Like you said, you've got the Inferno specialist. Adicon, you have the uh, Fight Cave Specialist T-Back, and then you've got your well-rounded players like Kirby and Hi Yo. You know, we mm -hmm. joke, uh, we joke about the BDSM team being five speedrunners and Hi Yo, but we saw yesterday in his CM performance, and uh, as well as the nightmare that Hi Yo is not one to be slept on. And yeah, this this, oh, um, oh no, Hootie Tootie. You're going to have to delete some stuff. Oh, we've got a problem here. I don't have enough space on my disc to extract the files for the grand final, guys. We've got a problem. This isn't good. You're going to have to delete the previous footage. I guess you don't need to watch that. I am going to have to delete the quarterfinal and Just, semifinal uh, footage. Continuing on about this team, though, while you do so, Rasta is a... Is a very talented CMR, and they're going to be wanting to to get the solo CM through the the, the picks and bands of this matchup. 
And uh, I believe yesterday it was Hayo's birthday and today is Kirby's birthday, I believe. So a big happy birthday, Phil's birthday, man, in the chat for Kirby and for Hayo. Uh, they're going to be looking for a little birthday luck uh, in this grand final. If they if they needed anything else to uh, assist them in towards a victory, it's a, a little bit of birthday luck. A couple of birthdays for the boys here in the mm -hmm. speedrun cup and they're going into that grand final as well super important here uh there's a lot of money on the line let me just quickly organize Don't this delete the old one should i delete the old one yeah fuck it okay let's cancel that delete that extract this Apologies, did you guys. Empty your recycle bin. I did. I did. It's all good. Okay. It's, we're not, we're not gonna have a problem there. It's all empty. It's gonna all be fine. Noise. If that error message came up on Rookie's PC, he would have had no idea what to do with that <laughs> one. We'd have had to call the tech support in for that. Absolutely. So that is the bare-chested Daredevil Savant Males, also known as BDSM. They are the reigning speedrun cup champions, looking to come in and get a second victory and cement their place as the speed run cup champions and they're going to be taking on oz myth here in this grand final matchup yeah this is uh the team we saw beat we just saw turbo pvm beat oz uh, oz tob and, and oz myth this team here is the team that were the ones to knock turbo pvm down to the third place playoff uh winning in the in the fight caves and the vorkath and the necks and cox and they lost the top but yeah the i mean we've seen they're capable there's there's no mistakes about it maybe oh, i'd say definitely the underdogs in this matchup the underdogs in the whole tournament to make it to the grand final is a, an accomplishment in itself they'll be over the moon getting here and uh and yeah that their their talents probably lie within the the group cms and the the theater of blood there i mean we saw them wipe earlier which is a uh, uh, not not a great sign, but you know maybe if they get past Maiden, that's the that's the brick wall, and then they can continue to get a decent time like we did see in the quarterfinals. Uh, but yeah, it's just a, a a solid group of gamers that do what they can. We've got some high ping players. We've got Kevzy, Ulyss, and Cat all playing on one fifty ish ping. So uh, it's you know they're already at a disadvantage going into it as it is, but. Yeah, we're going to see uh, Kevzy probably featuring in close to nine of the bosses. He's their, he's their mole goat Kirby of the of the team. He's going to be here and there, and, and you're going to be seeing a lot from him and, and a lot of his POV. Uh, still haven't seen anything from Jerry. Team leader Jerry hasn't uh, hasn't participated in the quarterfinals, hasn't participated in the semifinals. Uh, I, think, uh, I think many Jerry fans in the chat will be We'll be just waiting and, and, and hoping to see Jerry. Will we see him at all in this tournament? Yeah, so we see here for Ozmeth, five speedrunners and coordinator Jerry. Just the team yep. captain um, putting it, we could call him the coach at this point, just putting his players yeah. in the positions where they need to be and uh, taking up that sixth spot and not performing anything so far. But uh, mm -hmm. as you said, Kevzy, most certainly carrying this team on his back throughout this entire tournament, running pretty much every boss. We've seen him in every single boss so far for Ozmith and putting on decent performances in everything and even playing on 150 ping. You really can't let that slide. That is some really high ping and uh, still managing to put on really great performances but that is Oz Myth, ladies and gentlemen. They are going to be going up against Team BDSM in this grand final matchup. As Hootie Tootie said, 2.2 billion GP prize pool. And the winner of this is going to be taking away 60% of that. If you do want to donate to the prize pool, guys, we are still collecting. Go ahead and message Hootie underscore OSRS on Twitter. And he'll be able to sort that out for you. A big thank you to everyone that has donated so far. It looks like we've got about two seconds left on this download oh, for okay. the grand final, which means we are ready to jump in. I will just quickly ask Hootie. Um, you do you want to look at the videos? Yes, I, we will okay. do that. But you sent me another yeah. file. Do I just extract that here? We'll, we'll do that later while, during the Inferno while Hemi's talks, hopefully. Gotcha, gotcha. Fingers crossed. We won't keep the people waiting any longer. <laughs> we won't, we won't. So let's go ahead and have a look at the boss draft 
for the grand final. As we said, all nine bosses are going to be ran, but there is still some picks and bans to take a look at. We see here, the players are able to ban one, uh, one option for Tob each. So players have the options between hard mode threes, twos regular and threes regular. And we see here, Ozmith banning hard mode top regular and BDSM banning the twos regular, which means we will be seeing threes theater of blood again. We see the Cox ban come in for uh, Ozmith and that was the threes regular and the Cox ban for BDSM was the three CM. So that means we will be seeing solo CM for the chambers of Zarek and then for the boss picks, we see BDSM had the opportunity to pick either the Corrupted or the Regular Gauntlet, and they have gone with the Corrupted Gauntlet, and Ozmith with the opportunity to pick either Fasani's or uh, Regular Nightmare 3's, and they have gone with the Fasani's. Hootie, we're going to see every single boss run for this grand final matchup. Corrupted Gauntlet, who do you think has the advantage here? I mean, you've got to give it to to Smork and uh, and Co. I mean, we've seen them pull off some incredible plays. We'll have Kirby. I think we've seen Kirby, Smork, and Rasta, the three runners for BDSM. I mean, you could argue that uh, there's been some very close calls and their gauntlets could have gone another way. We did see Rasta, I believe, die in both the quarterfinal and semifinal matchup. So he'll be looking for just that completion. Or maybe, no, no, sorry, he did. No, he died in the, he died in the quarterfinal. There was one death there. And he did complete the semifinals. That is correct, yeah. So, uh, so Smork, I mean, it's it's Smork all day. And uh, we're, we're going to see uh, Oz Myths. They actually do have a CG specialist. We've not spoken about him much, but Slinky. He is a very, very quick uh, speedrunner in the Corrupt Gauntlet. So, I mean, it's an average. You know, this one person can't carry the team. It's got to be an average of three. So... While we do have the Smorks and we do have the Slinkies, it's it's really dependent, I'd say, on what the other two can manage to pull off. Yeah, interesting that you do bring up Slinky here because uh, in the countdown timer for the first day of the Speedrun Cup, I saw that AQ had unbanned Slinky in the chat. So I went to see his chat logs and I saw that he was banned during the last Speedrun Cup for trying to backseat the players that were competing backseating the players in the last speedrun cup and now we're going to see him perform mm -hmm. in the grand final of this speedrun cup let's see if the backseating will come out to, uh, to play today and see what kind of performance he can put on in the corrupted gauntlet we see the inferno we're going to be seeing uh i believe addy con for the team bdsm and most likely kevzy running the inferno for oz myth as well Probably have to give Adikon the advantage in that one. And then Ozmith versus BDSM at Nex. Uh, we saw both of these teams. No, we actually haven't seen BDSM run Nex yet this tournament, have we, Hootie? Uh, I don't I don't believe we have possibly banning it all the way through. And 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 if you're talking about bosses that Ozmith need to take off BDSM, I'd say I mean I'd say Nex is one of them. You know, they're gonna want they're gonna wanna win the gauntlets, they're gonna wanna win the Nex. They're going to feel like they have it. They have what it takes too, with maybe even a couple slip-ups on BDSM side. So, I mean, going into this, so far, Gauntlet and Nex are, are very crucial wins for Ozmith if they're going to want to take this grand final from BDSM. Yeah, absolutely. We see the Fight Caves as well. Going to be run by T-Batch for BDSM. And once again, most likely Kevzy for Ozmith. The Theater of Blood 3's regular once again, you have to give the advantage in this one to Team BDSM. They're going in as massive favorites in this grand final matchup. But that being said, you can't sleep on Ozmith. They went in as the underdogs to their semifinal matchup as well and took it down 4-2. We'll be seeing Zora once again, a boss that does have a bit of RNG. But when you have the world record holder on your team for a boss, you are going to be absolutely laughing. We see Vorkath as well, most likely being run by Kirby and Kevzy. And we saw a 0.6 second difference for a Vorkath run in this tournament as well. So every single tick counts and it can all come down to just one singular second. For Sani's Nightmare, 
we'll see three players from each team running in the Fasani's Nightmare. And the solo Chambers of Zerik Challenge Mode. That is going to be very exciting to see. Hootie Tootie. Let's not keep the people waiting any longer. Let's go ahead and get started on this grand final matchup here in the Speed Run Cup 2. Ladies and gentlemen, Team BDSM versus Ozmith. Let's take a look at Team BDSM here in the gauntlet. And we're going to be seeing Rusterman coming up first. Yesterday we saw Rusterman with a little four fish send. Was it Rusterman that got uh, extremely lucky at the end of his kill yeah. yesterday, Hootie? Yeah, very close to have not died in both of his runs so far. I mean, he, he's obviously a talented gambler, but maybe maybe uh, he's going for those risky plays that, that the others won't be doing, the, the low food. It, it will result uh, in, a, in a quicker time, but you're going to be dying a lot more if you, if you don't have that food to eat, especially when the redemption... You know, redemption is a big play to, to, to outlast the boss, and, and when you get below 13 health and the redemption... Does doesn't proc you need to eat or you're being chance so that's where the food comes into it yeah and i've always said you know a little bit of luck coming oh very unfortunate there for the vengeance to go off on the rat instead of the dragon and he takes a 39 to the dome for what absolutely nothing there but i have always said you know a bit of luck coming in for Russ man in his corrupted gauntlets and i would rather be lucky than good any day but it becomes very dangerous when like Russman, you are not only good, but also lucky. And uh, we saw a very quick time from him yesterday. The four fish send going into that corrupted gauntlet room. We're going to see four fish here. Does have a second fishing spot. So unlikely to see another four fish send. We'll get at least eight here. Probably won't go for the... Goes for six, actually. So we're going to see a six fish send. Not wasting time picking up those extra two fish. Not worrying about going in for the safety. Just looking for the fastest time here in the grand final. He said, you know what? It's the grand final of the speedrun cup. We've got some very tough opponents. And uh, we're going to have to go ahead and put on a clinic here. He's not happy. You can see the screen shakes. And he's trying to find himself a tree. He's trying to find himself a farming patch. He does end up finding it here. He is not happy with the layout he's gotten. We see the Corrupted Orb in the inventory. Doesn't have a second Demi Boss, so we will see the 5 to 1. 205 shards in the inventory. That is plenty. We'll see a Tier 3 Staff and a Tier 2 Bow here for Rasaman. He has two restores, and he also has six fish in the inventory. Quick use on the interface here. Does not end up getting the Tier 2 Bow, actually. Only the Tier 1. Not enough shards for the Tier, th uh, tier 2. See him eat a fish as he goes into the room. Two fish eaten. So it is a four fish send here, guys. And we saw Russerman with a four fish send yesterday. Let's see if he can pull it off today. See the bow go in for that five to one. For those that don't know, we do have quite a lot of viewers at the moment. So I will explain the Hunleth in the Corrupted Gauntlet. Uh, it will change what it is praying every five attacks so you will see roster man here using his tier three staff the best damage weapon he has five attacks and then changing over to either a kick or the bow sorry every six attacks not five so it will see five attacks from the staff and then on the sixth attack for everything we'll see him change his weapon in order to change what the gauntlet boss is praying here. See the piety come on for the kick. Missing absolutely no damage here. And it is a punch. And I believe you will be better off going for the punch on a monster with very high defense. So that is something that all these players will have thought about as well. You know, I believe you get a max hit if you go with the kick. Could be wrong there, but if you're on accurate, you go for the punch, you get the accuracy bonus, and obviously the Corrupted Gaunt, the boss, has very, very high defense. So even the smallest little differences, all of these players have thought about going into this boss as we see Rusterman having to eat one of his fish, decides to eat his second fish as well, losing no time there. It had been so long since his last attack, he could get the second eat in and attack immediately afterwards. We see 500 HP on the boss. The prep time was 235. 
And we're currently sat at 425 here for Rastaman. Prayer goes down. Still two fish left in the inventory. We're going to see those redemptions coming up for Rastaman. The boss can actually hit a 13. So uh, if you are below 14 hit points, you are going to have to eat a fish here. So we're going to need to see some RNG for Rastaman. Does get the redemption off. He's going to be happy with that one. The boss DPS, not so good so far. Five minutes still on the clock. 315 damage left on the Corrupted Hunliff. See 14 hit points here for Rastaman. So pretty lucky not to go below 14 there. Gets the redemption off. We see two doses of restore left in the inventory and two fish. This is going to be a rough one here for Rastaman. 300 hit points left on the boss and only has two doses of restore left for those redemption flicks. And he uses both of his fish here. So he's going to need the RNG. If he goes below... 14 hit points at any point here in this boss. He is going to go down to chanceable HP. Gets the redemption off. A big 13 from the boss there. We see 30 hit points. 240 damage left on the boss. And he only has one dose of restore left. It's not looking good for Rusterman. Can he get that Rusterman RNG we saw yesterday? We saw him survive about 55 hits from the boss on 13 hit points. The Whirlwind's coming out at the perfect time for him yesterday. Can he back that up here? Another zero from the Corrupted Gauntlet boss here. He is down to 14 hit points. So he is going to be able to get that last redemption off. 114 hit points left on the boss. He is getting that Rust RNG. There's no way this is going to happen twice in a row. The last dose of Restore coming in here. He cannot get another redemption off. 26 hit points, the RNG for Rusta Man. This has been absolutely insane. 38 hit points left on the Corrupted Hunliff, and it looks as though he is going to get the kill here. The Whirlwind's come out. He takes damage from the Whirlwind. <gasps> Chanced. One more hit. Dies. Does he get the kill? He dies on the last hit. Taking that damage from the Tornado caused him to lose the kill. And he takes the 10-minute time penalty here for BDSM. The Rusterman RNG was on point. Unfortunately, a small skill error at the end there to take a 15 damage from the Tornado. And that causes him to lose that Corrupted Gauntlet run 10 minutes on the time here for Team BDSM. Wow. Wow. We are going to see Molgo Kirby here for Team BDSM. As Hootie Tootie said, probably the most well-rounded player for their team. We're going to see him performing in Tob. We're going to see him performing in uh, The Nightmare. We're going to see him performing in Vorkarth. We're going to see him performing in Zolro. We're going to see him performing at Nex. We're going to see pretty much every single boss here from Kirby. And we are most certainly seeing him here in the Corrupted Gauntlet as he has a Tier 1 staff. And he is taking on this Corrupted Wolf. Will be getting some decent shards there. We see on the ground 73 shards from that Wolf. Picks up the second weapon frame, which means he is going to be able to make a tier 2 weapon. First mini boss, sorry, demi boss he finds is the Corrupted Bear. So that means we will see a Halberd out of Kirby. Finds a fishing spot here. We will see him fill up his vials. Six minutes left on the clock. One minute 30 so far on the prep. Still hasn't found himself a mining spot or a farming spot. And he's going to need those for his armor. 181 shards in the inventory. So he is going to be able to make two tier twos. Finds a farming spot in this next room. Picks up a second Grim Leaf as well. And finds another one in the next room. So a little bit of good RNG there on the drop from the Demi Boss to find a second Leaf. Eight fish in the inventory, and we see a Corrupted Spike as well. Needs to find himself a mining spot. And it looks as though we will see five to one from Kirby. He is looking for a mining spot in the Demi Boss rooms, though. He does find a bear. Will he go for the second? He is going to go for the second kill here on the Corrupted Bear. As he looks around for a mining spot, he does find it. He dropped his Corrupted Pickaxe, has to pick it up. Will lose no ticks here. 
And uh, we're going to see him go for that mining as he kills the bear. Does he get a hit off? He does. Is there enough time there? There is enough time in between hits to go for the mining at the same time. We'll see him kill the bear here. Let's see what weapon he's going to get. He's going to be looking for that corrupted orb. Will he get the orb or will he get the bowstring? Does get the orb. So nice RNG there. 50-50 chance on what to get. He's looking for another room. What is he going for here? He is looking for that fishing spot. Yeah, surely not going to be going for the third demi boss. And he wants to go into the boss with 10 fish by the looks of things. Doesn't realize that he's dropped his harpoon. He's wasted a lot of time there. Looking for those extra fish. Not going to be able to go in with them. And no poon for Kirby. Does not pick up those extra fish. We see the halberd and the staff. Going into this boss. We see the vengeance go off on the boss as well. Now we are going to see a faster boss on average with two tier 2 weapons than you would for 5 to 1. But it takes a little bit of extra time on the prep. See a 3 minute 23 second prep time here for Kirby. Would have to be in the boss room for 6 minutes and 37 seconds in order to not beat his teammates time of 10 minutes. But if he goes over 10 minutes I assume he's just going to die. And I don't think he can even survive that long. We see eight fish in the inventory for Kirby. We also see four doses of the Restore Potion. 668 hit points left on the boss. Some pretty nuclear hits so far. Gets the Redemption off as well, wasting no ticks. On his attacks, would have to waste ticks if he had to eat a fish here. So we see him running around. 580 hit points left on the boss. He decides to eat a fish there. Did not need to. I think he panicked when he saw the tornadoes coming. So Kirby, maybe not the most well-versed in the corrupted gauntlet. I think we would have seen the better gauntlet players there not go for the eat with the fish, potentially try and get the redemption off. But very, very consistent of a gamer is Molgo Kirby. It was an off prey hit. He took a hit off prayer, so he had to eat. Okay, so pretty lucky not to get more damage there was Kirby, actually. Um, but did get the tick eat off. And uh, as I was saying... You might have seen players that are a little bit better at the gauntlet not take a hit off prayer there. But like I said, Kirby, a very consistent gamer. The most well-rounded for his team. Like I said, we're going to be seeing him in pretty much every boss except for the Fight Caves and Inferno. For Team BDSM in this grand final matchup. 270 hit points left on the boss. Just clocked six minutes. Is he going to get hit by the Tornadoes here? He's not. Just in time. Did he just take another hit off prayer? Maybe just took another hit off prayer there. 13 damage. If that was an off prayer hit, he did just get chanced. But as we say, there's no such thing as a chance. You die or you don't. And Kirby, a little bit shaky here in this corrupted Hunleaf. Like I said, it sounds bad to say, but not the best performance. You would expect to see better out of a grand finalist here in the speedrun cup. This is the best of the best in the game, and you would expect him to perform a little bit better than this. Seventy-nine hit points left on the hun left, two fish left in the inventory, thirteen prayer points as well. And he does take it down. That's going to be a 658, 657 here for Kirby for his team. Bringing that average to 828. And currently, 828. That's a very beatable time for Osmith. Very beatable. As we see, the Smoke 3000 coming in to this Corrupted Gauntlet run. Gets a weapon frame from the first micro boss.
And we're going to need to see a very fast time for him here. We saw a six-minute average yesterday for Team BDSM. A six-minute average. And in order to bring his team down to a six-minute average here, he's going to need to get a four-minute kill. So if we see him get around a seven, six, seven minute kill, we will see that average come down to about seven minutes, maybe eight minutes, seven and a half. We'll have to see the small 3000 here. See one minute on the prep time so far. And he is gonna go ahead and make the weapon. Now, at this point in the run, he surely knows that his teammate has died. The question is, will that cause him to go for a riskier run trying to make up time, or will he play it safe and just try and get the completion? We see three leaves in the inventory. That is not something you would see from a player that is planning to find some food. Obviously, a lot riskier of a strategy because there is the chance that you just get RNG'd out. There's no guarantee. Oh my God. And again, the vengeance. That's two times we have seen the vengeance pop off on the wrong boss here. Tried to get it off on the demi boss. Unfortunately, the vengeance going off on the micro boss. See three weapon frames in the inventory. Finds a second demi boss here. So we're going to see a two tier five boss. See a lot of question marks about the micro boss in the chat, guys. This dragon here, that's a demi boss. The Hunleth, that's the boss. The, uh, the unicorns and the scorpions, they're the mini bosses. You see these rats? That's a micro boss. See the mining here. For Smork, he is going to be going for some fishing here. Does find a spot. Might as well pick up some fish at this point. A three-minute prep almost. So he will just be going for the consistent kill here. Makes himself the last potion. And he is going to be going for some more fishing. Has four weapon frames in the inventory. Is he going to drop a few of those? In order to replace them with fish, he is... All right, two tier three weapons here for Smork 3000. We see seven fish in the inventory, only two prayer bots. So it looks as though Smork was planning on going for that no food run, but unfortunately, just not getting the best layout to go for it and ends up with a three minute 30 prep time. We saw Smork go into the boss yesterday, the three fish send. Went into the boss with three fish and sent it at a 2.05. So a minute and 30 seconds slower than his fastest prep from yesterday. But he is getting some nuclear hits here on the Hunleth. Going into first tornadoes already on 800 hit points. Smork 3000 popping off like a frog in a foreskin here in this corrupted Hunleth. Seven hundred and thirty HP left on the boss. We're going to see him try and pull off a few redemptions here. See the flicks coming in as well. Does not want to run out of prayer points. Second tornado, six hundred and sixty hit points. The hits have slowed down here for Smork three thousand. Did come into the boss, absolutely popping off. And they've slowed down a little bit. Five hundred HP left for the corrupted Hunleth. We see six fish in the inventory for Smork three thousand. And after seeing yesterday him going into the boss with only three fish, 
I would say six is probably plenty for half the hit points of the Hunleth. We see some incredible footwork here, getting the redemption off during the tornado phase as well. Really fancy footwork there for Smork 3000. And five fish remain. It has to eat a fish. Unfortunately, does not have the correct hit points to go for the redemption. Does go for the redemption there. Gets off the floor tiles just in time. Has to go for the eat there. So the boss change attacks to range. Sat on around 40 hit points. Looking pretty comfortable is Smork 3000. Seven prayer points left here for Smork, and he is going to eat up, just playing it really, really safe here, and uses his second last dose of restore, not for a redemption, but just to restore his prayer points. We see six minutes and 25 seconds on the clock here for Smork 3000, and I was sat there talking about how Kirby wasn't the best gauntlet runner for his team, and at this pace, he is going to get the fastest time for his team. Current pacing, you would see Smork 3000 go over the 7-minute mark unless his hits go nuclear here. 116 hit points left on the boss. This will bring his team's average down. 6 minutes 52, 62 hit points left on the Hunleth. Whoa, we see a melee hit here. Has to tick eat that one. Does Smork 3000... And he does take down the boss with a seven. Not sure what that said, but Team BDSM, 802.6, thanks to a death from the Ruster Man. And uh, 802.6, if you're Oz Smith looking at that, you got to sit here and think, you know what? I think there's a very good chance... We're going to be able to take this one down. Eight minutes and two seconds. Not the best time, Hootie Tootie. Yeah, that's a, that's got to be the one that they think we've got to take this. We spoke about it briefly, but this is definitely a boss going into it that a mis couple mistakes from BDSM could lean in, in Osmith's favor, and, and they've got to you know take advantage of that and, and get an early map win before we get to the fight caves and the infernos, which will heavily favor the BDSM side. Yeah, absolutely. And we know in the speedrun cup, anything can happen. We see a death there for Rasta Man. Uh, did get that Rasta RNG, but unfortunately, a slight mistake right at the end, taking a 15 from the tornado, causing him to die and give his team a 10 minute time, leaving their average at eight minutes and two seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to jump into the next run, and that is Ozmith taking on the gauntlet here in the grand final of the speedrun cup. And we are going to see the man with the whole team on his shoulders, Kevzi, taking on the corrupted gauntlet. First room here for Kevzi. We see the farming patch. We find the mining straight away as well. Still no micro bosses. If Kevzi has a million fans, I am one of them. If Kevzi has 10 fans, I am one of them. If Kevzi has no fans, that means I am no more on earth. If the world is against Kevzi, I am against the world. I love Kevzi to my last breath. What a beautiful sentiment for Oz Myth's finest. Spoke to a few people after the stream yesterday, and I have heard that Kevzi has put in hundreds of hours practicing for this speed run cup, ladies and gentlemen. He's not here to fuck spiders. He's not here to put boots on caterpillars. He is here to win this for his team as we see him get 150 shards and a weapon frame. See a tier two bow coming out of Kevzi. Believe the boss was praying mage there, so. And he does find the uh, the corrupted dark beast, my worst enemy. For those that don't know, I did die in a corrupted gauntlet on my hardcore Iron Man to a corrupted dark beast, not even the boss. I died to a demi boss on my hardcore Iron Man. My worst enemy. We see Kevzi get himself the corrupted bowstring. 64. 
we're going to see a drop here of a fish to pick up the herb. The poon goes on the ground. See a four fish room here for Kevzy. And all he needs to find is a tree to chop. And he's ready to go into the boss. And he does find it. We see two minutes on the prep time here. Going to need a little bit more in terms of shards. But he's going to kill this corrupted scorpion here. 105 shards from the corrupted scorpion. Very nice. Going to drop the axe. Pick up the bark. Teleport straight home. He is. Waste a little bit of time on the teleport there. We're going to see him make it the tier 1 armor. Does get it done in time. Clicks a little too quickly there. Loses a tick on the interface. We see the tier 2 stuff as well. And it looks as though we're going to see 10 or so fish in the inventory. Eats a couple of fish. And still has 4, 8, 9 fish remaining. But he only has one restore here, guys. So we're not going to see any redemptions here from Kevzy. And we are going to see... Some flicking when it comes to the range phase. We see the punch here. Does not get the piety on, guys. That is something we have seen from other players in this competition. Getting the piety on for the punch. And I do believe I saw he uh, he kicked there as well. So missing the accuracy. But a 2 minute 40 prep time. Very nice prep there for Kevzy. Coming in 1 minute faster than we saw Smork 3000 in that last run. As an 8 minute and 2 second to beat. Congratulations to Herlock getting the Lil Zick at 2065 kill count. GZ, a little clap in the chat for Herlock there. 850 hit points left on the Hunleth going into the first Tornadoes. This Hunleth is going down quicker than a slut on a Saturday. Mage Prayer for the boss gets the nice little staff off. 700 hit points left on the boss. Kevzy getting some nice RNG on this boss. Will we see any mistakes out of Kevzy here? We saw a few mistakes. Oh, we do! Might have been chance there. Didn't get the ticket off in time, I believe. No, not a chance. Ended up on 24 hit points. It was fine. Very close one there. Taking an 11. Ending up on 24 after the 20 heal from the fish. But very, very close to the chance there. But as they say, even if he was chanced, it, uh, there's no such thing as a chance. You either die or you don't. Kevzy, 22 prayer points left. We'll potentially see him go for the redemption as he gets lower in the prayer points. We'll see the tick eat there with eight hit points left. Doesn't take any damage from the boss, but we should see him go for the redemption as the prayer points get lower. Like he is going to need to use his restore here. Oh, punches one hit too early and was one tick late on the redemption flick there as well. He's going to have to eat now. We see the shaky clicks coming in from Kevs. He needs to keep his composure here. Four prayer points left. We see him holding on to those four prayer points for the redemption flick. Is he going to get it off? Doesn't get the redemption flick. A little early there on the redemption flick as well. Takes that mage hit off prayer for a zero. It's all going wrong here for Kevzy in this corrupted gauntlet run. Two fish left in the inventory. Has to use the restore dose without getting the redemption flick off. 300 hit points left. We saw Smork 3000 go in with three fish yesterday. To start the boss, two fish left should be plenty here for Kevzy. He's going to have to tick eat this hit. The tick eat doesn't go off. Only four damage from the corrupted hunt left. A 40 hit there from the... Oh, no! And he's gone one hit too many here with the staff. Zero fish left. He is going to have to use his redemption flicks here. And he's got six hits on the boss with the staff. The redemption does go off. He needs some roster man RNG here on the hits from the hunt left. 166... Hit points left on the boss. Let's see the damage output and the damage taken. Takes a zero from the boss. A zero again from the boss. 154. Oh my god, he's done it again, ladies and gentlemen. This is an absolute disaster for Kevzy. We see the screen shake. And this has all gone tits up. Six minutes and 30 seconds on the total time. He needs to see a redemption go off with one dose left in his inventory. Praying Mage is the boss. The redemption doesn't go off. Can he get it here during the... T 
the tornado phase misses a hit a zero again from the boss he is getting that roster man oh gee the redemption goes off he almost dies to the tornado 77 hit points left on the boss he has 15 hit points he can't redemption again and he does it again with the staff oh my god he survives the last hit as well there's no way I've just jumped out of my chair. That was the incredible. He did get that Rasta Man RNG. Kevzy survives his corrupted gauntlet run with a 705 for his team. Oh my god. Kevzy with a 705 corrupted gauntlet for his teammates there in the first gauntlet run. And Tony P going to be running the second gauntlet for Oz Myth here. Remember, guys, Oz Myth during this run would have had absolutely no idea what time BDSM put up. So it's not as though they can sit here and go for safe kills, get those two tier threes, get extra fish. They have to go for these speedy times because they have no clue what their opponents got. In fact, they still have no clue. The only person in the world that knows the results of these is Hootie Tootie. So even the grand finalists here in the Speedrun Cup don't know who wins. So they're going to find out live with us at the end of this stream. We see a 705 from Kevzy with some incredible RNG. Tony P wasting a few ticks there, not standing underneath the micro boss. See the bear coming in it means he is going to be getting that tier three halberd. Opening up the rooms as he attacks the bear. Finds another leaf, but does not find the mining spot that he is looking for. Does Tony P. Not going to pick up the second leaf. Oh, he already has a second leaf in his inventory. Chopping the tree as he goes through to get some extra shards, but missing the tick on it. Tony P a little shaky at the start of this corrupted gauntlet. We see a nice staff hit there. Finds another fishing spot. Going to be filling up his vials at the fishing spot. Dropping the pickaxe. Perfectly getting all of those fish. Eight fish. Looks as though he's going to be running in with, I think he needs a few more shards here, 120 for the armor, and then he needs 40 for the second weapon, so he should have enough here, but potentially looking for another fishing spot is Tony P. Not confident enough to go in with those eight fish. As we see, you Tin Asia in the chat saying, best PVMers in the world, Lameo. My friend, this was open sign-up. Anybody could have signed up for this competition, and you didn't. Enjoy the perm. We are watching the best PVMers in the world here in the Speed Run Cup. There is no doubt about it. And Tony P is going to be going in with 12 fish. Halberd, 2 tier 3. He doesn't have a bow. Tony? 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 That's a 3 minute 30 prep time and he's going in without a bow. So he's not going to be able to do 5 to 1 here. He is just going to have to use that tier 2 staff for this kill. A big slip up here for Tony P. He was trying to get that third weapon frame by the sounds of things, but uh, the 3 minute 30 prep time, not looking good for him. You have to ask the question, would it have been better off for him to try and find that third weapon frame or just go in with the tier 2 staff? He's already at a 3 minute 30 prep time and the tier 2 staff, not exactly what he'd be looking for. Although we are seeing some nuclear hits. 700 hit points going into four first tornadoes here for Tony P with a tier 2 staff. Who needs a tier 3 staff 
or a bow for 5 to 1 when you've got arms this big. This is absolutely insane here from Tony P. Nuclear hits. All you have to do is think big. 580 hit points left. We see 5 minutes on the clock. With that 3 minute 30 prep time. It's a nice little hit off here with no piety, Tony P. And he's going to want to have piety on as much as he can. We heard Hemi talking about earlier in those Inferno runs, just how important piety is. You're better off with a one-way switch and piety than an eight-way switch without it. It's super important. Tony P misses the redemption flick there. Tony P pushing P here with that tier two staff. Seven prayer points. Not going to be able to go for this redemption here, is he? He must be on 14 hit points. Oh, takes a 13 from the Tornado, spawning exactly on him there. And he dies. You are see we are seeing the best of the best and Tony P <laughs> compete in this speedrun cup final and... That's an unfortunate death for sure. <laughs> oh my God, ladies and gentlemen. A death for Tony P. And that is a 10-minute kill time for his team. We see the running average up the top, an 8.32, which means they have 30 seconds to make up here over the average, which means if my math is correct and my math is correct, we're going to need to see seven minutes or less here from Slinky. No. Six minutes or less here from Slinky. He's going to have to get an outrageously good time. Am I correct there? I could be wrong. My math is probably not correct. Just forget I said anything. Let's see a good time here from Slinky and hope to the good Lord that they can take this one down. <laughs> I've run the numbers, guys. Trust me, I've got the calculator up. We're going to need to see a two-minute kill here from Slinky to win this for his team. We see 11 fish in the inventory already. So quite a few fish going down for Slinky. Needs to find himself a nice little farming spot and a nice tree. Does find the tree. No farming spot still. Slinky is the best gauntlet runner for his team. Finds a demi boss, and it is the dragon. Still no farming spot. Finds a second dragon. Will be interesting to see if he goes for the second dragon now that he's found it in this layout. Two minutes so far on the prep time. And we see he starts to flick the mage and the augury. Does get another Grim Leaf on the ground, choosing not to take it. Is he going to go for the kill here for the second demi boss? He is still no farming patch. Getting some awful RNG here is Slinky on this farming patch, and he's going to run through. He decides not to go for the second demi boss. Much more important that he gets the farming patch. Hello? There it is, finally getting that farming patch. Two minutes and 30 seconds on prep. Looks like he is going to go for the five to one now. He does have enough shards in his inventory to make two tier two weapons as well. We'll see a little cook up here. And if I've heard anything about Slinky, I would say that's not the only thing he's cooking. You know what I mean, boys? We we'll see the tier two bow, the tier three staff. We, don't, we do see the tier one halberd. Unfortunate... That the boss is starting on Mage as well. See, a lot of people saying meth in the chat. No, I was referring to him cooking up this gauntlet, boss. Get your minds out of the gutter. 15 prayer points. He is one tick flicking. You'll see him try and one tick flick. 
to remain uh, to keep those prayer points up so he can get the uh the redemption flick off but he is just gonna have to eat his restore potion here five to one looking pretty perfect so far 828 hit points coming out of first nados see the redemption flick here down to 14 hit points see the redemption flick here Missing the redemption flick. Is he going to try for it during NATO's? He doesn't. Goes to the tick eat though. Perfectly gets the tick eat off. You've got to put some respect on his name. Doesn't take any damage from the NATO's either. Perfect. Perfect foot movement there from Slinky. Seven hundred hit points on the Hunliff. Very, very good footwork here from Osmith Slinky. Not getting the most ideal RNG on the boss, though. Now, I believe someone who is better than me at math in the chat said he needs a 7 minute 30 in order to win it for his team here. Both teams having a death. See, 13 hit points here for Slinky. Five minutes, 20 seconds on the clock. 433 hit points. Goes down to 11. Not going to be able to get the redemption flick off here. Oh, 21 damage there. Not too sure what the floor tiles can do. Potential chance there for Slinky. Two hits with the Halberd as well. Struggling to count. 551 on the clock. See a lot of different opinions in the chat about what time he needs here to win it for his team. I guess we're just going to have to find out when that time comes up at the end. Four prayer points left. Is he going to go for the redemption flick here? He is. Unfortunately, doesn't come off. Again, so unlucky not to get the redemption flicks there is Slinky. 223 hit points left on the boss. Another redemption coming in. 18 hit points left. One dose of resource and one fish. 173 hit points left on the Corrupted Hunluff. Gets that last one off. Just gets his Mage Prayer on in time for that hit. 13 damage. He's going to have to eat his last fish here. Gets chanced by the boss. Eats his last fish. 6 minutes 50 on the clock. No food. No restores. 28 hit points. Can he get that Ruster Man RNG? We see the flicks coming in. 31 damage. One more hit. Oh, he needed that hit to come in. 7 minutes and 5 seconds. The boss goes down. It's going to be a 7 minutes and 10. Is that going to be enough? It's not going to be enough. Very close there for Ozmith. An 804.8 up against Team BDSM's 802.6. Ozmith coming in as the underdogs and really needed to take down that corrupted gauntlet there. Very unfortunate for Ozmith not to take that one down. And Hootie Tootie, Team BDSM coming in to this grand final matchup with a one nil yeah we've uh we saw some mistakes made by both teams there and uh it's osmith going to be kicking themselves for not capitalizing on those mistakes that bdsm made it's a uh, they're probably going to look back at the end of this and think we we could have won that gauntlet and uh yeah i mean bdsm probably a bit nervous but seeing that result now they're going to be Quite happy knowing that that one that they probably thought, you know, out of the nine bosses, what are the ones we've definitely won? What are the ones we think we might have lost? What are the ones we think are on the edge? That one would have been one of those middle ones where they're not really sure. Like, we know that they could die as well, and it's up to the other two times. And 
And yeah, BDSM is going to be quite happy knowing they've won that. Yeah, definitely. Uh, obviously, these players don't know the results of this grand final yet. All the bosses have already been run. The only person that knows the winner is Hootie Tootie. And as he said, they're going to be sat there. They will know the bosses that they got really good times at. And they will know the bosses they most likely have won. But that being said, anything can happen. You know, yesterday we saw Oz Todd pull off a Zolra time, which was unbeatable. If they were in the grand final, they would have thought they'd won that round. And then Kirby comes through and beats it for them. So these players really have no idea who is going to take this one down. It is a 1-0 here for Team BDSM. Hoodie, we're going to have to get rid of your camera again because we are going to be getting Hemis back on the line. We will be going into the Inferno for these two teams here in the grand final let me go ahead and give the man himself a call. And here he is, the big chin man himself. Let me go ahead and show you my screen so you're able to see it. Hemi's welcome back. We're going to waste no time here, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to be jumping into the Inferno runs from Team BDSM. And that is going to be run by Adicon. Hemis, I'm going to let you take the commentary for this one because I've got to download some files in the back end. So this is all you, my friend. I'm not going to lie. I want to flame, but I'm scared. I feel like I'm going to flame him and then he's going to flame me back. And I'm like, I'm, I'm, I'm panicking, bro. I'm shaking, dude. I've never, you don't know pain until you've had Addy literally VOD review one of your runs. Fucking, everybody's sitting here gassing up Croft. Oh, Croft is so good. Oh, even though he's 12 years old, he's so good. He's so good. He, he does one VOD review and Croft starts panicking. He starts fucking panicking. <laughs> Don't mess with Addy, bro. He's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a scary man. Croft isn't 12, by the way. He's he's a, he's only mildly older than 12. <laughs> he's 14. <laughs> Dirt Nerd's got it. You know, I didn't want to. I didn't want to be the one to leak it, but you know, Croft is a, a little bit of a minor. Ooh. <laughs> I mean, early man is pretty standard stuff. He decided not to blowpipe for that. Maintains better positioning, but you get situations like that where the uh, chins are weak as fuck and don't kill anything. Kind of cringe. Personally, I think usually there I would blowpipe the bat. And then wait for them to clump, but this is also very fair because you only lose one tick doing that. On the other hand, the other way you risk not one, maybe you like one hit the bat and you have nothing to hit later. Ooh. Uh, Scythe hitting nothing. Can guarantee he's going to be a little bit mad about that one. Shout out. Oh, ooh, ooh. Paid advertisements. Paid advertisements. I might need some comp compensation for that one. He's not happy about that. Noodling, even the Debo hits nothing. Dumping a blowpipe spec early is very big, but normally you'll see that mostly out of thralls. Generally speaking, as long as you dump the blowpipe spec before the first wave with the melee, it is uh, it's usually good enough. He's got two Zectas, so he's got another chance. True. Another chance, like the fucking gauntlet runs. On, is, is are those the first tests that we actually saw? As uh, I, I didn't get to see the other ones, but in all of the quarterfinal matches, every team submitted one death, and it wasn't until the semi-finals in the matchup between BDSM and Oztob we saw finally a team submit three actual runs. And uh, yeah, we've we've gone back to the deaths. So yeah, still still going on from that. We had one matchup where all gauntlets were completed. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> people were people were like, "Oh, this guy can't count. Oh, I can't count, bro. Counting that shit is fucking hard, man. I'm 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 gonna be straight with you. I'm not counting that. Fuck that. That shit sucks." Oh, he's gonna finish the bat here. Personally, I like to save uh, because you don't really get anything scytheable at the end of this. But he will pick up the chin. Uh, he gives up at the end. Decides he's just gonna blowpipe it. This is all fairly standard stuff, nothing nothing too crazy right now. Ooh, 
Ooh, nice chin. Finishes off the nibblers. That's about all you can really ask for. Usually, uh, I think a lot of first capers really, they chase nibblers too hard and they're like, wow, man, like nibblers suck. I'm losing so much time because of nibblers and stuff. It's really the same thing when you speed run. Nibblers got to die early. If you don't kill them, like usually they pull you out of position. So, I mean, something you, you always tell a lot of... Or, oh, nice little kick with a disrespect. Not really any chins you can hit on this side. This blob spawn doesn't... There's not much you can do here. But, like, I don't know. So, something to tell a lot of early Inferno speedrunners is always... It's like... Nibblers have to die early. They don't die early. They'll, they'll pull you out of position. They'll, they'll do a lot of stupid shit, and it's really not fun. Now, Hemis, you talk about these chins. The big chins. The inventor of the big mm -hmm. chin. Um... Can you talk a little bit on how much of a time save they are setting up those chins? We saw MCU in the uh, third place matchup pretty much setting up every single melee and blob to get a chin off to get some damage on the melee and the mini blobs at the same time. I want to say, so the main, <laughs> the thing that we always teach people when they're just starting off, wow, his scythe sucks, is um, it's actually not that worth to hit as long until, if you're really learning. So when you're learning, you're going to end up doing, let's say it saves you maybe two ticks, right? Because every blowpipe actually has a higher max hit than hitting a chin does. Your chin hits like, I believe, 29 with a buckler, and your blowpipe hits 33. So really, it's the accuracy is about the same. You're only getting one extra blowpipe hit, right? So if you end up doing, like, let's say I lose two ticks to set up a chin, probably wasn't worth you lose like 50 HP to set up a chin, probably wasn't worth, right? So that's that's the problem with, well, that's like the nuance with it, right? It's like, it's not worth unless you're good at it. If you're shit, like, I, it's, fuck it, you know, you probably didn't even save any time there. But like, that's why you get these like experts at it, they run around, they set them up flawlessly, they don't lose health, they flick everything, they, at the same time, they're also dealing with like, you know, like they're balancing four or five different things at the same time. And that's what makes it good because like they they get to capitalize on it. And over the course of the entire run, maybe they chin 50 extra monsters. That's 50 extra blowpipes. And honestly, in cases with the melee specifically, the melee is extra risk because uh, you can't really flick the melee with the blob. That You can't do it perfectly, right? Unless you do that fucking step, out, step under off tick that MCU was doing. And to do that, well, because it ignores the defense when you're chinning the nibbler or you're chinning a mini blob, that it ends up being like, even though it's got lower max hit, I would chalk it up as like more worth than just hitting a blowpipe. Just because, you know, nerf blowpipe can be dog shit. You can sometimes sit there and blowpipe a melee for like 10, 15 seconds. So by, by chinning melee specifically, you save even more time. But usually you can approximate it to saving two ticks for every every extra monster that you chin. And the melees are a lot easier to set up with the chins as well because you can drag them towards wherever you want to go. Um, and as you said, you know, the better you are at the Inferno, the more time save you're going to get from those chins and the people that aren't as good, probably even wasting time going for those chins. But a player of the caliber of Adicon, you're going to see him set these chins up and use them as an incredible time save throughout this Inferno run. I think generally speaking, Addy's a very um he's a he's a very conservative player. He plays for the um he plays for the average. Like he won't take he won't take extremely large risks because he knows like over time like there's gonna be some level of execution error for most players. And in the process of doing that, like he'll he'll avoid taking like really, really risky strategies. But even if it's not technically optimal, like on in the long run he'll probably end up playing a lot better. So his I think his playstyle is very, um, I don't know, it's, it's, it's clean, it's basic, but it's going to net you some really, really good times. We see a 629 Until, going into wave 18 here for Adi Khan. That is bad, but <laughs> so once again, we will, we will say, fuck it. Oh, is he going to go for the chin? No. Nah. So here you could, uh, you don't have to kill that bat, right? What you can, let's say you want it to be like mega TAS optimal. You, you probably would have kept that bat there, then you would have popped the uh, popped the blob, gone for the nibs. 
I guess he didn't realize the nibs were dead. One HP unlucky. No. And then uh, when it pops, you get to chin everything together. But go ahead. We see that uh, in the first few rounds of the speedrun cup, we saw players going in with that one-way switch with the scythe. Some players opting to take the blood fury. Some players opting to take the ferocious gloves. Now, obviously, in the later rounds, we've seen everyone go in with that three-way switch. Now, these runs were all pre-recorded, and some of these runs for the earlier uh, earlier matches here in the Speedrun Cup were recorded a month, uh, maybe even a month and a half ago. Has the strategy changed? Is that why we're seeing people bring the extra melee switch? Was there some new discovery within the last few weeks um, that is getting these players to bring the extra melee switch? I want to say that there's not really been any new discoveries, but it might it might just be a change in the mentality. Like maybe maybe right at the start they were a lot more nervous because it's like, oh shit! Like, is this is the first run of the speed run cup? You know, like I gotta I, I gotta make sure I fucking live for one thing. But then I think as time progresses, like maybe they just maybe it was just like oh you know like we've been recording for a couple weeks now. They feel a lot more lenient, but more than anything, I want to say that this is probably because they just realize they're in grand finals. You know, they probably realize, okay, like they're here for a reason. You know, this is going to be a tight competition. I got to bring my A game, and especially like personally, I was surprised that Addy didn't take the three way from right from the start, because you'll find like you know players like Adam, players like Addy, Neen, Cancer, like they're all they're all so consistently good that most of the time they don't take stupid damage for no reason like they're not gonna you know they're not gonna just randomly miss flicks they're not gonna run in and get punched by a blob for a 30 so like three brews is perfectly fine for them and you know they don't need they don't need extra prayer they don't need extra this or that so i think they'll you know for them this this setup is in, is a walk in the park yeah, we see these so, players going with three brewers. And I got to say, you would never catch me dead walking into the Inferno with three brewers. Uh, it took me 167 attempts to get my first Infernal Cape. No, I'm not joking. 167 tries. And uh, I also took in the full Justy. One time I even took in the Dinny B in the full Justy. Should have seen me running that Zuck Shield in absolute maximum defense bonus. Absolutely great times. I do remember the uh, the good old ACB the the ACB Eagle Eye meme, and I will say, I will say you know like this the difficulty on on this setup the the three brew setup it might it might come close but you know I don't I I do think that the the ACB Eagle Eye a little bit more difficult you know the wow. No rigor, Ooh, you like it's you know rigor's a lot of damage. I was telling I was telling you guys earlier, you know, like you got to keep rigor on. <laughs> the gas here from Hemi's. Hear that, guys? ACB Eagle Eye Cape harder than the speed runs we are seeing here in the speed run cup. But 167 attempts for my first cape, guys. Immediately after I got it, I gambled it straight away. It took me three months that, to get the cape. Is... <laughs> Immediately gambled it. Went back in with a Tebow and rigor, and. uh Got it the first try with the T-Bone rigger. It's all about it's all about learning, you know, Hemis. I uh, I did the Inferno to um, to learn the game. It was the first PVM I did in old school RuneScape. I had like fifty Zolra KC. That's all I'd done, and decided to do the Inferno, and uh, came out of it Australia's number one PVMer. That is a fucking ballsy achievement. I will I will say. Jumping, I mean, people, people call it the hardest, but I don't think it's, I don't think it's an exaggeration. Like it really is like to learn at a base level, it is easily like the most intensive piece of content that you're probably going to end up doing just because, you know, like, it, like people will be like, oh, well, you know, speed running Tov is going to be harder. Speed running Chambers is going to be harder, but it's like, there's levels to it, right? If you're gonna take anything at any insane level, fucking, you know, Wooks doing no pillar with like no supplies is gonna be fucking right up there as well, right? But like, if you want to talk base level difficulty, that is the hardest piece. And for you to jump into that, like, 
as your first fucking well first i'm gonna call you fucking crazy <laughs> two i'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna take this time to mention frog and foreskin you're probably fucking popping off like a frog in a foreskin no, i was popping off like a frog in a foreskin emmys that is for sure and uh, like you said inferno one of the hardest pieces of content in the game and i think it's just because you know there's so many different things you have to learn inside the inferno especially speed runnings it's not just learning how to prayer flick. It's not just learning how to off tick monsters. There's so many different parts that go into these speed runs. And uh, the best of the best really putting on a clinic for us today. And Adicon currently sat at 1348. I think it'll be the damage here. He's not going to be. Able, oh, I guess he can't get off that side. But it was a little bit lower than. But this is this is kind of what I meant when I said. um, Like he he's fine to play. He's fine to play a. A very like streamlined simple approach to it because he just he takes into account like like what's what's probably going to end up causing people to make mistakes and stuff because like sometimes sometimes like maybe he'll uh he'll fucking safe spot a melee and then he won't be able to lure it back in time without losing like one tick but one tick is usually not not a deal breaker Whereas usually like maybe, usually not a deal right usually now, you, <laughs> this year in the speed run cup forecasts. one tick has come into play way too many times for us to forget about it until you turbo pvm and die on a rope skip what? Oh, yep wow. yep yep oh, shit now uh, one tick can make all the difference especially in the grand final here in the speed run cup 2.2 billion gp prize pool these players are fighting for First place is going to take home approximately 1.32 bill. And second place taking home 20% of the prize pool, 30% of the prize pool. So looking at about a, 650 mil. And fucking frog in a foreskin in the chat. Some motherfucker made his actual Twitch account called frog in a foreskin. <laughs> Some other motherfuckers named rope skip. <laughs> but we're seeing a... A 15-20 split. I mean, I, I guess it, it, it's a little bit on the slow side, but, not, you know, nothing crazy here. This is looking pretty standard. I want to say he's going to get... I mean, with Addy, I, I, I wouldn't doubt that he'd probably... Ooh, cheeky one way. That's that's a purse. That's, like, key right there. Sometimes you'll see people, like, they try and hit, like, a two-way, maybe they hit a three-way scythe, but, like, they miss the piety. It's like, it doesn't fucking matter. You literally just saw him one way scythe the mage with piety, right? Piety always, every single time, every speed run, doesn't matter what it is, top, chambers, whatever. You always hit piety first. You always hit rigor first, right? So it's yeah, like, and fun. especially when the mage was on that low hit points, it was only on like eight HP. Um, getting the accuracy from piety is going to be uh, way more important than getting the max hits. I mean, it's it's the max hits and and the accuracy. Oh, he goes for the crazy, but a little <coughs> little early on it. There's not much he could have done there, though. I don't think there's there's no universe in which he could have hit that chin because uh, he either had to sit there and lose ticks to do it because if he t bowed he wouldn't have been able to make it unless he spent more time luring it. But he kind of lured it out on accident anyway. Cheeky scythe there. Ruru calling me a weeb, even though this guy's a motherfucking closet weeb. Don't make me don't make me bust out the fucking the screenshot. I have the screenshot. <laughs> I have the screenshot. I also wanted to show Eviscape the fucking screenshot of Stooge because people, people <laughs> I like, did oh. I did see that in the DMs just before. Um let me let me go ahead and read it out for the people. Uh Stooge here said not to make out with myself and beat myself off and fondle my own balls and kiss the head of my cock and little a little and lick my own shaft and suck my own dick and swallow my own cum and fuck myself in the ass with a long slow strokes and swallow my own cum again but i can click decent and uh very interesting there from stooge <laughs> um, yeah that was the um that's the second that's the second place inferno runner we have right here you know <laughs> i'm sub 40 what was that 49 a very very high level player um, I mean, he's honestly, I think he's like the golden child of the Inferno speedrun community. You won't find the top level Inferno speedrunner that does not love Stooge. Stooge has some, uh, wild moments out there. 
That's what we like to see from the community. Oh, a hundred percent. I mean, like I'd rather, I would a hundred times over rather be, um, stupid or sorry, not stupid, but fun and weird than like boring, (laughs) than boring and not weird. Uh, I will, I will take that every day of the week. Like my good, every day of the fucking week. My good friend, a lanky 27 year old New Zealander, Ron Plays Games, once said, I'd rather be a little bit weird than quite a bit boring. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. The boys get it. I'll never forget the gimp days. Come on. <laughs> ah. Well, let's not make the chat sad, you know. You know, we don't want to. Another kick from Adicon here. That's the second time we've seen him kick the nibblers. Minus four ticks. Ooh, doesn't click the back one or doesn't click the middle one either. I will. I'll, all right, I'll, I'll ask one more off-topic thing, which is, what did you mean when you would always say, "Get around me"? Oh, get around it. You know, just. Get around me. Let's say you let's say you you know you're playing some sort of sport, and you you playing kick some footy. Yeah, playing some footy, and you kick a goal. You know, and all the boys just come in, give you a slap on the bum, give you a high five. You know, that's the boys getting around you. So when you do something cool in RuneScape, you got to get the boys to get around you. Get around it. I'm 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 understanding. I think I'm understanding that. Get around me. You got to get, get around, around it. You know, just a just a bit of footy for the boys. Um, I'm this just in. I'm getting some very urgent news from one of our team captains, Mister Jerry R S. Uh, the guy who he's supposed to be playing, but God knows, I I've never fucking seen him. I don't know where this guy is. He's not played a he's not done a single thing for his fucking team, but nothing else. He, you can you can decide whether or not you ever want to. Show them what the fuck that is. <laughs> Let's have a look here. Yeah. What is Jerry saying? <laughs> that is uh, I mean, I can't show this picture on stream, but what I am seeing is um, Jerry's lunch. Looks as though he's cooked up a mushroom and bacon sandwich. And it looks as though the bacon has been cooked in the microwave. And a lot of butter. That is a lot of butter as well. And not evenly spread either. Lots of uh, clumps going on there. That's questionable food there from the captain of Oz Myth, who we actually haven't seen perform any boss just yet. Hopefully we'll see a little performance out of him today in the grand final, but no promises. If we don't see him today, I think we're going to have to start referring to him as Coach Jerry. That's why I fucking love... I love Oz Myth, bro. Oz Myth on my fucking chest. A the big Kevzy fan. Of- the game bro oh yeah 100 percent. there's a million kebzy fans like everybody else is saying like oh you know i'm like i am one of them it's like i'm not one of them i am all of them <laughs> i am quite literally all of them but i i will have to mention the the last wave he did was actually very very nice in most scenarios people usually keep that bat behind the melee for situations like this where you can just blow pipe scythe very easy time save you know like no matter what you do you always save the time there but um, he actually popped the bat, and I, I hadn't realized it, but there was a uh, one more nibbler left, and he managed to pop the bat because he didn't want to kite it all the way across. And then uh, he just lured the melee over after the mage died, which was really... It's, I think it's a key example of what I consider Addy's playstyle, which is like very simple, but like very thorough, just clean time save. Just clean play, if I had to describe it. Now, we know in the fight caves, depending on the time that you enter the fight caves, there is a static spawn. Um, In the Inferno, you see a bunch of random spawns on different waves. Is it completely random in the Inferno, or will you sometimes see the same spawns in different uh, Inferno runs? It should be. (laughs) As far as I'm aware, it's, uh, it's completely random, but you can, like, to some degree, like... Once it's decided, you can like you can predict what it is because it's always going to be the same thing. That's why you have like like crazy members like Absol, like because I'm uh, I'm quote someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure he scouted waves on uh on the world record run, right? Because like it, so once you can do I don't remember how to scout, but if you have um if you have a scenario where you can basically log in, see the wave, and then uh finish it, like you can log out whether it's like a fake log or whatever. And you'll be able to see basically how um, where everything's going to spawn. And once it's set, it's always going to be like that. 
So in terms of a speed run, there's not really much you can do here. Ooh, no drag. Good luck. That was good. I mean, it was RNG, but it was good that it didn't drag there. Um, but uh, if you do happen to see it, then you will. Uh, it's not going to change after that. So Now, you yeah. mentioned that uh, someone was scouting waves in their world record run. Um, do you lose time when you scout the waves? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I think it, like it was record in the sense that it was the lowest combat. Oh, like, I, I gosh. Told, I was, I was okay. crazy with it. Gotcha. I was crazy with it. And uh, for those that don't know what Hemis is talking about here, uh, you can log out at the start of an Inferno wave and uh, that will stop the NPCs from attacking you and you can see where they spawn. And when you log back in, they are going to spawn in the exact same spot, which allows you to essentially solve the wave before it even comes up. And you'll see players that do those very low combat infernos uh, using that technique. See Addy coming into, not even going to pretend to know what wave this is. That is 48. With a 24.30 on the clock. Wave 35 split time was 15.19. Oh, I was muted. Um, this, this is looking probably similar to uh, Adam's time earlier. Probably a low 26 into uh, low 26 into 50, which is, it's, it's definitely very good, you know? I mean, considering Adam has the fastest time we have right now, that's unlucky, that's pretty annoying. Will he chin? He will chin, so that's a good use of it because uh, it makes use of the extra ticks, so that way you can catch this. So you'll see it's those little niche optimizations and adaptations. A lot of Inferno speedrunning is just adapting to shit situations. Because across, like across 70 waves, you're just going to have things go wrong. There's no way around it. Things will 100% go wrong. How good of an Inferno speedrunner you are is largely dependent on how you react to very poor situations. So I think a lot of people will look at something and they'll be like, wow, you know, this was shit. If only that didn't happen. Oh, there's such bad RNG on the wave. Oh, I was noodling this hard. It's like, yeah, maybe you got unlucky. But part of like the really consistent, really good runners are like they know how to play around it, right? Because that's going to happen at some point. You're in there for an hour. Of course, some waves are going to go shit. You can't just blame it on RNG, right? So being a good Inferno speedrunner involves being able to adapt. But here we'll probably see... Oh, this is on... Oh wait, yeah, no, this is on the dot. Yeah, low 26. 26.03 uh, there for Adikon. Um, I saw Addy in the last wave there. I mean, he didn't want to interrupt you, but he killed one of the melees before he went for the mage. The mage has the chance to respawn um, any of the minions that have died in that wave. Is there a reason why he killed the melee first? It looked like he could have got it safe spotted on the pillar. Yeah, so... um. In that specific case, uh, if I remember correctly, he might have killed it a little bit early, but usually people, if people decide to do that, it's it's a very niche time save because it's, so basically the melee dies in six ticks and the mage dies in three ticks, bat dies in three ticks, a bunch of monsters die in three ticks. But what that means is I can, if I kill, let's say I kill the melee and then I kill the bat, uh, that, that just ends up faster, like that gets me... The wave will end quicker than if I decide to do... Ooh, oh, unlucky, he's going to have to deal with the bat here. But um, the wave will simply end quicker than if I kill the bat and then kill the melee, right? Mm -hmm. Because the melee just has a longer death animation. So it's it's always off... You're always keeping in mind, like, what I have to kill first. So, like, the ranger takes longer to die than the mage. The melee takes longer to die than the range. The, blob, the melee blob takes longer to die than these other two blobs. It's like there's a ton there's a ton of little small shit that you have to keep track of. And that's why you'll see like people will take specific specific pathing to like make sure, okay, the bat is last to die. Okay, this is last to die. So in that specific case, like you'll see sometimes players who are like really fast are going to deal with like maybe a melee right before they kill the mage. That way it doesn't have that high odds of actually reviving it. Because it's a one in ten chance. Maybe you kill it in the first one, right? Yeah. But um. But you definitely just you save like three ticks, for example, just by killing that mage during the death animation of the melee. 
he is not happy. Nobody's happy when they have to deal with bats. <laughs> but honestly, his time is nice. His time is nice for... We are against Aw Smith. Kevzy's gonna... Uh, yeah, I, I am... Ev, I am the biggest Kevzy fan in the chat, and no one can disprove that, but... Um, He's got his work cut out for him. Because this is looking like a sub... I mean, this is looking at least like a sub-49. Very quick time here for Addy. Yeah, you mentioned that the NPCs dying will save one or two ticks. And might not seem like much, but over the course of the Inferno, 63 waves until you get to Jad. Sorry, 66 waves until you get to Jad in the Inferno. Um, one or two ticks over those waves could end up saving your minute across the inferno which is a lot of time big sight oh, there yeah. not big enough though he's going for some big ones right now I, I think you'll see that a lot with oh my god his setup has two range pot too yeah he's really going for the consistency there oh he's going for that. Yeah. double misclick there that is easily one of the most frustrating fucking things but <laughs> either way no big time loss. He's just going to chill here. He's going to move to this side so the blob comes in. Also gets the bonus uh, the bonus of blowpiping that instead of wasting a whole Tebow. Always get a double blowpipe. Nice. There's nothing... Oh, unlucky. But yeah, I mean... Inferno is all about just using the optimal weapon at all times. You know, scything at the right range, doing this and that, killing balancing everything so that you can always find yourself in an optimal position whether it's having a bat last a mini blob last you know like that's gonna matter when you get really fast contrary to like oh well i had a ranger last i'm gonna lose two ticks for that i had a melee last i'm gonna lose three ticks for that i had a melee mini blob last i'm gonna lose four ticks for that it's like it's just uh, big brain shit hard it's very fucking difficult. So many things going into these speed runs, and uh, that's why it's probably the hardest in the game. So many things to think about at all times. And uh, Adicon, one of the best in the game at figuring it all out. Currently 30 minutes on the clock. Hemis, you did mention he does have two range pots in his inventory, so very likely to see him go for that healer skip. Still has three. Saradoma Brewers, we see four Sandfuse Serums left, two doses of Stamina Potion, and it's looking pretty good for him. I think um, I think one of the things, definitely with these top five, is they're, well, I guess he's not top five, he's seventh. Fucking seventh. <laughs> but, um, like, you'll notice that they have, uh, they have some crazy, crazy consistency. Like, you can talk to people who are like, 47 minutes and I don't think the I don't think the vast majority of them get to um get through a whole run with as little brew consumption as like let's say Addy, John Pilly, Cancer. Like they're all they're all so disgusting at like saving their supplies. Cause they just they just don't make mistakes. It's it's fucking crazy. Very, very consistent game as we're gonna see a chin here. We are. Ooh. That's a nut. It's going to... Oh. So, like, yeah, if he waited a little bit, it would have moved into place, but he didn't really want to lose the tick, which makes sense. The big chin there from Adikon, who we do see in the chat now as we're Reeve watching Reeve his Reeve run. Rug. Reeve Rug is also indeed top one. He would steal wreck from all of these losers if they just... Uh, it, well, if he just... You know, if you if he was a meaner guy, but he's too nice. <laughs> Giving everyone else a chance, as we see. Looking Addy. at um, yeah. Do we know uh, what the split was for that exactly? I think he lost he lost time there. Yeah, that's not that's, too sure exactly what the split is. We'll see the next split come up on wave sixty three. For some reason, Adicon uh, plays in full screen and uh, seems as though he plays on like a 60-inch plasma television. It's so wide and still has his chat box closed. Um, wants to see every single tile in the Inferno room in one frame. Oh, uh, here's... here's you, you don't want, You're talking to the wrong guy about that, dude. <laughs> oh, they no. Call me the, they, call me the fucking, they call me the fucking IMAX gamer, dude. 
It's <laughs> <laughs> fucked. I got a big monitor. I'm gonna fucking use it, man. Like, uh, listen, I can respect it. I can respect it. Personally, I play RuneScape on fixed and the absolute smallest it can go. It takes up such a small spot on my monitor and I will never change. Op7 Omega lol. But um, <laughs> oh shit, he's going for it. Oh my God. Is this a chin? <laughs> yup. The so big that, chin. That, that's what I said earlier. I was like, I, I only know three people who consistently set that up. And that is like, I don't, I don't ever fucking see that. Are you kidding me? I never set that one up. That's crazy. Really nice moves here from Adikon in the grand final for his team at BDSM. We see 33.58 on the clock. We'll see the next split coming up at wave 63. The time is probably, right now, I'm probably looking at something like high 48 is my guess. I mean, he's good enough that he can, you know, he can obviously make time back and just claw it down a little bit, but... I think a standard time for this kind of split is probably about like 48 something. So, ooh. We, we do get a melee revive, but the thing is like, I think um, generally speaking, the melee revive actually doesn't matter as much because they act, they have a lot of defense, but they have so little health. Like if you, if you get lucky, you can kill it in two shots. He killed it in three, he lost 3.6 seconds. It's not, it's, you know, not that big of a deal. Now that being said, as a as anyone who's a learner, like you always want to tell them never fucking kill the melee because you know if you leave a back door open, they're gonna go like they just go for it, right? You want you want it to be like a last case scenario. Ooh. Oh, okay. Nice. nice off tick there, running out one side of the pillar to take the attack from the range, and then the other side for the mage, but unnecessary by the looks of things. I'll take it. I was a little bit scared that uh, the blob was going to die there, but I don't know. I think he's playing this pretty safe. He he knows um, you know, safety safety matters here. It's just got to clear, get through it nice and clean. Don't take any don't take any stupid risks. I do. Oh, no, I thought there were no bridges left, but fair enough. Then we see three all three pillars still up as well. For Adikon going into the sixties. Personally, I think um a lot of people a lot of people don't really like having extra pillars. You can make an argument for the south pillar because the south pillar actually changes how monsters see you. Once you're past fifty, if you stand on this tile, having that south pillar alive means that if you get the close southwest spawn, it's actually going to see you on spawn. You're going to take that hit no matter what if it's a mage. So that means you can do you can do a nice little easy off tick. But if that pillar isn't there, then you don't get that off tick. So there's like very slight modifications you can make to it but um outside of that like personally i say always have more pillars if you can you know you yeah. can you never know when you're going to be able to have one collapse on something you are uh, you see a lot of new players in the inferno going for their first capes those pillars are there to help them safe spot the monsters in the inferno but as hemis has just said in these speed runs they're there for a different reason being able to off tick the monsters using those pillars to go down on the monsters as well and uh, cause a bit of damage. A pillar falling down on a monster will cause it to take half its HP in damage. One asks uh, the Addy tile. I'm assuming you're referring to the, the one in the middle. Just pretty simple. It just sets up a lot of chins at, at the start of the wave. It's a good position and it also makes everything see you on two tick, two tick cycle. Chin. Pretty standard. I swear that you always max on that blob when you don't want to, but you know, pretty nice solve, you know, just just kill a bat. In general, you always want to avoid dealing with bats whenever you can, even if you have to like flick a blob or something, but solves where all you have to do is just kill one bat is really quite nice. Once again, for I'm those that don't know, you're gonna see players most of the time try and kill the mage here in the Inferno because it does have the ability to respawn any NPC that has died on that wave. So taking the mage down first is gonna prevent those respawns from happening and causing a little extra time to be wasted on that current wave. It's looking like um, pretty much, ooh, 
a little bit of time loss there. No big deal. Yeah, this is looking pretty much like word, for, uh, almost exactly like Adams. We're coming to wave 63 with a 38-13 split. As Hemi was saying off, before, Nick. looking at around 10 minutes from wave 63 to find out around what time you're going to get in this Inferno run. So looking at around a 48-minute pace here for Adicon. Nice little off tick there. I think a lot of people get really um, they see the middle the middle mage spawn in the far south rangers and and they get scared. They think they think oh shit, I waited too long. Ooh, we're gonna see a chin too. But um, whenever you get, <laughs> whenever you get that spawn, like all you really have to do is just uh, if I reacted late, you just run north the amount of tiles that you think you reacted late, right? And then it it just works out because they're not gonna still not gonna see you. Here comes the chin. chin. All right, coming into wave 64, 39 minutes on the clock. Inventory looking very good for Adicon here. Still has two range potions in the inventory. Super combat is out, but uh, not going to be too worried about that going into these later waves. We see three brews as well. And he's it's gonna disgusting. Be... Hasn't touched a single thing. It's like, oh my god. I was like, holy fuck. Very, oh, right, very just... good at the game. Papa for the boys, please. <laughs> yeah, where, where's the where's the three minion off tick? Adicon is not for the boys here in this grand final. So we see another melee dig. Not gonna be an issue for him. Come on, don't shit on Tony P like that. Come on. <laughs> oh, no. What is that clip? <laughs> oh, Tony P. Like... Yeah, a little disappointing for Oz Myth in that first boss there, uh, the Gauntlet. That is one that they would have been hoping to take away from BDSM, especially after seeing that death to start with, and then uh, a two-second deficit on the average as Addy comes into wave 65, We've taken out the mage first. Looks as though that pillar is going to go oh my God, down he over can, there. He can, he can lure it on top. He has to go south of the... If he goes south of the pillar, he can lure the mage on it. Looks like he's it's not going to bother with that. Man. It's a long run across. And yeah, by the time the pillar would have gone down, the mage was dead anyway. But it is hella fun to do that. <laughs> Adicon here in the grand final of the Speed Run Cup. Going for the fastest time and not doing fun shit for the boys disgusting if you ask me Not for the boys bro what's wrong with this guy fucking crazy guy bro can't believe it spent too much time with moths and not enough time with the boys yeah. and cactus fucking cactus he got for christmas or something <laughs> oh my god what am i what am i reading in the chat okay oh how god? much hit points is left on the pillar here let's have a look quite a few oh, hit points left on the pillar much, yeah. yeah i don't think that is going to come into play here not going to see the pillar go down on the mage. You get some nuclear hits on the first one. Now, Heavies, you might be able to answer this question. I was asking the other day, and I uh, couldn't get a straight answer. Can you get stuck in an infinite cycle of respawning mages here? Oh, no. Unfortunately, they only they only revive one time. So even, uh, if, I mean, even if it revives this one, that one then can't revive the new one. Yeah. For, for, every, <laughs> for every unique monster, they can only revive one time. Damn. I've... I will say the, the fucking funny part is when the pillar goes down and you're standing next to it. Uh, literally, I think my first sub 50, the fucking mage double respawned on me and then I killed them and the pillar went down and I lost half my health. <laughs> like, I, I, I just want to see someone else suffer that same fate, man. Like, we see Adicon go into single jad with a 4203 split here. And we're going to see him stand on the northwest tile of Jad to spawn the healers. So he can get a chin off on the boss and tags three healers at the same time. Traps one behind him. So only five ticks there to get all of the healers. Did have to wait one tick at the start as well for all the healers Weird to get on the boss. Too, really good hits here for Adicon as well. And that is a very quick single Jad. Oh, could have killed it. Wow. Could have killed it four hits ago. Very unlucky. Well, generally speaking, <laughs> the single the single jet doesn't matter too much. It's all in the triples, really. We'll see. Um, 
here's where the time save is. Because at most, like, if you get a really bad single, maybe you get 115, right? Which, sure, maybe you lost 30 seconds, but 115 is crazy. More than likely, a bad one is one minute. If you get triples, though, like, you can lose a full minute there, right? Maybe you get two flat, maybe you get three flat. That's where you're really going to lose your time. As we see, the triple jads for Adikon here. One chin at the back. Doesn't tag this other one. Goes to the second chin. So six ticks to tag the healers and a little bit of extra health there. Deciding to T-bow the boss instead. No extra damage from the chins either. At least on the second one. Ooh. One hits it, no worries. Doesn't have to chin any healers. Works out pretty well. Coming into the second Jad. Let's have a look at the hits here. Not been the luckiest on the Jad hits has Adi Khan, but we see a nice little 72 coming in. Once again, we see him stood in the northwest tile of the Jad just to try and get the chin off on the healers and a pretty nice spawn That's there. Only three ticks to tag all the healers. You've got two healers stood behind him and he's going to trap them here as well. Doesn't have to take any damage from the healers. And uh, the second Jad is going to go down without a hitch. I think it'd be very, very hard pressed to see him not complete this run. He's going to have to, he's going to have to take some sort of hit or something and just get killed because he is here with every supply sitting on full health with full range pots. There's, there's not a thing that can really happen that's going to stop him from getting this in my opinion. Looking very good for the Moth Connoisseur. An 86 Tebow hit here on single Jad. See 45 minutes tick over on the clock. Healer spawn. Very nice again. Just a single chin. And a T uh, sorry, a below pipe. So five ticks for the healer tag. Let's see the damage here. Another zero with the Tebow. Nice little corner trap for the healers. Traps all of them behind the boss now. Necessary? Probably not. Cool? Absolutely. Last one kind of taking a little while. This, this is looking maybe a little slow, if anything. Not good hits here. And another hit that could have killed Jad. It's these last hits here for Adikon that have been a problem. And he doesn't get the blood barrage off on the healers either. Splashing Suck on usually all three. Takes Zuck usually takes about three minutes flat, maybe a little bit more than that if you want. So we're going to see this entry. Ooh, bit bit of a shame on those triples. That's a, uh, that's a nice three-minute triples right there. Wow. Three-minute triples. I believe we saw a 155 from MCU yesterday as the fastest time. And a 45.59 going into Zuck for Adicon with all the supplies in the world. And really bad hits to start this Zuck off as well. Not going to be happy to see this if you are team BDSM. And that bow is absolutely noodling. I'm sure after this, he went and sold off those 203,000 black chin chompers and the million purple sweets he has and bought a new one because he needs it. <laughs> he actually gave me 100,000 purple sweets to host for a <laughs> tournament and I, I have not hosted the tournament. <laughs> Scammed him for 600 mil. Oh, sorry. No. sorry. That's just free smoke if you ask me, Hemis. That's just free smoke. <laughs> oh, shit. With this damage, could we potentially see a second set? He's only at 1,000 <laughs> hit points on Zark. It's very slow. It is going to be very slow, but I, I, it's, I think it's too long. It's, there's no way he's going to get another one just because um, it'll average out. Sometimes you get really, really slow starts, and then it just, it just ends up fucking backlogged you you pop like five seventies at the end and it just dies would you say it's uh if you're going for the healer skip it's much better to to get your zeros out of the way now rather than during healers right that is that is true but at the same time sometimes we just you hit nothing at the start and hit nothing at the end it just doesn't work out uh, i have just also checked the numbers on that one guys and that is exactly how rng works as well so heard you making a very good point I will say, um, if you're a fan of Kevzy, which, you know, there's a million fans of Kevzy in chat, like, 
holy fuck, like we are pogging off, you know what I mean? Because <laughs> we can totally break a, uh, whatever this is going to be, this is looking like some, I don't know, like 49.30 or some shit, like, like Kevzy, come on Kevzy, get fucking smash this. Yeah. Oh Smith, oh Smith, oh Smith. Going into wave 63 at 38 minutes, you know, you'd expect, as you said before, 10 minutes after that for the boss to be finished. And we've just clocked over 10 minutes after that. 48.30 on the time here for Adikon. We're going to see the Jad skip. There's a whole lot going on his screen right now. We're seeing five FPS gameplay. Is he going for the mage kill here? Yeah, I think he... um. So it's only... It's one tick apart, but he has so many supplies. I think he doesn't really... Because the thing is, his... So usually you aim to attack Jad with your chin two ticks after the mage. And most of the time, that will put Jad two ticks after the mage so you'll have two ticks leeway to flick it or whatever here um he got a little greedy with the bows uh i think it might have ended up in a bad position because when you're on the west side you have to long range chin it's not very fun you know like sometimes you get dragged out it's really aids so in the process of that he ended up putting the mage one tick after the jad and for a lot of players they consider that harder to play Ooh, he goes for a neen tag Oh, Ooh. Ooh. 366 <laughs> yeah. hit points back on the boss. Now, does this Jad attack at eight ticks? Yeah, this one, this one's eight ticks. This okay, eight so ticks. the triple Jads are at nine ticks. I always wondered how uh, players could off tick Jad and the mage, but that makes sense. I thought the Jad attacked at nine ticks. Pretty nuclear hits here at the end. As Hootie Tootie said, saving that RNG for the healer skip. Three whole brews anyway. Oh my god! Doesn't matter that he's getting destroyed by by the healers. Like he, it's, it's, it doesn't matter. He's just gonna get through it. Forty nine fifty five. Forty nine fifty five. There for Adicom for BDSM, and uh, I mean, like you said, if you're Kevzy here, you gotta be uh, you gotta be looking at that time, thinking, you know what? There is actually a pretty good chance that uh, he can beat that time up against uh, Adikon here in this round. This is this is very, very doable. Now, I don't know how... Uh, I was there for Kevzy's first sub-50 because he was streaming it. I was pretty fire. But I don't know how much he's been running since then. If he's kept up in shape, which I hope he has, as, you know, as, a, man who, um, as a man who didn't die during the corrupt gauntlet runs, like, I'm sure he's done some practice. People said he put in hundreds of hours. I, I would not be surprised if he could, um, if he could put this in, if he could just lock this in. Yeah, so definitely a beatable time there for Kevzy. We will be seeing his run in just a moment, but we are going to have a look now at uh, a little statistic that Hootie Tooty has uh, put on the screen for us here. This is the leaderboard for the inferno times throughout this entire tournament we see adwam there for turbo pvm with a 48 21 oh the fastest time <laughs> stooge with a 48 56 come jolanine with a 49.09 mcu very consistent there very consistent there and uh we see all the way down the bottom the bottom three inferno statistics Adicom with a 49.55, a 50.19, and a death. All three of the worst Inferno times coming from Adicon in this tournament. No, never mind. This guy's shit. <laughs> I don't know what I was guessing this guy up. This guy's fucking shit, dude. Spending a little too much time looking at moths and not enough time practicing the Inferno for the Speed Run Cup. Let's go ahead and jump on into... Ozmith's perspective of the Inferno, which is going to be run by Kevzy, ladies and gentlemen. And he has a 49.55 to beat. No Scythe. I kind of like that. I feel like No Scythe is something that um people people largely overlook because um nowadays people are just taking Scythe left and right. They just, they're like, ah, 55 minutes? Let me take a Scythe. It's like... it's It's not that like... You can't. It's more so that like your the time save when you're fifty five minutes is you playing bad. Right? And the time save when you're sub fifty and well it's still you playing bad, but like when you're the more you take the sooner you take the scythe, 
you're attributing more of your time save to you just scything big. So, you know, if you're still at a level where you play very badly, then you taking a scythe, like maybe you get a good split, but that's not because you're playing good. That was just because you hit hard, right? So I, I'm I'm a big fan of this mentality where like you, you you should try and withhold taking the scythe as much as you can. But that being said, Kevzi's sub fifty. I feel like he is kind of putting himself at a disadvantage here because he well it would just make more sense like no matter what you do it is time save like he he probably should have taken it here but um he is going for i think what he went for is the approach that assumes addy just died <laughs> which, which is very fair he did die on the other one but um but yeah this looks like a, a lot like just a, a survival setup five brews double range pot he's gonna hit a healer skip he's not gonna have to worry so uh, Kevzy here, I guess going in, knowing that he's probably not as good as Adikon at the Inferno and uh, obviously doesn't know what Adikon's time is, the 49.55, which would have been very beatable for Kevzy. He said he does have a sub 50, so it was beatable for him, but not going with the Scythe tech and instead just praying to the good Lord above that Adikon died in his inferno run <laughs> which he did not fuck damn we're we're really in a predicament now aren't we boys oh shit it is not uh, looking good for kev but anything can happen how much of a time save would you attribute to the scythe here Hemis? it's weird i think i think um probably over a minute Probably over a minute. On paper, it's probably about 40 seconds. But as I said earlier, you know, when things die quicker, it's easier to play. And when it's, you know, when things are easier to play, you just get to, you get to be more comfortable. You're less stressed out. Just a whole lot of things about it. But I think the biggest thing here is I'm really curious to see if Kevzi is um, up to date on how, because like how you play with a scythe versus how you play without a scythe are very different. Right when you when you play without a scythe, you don't. Your whole goal is, or sorry, when you play with a scythe, your whole goal is based on like keeping some sort of monster with that's two by two alive. So you always want a ranger or you want a bat alive. That is almost always the best play. Maybe you can have a mini blob, but like you could have conditioned the ranger to be alive and then scythe it later. That would have been better too, right? So most of the time, your goal is to get. Uh, something with, like, bat or ranger. But without a scythe, like, you're running into these situations where it's not really about getting this bat alive anymore. Bats are great, but, like, you got mini blobs that you can keep alive, you got nibblers that you can keep alive. The ranger just needs to die. Like, ranger has to die early now. So there's... You have to change up how you play with it. And, you know, you don't have to worry as much about drag. Well, we'll see... I mean, right now, it looks like he's managing his death or his kill order pretty well. But at the same time, we're not at any of the difficult waves. Oh, fact, as he takes a 47 very early on. See, currently on wave nine, takes oh a lot God, of he's... damage from the blobs as well. The mini blobs, he does set up the chin, but down to 28 hit points here on wave nine. We see the split up in the corner. Sorry, he's on wave 12. And uh, you see the predicted time there as well, Hemis. Oh, what the fuck is that, Ongle Whip? That's not a Hemis, come on. A predicted time looking, um... Hmm. I mean, the here's the thing with the predicted time. Most of the time is, it's, a uh, Whatever your predicted time is, is usually faster than what it actually should be. Because it's, it's a little bit off, and it also assumes that you're doing, like... That you're playing as optimally as you should, sort of. Not really like that, but it's it's, it's a weird thing to describe. It assumes that you keep up your pace the entire run, which most of the time you don't, because you get you have a lot more practice early waves than you do in the late waves. Because obviously you'll die in the early waves, and then you don't get to you don't get to the late waves, right? Mm -hmm. So, in the process of that, like you're going to usually people will lose time late waves. So if your predicted time says forty nine on wave nine, you're probably gonna end on like fifty two. If your if your predicted time says like yeah, like I I can't tell you the number of times my predicted time has said like 45 or 44 during the first like 35 waves and then um 
while my PB is forty seven fifty, so very clearly like predicted time doesn't mean anything when you when it's very early on. Yeah, we will see some fast predicted times in the early. Oh my god, days. that's a chance. That's a chance. <laughs> oh shit. Kevzy oh, being chanced on wave fifteen. I saw Adicon type in the chat after he saw that Kevzy wasn't bringing a scythe. He said, "Ah, oh, could have just got a sub sixty five and been fine." <laughs> At this rate, oh, what's wrong with this guy? At this rate, oh Adicon could have got a five-hour cape and still won. Kevzy being chanced, he's on yeah, 19 yeah. hit points here, going into wave 16. Does get a free wave here though to get some heals. 30 hit points remaining. This he is this is looking like. Uh, right, watch this predicted time. Yeah, 49. It's gonna jump to 50, 52, 46. We'll see that split at wave 18 when it comes up. He's gonna get a big heal here. Oh fuck. He's going from oh, way downtown as well. Getting worse. And uh, this is one of those bosses that we just assumed BDSM was going to get a free win on. They don't really have an Inferno specialist. The predicted time goes up to 53 minutes, a 6 minute 46 wave split here for Kevzy. And to be fair to the man, Adikon had a 629 at this point, so is only 17 seconds behind his opponent here. But based on the performance so far, in you don't the first set up this waves, Oh my god, Kevzy, what's wrong with you? And Hemi's not happy. With his favorite game of Kevzy here. Yes. <laughs> Even Blowpipe, the, the one and only more consistent Inferno runner than Shawnee. It's not happy. Oh, fuck. Kevzy oh, okay. gonna have to get very, very lucky throughout this Inferno run to win this one for his team. 49.55 to beat. And uh, as we said, this was basically a free win for team at BDSM. Adikon just had to not die, and he didn't die. Picks up the 49.55, and uh, Kevzy definitely has his work cut out for him. Otherwise, we will be looking at a 2-0 for BDSM going into the third boss. I mean, I'm personally of the belief that, like, if you play good enough, sub-50 is sub is 100% free with them. Um with a setup like this, like you don't need a scythe to sub 50 at all. Especially now that we have van braces. Like if you play good enough, you can, can you, you can probably pretty consistently do it. But, um, you know, I mean, this is just, this, this isn't too crazy of a start. I will say he did do something, which is, which does show a little bit of thought in how, um, how to approach things with, with the scythe or without a scythe, for example, like, like just maneuvering across, Ooh, should have thrown a chin. Ooh, wrong side. But, um... Sorry, I... <laughs> fuck. Um, so, like, when it comes to, um... A, a big problem, usually, is sometimes you'll get locked behind the south... You'll get locked on the south side of a pillar. And, um... There's a ranger on it, and you want to crawl... And there's a bat coming at you from the south side. You're like, oh, fuck. Well, I don't want to tank this bat the whole time. But I need to get to the north side of the pillar. And there's no way to do that without... Without, like losing ticks with your blowpipe so like what you should do is you should leave a nibbler alive or kite a bat across that way you get that one blowpipe you don't lose ticks and you still get to go to the north side of the pillar that nibbler is going to cost him time um and i uh well i've actually managed to see kevzy he did leave the um he left the nibbler alive which is something that you don't see players with scythe do they're not used to it most of the time but like when you're playing without a scythe, that's the kind of thing that you do need to consider. I will say I would have preferred if he, for that specific spawn, like he's too far out to just double blowpipe that ranger. I don't know why people people need to blowpipe chin more. It's it's very good. It's it's almost the same thing. Throwing one chin is just not as good by comparison. And then you can you don't have to go for that on that specific. Uh, the, the tile where you chin the melee instead. You can just chin the ranger. It's it's mildly worse, but like at least you get blue pipe chin off. Assuming you don't hit a zero that you wouldn't have hit before, it works out fine. Ooh, this is a bit of a weird scenario. 
going to put him in a bad position. Just, just not fun all around. Oh my god. Yeah, this is not work. This 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 is not. Oh no, this is not working out. Not looking good for Kevzy here for Oz Myth. Uh, but once again, you know, I mentioned it before. I'll mention it again. This was one of the bosses that uh, Oz Myth would have just gone in, assuming they were going to lose, and uh, won't be too big of a problem for them here if they do lose it. But if Kevzy can manage to take it away from Addy. Uh, that will be huge for Ozmith in this grand final. I don't think I'd love to see anything more than just for for Kevzy to get get like a fucking thirty second double mage, a thirty five second Jad, a one forty five triples, and like a two twenty Zuck. It's like six minutes from sixty three. He finishes. I just fucking. Oh, I would, I would fucking cry laughing. That, that is, that just sounds fucking hilarious. Now, but... if you're Adicom from BDSM watching this run and Kevzy ends up beating you, how mad are you going to be? Shit. Well, <laughs> I think he would be um mildly tilted, but the thing is, the thing, I think Addy's a player who who knows. I think he he. He's very accustomed to to seeing RNG because I think he he's the type of player who goes into this and kind of expects like oh yeah like maybe maybe I just lose to RNG and sometimes that happens it is what it is but maybe I'm wrong maybe I'm wrong and he just gets really mad well <laughs> we'll see we'll see <laughs> I think it's more funny if he gets mad but okay no tick loss no tick loss. Tick loss, never mind. Lots of tick loss. Fuck. Big chin though. Room temperature IQ idiot. Oh shit. There's some crazy stuff Ooh. going on. Oh, that's a perm. Oh no. Movie asking Pardon. if this is live or pre recorded. And as Hootie said, Getting all 12 of these gamers together for this grand final to sit around for the next 12 hours while we do these runs would be next to impossible. A lot of people have given up a lot of time for this tournament. And Mr. Movie, you're going to be giving up a lot of time in my chat. Enjoy the perm. What? Oh, shit. Another one goes down. How many people do you think have been banned since you started that? Too many. <laughs> this tournament. Probably above 70, below 80, somewhere in low 70s, I'd say. <laughs> I think that's pretty fucking good for three streams. Personally, I think it probably would have been better to go the other way. The bats are going to walk to him anyway. He would have been able to close the distance. Right now, he's going to have uh, a lot of trouble trying to get over here. But I guess there's enough monsters that he makes it across anyway. Oh, 35 from the melee. Takes another oh hit off prayer. <laughs> that was a chance. The melee can hit up to 48. He's on 46 hit points, but gets a massive blowpipe there to go back up to 68 hit points. Are we even going to see Kevzy complete this Inferno? I'm not sure, but we're the time is just getting more, more and more, um, sorry, less and less competitive. As, but you know never count them out we can we can still see something happen here anything can happen like you said could get an absolute nuclear uh jad triples and zuck we'll something, have to see yeah something i do want to want to iterate though is like these these waves are um even though the early waves are let's say maybe the least important in terms of time because let's say maybe you save a total of, I don't know, a minute on the early waves, let's say. You're not going to, um, and like, you know, the late waves can obviously save multiple minutes. That was nice. I kind of like that. But I don't think it actually hit the ranger because it didn't pull it in in time. But um, like these waves are also like the easiest to die on. I mean, sure, you can die late waves. But up until I want to say like 50, up until maybe like 60 I think the the easiest waves to die on are like these waves right here, like twenty eight, 
Ooh, what the f 28, um, 28, 29, 30, 31. Like, those all end up, like, because people are trying to be up close and personal. They're trying to play super efficient. They're, they're trying to prayer flick everything up front, right? So it's like getting through this is like, at the very least, we won't see him sort of die early, I want to say. Right there, we already, <laughs> we get to see a pretty good use of death animations because he ends up killing the Nibbler after the, after the Ranger. It's basically the same as if he scythed it. But sometimes you don't get a nibbler last, sometimes you don't get a mini blah blast, etc. Because how it works is um, you can kill that nibbler a full blowpipe after the ranger, and like they all die at the same time because the ranger has a longer death animation. So you end up having a... It's basically like you, you killed the ranger one full blowpipe sooner. And that's nice, but... A little it's bit of a time be save for Kevzi. We're going to see the Blood Barrage on wave 34. And we'll see the split coming into 35. We know that Adicon came in as a 35 at a 15.19. And we're going to see a 16.36 for Kevzi. So on wave 35 is already 1 minute and 20 seconds behind his opponent. Is, uh... I mean, we could see an MCU. MCU did pull. He pulled it, like, down to a, a nail-biter back then. Like, he brought it, what, maybe multiple minutes behind pace to, you know, li literally 30 seconds behind. But this is, um, this is going to be a tough one without the scythe, that's for sure. Definitely going to be hard for Kevzi. Currently carrying his team on his back, but something to mention is the fact that, uh, Osmith definitely didn't have a dedicated Inferno runner. They specifically banned the Inferno, not only in their quarterfinal match, but their semifinal match as well. Whereas a team like BDSM has their team built around uh, sort of the Infernos, the Fight Caves, the, uh, the Vorkast, the Zolras, um, but not so much in uh, sort of the TOBs. Whereas uh, Ozmith, some very capable TOB runners. And um, it's hard with only six players on your team to have people that are good at nine bosses, which is what we have to choose from here in the Speedrun Cup. So Ozmith opting to go with a team that doesn't have a world-class uh, Inferno runner and using their boss picks and bans. Um effectively here but making it to the grand final every single boss is run so we'll see not the best performance from Kevzi here but like i said uh bdsm doesn't have a team built around tob so we get to the tob run soon and we might see a nice little win there for oz myth but once again anything is possible Kevzi can definitely still take this one away from adicon uh, I, I can't even really blame them either, right? Because like it's not as if they're it's not as if they're like defenseless in Inferno, right? Like Kevsi still has sub fifty and he's had his sub fifty for quite a while now. I do believe it was it was a good number of months ago that he got it, so it's like he's he's not bad by any means, it's just like by comparison against, you know, the world record holders, it, it will be it will without a doubt be a tough uphill battle, to say the least. Yeah, for sure. And uh, yeah, like you said, I think the Inferno probably is one of the least important bosses here in the Speedrun Cup to build a team around because uh, the times are so close between those top 10. And then also, there is still a high chance of death in the Inferno. When you're going fast, um, you're going to see a death a fair amount of the time, like enough to the point where even if you don't have the best of the best Inferno runner on your team, Maybe even looking at like those 52, 53 minute capes. If your opponent does die, you just get a free win. We didn't see that here in the grand final. Addy getting the KC, but yeah, maybe less important to build a team around the Inferno and more important to build it around the other bosses. Or better yet, you just fucking tell your opponents that you died. <laughs> you they fucking make a sandwich. <laughs> the Shawnee cosplay, as we like to call that. So we see Kevzi coming into wave 40 here. This is a really, really bad spawn because he, like, there's no way to hit that mage without pulling it in somewhere. So he just has to do 
anytime you see anything in that southeast spawn, if it's something that's like really long range, it's just it's it's always going to be a bad spawn for for a player. Like there's just no way to hit it. There's a couple other spawns that end up being like that as well, but overall, this this doesn't look too bad just because he ends up um. There's no revives. Had a couple bats to hit, but this is what it is. Wave 40 for Kevzy. We see 20.52 on the clock. Has a 49.55 to beat from Adicon. Ooh, Why tries to get that uh, Ghost Barrage off. Yeah, on the mini blob. And for the second wave in a row, uh, does it one hit too early and loses a few ticks there? Uh, I mean, that's... It. That's the thing that I think a lot of people get scared of doing, but it's it's always worth because the the amount of health that you actually recover from that it's it, it's crazy because nobody nobody thinks about it. Maybe you maybe you heal like two health, three health, but like you build that up over forty different waves, you've healed yourself like two brews worth of food. Sometimes you even heal eight from from one of those barrages, and it's it, like people people really underestimate it. But if you're a learning speedrunner, that is. 100% something you need to capitalize on. Oof. Although you will end up in scenarios like that. And sometimes you'll... Um, people get quite quite angry. I've, I think I've been punched to death doing that before. I'm going to see another Ghost Barrage going in again! Oh my god. Kevzy, three waves in a row. One tick too early. I was going to say, I thought he was being particularly cautious about it, but his time just keeps... I don't want to look at the predicted time, dude. Just Oh, he oh, takes man. a melee off prayer as well. 54 hit points, not a chance, but uh, could have gone down to 6 HP there. The max hit of the melee being a 48. See, the wave split at 42 was a 22-10 or so. EDSM just, just laughing all the way to the bank. Yeah, I, I wouldn't put it. I mean, how much time do they do they need to save right now? We're looking at a fifty flat. Mm, he's about two minutes behind, which is um, me shit. I I did see um someone someone was asking about whether or not mage RNG accounts for a lot of it, and that is true. Mage RNG does account for a lot of it, but the thing is um, like up until uh. I want to say up until... Oh, we are getting the candor and, ch candor and clicks. Right there. <laughs> I don't know what happened right there, but I, I saw some earthquake. I thought he was at Galvec. It was either Galvec or Vasa. There was something going on there, but... Nice little safe spot. We'll have that going on over there. The candor and clicks coming in. We did, in fact, see candor and... In the speedrun cup again, going into Vasa. He redeemed himself. He did redeem himself. Had some very nice clicks, did candor and... And uh, Kevzy here, not looking the best for his team. Oz Myth, see 23.52 on the clock at wave 44. The next split coming up will be at 50. Adicon went into wave 50 at 26.03. I don't think we're going to see anywhere near that for Kevzy. I believe Addy Zuck was about four, just shy of four minutes. Show hog. Something... <laughs> So like a really advanced solve, well not a really advanced solve, but like a, a, a solve that involved a lot of planning there would have been something where like he just left the melee trapped. Like what he should have done was he should have untrapped it on the south side and then he'd just prayer flick it on the south side of the pillar. That Because usually monsters that get revived, they respawn south of the pillar by, by untrapping that melee south and then prayer flicking it so it doesn't dig, you'd be effectively blocking any respawn bats, right? So as you saw, the bot, the bat actually got respawned. He wouldn't have had to deal with that. He wouldn't have gotten drained. Well, he didn't. I don't know if he got drained here, but like maybe he wouldn't have taken damage. He wouldn't have gotten drained. There's there's a variety of things, and when it comes to Inferno speedrunning, so much of it is just planning farther ahead, planning farther ahead and stuff like that. Like here, if he goes around this side, he can't get a chin. If he went around the other side, he'd get a chin, right? So it's just it's just very small stuff like that lots of small intricacies here in the inferno i see stooge in the chat uh says <laughs> what was addy's time 
Sturge, very, very good at the Inferno. Second fastest time we saw in the Speedrun Cup. But I'm too. not sure how he's so good at the Inferno without eyes because the time is on the screen, my friend, up in the top right corner. You could have figured that one out for yourself. I will, I will never shit on his clicking after I read that fucking that message earlier. Holy <laughs> shit. But we will, um, one, two, 2554, we are on wave, what is this, 46. This is going to be, um, this is rough. This, this <laughs> we're probably looking at something like 2840, maybe, maybe even 29 to, to wave 50. And that, that's looking, I mean, pretty much exactly like the predicted time. I know I said the predicted time's not, usually not that accurate, but. Here it's gonna end up something like that. I I did see Showhog was asking about. Um, maybe you can pull it back, but usually like, like sub fifty is good, but sub fifty usually isn't like good enough that players play to the optimal level, right? And as long as you're not playing to the optimal level, you're losing time somewhere. Like one, whereas like you look at a lot of their splits, like from let's say the top five runners. The splits are, for the most part, like, as fast as they're going to get. You know, like, your, your 50 to 57 is going to be, like, 540, 530. And it's, you're, you'd be very hard-pressed to get anything faster than that. Whereas, like, if you take someone who's maybe, like, 50 minutes, they're not getting faster than that, and they're probably going to get slower than that. So the, the time to save isn't really there, I want to say. Ooh, that could have been a chin. Now, I want to say um, my favorite part about your commentary, Hemis, is the fact that during this run, every single time you've talked about how it's not looking good for Kev, you've still managed to sound surprised. Every time. You, you seem surprised that it's not looking good every time you mention it. When we've known for quite some time that it is not looking good for him. And he does take a melee hit off prayer again there. Because I'm I'm his number one fan. <laughs> I I genuinely believe I believe in the boys, man. Thank you, arrogant fish. I'm pacing that right now. Ooh, I like that. I like that. You know, keep the melee in place. That's a flick that I I feel like I'm not not as many players use, even though it's a it's a very good one. Because sometimes you know. Keep making a, a melee digging is almost always shit. You can't control what when it digs. You can't control. I don't, well, you can't control where it goes, but like I don't know. Sometimes, sometimes you're locked to a position and you don't want to deal with it. It's like having maintaining that flick with the blob, the mage, and the melee is is very good. Is there no set amount of ticks that um, the melee digs on? Is it completely random? Yeah. People were trying to test it. Some people were saying it was 50 ticks after the first one, but I heard there was some variance on that. The other thing about that too is, oh my god, cheeky three hit mage. That's why we love the van braces. But um, like the, the worst part is like after that's only after the first one I think. After that, like it starts to get more and more sporadic. Like the second dig almost always occurs like faster than the other ones. So like maybe you maybe like I don't know fifteen seconds after the other one it'll just randomly dig. There's no way to really predict it. You just gotta fucking hope. We see a wave forty nine coming up oh, mind, into wave depends. fifty a twenty nine seventeen split going into wave fifty and that is three minutes and fourteen seconds slower than Adicon. And at this point. I'm probably going to have to see him max every single Tebow hit till the end of the Inferno to beat that time of 49.55. We'll say he has not touched any of his brews, and that is very good. You know, I think, um, well, actually, I mean, he, he got chanced a couple of times, so maybe he should have touched some of his brews, but it's it's generally a good sign to, to see people get here with it. Just because... Um, I want to say a lot of players up until like maybe even like 47 like like you'll, you'll see sometimes we, we just get victimized like just straight victimized by by some of these some of these monsters like even even good runners can can very easily choke 
but we're gonna, I don't know, hopefully, it, really, you can't lose that much time if you get, like, a bunch of good spawns, so. Oh! None of these, oh my fucking god. Oh my god. Well, I was gonna say, you can't really lose that much time or health, but, um, oh, well, it works out, but, um, yeah, that know, one hurt like, to see, the 52 from the mage. And let me say, I know you guys heard a bit of a weird sound there. Uh, I'm finna peanut, if you know what I mean. Yeah, he ends up... Uh, fuck. I, I don't know, I, I forgot. But he... I, would say I, got, I got fucking distracted by finna peanut. <laughs> <laughs> the, main, the main point is that he's, um, he's doing fine, I want to say, but... The fucking five brews, man. Like, I, I, I still personally think he, he should have taken the scythe. That's just so much stuff, especially when you look at the fact that like he's not even gonna use most of it. I mean, the scythe just adds the extra layer, and from all we've seen from Kevzy so far, uh, maybe this was his first run of the day. Maybe he's just uh, a little bit shaky because he's in the grand final of the speed run cup. But I think adding that extra layer probably would have equated in him dying because a um, yes. bit of a shaky run from Kev here. I think gonna, we've, also, also, we've also got to remember that Kev being a part of almost every, uh, every boss, maybe he's opted to not practice as much in the Inferno, sort of given it up as a, a win for Addy and focusing on, on the stuff that he thinks he has a better chance of winning. That is very true. I also, mean, a very good point. How was uh how was Kev doing in terms of the other? Ooh, he's gonna save that pillar. He really is going for a safe shot. But uh, is he a part of the um any of the top teams? Uh, I believe he's part of all the top teams. Yeah, so um, pretty much running everything for his team. You're gonna see him in every single boss, uh, which is absolutely outrageous. Spent a lot of time, and it's going to be hard for him, you know, having to practice every single boss, whereas uh, you have a player like Adicon for BDSM that realistically only had to practice the Inferno, and then you have T-Batch, who realistically only had to practice the Fight Caves. Kevzy carrying all of Ozmith on his back, especially with a captain that uh, hasn't even performed yet. Yeah, Fucking eats whatever the fuck that was for his launch. <laughs> fucking crazy. We I say think Addy has personally seen Jerry's lunch and he was not a fan. I can't he say I'm a fan either. That's a, it's a questionable lunch. But we see wave 55 here for Kevzy. 33 minutes and 30 seconds on the clock. Gonna this take is, out these two bats. This is, this is no real... I mean, like, dealing with two bats usually isn't that bad, but uh, it, usually it's it's not great because sometimes you noodle on some bats, especially in cases where, like, if you can't safe spot them, it ends up, uh, it, it can eat into your health, it can eat into your time, you can get drained to your stats for it. It's, it's just not fun. Usually, if you have to deal with two bats, it's, it's not usually a fun solve. That no. one's not too bad because you just kind of you destroyed both of them, but... I've just noticed something. I don't know if anyone else in the chat noticed, but Kevzy, while he was flicking that mage and range there, double-clicked his rapid heal prayer, which is something you'll see players do when they're overhealed. You double-click your rapid heal prayer, it resets your HP regen and prevents your health from going down. Uh, he was on 84 hit points, so rather than preventing his HP from going down, he just double-clicked his rapid heal to prevent his HP from going up. <laughs> so we see a really nice off tick That's on this way. wave there from Kevzy. That was actually very, very clean. The fact that he kept everything on two tick. I do imagine that that was, um, that was intentional. So it was very, uh, that was very nicely done, honestly. Especially because he did it on a cycle where the uh, blob wasn't hitting him too. So he just had to instinctively know it. Not worth hitting that melee mini blob though, because it's just gonna get chinned anyway. It probably would have died right here. Is he gonna leave it alive? Yes. Oh no, never mind. So that's minus two ticks because he could he could have killed the ranger and then the mini blob, and then they would have uh, they would have died at the same time. 
but because he killed the mini blob first, minus two. We're going to see his pillar has a whole lot of health, though. I um, just got word. Um, Hootie Tootie's actually been keeping track of the ticks lost by Kevzy in this Inferno. And with those two, we have just reached 73 ticks lost in this Inferno run from Kevzy. Why is there a fucking guy named Smork Smorking to me? <laughs> Wave 57 for Kevzy here. Taking out the Ranger, getting a nice little Ghost Barrage off. Having a look at the inventory, we see five Sandfew Serums, five Saradome and Brews, two Range Pots. So hasn't used any of his uh, extra supplies yet. And uh, potentially could have taken a few of those out of the inventory to bring the three-way Scythe Switch. But we did see Kevzy in the chat just before say that he loses time when he takes the Scythe which is a bit unfortunate for him. Honestly, I can't blame him. I think it was like that for me at the start, but that was back when uh, the meta hadn't advanced as much and it was only one way side. Because he is right in the sense that um, if, you, like, if, you take, if you take very few switches with your scythe, it's, it's probably the same, if not a little bit better or worse, give or take than just doing this and having better kill order. Because if you plan better, then really the scythe doesn't actually save you any time, right? Because most of the time you can kill a nibbler, you can kill a mini blob, you can kill a bat. It's all, it, it's it's about the same as taking the one-way scythe. Oh my God. Takes a melee from the mage there. He's not having fun here. Oh man. Thought we were in the inferno here, but Kevzy having a nightmare. That was kind of clean. <laughs> <laughs> the split looking... He has made some time back, though. You know, yeah. I mean, not too bad. We've gone from almost, I want to say, 55 on the predicted time to uh, a nice cheeky 53. Is this still... Like, he can get the craziest RNG. I do... Someone was asking about, about whether or not, like... I think a lot of people chalk up the inferno rng just to you know oh you know like whether or not oh my god that's a mage hit an eight very humble <laughs> this is this we're going afk i guess yeah i saw a lot of time wasted there by kevzy just trying to solve the wave i guess and uh hemis i've just heard you say there he could still go nuclear is it true are you saying there's a chance there's the, like, it's not a, I wouldn't call it a reasonable one, but definitely, um, you, I think if every spawn worked out perfect, just north, northeast mage, nothing else, it just fucking hits everything. Cause you can't lose time when you just have northeast mage and nothing else. You just Tebow the bitch. And it's fucking done. We see a uh, I mean, first time chat viewer ooh. here say, this is like watching a car crash. And you're right, mate. I tell you something that would be better to watch. That's me perm banning you from the chat. Enjoy the perm. We will see that man later. Oh, fuck. Oh my God, no prayer on there either. Didn't have Zero. prayer on at the start of this wave going into 61. Oh I gotta say, this is like watching a car crash. Yes. <laughs> Same tick, the melee, and the range oh, there. Oh, no. no. That's a mage. What? The bat saves him. Wow. <laughs> the melee stuck on top of Kevzy here. He steps out and changes his prayer off. Takes another melee hit off prayer here, does Kevzy. And he sips a brew for the first time in this Inferno run. He's got a 49.55 to be. He's currently sat on 39.55. There is still a chance, ladies and gentlemen. It's not over, but he's going to need to see some big hits. Please. Oh my God, does he chin them? That's he's a, a chin. chin. Oh. But yeah. 
I think a lot of people, a lot of people attribute like RNG and the Inferno to just be, you know, like I hit big. It's like, it's not just that more than anything. I would, I would probably say a lot of the RNG is, is hits, but the other half is getting the spawns. Getting a nice spawn is going to save you so much time and it's going to make, it's going to make it easier to play. It's going to save you the time. You're going to see more things. You're not going to be as stressed. It's just easy oh my god triple for the boy oh is he gonna do it no he's not uh yeah you can definitely say rng obviously does play a factor here but uh seeing kevzy run this he said he has a sub 50 in the inferno and uh you get to see him up against adicon in this round and you can really see the difference between someone who has a sub 50 who is definitely one of the best players in the video game, sub 50, no small feat, but you can see the difference between someone who has a sub 50 is up there with the best and someone who is the best. A 43 off prayer there for Kevzy has to sip another brew and he's down to three and a half hemis. Oh my word. I love the speed at which his mouse fucking went to the brew. That was fucking... Let me tell you what... That, that was fucking that was good dude he saw he took the hit and he just fucking insta went for it wave 63 a 41 45 just for comparison adicon went into 63 at a 38 13 so three minutes and 30 seconds he needs to make up from 63 to 69 steps to the side to make sure that the melee digs and then he's safe spotted that's good not going to really help the time, but at least he, um, he won't have any issues with this melee. Max a little bit more. So let, let's see, let's see what's a, what's, what's probably one of the best scenarios. I think the fastest we've ever seen someone get through 60, 63 to the end is six minutes. Something like that, if I remember correctly. I think Acid House did something like six and a half minutes. To which... Six and a half minutes is that is doable. <laughs> yes, that, that is doable. You know, like maybe forty-eight. Hemi's really is saying there's a it. chance, ladies and gentlemen. Kevzy is not it's out of it just yet. Every fucking mage and four hit every jad and fucking get a one fifty zuck. <laughs> I don't know, Blazer. What what was it? What was it? I remember. I remember people were freaking out about it. Nice solve, indeed, indeed. That's something a lot of people could learn from. If you react late, just run north. I, I don't. I don't remember what the time was. Maybe it was eight minutes. There is a zero point zero one percent chance I'm pogging IRL. Well, I'd be willing to take those odds. Yeah, whilst there is a chance, it is a very low chance, you know, one in a million. But we have seen crazier things in the speedrun cup. This time around, we saw a Vorkarth run being won by a singular tick. We saw a Chambers of Zedric challenge mode solo being won by a singular tick. We saw a Nightmare run ending in a draw. And just before, we saw a world record overall time in a TOB trio and then had their opposition team be on pace going into Verzik. So crazier things have happened. That is crazy. I, you, do you have a, do you have like a list of I'm assuming Hootie probably has a list of like stats of all the crazy shit that probably happened on this one. Yeah, Hootie is definitely putting in the work behind the scenes. He's going to be sending me some graphics over the course of this grand final. And we're going to see Kevzy use that pillar to his advantage and get a 110 damage stack on this major. Unfortunately, I, I don't think there's any way he's going to be able to get that. But uh, at the very least, you know, it's, uh, you'll see sometimes... <laughs> People would blood barrage the enablers. Oh my god. Almost did a stooge there. But um 
I personally don't ever con Oh my <laughs> god, what the fuck? <laughs> that is the last thing he wanted to say here. And he is gonna have to complete Jad, Triple Jads, and Zuck in the next four and a half minutes. Hemis, is there still a chance? Um, <laughs> um fuck. Uh, I just started doing the math. What if he just fucking one hits everything? Oh, <laughs> oh my god, that's a that's that's a hit. Oh it's zero. Never mind. You know, this might be a... Uh, I don't wanna be the one to to you know put it in the dirt, but we might be over here. It is not looking good for Oz Myth Kevzy. A lot of Kevzy fans in the chat and uh Unfortunately, not the best performance for him here in this Jad, sorry, Inferno the, speed run. Why did he chin that one? Could have chinned the, the boss there. Wasn't standing on the ideal tile to start the kill. Oh no, now he's going to get bullied by some fucking healers too. No, I think what he's going to do here is just straight up chin the, <laughs> chin the healers to kill the boss. Surely. Can he... Step one to the side, though, so only one of them's hitting him, please. I, just... I can't... I don't... Oh, chin? Well, 31's too high. 31's too high. But I, I, I suppose I respect it. Blood so, Barrage um, doesn't go off. Once again, the stat for sub-50 on average to get into a single Jad, he's about two and a half minutes behind. You want to get in at about 43 flat. As we see him come right into now, triples he here. In... Had a right 1 now. minute 20 jad <laughs> as well. And uh, Adikon going into triples at 42.58. Kevzy here going into triples at 46.57. So that is a 3 minute 59 second time deficit going into triples here. Yeah, if even if he got into Zuck right now. Well, if like let's say he got into Zuck the time he went into triples. That still would have been... A bit of a stretch, you know. Like average Zuck is with van braces now. It's probably like a little bit over three minutes. I believe someone did the calcs. It was about three oh five, but you could call it three flat, give or take. Like healer proc, get a little bit of RNG. So right now, even even if we were into Zuck for that, it'd still be it'd still be pretty hard pressed. Seeing a lot of rapid heal flicks here from Kevzy when he's not max health. Ooh, could have waited one tick there to get all three healers in one chin. Gonna have to waste another two ticks on the tag there. Oh, and he takes oh a jab God. hit! A 62! Playing this one in the hopes that Adikon died and almost dies himself. Getting bullied by some healers. Down to the last Jad. Kevzy been chanced so many times in this Inferno, I can't keep count. And now he has one minute and 10 seconds to finish off this Jad and the entire Zuck kill. And unfortunately, we don't see any death touch darts in the inventory for Kevzy, so it is not looking good. I mean, 50 seconds, that's usually about how long it takes to get after healers. Gets a nice heal. I mean, he's got two and a half brews and two, basically two whole range punts. That's enough to have. Maybe he'll get the kill. He'll get 100,000 Slayer XP. No, we, we get out with something. We'll have to see. Maybe, I, I hope we at least get the kill, right? Surely we do see a completion here from Kevzy, but Hootie Tootie making a very good point in the chat there, guys. Uh, seen a lot of people laughing at Kevzy here, but uh, let's see a smiley face in the chat if you have a sub 50 Inferno, as Kevzy does. A very, very good gamer. As much as I do love to meme it, it, it is very true that, like, people don't understand. <laughs> like, it, it looks fucking Pepega on the outside, but when you're in it, you're, like, freaking out. Like, what the fuck's going on? Really nice bow hits here for Kevzy at the start as well. 900 hit points on Zuck. Tagging it with the blowpipe spec. We'll have to see. Does does he end up um, 
Does he off pick it? Doesn't matter. He ends Doesn't up matter. Yeah, the kills area. the Ranger. Saying some big hits. Does he miss? Kevzy with the big arms. That was three forty ones in a row. Six hundred ninety-seven hit points left on Zark. Did you say he missed a hit? No, I was going to say Mr. Bockington being oh. called out for for being toxic in the chat. <laughs> oh no way, he's killing the mage. It would have been wreck if he killed, if he didn't kill the mage. <laughs> I just I gotta put that fucking out there. If he killed the mage, it's just fucking throwing wreck. And we see Kevzy just playing it safe at the end here. I'm sure he knows from the time. That's most likely not to beat Adikon. And once again, these players going into this didn't know the time of their opponent. So uh, probably just playing for the completion here is Kevzy. And hopefully oh, we will we, see it. we know you killed it, Stooge. We also showed you, we also showed the fucking, <laughs> the thing you wrote in Stooge quotes. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was a fucking wild one, dude. Cheeky regular Jad skip. We're gonna see whether or not he gets this proc off. Now, the main thing is he wants to he wants to get it right as it's leaving a corner. But um this is this is why like there's a there's a significant amount of variance in it. Because like when you get the when you get your hits matters, right? So if you don't proc on this side, you just you just have to fucking wait across the entire corner. So even though Let's say you only hit a couple zeros. It's like that. Those, if those zeros happen at a crucial time, you could lose 30, 40 seconds for it. But gets a nice proc. We'll see some good healer dodging, hopefully. We'll see some very nice hits. Kevzy with the big arms. And that was like six hits after healers. Holy shit, yeah. This dude does not hit zeros. Let's go. Absolutely incredible. Yep. A 52-25. So he ends up going into... Zuck was four minutes down and then ends up only being a minute, two and a half minutes behind. So made up a minute and a half on that Zuck, but not going to be enough. A 49.55.8 for Adikon up against the 52.25.2 for Kevzy there. And it is a 2-0 for Team BDSM. As we move into the next boss. It is a best of nine. So first of five. And uh, we're going to see at least three more bosses here. The next one up is going to be next. But Hemis, we are going to let you go, my friend. Before we do, I am going to hit the bathroom. So once again, please take the stage. Let the people know who you are, where they can find you. And I'll be right back. I would like to clarify that um, even though Kevzy, uh was three minutes or two, two and a half minutes slower, his time is still very respectable. That is Oblivion Diary done right there. So, you know, to anyone aiming for a cheeky Inferno speedrun right there, you would have, like, some people would look at that and say, wow, that was scuffed. But, you know, take a look at that. That's that's Oblivion Diary. There's a lot of people struggling to get that right now. It might change with uh, the introduction of our new gear, but, yeah, I uh, appreciate uh, Jake and Hootie coming in. Let me let me cast again. Definitely a lot of a lot of fun on the first one. This one this one we we did kind of already know what was happening. As always, you know. I mean, uh, I mean nowadays I'm known for Inferno, but I would strongly advise you check out the high risk TOB series. We have highlights. We have trailers. Basically, you pay a buy in. Uh, MVP wins the pot, so I can kill all my teammates. I get MVP for it. I get all the money. We've had tournaments for, at this point, I think two bill now, 1.3, 600, big clans, Oblivion, Sanity, Infernal, we've had, you know, big, uh, a lot of record holders, yeah, a lot of them were even in this tournament, could have seen Yakosu, you could have seen Ruru, you could have seen tons of players, Barack Obama, lots of fun, I'd say check that out on YouTube if you haven't, but yeah, Inferno Speedrunning Guide, Iris Top. Very cool. Take it away, Mr. Epscape. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen. Hemis, thank you so much for coming on and joining me for the Inferno cast. Obviously, 
uh, one of the best Inferno runners in the game and definitely helping me along there because I have absolutely no clue what I'm talking about. Guys, make sure you check him out. Exclamation mark caster in the chat to get Hemi's Twitch channel. We are going to let him go. That has been Hemi's, ladies and gentlemen, but we are going to get Hooty Tooty back on the line as we move into the next boss, which is going to be Nex. Oh, I think Hooty Tooty might be AFK here. Nope, he's back. Hooty Tooty. Bonsoir. <laughs> Wait, what does that mean? I have no idea. <laughs> Oh, all right, ladies and gentlemen, I need to get Hurdy Tooty's uh, camera back online. So while I transition out of this slide so that I can get that back up without accidentally leaking my DMs, we're going to see another slide over here that Hurdy Tooty has done up. We've just seen the last Inferno run of the Speedrun Cup, and here are the overall times for the Inferno that we have seen so far in the Speedrun Cup. As you can see there, up top was Adwam with a 48-21. Coming in second was Stooge. And third, Jolanine with a 49-09. Oztob MCU coming in fourth with a 49-16. Five, once again, MCU with a 49-21. Very consistent. Adwam coming in with a 49-28. And then right down the bottom here, seven, eight, and nine, we have a 49.55, a 50.19, and a death for Adicon. Actually, number nine will actually go to Kevzy now with that 52. Uh, but Adicon managing to take that one out for his team, Hootie Tooty, and we are 2 0 in the grand final of the Speed Run Cup. Poggington uh, Championship. You have to say, if you are Team BDSM right now, you have to be feeling pretty good about this one. They are the reigning champions, and uh, they're currently 2-0 up. We're going to go ahead and jump on into the next run, and that is going to be next. We're going to see Team BDSM taking on the Big Bat. We're going to see Hi Yo for Team BDSM. We're going to see Mole Goat Kirby, and we're going to see the Smoke 3000. We, are, we mentioned it briefly uh, the last two days over the, the next strats, and, and if Melee's worth it or not, off the Ruby Roulette is the play, and, and we'll see the Ruby Roulette coming in from Team BDSM. Yeah, we do see the strategy. No Torva in the inventory. Torva being the best DPS unless you are the luckiest players in the universe. So we're going to see them hope to get lucky on their Ruby Bolts. We see the follow strategy here from the big Smork 3000 as well. Those that don't know, if you step under the boss and then have someone follow you, the boss won't move while they're followed. Not a necessary move to make. We call that the noob move because it's an easy way for noobs to five tick the boss, but you can actually just step under it on that fourth tick. So you see Smork 3000 and Hi-Yo both coughing, sharing that cough, and uh, potentially not the favorite boss here for Team BDSM. We see no Torva in the inventory. We see the noob move from Smork 3000, and uh, potentially, as we've said before, Kirby being the most well-rounded gamer might be the only person here that has spent a bit of time doing next. I believe he is the duo next world record holder as well. Absolutely insane time. You can check that one out on his YouTube channel. I believe it's a six minute something for a duo next time. Absolutely ridiculous. Bit of Ruby roulette going on there. See Smork 3000 and Hi Yo stood in the north side of the room. We see Kirby on the east side, and it's very likely he's going to be the Umbra tank for this one. He will be taking the aggro of Umbra. Unfortunately, Smork 3000 gets in a little early, or is it Hi-Yo that has the tank now? 
And uh, Kirby is actually going to be tanking the boss there. It is. It is Smoke 3000 with the tank. And Kirby is going to be tanking the boss for his teammates. You can see with that indicator there where the aggro range is for next. And both Smoke 3000 and Hayo outside the aggro range as we go into the blood phase. Now, with the Ruby Roulette, we're going to see these players with their death charges and their thralls. After this Siphon has gone off, we're going to see the Zarak Crossbow Specs come in. Let's have a look. That's a 0 there for Kirby. That's a 110 for Hayo. And a 110 there for Smork 3000 as well. Kirby comes in with another 110 after he uses the Altar Blood Sacrifice here for Hayo. A zero again for Smork 3000. So it looks as though... Whoa, another Ruby coming in for Kirby. Lots of Rubies. Another Ruby coming in for Kirby. They are going with the Ruby Roulette. And those Rubies are coming in hot. Krua is spawned just as the Siphon comes out. So saving quite a bit of time there as well. See, Smork 3000 and Kirby stood on the same tile. That's going to allow Nex to hit the barrage on them and heal a bit more hit points. Quite a few mistakes here from Team BDSM, but mistakes don't matter when you've got RNG on your side and a lot of Ruby Bolts coming in. We see the Phase 3 at 333. That's a lot of numbers. Phase 1 was a 112. See, Phase 2 with a 221 and Phase 3 with a 3. 3-3, three, three. coming into Ice Phase here, 4, Team BDSM, another 110 we see on the boss there, a lot of Ruby Bolt specs coming in, I believe there is a 5.5% chance for a Ruby Bolt proc after the diary, am I wrong there, Hootie Tootie? Sounds like I'm wrong, 6.6% chance after the diary. So we should see one in around 20 hits, a little less, maybe one in 18 hits will be a Ruby Bolt proc. And that's on a successful hit as well. So you have to hit higher than a zero. Should be seeing it not as often as we have seen it in this kill. 35% special attack energy here for Hayo. Going to get the death charge off. Smork 3000 in the Prison of Ice. And let's have a look at the Ruby Roulette here on the final phase. The Zaros phase, we see another Ruby Bolt proc go off. They're getting a lot of really nice Ruby Bolts hit, uh, Ruby Bolt hits here. Another one for Hi Yo and another one for Smork 3000. Guys, they are getting a ridiculous amount of Ruby Bolt procs here. And you definitely do not need Torva when you've got Zaro crossbows like this. This is absolutely ridiculous. Going into phase four at a 434 as well. 480 hit points left on the boss. Make that 370. We see the T-Bows come out at this point. Not worth using the Ruby Bolts. And this is where it should slow down here for Team BDSM. Now that they can't rely on their Ruby Bolts. But the T-Bows are going fucking nuclear, guys. The T-Bows proving to not be a problem at all. And that is a very fast next kill. We are going to see a 539 next kill here for Team BDSM. And uh, Oz Smith most likely going to be going in with the Torva. And that is a very fast time that they need to beat. Seeing a 539 there, Hootie Tootie. You can't be feeling too confident if you're Oz Smith being 2-0 uh, down. I uh, see Hootie's going for a nap. Um, I'm going to have to cast this one solo. Seems to be a bit tired. And, uh, well, you can't blame him. Next, not the most entertaining boss. Ladies and gentlemen, we are not going to mess around. We're going to jump straight into the next boss. It's going to be Ozmith running next. Let's jump straight on into it. We see Kevzy here for... Ozmith, we see a 110 from Kevzy and a 110 over there from Slinky as well. As we see the Torva come out and look how quick this first phase is for Ozmith. Not having to rely on those Ruby Bolt procs. We're going to get one more hit after this and they're going to move all the way over to Fumus to start this off. 
Looks as though Kevzy's going to be the tank here. No, Kevzy's going to move out the way. Slinky's perspective is what we're seeing right now. Eulis can move over. Kevzy taking damage. Doesn't need to be taking damage here, but is the cough tank for his team by the looks of things. And a very quick Fumus as well. We see a phase one for Ozmith, a 42 second. They're already 30 seconds ahead of their opponents here. 30 seconds ahead. As we see a nice little reset here from Ozmith. A 42 second phase one. That is massive here for Ozmith. And they are in a must win situation right now. Currently 2 0 down in the grand final of the Speed Run Cup. And you would have to think they need to take this one down. Being one of the RNG bosses, but also one of the bosses they probably are a bit better at than their opponents. And the Ruby Bolts not going in here on phase two. This is a phase where you can't unfortunately get close to next. Won't be able to see those rapiers going in. And we see a 2040. Nice little proc there. Kevzy going to be the Umbra tank. We see the shadow spec coming in and Kevzy getting right up there. You need to summon a Thrall, Yulis. Do we get a reset here? No, we don't get a reset. This is very dangerous. Yulis going to have to stand underneath the boss. Wow, gets very lucky not to have next path out there and cause problems for his team. Coming into phase number three here. We see phase two down at a 157. Comparatively, their opponents were at a 221 there. So still 24 seconds ahead. Going into phase three, the blood phase. Do we see some specs? We see a 110 there. A couple of 110s from these Zarak crossbow specs. You'll see the players using the altar as well. Incoming siphon, 1,500 hit points left on next. We're seeing some really great damage here from the Oz Myth boys. We see another 110 coming in from the side there. 1,460 hit points. Very, very quick blood phase here. Are they going to be able to phase it? You see the accuracy from the Rapier. Huge hits there from Kevzy. Carrying the team on his back with the huge arms. See the players not DDing. Very little mistakes here from the Ozmith boys. I say they're not DDing as they take a barrage. But still, very little mistakes here from the Ozmith boys. As we see all thralls coming up, we'll see the death charges from the players, a siphon coming out from next. So they're going to save a little bit of hit points with the timing on that siphon there. In this blood phase, we see Eula say prison. I guess he knows which special attack is going to come out first. And we see the players move up with the rapiers. So all players being right next to the boss. And we're going to see the accuracy of the rapiers come in clutch here. We're going to see a much faster phase three, sorry, phase four, four Ozmith than we saw for Team BDSM with those rapiers out. See a 304 coming into phase three uh, compared to a 333 from BDSM. So still 30 seconds ahead of their opponents here are Ozmith. We see both players, Kevzy and uh, Eulis, free slinky there. Both of them didn't need to do that. Did see a few missed ticks. This ice phase is actually looking pretty slow. 680. They do proc it on the contain. See the players brewing up during the minion phase. We see lactating in chat say, is this guy autistic? No, I'm not. But you are permed. Enjoy the perm. We see Ozmith here at next. 304 going into phase three. Let's have a look at the split going into phase four. Team BDSM had a 434 split. Oh no, and they have lost the 30 second lead they had. That is a 432 going into phase four. They're going to need to see a very, very quick final phase here. There's a Rosian phase. That's a 110 there from Eulis. We're going to see a spec coming back soon for him. They've got a 5.39 to beat, so a minute and seven seconds for this final phase. Don't see the Torva Helm come on here for Slinky. We're going to see specs coming back for all of the Ozmith boys momentarily. We see the claws go off for Slinky there. That is definitely not the optimal play. Should definitely have gone for his Zarite crossbow spec and 110 pretty much guaranteed damage. Very interesting to see him go for the claws there. See, 110 coming in from the other side. The Tebow's coming out. 
This is going to be the make or break. Is the Tebow RNG going to come in? Kevzy switching on over to his Rapier. And here comes where the time save will come in for the Ozmith boys. We see Slinky over the other side still Tebowing the boss. 174 hit points. The Soul Split phase comes up. Nice big heal there for next. 21 hit points down. Two to go. They got a 539 to beat. Are they going to get it? They have a 546. So going down by 7.8 seconds there is Ozmith. That was a boss they definitely could have won there. And the RNG not coming in on that ice phase. And you really hate to see it there. The RNG definitely being the deciding factor. Very few mistakes seen from Ozmith. And uh, quite a few mistakes from BDSM. And even them going in with the Ruby Bolt Roulette as well. Not even bothering with the Torva. So very interesting to see. Next is a boss that you would have thought that Oz Myth would have been able to take down. But we're going to see a 3-0 going into the next boss. BDSM in a very, very dominant position, Hootie Tootie. Yeah, it's uh, we've seen a few matchups in the quarterfinals and semifinals for Next where there was a Ruby Roulette a team versus a team that brought the melee switch. And every single time, the melee team actually came out on top by a substantial amount as well. And uh, it just looks like a, that is one example of how the Ruby Roulette can can pog off, so to speak. And, and yeah, I mean, we could easily be... 2-1 up for, for Oz Smith after the gauntlet and, and next being so close, but that with the Inferno taken by BDSM and now they, they find themselves 3-0. Yeah, very, very close in this grand final. I don't think the uh, the 3-0 scoreboard at the moment speaks to how close it has been. Obviously, the Inferno was an absolute wipe there for Adicom, but very close in the gauntlet and very close in next again here. We could have easily seen a 2-1 for Ozmith at this point in the grand final, but we are seeing a 3-0 at the moment for Team BDSM, and we are going to waste no more time getting into the next run. We are going to be seeing T-Batch running the fight caves for Team BDSM in the fourth boss of this grand final match here in the Speed Run Cup. Taking a look at the inventory, we see a four-way switch for the melee from T-Batch again. We saw him running the uh, the fight caves yesterday for Team BDSM up against uh, MCU for Oz Tob. MCU opting to take the six way melee switch. T Batch taking the four way, and uh, we're going to see those claws pop off here in the fight caves. Current world record for the Fight Caves, a 20 minute, 13 second. That was broken during the practice for the Speedrun Cup. Go ahead and chuck that music back on for the lovely people of the chat because these are going to be some long runs. Expecting to see around some 22, 23 minute times here for T-Batch and most likely Kevzy running the Fight Caves for Oz Myth. One Divine Super Combat in the inventory for those Claws and those Scythes. And we see one Divine Bastion Potion in the inventory as well. As a uh, regular Bastion Potion. Pre-potting before going into the Fight Caves. You're expecting it's not going to last 25 minutes. See the thralls in the inventory for T Batch as well as the Death Charge. Death Charge, for those that are unaware, is going to recharge 15% of your special attack energy when you kill an NPC while you have the Death Charge activated and you can cast it once every minute. So rather than restoring 20% special attack energy every minute, you are going to restore 35%. That means every three minutes. Three and a half minutes, you're going to get an extra claw spec. And those claw specs are a big, big time save here in the fight caves. We see someone asking if there was any purples during the rounds. We did see a an Elder Mall. We saw an Ancestral Hat, I believe. We saw a Serp Visi. We saw another Zora Drop. And I think that's all we've seen, so few drops uh, 
I will I will say that during this tournament and during the practice leading up to the grand final, T Batch we mentioned being the driest uh person currently for the Jad Pet. Well, guess what? He saved up all his fire capes uh gained during the uh tournament and he's going to be doing an unboxing at the end of this fire wow. cape. Wow. So have a mm -hmm. look at that, ladies and gentlemen. We're getting some extra content out of the big tea batch. Currently the driest in the game for the Jad Pet. And we'll see if he gets it. Over 200 capes on task dry for the Jad Pet. So not only are we going to see tea batch Put on a bit of a show for us here in the fight caves. Get to see a little extra content afterwards. Nice bow of Faradin in there to take out one of the bats. We see eight sand fuserums in the inventory here for T-Batch as well. No restores as we saw yesterday. Death charge goes off. Back up to 55% special attack energy. Never seen someone pronounce the bow of Ferradinen as good as EV Scape. I actually don't even know if that's how you pronounce it, but we're going with it. Nice chin there from T-Batch from way downtown, killing the bat, getting some damage off on the melee as well. We could always, instead of calling it the bow of Ferradinen, we could call it the bow of foreskin and say that is exactly where the frogs are popping off inside. See another big chin here. Damaging on the melee. Another chin. Nope. Coming into wave 15. We see a 251 split for T-Batch. We're going to write that one down. A little 251 angle. A little bit of Christmas music going on in the background as well. We're going to have to fix that. Ozmith currently 3-0 down. Against Team BDSM, the reigning speedrun cup champions. And they have come here to play in this grand final matchup. Showing the people exactly what they're made of. Exactly why they deserve to be here. After a very close quarterfinal. Almost didn't even make it to the semis. Up against Team Cum in the first round. And then having to fight Oz Tob in the semifinals as well. Have not had an easy run to this grand final. And currently 3-0 up against Oz Myth, putting on a very dominant display. Oh, the Claws almost getting the one hit there on the melee for T-Batch. Not quite. That is a 40 from the Bow of Ferradinen as well. And T-Batch going to take out the Ranger. Another big bow. Be looking for those 160 XP drops on the Rangers with the bow. Not too sure exactly how high you can hit on task with the bow of Ferradin and fully potted with rigor on, but I can tell you it is higher than a 40. See another bow from way downtown, and that's going to be a 52 from the bow. Okay, so we can hit at least a 52 with the bow on task with the full crystal armor. the chins go on here for T-Match. I believe T-Batch was the previous world record holder for the fight games. Is that true, Hoodie Tootie? Before it was taken by MCU, that is correct, but uh, does, no, does no longer hold the second best time. That has been beat a few times, actually. I'm not sure exactly where he ranks currently uh, in the Caves leaderboard, but... I think he's uh, given up speed running for, for a bit until the new Raids 3 stuff comes out and really revolutionizes the game for speed running of the, of the fight case for sure, yeah. 
Incredible pronunciation here from Hootie Tootie. Is a master wordsmith, as he said. The new raids three drops. As we see a doomed in the chat from T Batch. Uh, the new raids three drops are going to affect the fight caves heavily. Heavily affect the uh, the fight caves. And we're going to see the Missouri armor, Mazari, Mazari, Mastery. Not sure how you're supposed to say that one, but we'll see that armor come into the game. We're also going to see the new ring that is going to allow players to have their special attack energy restore twice as fast. It's going to allow more claws to go off and players are theory crafting, theorizing that the current world record of 2013 will be beaten by over a minute. Players are theorizing that the new fight case record will be sub 19. So we're going to see these entire caves beaten in less than 20 minutes. And if the new record is going to be sub 19, you will see 20 minute caves being done pretty regularly, which is absolutely insane to me. That's got to be some of the best Slayer XP in the game. We see real Zeds in the chat, atting Adicon, the winner of the last round, the one before, the Inferno, saying Adicon, dead in the Inferno again. Real Zeds, my friend, you are, in fact, dead in the chat. That's a perm. We're going to see a nice little setup for a chin here. Oh, he kills the major. Doesn't matter, but we do see a nice chin. Two chins to take out. Oh my god, the blobs. See, not where, say, EV scape. Are you a boob or a butt guy? I have both, my friend. Personally, a feet guy myself. Big fan of feet. <laughs> I see. See T Batch here with a 730 wave 31 split, by the way, guys. 7.30. That wave 30. We see a 10.42 currently on the clock. Hootie Tootie, not only accepting donations for the prize pull of the speedrun cup, but will now be accepting feet picks in his DMs at Hootie underscore OSRS on Twitter. Damn, there's some groovy music. I feel like I'm a high school teenager in the 80s, walking out after successfully saving the world. Currently 12 minutes on the clock. Once again, the world record for the fight caves, 20 minutes, 13 seconds held by MCU. Took it off T-Batch, who we are currently watching. 
You can barely hear the music, by the way, Mr. Fargesta. You're now going to be able to barely hear the live stream at all. Enjoy the perm. Double Ranger Wave here. Taken down by T-Batch. 12.59 going into Wave 46. Once again, for those that don't know, 63 waves in the fire caves. Having a look at the inventory, we see three and a half sand fuse serums here for T Batch. As that melee takes a long time to take down for him. See a big claw on the major. Running a little low on prayer points here is T-Batch, those thralls. The cast is going to cost six prayer points every time you pull one up. And having to run around so much, you're going to see the recast of the thrall summoning spell. Two doses of Divine Super Combat. One dose of Divine Super Combat. So 10 minutes left. Sorry, 10 minutes left on the Divine Bastion. We see he's already used up two doses of his range pot. A big chin there for T-Batch. And another big chin. EV Scape must be a hairdresser. The amount he goes on about perms. Well, I won't be cutting hair, but I will be cutting you out of the chat, Seabet. Enjoy the perm. Sixteen minutes on the clock here for T Batch. Are we gonna see him set up a big chin here? Oh, he does try to go for it, but the major dies just in time. Let's see a resummon of the thrall, surely we do. See the big claw on the melee, and that is a one hit there. Big arms on T-Batch. 1636 going into wave 53. Absolutely pacing here. EV Scape must be on his period. Well, let me tell you, I'm not bleeding from it, but you are one, you stupid cunt. That's a perm. This is fun, guys.
So CT Batch here. Currently sat on around wave 55. A big chin. Is he going to go for it again? Doesn't go for the second chin. Goes to the scythe instead. We see five doses of sand fuse serum left in the inventory here. 18 minutes on the clock. Doesn't get the scythe off there on the melee. Once again, the Fight Caves guys has a static spawn. So T-Batch here knows exactly where every monster is going to spawn on every wave. I'll get my ass out for five subs, says Hootie Tootie. Holy. And we see them come through. Lisa, looking forward to seeing Hootie's ass. And a big chin here for T-Batch. We see 19 minutes, 36 seconds on the clock. Very fast run here for T-Batch. Gonna see a chin set up here from him as well. Nope. Goes to set up the chin every time and just kills the mage too fast. The Tebow putting in work. Is this going to be close to the world record? It's not. It's actually already slower than the world record. The world record run finished 20 seconds ago. T-Batch here still has four waves to complete. Why is this guy doing a fight caves for a fire cape when he has an infernal cape? I don't get OSRS players. Why are you watching a live stream that you're banned in? Enjoy the perm. Coming up to wave 62 here for T-Batch. We see 21 minutes on the clock. Wrong guy. Well, that's just bad RNG, guys. It is what it is. We've seen some bad RNG here in the Speed Run Cup, and it does happen in life as well. Coming into the JAD, we have a 22 minutes on the clock here for T-Batch. Here it comes. How quick is this JAD going to be? We see one hit. That's two hits. Big hit there. A 75. The healers come out real early. See, 100% spec, two zeros with the Twisted Bow. That's going to be a 78. Let's have a look at the claws. And the double claw is going to take it out. And we see a 22-21 here for T-Batch. And we are going to see the gambling of a bunch of fire capes that have been saved up. Let's have a look, ladies and gentlemen. How many has he saved? 18 fire capes in practice for the speed run cup. 
Not lucky. 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 Copium. Not lucky. 10 caves to go. Not lucky. Eight remain. Not lucky. Not lucky. Seven caves. Not lucky. Six caves. Not lucky. Five caves to go. Not lucky. Not lucky again. Three caves remain. Is he going to get it? Not lucky. One cave. One cave. Not lucky. Ladies and gentlemen. And a 22-21 here for T-Batch in the fight caves. 22-21 and... I gotta be completely honest with you guys, that is going to be a tough time to beat. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you you look at you look at the other side, Ozmith, they're just, you know, not gonna be feeling that confident. They don't have a, a fight cave specialist. And uh, you know, they're gonna be they're gonna be, you know, hoping, praying for a, a new PB probably, because I don't know how many people in in, in the other team has a 22 21 uh but actually i mentioned it kind of briefly uh, earlier that kevzy's time is 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 so divided across all these bosses that you know you'd think he doesn't have enough time to practice everywhere that's why they've delegated uh another player to participate in the fight caves and we're actually going to see Eulis in the fight caves this round rather than kevzy who we did see in the fight caves win in the semi-final but yeah Eulis will be wanting to uh show what he can do as well there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Kevzy not running this one for Ozmith. Instead, we will be seeing Yulis run this one. He has a very tough time to beat of 22 to 21. Having a look at the inventory, we see a four-way switch. Exactly the same inventory setup as his opponent, T-Batch. Uh, sorry, guys. I'm just going to have to quickly go and get my night vision goggles. What the fuck is this screen? Can anyone see what's going on? Are we sure Euless is running this? I can't actually see the player. I don't know what's we, going on right now. We talk about high ping and, and, and the players playing in countries uh, neighboring Australia. Uh, Euless actually plays uh, on the sun. So <laughs> the sun being bright enough to, to lighten up his monitor, and that's why he plays on such a dark, dark setting. But yeah. And I would believe that he's playing on the sun, and we're seeing the view from there as well, because he zoomed out so far, we can see the entire fight caves. We talk about how players will know where things are spawning. He doesn't need to know where things are spawning if he can see the entire floor. And a nice little claw spec there. For Euless. So the tire markers on the ground for the spawns. And uh, doing a very good job of figuring out where the spawns are. Losing a few ticks here on that bat. So we'll see the death charge come in as well. 50% special attack energy here for Euless. Should see the claws come in. He's going to join T Batch's CC. Hang on a minute. What's going on here? We see Euless fraternizing with the enemy and pulling a power move, joining T Batch's CC, his opponent, in the middle of his run.
Going to see a nice little chin coming in here for Euless on the mini blobs. No good. Another Thrall to come out. We see the Death Charge come as well. The Thrall's not out. There it is. So we're coming up to wave 15 here. And we had a 251 split for T-Batch. Wave 15, 259 here for Euless. So only six, sorry, eight seconds behind here is Euless up against his opponent. Once again, Hootie Tootie mentioning they don't have a PVM specialist on their team. They nope. do have PVM specialists, but not a fire cave. Sorry, yeah, a fire cave specialist. <laughs> they do have PVM specialists, yes. No fight cave specialist here for Ozmith. So, uh, going to be tough to take down Yulis, take down T Batch. But if he can get a win here, going to be huge for his team. They're currently 3 0 down. And you got to say, this is a must win here. As we see two bow of ferrodenons there from Euless rather than the blowpipe. Potentially losing a few ticks there. Slow spawn on the mini blobs. See the death charge come in again. But yeah, quite a few ticks lost here for Euless. Once again, not a fight cave specialist. But you have to say this is a must win at this point here for Ozmith. Currently 3-0 down. If they lose this, it's going to make it 4-0 going into the TOB run. And it's certainly not going to be easy to bring it back from there. Nice little chin in the middle here for Euless. A way downtown bow of ferret in it. Are we going to set up for a big chin here? Let's have a look. Should be a big chin set up. Let's see it. Oh, the chin doesn't finish off the melee. Had the chance. Though. Oh, and a 10 heal. Doesn't end up costing him an extra hit. Next split we're going to see is at wave 31. Currently on wave 22. We see the Scythe coming in. Click's looking slightly shaky here for Euless. Maybe feeling the nerves, the pressure of the grand final of the speedrun cup. We see a chat. Someone has said, at EVscape, I heard you calling me every five minutes. What's up, homie? With the name, enjoy the perm. Making a new Twitch account for a running joke on Twitch. Enjoy the perm. We have 25 here for Euless. Sam few serums in the inventory. No funds issues. Yeah, losing a few ticks there with the way downtown bowl of Ferradinen. Could have got the blowpipes off as he was going across. Euless not looking as clean as his counterpart here in the fight caves. You have to wonder if RNG will be enough to make up for... All of the lost ticks, we see a big chin potential. Misses the middle blob as well. You're just looking very shaky. See chin from way downtown. A big 25 on the melee as well. A big chin. So the death charge come up with the thrall. Should see a claw spec come out soon. A big chin here. See the scythe come out. Not the biggest swing. See the claws on the melee. Blowpipe coming back out. 
Wave 28 of the fire case for Eulis. We see 7.30 on the clock. We will be seeing TOB coming up next, and that is one that Ozmith definitely has a chance to win. See the first chin here from Eulis not hitting the middle mini blob. Making quite a few mistakes in this Fight Caves run, guys. And it might sound very harsh to say and point out all of his mistakes, but we are in the grand final of Old School RuneScape's biggest PVM tournament. You would not expect to see mistakes like this from the best of the best. Two bows again from Eulis. Definitely could have got some blowpipes off there. And a 10 heal from the melee. And that's going to cause him to have to use another hit. The thrall would have finished it off if there wasn't a heal. Quite unlucky there for Eulis. We see Metallic Mage in the chat saying only PVM tournament. And I'm sorry, sir. I will not allow you to disrespect my boy Hemis like that. Running the high risk TOB. Say the only tournament. Well, that is going to be the only thing you say in my Twitch chat. Enjoy the perm. Wave 33 currently, we see the split for Wave 31 was an 8.35. And we see a 1 minute and 5 second deficit for Eulis going into 31. 1 minute and 5 second already. Not looking good for Eulis in this Fight Caves run. A 7.30 split we saw from T-Batch going into Wave 31. Thralls and the Death Charge, the new tech in the Fight Caves. See the Scythe here, not gonna come out for Eulis. Manages to kill the mage with the T-Bow anyway. A big chin there, 29 damage back to the Major. Coming out of wave 37. 45% special attack energy, summoning a Thrall. Gonna see him take down the Ranger here. Not big enough hits, unfortunately. There it goes. See the Scythe on the Mage. Very nice, big enough. Eleven forty two on the clock for Eulis here. Speedrun Cup has been really entertaining to watch. Great setup and performance. Cringe commentary, but everything else is S tier. Trying to bait 
Hey, permanent ban. If we want to talk about cringe things, I know you're lying because the commentary has been S tier. I think everyone in the chat can agree. Smiley face if you think the commentary has been on point. Approaching wave 46, we'll see the next split. T-Batch at wave 46 was on a 12.59. Wait, this can't be right. T-Batch at a 12.59 at wave 46. Euless on wave 43 here at a 13.25. So already slower than the wave 46 split on wave 43. It is not looking good for Oz Myth here. In this fight caves run, he chins the wrong monster. Doesn't matter in the end. Wave 44 coming up. Gonna see a chin here on these mini blobs. Four of them stacked up. How big is the chin? Big enough to take them all out. That's a big chin. Coming into wave 46, a 14.32 here for Euless, and it was a 12.59 for T-Batch, so a 1 minute and 33 second deficit. And I hate to be that guy, but I don't think it's going to be possible for Euless to bring this one back, but crazier things have happened. We will definitely have to see. Uh, I saw someone ask in the chat, how does this compare with uh, uh, Turbo PVM, Adwam's uh, fight caves in the semifinals? And that last split that we just we just saw was a 14.45, I believe, for Adwam. So quicker than that run. Quicker than Adwam's run. There you go. Mm -hmm. So Euless... This was slow. Adams was slower. Euless actually doing quite well here, but... Up against one of the best in the world and not being a fight cave specialist himself. Uh, even fast time seems slow. See a big chin here. Not big enough. Taking out both monsters on the same tick. Way 49. A 22 to the dome here. Two anglers left in the inventory for Euless. Fifty five percent special attack energy using that death charge to the best of his abilities. For those that don't know, the death charge going to restore 15% special attack energy when you kill a monster while the death charge is active. Meaning we will see players restoring 35% special attack energy every minute instead of 20. So almost doubling the restore rate of that special attack energy. And after raids three with the new ring coming out, that is gonna go up even higher. It's going to be 55% special attack energy every minute restored. See a big chin here. Oh, big enough to take out all the NPCs.
Gonna see the wave 53 split coming up in a second. Big chin! Takes out the major, but not both of the... Oh my god, he Tebow's the mini blob. That is unfortunate for Yulis there. As the wave 53 split comes in, we see a 17.42, and it was a 16.36 for T-Batch. So, if my calculations are correct, ladies and gentlemen, and they are correct, Yulis making up 30 seconds in the last seven waves. So there is definitely still a chance here for him to make up that last one minute that he's down. Don't count him out just yet. There is definitely still a chance and Yulis could potentially take down the first point for his team in this grand final matchup. Oh, a 10 heal there for Eulis, and that is going to cost him another hit on the melee. Another two hits and another 10 heal. Oh, that is disastrous for him there. About as much chance as you getting a girlfriend. The broski, I don't need a girlfriend for myself, mate, because I've got yours. Enjoy the perm. Wave 56. Saving the melee for last. Interesting strategy. So 1954 on the clock has a 22 21 to beat still got quite a bit of time to make up here does Yulis see a big chin not enough to take out the mini blobs or oh, another three ticks lost there gonna eat that last angler fish in the inventory 64 hit points no food now for Yulis. Still has five waves to go. Oh, the chin one tick too early there as well on the bat. Going into 59, 20, 55 on the clock. Takes a melee hit there from the mage. Not a chance, but that certainly would have put him in a terrible position. Standing in melee distance again from the mage. I believe that potentially was a melee chance. Yulis. Not doing too well here at the end of his 5Ks run. 21-27 on the clock. Has three waves to get through. Hate to be that guy, guys. But I don't think there's a chance anymore. He's going to have to go absolutely nuclear with the hits. We see the claws coming in on the major. Would have liked to see the claws on a different minion. Wave 60, not the best here for Yulis. 22, 21 to beat, and we see 22 minutes on the clock. And ladies and gentlemen, as the time ticks over, 22, 20, 22, 21, that is going to be another point here. For Team BDSM.
And that puts us at a 4-0. In the grand final of the Speed Run Cup. You do have to give it to Eulis here. That was a melee chance as well. You have to give it to Eulis here. Not a fight cave specialist. But a very valiant effort nonetheless. This was one that you would expect BDSM to take down. And they have in fact done just that. And we could be looking at a clean sweep here for BDSM. A massively dominant performance in the grand final of the Speed Run Cup. We see Jad come out. Let's have a look at the RNG on Jad. 22-21 was the time to beat. We see 23-30 click over on the clock. See the claws come in, the double claw, gonna take it out. The personal best there for Eulis at 23-22. So you would have had to see him beat his PB by over a minute. Over a minute to get the dub there. But that is gonna be BDSM taking it down in a 4-0 at the moment with TOB regular threes coming up. Hooty Tooty, this is a massive deficit they need to come back from. Yeah, um, some RuneScape played by both teams there, and 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 you saw what you saw. The the better team comes out on top for sure, and and yeah, we're uh, up to a four zero now, and and they're gonna wanna. Yeah, I mean they're gonna wanna stop the bleeding here, and and maybe maybe at least save it just a, a couple bosses here or there to to not let it be a five zero sweep for sure. But yeah, I. Uh, we're going to just have to see how the Tob plays out for that. Just going to have to see how the Tob plays out indeed. And speaking of which, let's not waste any more time, Hootie Tootie. We, uh, we're going to go and jump on into the TOB runs here for this grand final matchup. This is going to be Team BDSM at Tob. And we are going to be seeing it run over here. Kirby will start recording at Nilo Boss. Okay, very well-rounded PVMer. Obviously not very well-rounded at OBS. We see Hi Yo and Rusterman being the other two players that are running for Team BDSM. We see one spec there for Rusterman. Kirby goes in with a zero BGS by the looks of things. Defense maybe looking a little high for Maiden. I believe it'll be Hi Yo on the mage. Let's see how he goes with the freeze. Are we... Yo, did, uh, okay, so it looks as though Hi Yo recorded his perspective with not a video camera, just a camera taking one picture every two and a half seconds. So we're going to go ahead and have a look at Rusterman's point of view for, I would say, the majority of this raid. As 50s come out, we see Kirby and Rusterman try and get hits off on those crabs. Unfortunately, not doing enough damage. Rusterman missing a hit on his crab. So we see Kirby come in with the chins. 23 to the dome for Rusterman. Only 29 hit points left for him. Hi-Yo comes in for the tank. We're going to see the spellbook swap from Rusterman as well to get the thralls. Fourteen prayer points left here for Rosterman. Eleven percent left on the boss. They are going for the skip. They should get it here. Zero point three percent left. They do get the skip just as that last crap was creeping in. So a nice little skip there. Fourteen BDSM and a one fifty maiden. Not a bad time at all in this trio. We see them run into the bloat room. Can 
Going to be Kirby going in first. We won't be able to see him run up to the boss though because he's going to start recording at Nilo boss. See the thrall come out for Kirby. We see a ham joint in the inventory for Rasta as well. Disappointing we won't have Kirby's perspective for the Nilo room. He is the ranger. Double claw here for Rusterman as well when you'll probably see him like to enter with the Chally. Or oh, single claw for Rasta. He's going to exit on the Chally. That's going to hurt. No Chally on the exit either. And he takes 80 damage from the stomp. That was huge. My word. I don't think I've ever seen a stomp that big. Forty-five percent left. Hi yo, most certainly dead here. Is he going to kill the rest of his team? No, and he manages to survive as well. Not bad from Hi yo. Got to put some respect on that. Twenty-two percent left on Bloat. Are they going to get the two down here? Fourteen percent to go. Bloat is about to stomp. Are the hits going to come in? Here comes the stomp. They do get the hits. All three players with the ticket as well. Looking pretty good. So run up to the chest here, spend as little time as possible at the chest because it is overall time that we're going to be looking at here. Hi yo, on his way into the Nylacast room first, we're going to see Rusterman pulling out that ham joint. Here it goes. Rusterman on melee with the ham joint. As we mentioned yesterday, uh, Hootie actually asked Rusterman why he's using the ham joint and not the swift blade when the swift blade is best in slot. And he responded by saying he just can't be bothered doing LMS. To which Hootie Tootie responded and informed him that swift blades are in fact tradable. Which he didn't realize. So... He is able to buy one. See a very good point here from Shent in the chat. You can't tick eat with a swift blade and you can in fact eat the ham joint. So if you do have the soda's egg ball coming towards you, you can use it for a tick eat. Should see a scythe in the bottom corner here from Rasta. We don't see a scythe. Had a perfect setup there for a big swing and he doesn't go for it. Pretty good performance here so far from Rasta. We see a nice little Tebow on a ranged crab. Kirby. Wish we could see his perspective right now, but he's doing a very good job of keeping the room clean. I believe we did just see a missed scythe in the bottom corner there for Rasta and a second missed scythe for Rasta uh, this is what Hootie Tootie was talking about earlier this team not built around Tob they've built their team around the Inferno the Fight Caves the Zolras and uh, not so much the group content and uh, we're not seeing the best performance here in TOB from Team BDSM TOB was a guaranteed run in every single round in this speed run cup. If you're wondering why TOB is guaranteed, it's quite simple. I like watching TOB and I made the fucking tournament. And BDSM opting to build their team around the other bosses and not the one that is guaranteed. Not sure if that was the best move, but that being said, who am I to judge? They are currently 4-0 up in the grand final of said tournament. See a cleanup here from BDSM. Not the cleanest cleanup either.
See a trade of the range pot. Down comes the boss. See a claw. Hi Yo is going to go for that BGS. Didn't see what he hit there. A 41. And looks like we do have Kirby's perspective. Oh, Jesus Christ. What is that screen? Okay. I wish we didn't have Kirby's perspective. That uh, hurt my fucking eyes. My word. So we're going to see this run as if we don't have Kirby. <laughs> okay, I'm joking. All right. Having a look at Kirby's inventory here. 305,000. So, um... Uh, okay, Kirby going down here at the Nilo boss. Will his teammates survive if they both die here as well? That is going to be a wipe and uh, should see a pretty easy point here for Ozmith, but they do both survive, but that is going to cost them a lot of time having Kirby die in that room. One dose of brew and two sharks here for Rust, man. We see three doses of brew for Hi Yo and that Mage Cape. We're going to see him spellbook swap here on the way into the Soda's Egg room. Get on the Arceus spellbook. Take some blood runes out of his Sanguinesi stuff, which he's already done. Kirby on the way in. Let's have a look at the hit. He hits. Does Hi Yo hit? He does hit as well. Oh my God. How do you play on this frames per second? Hi Yo has absolutely no idea what's going on on his screen. We see two hammers from Team BDSM for this soda zeg. See an 826 split. Let's have a look here at this maze. That's a really nice maze by the looks of things. Here for Rasta, man, a pretty straight one. Something I can't relate to. Not too bad coming out. We see two hammers on P2 as well. It's my understanding that, uh, as Kirby mentioned briefly there, uh, Hiyo runs on a... Uh, uh, it was a gaming laptop I believe he bought a while ago. I believe it's a gaming laptop. Might be a PC, but only with 256 uh, gigabytes uh, of storage, and he only had 10 gigs left. So that's why you'll see the, the the computer possibly lagging during the recordings, and that's just simply it comes down to a lot of anime and hentai saved up on high storage, and uh, I believe he's done a bit of a deep clean since, but unfortunately this run, yeah, we're going to see a bit of laggy footage. Deep clean, not only of his computer, but I imagine the towel next to his bed so we see the redemption come up here for Rasta Man. 15 vengeance. 16% left on Soda Zeg. The split so far, an 826 coming out of Nylakas. 339 on the bloat. And a 1058 coming out of Sodazeg. Just to put that in perspective, guys, in the third place playoff, we saw a 957 in the world record run. So one minute slower here than the world record run for Team BDSM. We also saw a one, uh, sorry, 10 minute and one second from Oz Top. So not so much pacing here for Team BDSM. But as we said, TOB, not their strong suit here in this grand final. We see the exhumes uh, marked here for Rasta Man. Exhumes marked as well for Mr. Kirby. Osmith still going to have their work cut out for them. 
in this TOB as we could potentially see a clean sweep for Team BDSM. No matter what, even if they win the TOB, they got their work cut out for them. One tick behind here is Kirby on the hammer. Doesn't matter anyway. They are going to get 56 damage with the BGS, but we will see Kirby one tick behind his teammates here on the five tick Zarpus. And guys, I've said it before and I'll say it again. One tick doesn't make that much of a difference. It does in the speed run cup. Kirby, the world record holder for Zora, and Duo Nex. One tick behind his teammates here. Even the best of the best make mistakes sometimes, guys. I think my dad is an testament to that. Everybody makes mistakes, and his was having my sister. 22% going into the screech phase. hi -Yo and Russman now on opposite ticks. Not sure who it was, but someone did in fact lose a tick there. I disagree. Uh, Hoodie. Excuse me. Hi-Yo is asking what opposite ticks are. Of course he is. Once again, seeing a team of five speedrunners and Hi-Yo. See the boss down on 56%. Gonna see Hi-Yo spec here. 175 XP drop for a 125 on the boss. Kirby. A 94, not the biggest spec, but he's going to get another one. 237 for a 113. Now pulling up on the boss here, guys. We are seeing the Super Gert out of Team BDSM. And they take down the boss. Hiyo says, I would like to clarify that I do have a desktop and not a laptop. So, clears up the fact that he has a desktop, not a laptop. Says nothing about the 246 gigabytes of anime and hentai he has on there, though. As we see, Team BDSM coming into P2 Verzik. Inventory's looking okay. We don't see the switch over to ac uh, sorry, accurate from Kirby here. Staying on aggressive. Same with Hi Yo. It is Rusterman, the only player. Whoa, Rusterman taking a trip with Verzik Airlines, taking a good 70 damage there. Hi Yo is about to get zapped. Nope, doesn't get zapped. We saw the electricity go around three players. See the Mage Prayer come on here for Rustman and the rest of his team. 32% going into first reds. They're going to want to see it at about 20% or lower after first reds to go for that two down. Let's have a look if they can get there. 21% looking pretty decent. Yeah, 19% and one more hit here. Very good. 17%. They are going to be able to go for that two down. Russell Man with a double ham joint hit there and misses his first hit on the boss. Will that come back to haunt them? Let's have a look here. 6.6% on the boss. 
1.3% doesn't look like that is going to come into play. 0.1, they do take it down. And who is going to be on the tank here? It is high, yo. We are absolutely not going to be watching that perspective. Hi, yo. On the tank, doing a very good job. So a 1357 coming out of Zarpus for Team BDSM here in the Verzik room. That's a melee from Hayo. Well, luckily, his teammates tank it. And here comes Webbs. All the players on the same tick. Very nice. Last dose of super combat there for Rasta, man. Not going to be able to brew for the rest of the kill. 39% left on the boss. We saw this is exactly where they procced purples in the world record run. 32% here for BDSM. Russell Man with the Venge, keeping his prayer off, taking an eight. And another melee there from High Yo. Kirby goes down. Stuck here with two players left as yellows come out. Kirby view from the cage. We can watch the other two players get to their yellows. Russell Man steps off. So does High Yo. 50 damage from each of the players. And they do manage to take down Verzik. Let's have a look at the time here. A 19.03 with a 19 minute personal best there for Russell, man. So very close to his current PB, but a 19.03, probably not what they were looking for. Coming up against Oz Myth here, we saw the world record before 17.36. So a minute and 30 seconds slower than that. And Oz Myth still with a chance. They are not out of it yet. Currently 4-0 here in the Speed Run Cup Grand Final. And we are going to waste no time getting into it. This could potentially be the last run we see, guys. This is a must win for Ozmith. If they don't win this here, it is going to be taken down by Team BDSM. Let's have a look at the lineup. We have Catriel here for Ozmith with the Swift Blade in the inventory. We have Kevzi and Yule. What the fuck was that plug-in? We have Kevzi... And Eulis as well. Kevzi missing one tick here for the BGS. So two hammers from his teammates. Hits a 13 into a 16. We're going to see another BGS there from Catriel. And that was a four. Eulis with a 75. So that is a nice little save there from Eulis. We're going to see Kevzi on the freeze from way downtown with the Tebow. Let's have a look at the freeze here. Proc 70s. Going to miss one. Plenty of time for two and three. Going to stack up threes and fours. Are they going to go for the 50 stack here? Doesn't look like they are. Kev actually going for an extra freeze on the crabs there. Even though his teammate has chins in their inventory. So interesting there. That's a big Tebow. That's going to proc 50s. Does manage to catch twos. Plenty of time here to catch threes and fours and stack them up. Here we go. And there it is. We should see Eulis go for the chins here. Too close to the crabs there. Needs to, be, needs to be between four and six tiles away to get that accuracy bonus. You see Kev on the outside, killing his own crab. Oh, get some bad RNG. Oh my God, and he's late to the freeze. He's definitely going to let one in here. Will he have enough time for threes and fours? He does, has just enough time. One tick would have been the difference there. Trying a little too hard for the extra damage on the boss, and they're not going to get the maiden skip here, ladies and gentlemen. Killing the crabs, and they have a 150 maiden to beat, and it's not looking good so far here for Ozmith. See the chalice coming in, 0.1%. We see a 158, so they are currently eight seconds behind their opponents. Eight seconds, nothing that can't be made up for Ozmith here in the grand final. They've got a 1903.6 to beat from Team BDSM.
And uh, I don't know if you remember, but Tony P did feature in the last two uh, tobs done by Oz Smith in the in the quarterfinals and semifinals, opting to remove him from the Theatre of Blood team. In place, we have Ulysses, a man that does have the the Tob 2K KC cape and the CM cape as well. Fun fact: one of the only, I think, twenty less than twenty people have both of those capes. Ulysses, one of them. Wow! So done quite a lot of raids has Ulysses. Question is, were they money raids or speeds? And we're going to need to see him go fast here in this trio tob. See some really good damage here from Ozmith on the first phase of bloats. We're going to see Kevzy take a big damage here, but at 800 XP drop Chally, 41% on that first down. We're most certainly going to see a two down bloat here. Unless we see some very bad RNG, I see two Saradoman Scythes, two Holy Scythe of the Tours in this raid. Somewhat of a Sara Scythe enthusiast myself. So we see Kev take a little bit more damage. There's a few ticks there. Are they going to get the two down? Some big hits coming in for Kev. He's going to go ahead and throw the claws in. 20% left on the boss. 6.3% in one swing. And they are going to take it down. So coming out of bloat. With a 342 up against a 339 from, uh, sorry, BDSM. And they're just going to come straight through to the Nylacass room here. Kevzy way ahead of his teammates. See the blood runes come out now. And he's just going to enter on the zero tick. Saving a little bit of time. Yulis once again. Well, I don't know what that is. This is just a questionable plug-in. Catriel on the melee roll. We do have Eulis on the ranged roll. Taking over for Tony P. And Kevzy on the mage roll. Obviously didn't get to see Tony on the range roll last top because they did wipe to Maiden, if you remember that. <laughs> Unfortunate for Ozmith on the wipe there. Hopefully not going to see a wipe from them here. Would love to see them take down at least one point in this grand final matchup. Let's move over to Eulis' perspective for the chins. Doesn't get all the chins off either. So not the best range here from Eulis. Do see Kev get both of the freezers. Eulis gets the scythe off on the east side of the room. Very clear Nyla room at the moment for Ozmith. Nice freeze here from Kevzy as well. Gets the barrage off. Doesn't manage to kill both of them. And we see a nice barrage potential in the bottom corner as well for Kev. Doesn't opt to go for it. Once again, a 342 out of bloat for Ozmith and a 339 out of bloat for Team BDSM. So you are saying there's a chance. Let's have a look at the chin here for Eulis. Very nice chin. Down the bottom, are we going to see a scythe? We missed the scythe there from Catriel. We do see a scythe there from Catriel. And there should be one more coming very soon down the bottom. We will look at that in just a moment. Big barrage there from Kevzy, taking out five. Not one, not two, not three, not four, not six, not seven, not eight, not nine, not ten, not eleven, not twelve crabs, but five crabs in one barrage. That is a big barrage. We see the scythe miss down the bottom there from Catriel. We'll get the second one here. A chin. No chin there from Eulis. Decent cleanup here from Ozmith as well. Kevzy can't hit that last one. Needs his teammates to do it for him. The Primordial Boots go back on. You're going to see a BGS from Kevzy here on the Nylacast boss. 
looking for 50 damage. Hits a 33. Is he going to go for the second one? Definitely not. 33, good enough. Takes it down to 17 defense. We see a ranged boss as well. Very nice boss here for Ozmith so far. And some really clean switches there from Kevzy. You got to put some respect on the switches. He's doing very, very well. We see the Torva takeoff for Catriel as well. No messing about. We also see the Inquisitor in the inventory for Catriel. Not something we have seen from any other team so far. And the boss goes down with that last hit. We're at an 8-12 coming out of Nylakas. Their opponents were at 8.26 at this point, so they are currently 14 seconds ahead of their opponents here in the fifth boss of the grand final. It's uh, it's it's good we have the splits to compare the two teams because, as you mentioned during the BDSM run, a minute in front of them was uh, Turbo PVM during their run, but, you know, Turbo PVM and Oztop were just... The, the fastest uh, Tobbers in this competition. And then you've got that middle pack where you'll see your BDSMs and your Ozmiths who are all sort of on that same level where any of these teams could beat the other. And then obviously there, yeah, at the bottom, a cold one in his team, just not quite up to the same level as the other teams. But that's that's where you find uh, BDSM and Ozmith in that middle pack of just, you know, getting pretty consistent times, not doing all the best strats, but, you know, similar similar methods and similar times coming out of it. As we do see a skip here on the last tile of the Soat Maze from Catriel. Did see one Warhammer spec, two Warhammer specs for the second phase of Sotazek as well. Yulis over here, 0% spec, 50% left for Catriel, 50% left for Kev. We're going to see that used on the next phase. Inventory looking decent. See the Inquisitor for Eulis as well. So you would be hoping that uh, the Inquisitor can give you that extra crush bonus on those specs. Catriel being chosen again for the maze. A very snaky one here. Reminded me of Solo Mission in Gillenor Games Season 2. Had a nice if percent... I, if, sorry, if I was going to say on that Inquisitor note, if I had to guess, it'd be about a 15% uh, accuracy increase on the warhammer in this gear that uh we we didn't see we didn't see bdsm br bring so maybe oz myth uh hopefully getting more warhammers off with this setup and those warhammers are very very important as we see catriel potentially getting a death here very low hit points stepping away from the boss wow oh wow was that a Blood Fury heal to save Catriel there? And the Inquisitor comes back on. Not all three players with Inquisitor in their inventory. Kevzy opting to just have the Torva. We see the purchase from the chest. Three brews, three brews, and three brews all around for the team. Very unlikely to see the Super Gert in P2, P1 on Verzik. So a 1040 coming out of Sodazeg for Osmith. And it was a 1058 coming out of Sodazeg for Team BDSM. So 18 seconds ahead of their opponents. 18 seconds, not a huge margin. As we saw, Oztob coming into Verzik on pace for that world record. And uh, unfortunately, just getting some bad RNG and ending up losing by 45 seconds. So a lot of time can be made up in that Verzik room. It's not all about the splits going in, but 18 seconds up are Ozmith. And you would hope to see some really good RNG for them here. All right, let's have a look at the Hammer Specs. We see three Hammer Specs. Let's have a look at the Beejas. Big Beejas, I saw a 73 there and a 62, so that is guaranteed 
Zalpus is on a zero defense. We're going to see a very quick boss here. Big BGSs. Absolutely love to see that. Catriel with a five tick scythe masterclass here. And that is exactly how it's done on that fourth attack. Moving over to a square that's already ragged. And this is absolutely outrageous to me. This is something I thought I would never see. Kevzy, an incredible gamer in his own right, but also showing us how big his brain is. Zero tile markers on the ground in the Zarpus room. How in the flying fuck is he supposed to know where to stand? This is absolutely outrageous here from Kevzy. He was on the bad tick. We see the claw there. Beautiful move. Getting some time back. He would have had to wait one tick, but goes for the claw instead. So he misses zero hits. And then I believe straight afterwards, missed the tick, but we won't tell anyone. The tick that he made up, he ended up losing. His teammates didn't lose that extra tick. They had one tick before him. And as we know, guys, one tick can make all the difference. Incoming Shelly. Very nice. Two brews on the ground there for Kevzy. Picks them both up. Who's getting the staff? We see Eulis coming through the back here. Three brews in the inventory. Catriel with the staff. See the staff go on and the boss is going to be started. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. A 1342 coming out of Zarpus. Their opponents were at a 1357, so they're 15 seconds up. Coming into Verzik. We see the Torva takeoff from Catriel as well. Huge moves from the gamer. Let's have a look at the spec from Kevzy here. 54% here on P1. We see Catriel just taking the damage as well. The super girt from Catriel. Here comes the second spec. So 119 into a 95. 22% left on the boss. Yulis is going to get a spec back here soon. Kevzy though with a big spec. A 116. And Yulis is going to spec. Should take the boss down here. That was actually quite a fast P1, guys. Quite a fast P1. And I would have to say faster than Team BDSM here. Here we go. Eulis, once again, the darkest client I've ever seen. Beautiful footwork there from Eulis. You'd love to see that. Missing no ticks. And managing to pop the crab without taking any damage. That was unreal footwork. Kevzy and Catriel over the other side. Kevzy is on accurate here for P2 Verzik. Accurate for Catriel and accurate for Eulis. So we saw two players from Team BDSM not switching over to accurate for. T is that Heal Other? Rather than uh, opting for a Blood Fury, I believe one person with a Blood Fury will be healing other for Kevzy. Unreal tech here from Oz Myth, using the Blood Fury to the full potential and only having one person bring it in and having the other person heal other. That's 40% left here. Kevzy already has his Mage Prayer on, getting ready for it. Switches over to aggressive. 32% here going into first reds. They're going to want to see the boss get down to around 20%. If they're going to go for this skip, the two down with those reds. 25% left. 73 XP drop. 21%. One more hit. They're going to get in here. And it goes down to 16.5, 14.8. They are almost guaranteed the two down here. Very good looks here for Osmeth. Oh, Kevzy heals the boss. Misses an entire hit. The heal was only for a three, a one, and a one. So lucky not to heal the boss for too much. Let's see the claws come in. 214 XP drop, 5.6% left on the boss, 4.6. They should have already downed it here. Not hitting big, 3.5%. They missed the two down. And they're back to 13, 11%. Oh, that is unfortunate. Kevzy missing that hit at the start. Definitely could have cost his team there. 
And that is going to be all of those 17 seconds they had stocked up going into the Verzig room out the window here in this P3. Here we go. Aggressive on the scythe. We're going to see Euless here on the tank. Not switching to aggressive. Is switching to aggressive now. Does notice. Let's quickly have a look over on Catriel's screen. Is on aggressive as well. So we will see Euless on the tank. Didn't need to see if Team BDSM switched back over to aggressive. Low hit points over there for Catriel. After the heal up on a 24, having a brew up here, almost dying. Gonna need those Blood Fury heals to come in clutch here. As we see, Catriel pick up another brew. Are they on the same tick? Euless is one tick behind. Missing hits here, guys. This is a bit of a choke. From Ozmith, right at the end, 36% at the bottom of webs. Once again, the world record. Euless is stuck in a web. Euless is stuck in a web. His team is not going to free him here. No point wasting a hit. Oh, no. And a melee from Euless as well. This is a big choke from Ozmith here. In P3, Verzik. 14%. They're not going to get the yellow skip. Don't forget... They did have a death, did Team BDSM, so there still is a chance. They're going to tick eat the ball here. Catch her out with some fucking incredible footwork over there. They take the boss down. Is it going to be another 19.03 to beat? Let's have a look at the time. 19 minutes on the dot, ladies and gentlemen. So you stay in, there's a chance. Osmith going to take down one point here in the grand final of the Speedrun Cup. And it is a 4-1. Not a clean sweep here for Team BDSM. And Osmith is still in it. They are going to have their work cut out for them though. Because there is still four bosses that remain. And they need to win every single one of them. Thank God, Hootie Tootie. Here I was thinking it was going to be a clean sweep for BDSM. Absolute dominant performance for them up until this point. But now we see Osmith with one point and the potential comeback. They are, they've stopped the bleeding for sure, but you can't help but feel, is it too late? I mean, like you said, they're going to have to be perfect from here, win the next four, which are, you would say a lot of those bosses definitely favor BDSM. You've got your Zoras and your Vorkas that Kirby will hopefully be taking home for his team. And, and then you get, if you, if they do somehow make it all the way to the, the CM at the end, that's, you know, Rasta, we've spoken before. He's got the second and third fastest times in the solo CM in, in the world. And, and you got to think it's going to be tough, but. But definitely doable now that they've won the first hob. That was the first step. One step at a time for sure for Ozmith. And that is it. It's going to be a slow comeback here for Ozmith. Like you said, we do have the Zoras and the Vorkas, which Kirby is very, very good in for his team. But you also have to factor in there is a lot of RNG that come, can come into play with those bosses. So there is most certainly still a chance here for Ozmith. And we're going to jump on into Team BDSM running Zora. We'll be watching Kirby for his team. All right. Coming into this first kill, we see no volatile nightmare staff spec. Kirby always opting for just the dragon knives. Gets a great rotation for the first kill here. We see some pretty decent Dragon Knife specs. A three Vengeance that goes off on the Snakeling. As we saw from previous rounds, guys, the tech in Zolra is going to be to start on the Lunar Spellbook, get the Venge Spellbook swap over to the Arceus Spellbook so that you have the Death Charge and the... Sorry, the... Wow, that was a quick time. Yeah, 50.4 for the first kill. Uh, wow, very hot off the start here for Kirby. And uh, as I was saying, the Death Charge and the Thrall 
and then uh, switching over to the regular spell book for that harmonized nightmare stuff. See, two spellbook swaps in the inventory. Okay, the slowest phase here for Kirby. Gets the Dragon Knife spec off. Gonna take Avenge off prayer here. Nine, not what he would have been looking for. Gonna have to see the suffering come on. Is he gonna try and kill one of the Snakelings here for the death charge? He doesn't go for it. Still sat on. Okay, the, the Snakeling does go down. So it gets up to 90% spec. We'll get back to 100 The melee phase here, not looking good for Kirby. Lots of splashing going on here. Takes 12 from one of the Snakelings. Two hits in a row, though. 225 hit points left going into the Mage rotation. Let's have a look at these Dragon Knives. He hits a 3-0, a 14-1 into a 0-0, and a 0-0. The Knives not looking good for Kirby here. Kirby does love his Dragon Knives, and they're not performing for him in this Zolra kill. Kill number two of his ten. Another Mage phase come up here in a zero Tebow. This is an extremely slow time here for Kirby. This is an extremely slow time. And it goes down again. It comes up with a range phase. Going to hit the last hit here with a surge. This is a high one minute kill. One minute 42 seconds. You see in the chat box the 28 second PB. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the world record. Bad RNG on that kill, but a 142. You can see the running average in the top right, a 116 for Kirby. And I believe he had a one-minute average in the last round in the semi-final against Oz Top. So, going to need some pretty fast kills to bring it down to that. And this rotation, an average rotation. We're going to see a pillar stall here from Kirby. For those that aren't aware, he's going to stand behind this pillar and stall the boss from going down. Let's see the Dragon Knives. 13-0 into the 29 with a 33 Venge. Getting some decent hits here. Another Dragon Knife goes off. The T-Bow not popping off. 25% specs still left for those Dragon Knives. Some pretty nuclear hits here with the Harmonized Nightmare stuff. Gets one more hit and he should be able to take it down. Will it dip? It doesn't dip. That's a pretty fast kill. Going to see a 58.8 here for Kirby in kill number three. The Death Charge going off. And the Thrall coming out. 410 health left after two hits here. Kirby going for the Blowpipe and the Tebow at the end. Absolutely maximizing the amount of hits. Three hundred and fifty-five hit points left. Takes Avenge here, twenty-eight and a thirty-eight. So he's definitely gonna have to eat up in between these phases. Plenty of food in his inventory, though. This is the slowest phase, but getting some decent hits at the start here. Let's see this melee phase. This is where it's make or break for this one. This is where we saw the one forty-two coming in for Kirby with this exact rotation. Takes another twelve from a Snakeling. Doesn't have the suffering on for that 13, so the Snakeling's going to stay alive. 95 HP left, and he should be able to take that down with these Dragon Knife Specs. He's got four of them to use here. <gasps> uses a Dragon Knife Spec on a Snakeling, and then uses a regular Dragon Knife on Zora. Somehow still hits a 23 with a regular Dragon Knife. Almost a throw there, but the Kirby RNG coming in, and a 106.6 .6 with the worst possible rotation. So he's definitely going to be happy with that, even with a couple of little mistakes. That does happen, ladies and gentlemen. Does have the world record for the Zolra kill, so is the best in the world. Not just one of the best, is the best in the world. And as we can see, mistakes do happen. And this is not the rotation he wants to see again. Kirby getting very unlucky with his rotations here. Only expecting to see this rotation one and a half times every time he does a best of 10 and he's already seen it three times in five kills. Twice the average here for Kirby in this grand final match. 
Isn't it 2.5? Sussman699, you are correct. It's 2.5 times, not 1.5 times. And I can only apologize to the chat, but I will not apologize to you. Even if I'm wrong, don't fucking backseat cast me. That's a perm. We see the Dragon Knife Specs coming in here for Kirby. Once again, a very slow boss. Oh my god, and he's really not hitting here with the surges either. He's going to pull up on the boss. Needs one more hit to come in. It's going to dip and go into the mage phase. He's got three Tebos here to kill the boss. Turns it on. Accurate. Oh, he wastes another tick with a zero and another zero. There's no way. Does he zero this one as well? That's a 10, 13. He's going to take it down, but it does dip. That is going to be another one minute, 40 second kill. Wow. One minute, 39.6. Kirby's average up at a 115.6 at the moment. It's not looking good for Kirby here. At Zolra, the world record holder, someone you'd expect to take down this Zolra, sitting here with a 115 average. We see Ozmith going 4-1 down. And potentially being able to bring it back here. Twelve vengeance here for Kirby. A twenty twenty four with the dragon knife, so pretty large specs. See so a fifty two XP drop, a forty eight with the T bow. So the attacks are doing very well for Zora here. Sorry for Kirby, not for Zora. One hundred and thirty three hit points left on the boss. Seeing that volatile nightmare stuff go in. Seventy four HP left. It's two hits away from dead. He splashes. And it is going to go down, so once again, a relatively slow kill. We see 50% special attack energy after that. Whoa, very low hit points. He does take it down. And we see a 109.6. That average still sat at a 114.6. Kill number seven coming up here for Kirby. He will not be happy with a 114.6 average. I'll tell you that much for free. He's definitely going to want to look to bring that down. And here we go. Gets the fastest possible rotation. Those dragon knife specs not doing well for him. But a 188 XP drop for a 47. The vengeance on the snakeling. That could have been back on the boss. Not the best possible RNG on the vengeance there. And he misses a hit. Kirby, the world record holder, missing an entire Tebow on the fastest rotation. This is where he needed to make up the time. And Kirby, potentially, with a little bit of tilt here. A little bit shaky in the grand final. 47 with the Tebow, 37, could have taken it down with that Tebow, he's going to take it down with the third one, we see a 104.8, that could have easily been a sub one minute kill, did miss that hit at the start, and here we go, coming into kill number 8, a 113.2 average, Not the best rotation, not the worst. Once again, we will see these Dragon Knife Specs come in on the next phase of this rotation. Some decent hits on the melee phase, though. As we come into the Tanzanite phase, see a 33 Venge, so 24 back to the boss. That's a 49 with the Tebow. Dragon Knives hitting a 7-0, 42... Decent Tebow hit there, so looking very good on this 8th kill. Let's see the Nightmare staff go in. Oh my god, he's hitting so low. Kirby with some unbelievable RNG yesterday in the semi-final against Oz Tob, helping his team make it through to the grand final, and you can't help but wonder, did he use up all his RNG in that semi-final matchup? Because he's getting absolutely none of it here. 
as we see a 107.8. 112.52 average. Spellbook swap coming in. Four hundred and ten damage, three hundred and fifty-five, three forty-seven going into the second phase here. Beautiful nine-way switch there from Kirby as well. Three hundred and one health left on the boss, and a big hit as the boss phases. If he gets some good RNG, he can kill it here. The thirty-three venge hits a twenty-four back. We see a twelve ten with the knives and a zero with the bow. See a 22, 3, and a 37. Has potential to kill it here. And he's missed an entire Tebow hit again. Kirby. Really crumbling under the pressure of the grand final. 42 hit points. He ate, I see from the chat. But gets a fast time anyway. 56.4 second. What's the average now, Jake? The average is a 110.73. We did see the Gothics restore in the inventory for Kirby in that last kill. Did not need to miss a hit. Did eat on 42 hit points. And for what? Zolra actually has a max hit of 41. So not needing to eat there. And eating instead... Hundred and thirty-three hit points left for Zolra coming into the magma phase. Make that one hundred. This is really fast. He has the slowest possible phase here, rotation, and he's going to kill it on the magma phase. If he gets one more hit, this is very, very fast for the slowest rotation. He's going to be happy with that one. That's a fifty-one point six second. On the slowest rotation, a 51.6 to finish it off. And he has a 108.82 average. That right there is a decent average. But from a player, the caliber of Mole Goat Kirby. One of the best old school RuneScape players in the world. World record holder for Zolra. I don't think he's going to be too happy with a 108 average here. Ladies and gentlemen, we saw Oz Myth being down 4-0, currently at 4-1, and they certainly have a chance here at Zolra up against Molgo Kirby, and we are going to be seeing Kevzi run this for Oz Myth. Ladies and gentlemen, he's gonna need your energy. Big Volatile Nightmare Staff spec to start here for Kevzi. We're not seeing... The Thrall Tech either. So you have to give the advantage here to Kirby in terms of the tech used. But at the end of the day, RNG does play a factor. I'm going to see the Pillar Stall here for Kevzi. Blow Pipe into the T-Bow. Misses a hit there. I'm not sure if this stall is going to work out anymore. So the 16... It's not going to work. He misses an entire two hits there, does Kevzi. And uh, that is not good. Very slow kill here for Kevzi to start it out. We saw Kirby start it out with a 50 second kill in his run. We see the Dragon Knives come in. And a 50 from the Tebow for Kevzi. See, Kevzi is on a spiritual mage's task. And a 117.4. Not looking good for Kev after that first round. Let's have a look at the volley spec here. 167 XP. That's going to give him a 47. That's going to be a 33 into the 40, so big nuclear hits even here from Kevzi in this second kill. Gets the slowest possible rotation, going to keep the Mage Prayer up for the Vengeance. And a 190 XP, a 42. 
He's getting some very big hits here. That's got to be a 46. And once again, the slowest possible rotation. Getting some really good RNG. Kills the Snakeling on his way out. Let's see the RNG on the Magma phase. That's a 42. Into the 4. The Volatile Staff spec coming in. And a 0. He splashed the Volatile spec. Oh no, it was looking so good here for this second kill for Kevzy. And now going into the Tanzanite rotation. A big 40 to the dome. A 47. Oh man, this is slow. This is slow. Let's have a look at the time. A personal best of 40. We see a 115. A 115 for Kevzy, so a 116 average. Once again, he's going to want to bring that down for his team. 160 XP drop on the Volatile Nightmare stuff. That's a 45 to start the kill. Started so good in that last kill. Let's have a look at the rotation. It is going to be the average rotation. Big hit there on the melee phase. That's a 37. With the harmonized and another big hit, a 36, 73 XP drop for the last hit. We're going to see the pillar stall here. Let's see if he can pull it off this time. Goes to the dragon knives. Has the dark bow in the inventory. Not going to use it though. Double dragon knives. Let's see the vengeance come off. The Tebow's not coming in, but he does hit a 40 venge. The last hit, Tebow not looking good for Kevzy. That RNG not coming in for him here. And he's going to need the RNG. Because the tech is not as good as his opponent, who did have some bad RNG, but he needs some good ones here. And let's have a look at this. Tanzanite phase. Oh my god. 0-0 zero, zero with the Tebow on the Tanzanite phase. 116 hit points left on Zori. Gets one more hit here. One more hit here to finish the boss off. That is going to be enough. He does take it down. Let's have a look at the time here. It's a 121.6. Oh my god. Kevzy. It's not looking good for him. And a 116.2 average. He needs some nuclear kills for the rest of these 10 or it is going to be a 5-1 for BDSM in the grand final of the Speed Run Cup. You're saying there's a chance. The chance is still going to live for now. Oh, these hits are just not good for Kevzy. Two zero Tebows in a row. This is not the RNG he needs. Going to see those Dragon Knives coming in. 170 XP drop. Pretty decent. Big Tebow to finish it off. The fastest possible rotation. He needs a sub one minute kill. He really needs one sub one minute kill to come in here. And the RNG just not coming in. And to be fair, you have to say fair enough. The worst strategy getting the worst RNG. You would be disappointed if you were Kirby to go in with the best strategy and lose to Ozmith. See, a 1 minute and 2 second kill. That is going to bring the average down to a 114. Not bad. Volley spec going to be a 47. So, a pretty big one. A 211 XP drop. A 48 harm. Okay. Here comes the Magma Phase. Three hits on the Magma Phase. Can he make it four? He doesn't. Splashes on the last one. Let's see this Pillar Stall. Gets the Mage Prayer on. First bow. An 18. 16 with Avenge. Not the biggest. 251 XP drop with the Knives. Hits almost a 50 into a massive bow. Oh, a zero for the last bow, though. Blowpipe into the T-Bow. 251. I believe that is going to be around a 50 hit. Hits a 47. Pulling up on the boss here. 193 XP drop with the harm. Another splash. Was looking like a very good kill time. But the RNG once again for Kevzy. Not turning around. He is making a few mistakes here in these Zora kills though. Let's 
Let's see this last bow here. Oh, a zero. And a 13. Oh, this is disastrous RNG. Disastrous RNG. And a 121 again. Oh, this is so bad for Kevzy and Osmith. The running average up the top, a 115.48. We see a 45 come in from the Volatile. And ladies and gentlemen, it's not looking good for Osmith here in the sixth boss of the grand final. And he gets the slowest rotation as well. And a one venge. Thirty-seven goes for the kill on the snakeling at the end here. Does get some hits here on the magma phase. This is the phase you are most likely not to hit. And he's getting a lot of hits, actually. A 49 into the 42. 73 XP drop for a 7. And a 190 XP drop. He's going to kill the boss here. Hang on a minute. That's a 54.6 second kill, guys. You're saying there's a chance. He needs to pop off like that for these last three kills. A four-second running average slower. Decent Volatile Nightmare staff spec. And huge, huge Harmonized staff specs. Sorry, Harmonized staff hits here. Gets the fastest possible rotation as well. We're going to see the Dragon Knife specs come in soon. The T-Bow hits looking pretty good. A 48 into around a 39. Let's see the Venge. Is he going to get the Venge off? Does get the Venge. An 11 back on the boss. The knife specs not going nuclear here. I think he did miss a hit there. I could be wrong. Oh, come on, Harm. Come on, Harm. You've got to be rooting for the underdogs here. Oz Myth in the grand final of the Speedrun Cup. He threw a dragon knife without specking as well. Kevzy crumbling here. A 0, zero spec. He could have killed it on that Tebow. And that Tebow. And that Tebow. And that Tebow. Oh, you have to be so sad if you're Kevzy here. Could have killed it on that harm. And he will take it down with this last one. 118.6. Oh, the running average up to a 112.94. Oh, this is not looking good here for Kevzy. We do see some pretty nuclear hits here at the start of this next kill, though. There is still a chance, guys. It's not looking great, but there is always a chance. Big hits. Big harms. Three hits on the magma phase. Make that four, and they're not small. I'm pause champing so hard. IRL right now. A zero Tebow. Let's have a look at the knife specs. He takes the mage prayer off. A 19-4. A 26, Venge. He can kill it here. He can kill it here. Why didn't he use the blowpipe? Oh, he goes for the chance with the Tebow. Misses it, but that's going to be a very fast kill. We see a 49.8 second kill here for Kevzy. A 110.05. There is still a chance. He's not out of it yet. Volatile spec, a 42. Big surge here with the harm. Guys, it's not over. 110.05 average. Massive hits there with the harm. The fastest possible rotation. Let's have a look at the Tebow coming out here. A 49 for the first hit. Oh my god, that's a 44 for the second hit. Will he get the Venge off here? We're going to see the knives come out in a second. Big Tebow again. The Venge does go off. It's a 36. 27 back to the boss. Two knives. Let's see the last knife. Oh my god, it could be dead here in one hit as it comes up. This is a very fast kill here for Kevzy. That will die there. No, it won't. And a splash. Oh no, the RNG. Will he die here? He won't. This is going to be another very fast kill. 
a 45.6 second, guys. The running average, 107.33 here for Kevzy. Anything lower than a 109, and he's going to take this down. 46 here. Last one, he says. There is a chance... Look at the hit, the hit points here for Zora. Oh my god, he's going nuclear on this last one. The slowest possible rotation. The worst, the worst possible rotation here. For the last kill, he needs a 108 or better. The Harmonized Staff is going absolutely nuclear here on this Serpentine phase. Needs some big hits here on the Magma. Will he get them? Will he get the big hits here on the Magma? No, Kevzy, no! Here it comes, a 43 into the 6. Oh my god, nuclear into the 45. Gets the recoil on in time. 104 XP drop, a 16. Oh my god, that's massive. He needs to kill it here with this Tebow. Comes up, he's gone for the chance here with the Tebow. Gets the Dragon Knives out. He does kill it. Surely that's got to be it. And he gets a 102.4! A 102.4, and Oz Smith are going to take down Zora with a 106.84. It is 4-2 in the grand final of the Speedrun Cup. Oh my god. A potential reverse sweep here for Oz Smith. Kevzy is insane. A 106.84 average for Kevzy on Zora, and you're saying that there's a chance, ladies and gentlemen. Hootie tootie. Wow, oh wow. Yeah, you gotta you gotta feel for, for Kirby there. I I believe going into that with Kirby's time, I think one other team had beaten the time that Kirby got besides Kirby. Obviously, Kirby's that was his third slowest time, I think, or third. Yeah, so that was his third ranked time, and, and one other team had beaten his time going into that, and there were some mistakes we saw from Kirby, as you pointed out, and it's hard to say whether or not those mistakes made up the difference between his and uh, Kev's time, but yeah, Kev, Kev coming in, started off super slow, and then the and then the back-to-back sub-50s just pulled that average down. Yeah, absolutely amazing RNG there for Kevzy, and like you said, you do have to feel for Kirby. He did go into that with the better tech. You know, uh, we didn't see uh, Kevzy go in with the Thralls and the Spellbook swap. Kirby going in with the better tech and still losing. You definitely have to feel for him there. But Kevzy once again holding Ozmith on his back and taking down Zora. That means we are going to be going to a seventh boss here, ladies and gentlemen. And that is Vorkarth. Without further ado... Let's see Team BDSM take on Vorkath, and it is going to be Kirby here at Vorkath again. Now, we don't see uh, Kirby. Kirby? <laughs> Kirby? Kirby? Okay, well, it seems like we've uh, <laughs> we've had a man forget how to get to Vorkath. And we see the 110 Zarai crossbow spec go off. Kirby coming in here with the full Torva. We see the death charge go off. He is on the Lunar Spellbook. Going to be changing over to the regular Spellbook for the spawn. See those two below pipes here for Kirby, whereas we saw other players in this tournament opt to use the single Dragon Hunter Lance hit, which will on average do more damage than those two below pipes. So Kirby not using the best tech here, certainly not the worst. See Vorkath down to 397 hit points. Not the fastest kill. See Skodazo in the chat saying, going down faster than a slut on a Saturday. Not true. Not the quickest kill here from Kirby in his first Vorkath kill.
24 hit points left on the boss. Not sure if he got his prayer back on in time for that hit. Maybe missing the piety. The first killer, 127.6. So certainly not the fastest time we have seen. Zarai Crossbow is going to go off again. And a 70 to back it up. See the death charge go off. Spellbook swap. Potentially wasting a couple of ticks there, opting to go for the spellbook swap uh, after the spawn comes out. I'm not too sure there. I think he could have got the crumble undead off one or two ticks earlier. Once again, though, you see these teams coming in with well-rounded teams being able to do every single boss. That being said, that is not the case for Team BDSM or Team Ozmith. Kirby basically carrying his entire team on his back, basically featuring in every single boss, and it is hard to be perfect at every boss in the game, and Kevzy featuring in every single boss for Ozmith. Once again, very hard to be perfect at every single boss in the game. So we are going to see mistakes from these players and a 119.8 for kill number two for Kirby here. We see Kirby in the chat saying, if you cast Spellbook Swap too early, it stalls the spawn from moving and wastes four ticks. I was thinking more casting the Spellbook Swap in the middle of the kill. You could potentially die to a big ball that the, the Vorkath shoots that will land on your head if you can't move. And what about changing the Spellbook before the kill starts, getting that death charge off before it begins? That's a very good idea, Jake. Thank you. See the dragon claws come out here. Pretty big spec. 37, 18, 9, 10. Won't get the death charge if acid first then. And that's where spell booking... Uh, sorry... God booking comes in. See some players earlier in the tournament using that God book. So even if the death charge doesn't go off, you still get that second claw spec. Three damage left on the boss. Very bad RNG for Kirby there. And he would absolutely be fuming right now. Still not dead. The boss should have died five hits ago. And he unfortunately gets another special and a 136 for Kirby there and a 127.8 running average. I forgot to charge my lance, it seems. It seems, Kirby, you have forgotten to charge your lance, my friend. Of course, the lance charged by attacking Vorkath from behind as you insert it inside him. Whoa, 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 uh, Jesus. We are running a PG stream here, Hootie Tootie. Um, sorry to have to cut you off there, but questionable. <laughs> the fourth kill here for Kirby. Going to see those Gothic's Restores coming in. Runs over the Acid Pool there. Nine heal. Did see a Ruby during the Acid Phase. Unfortunate timing for the Ruby to pop off there. We see Kandarin in the chat. A competitor in... This speed run cup. Oh, the yellow click there for Kirby. Clicking through the boss. Missing two ticks on his claws. 
Kandarin saying the high yo hentai is okay, but the Lance Vorkarth isn't. Very surprising that he was able to type that there with how shaky his clicks are. Oh my god, a 54 to the dome there for Kirby. Doesn't have his Torva legs on or the body. Going to be needing to use these Guthix Restores for the tickets. And avoid melees. Not ideal kills here for Kirby at all for Team BDSM. One fifty seven point six for Kirby. Almost a two minute kill, and this one not starting off good at all. Missing his Zarite crossbow spec, but making up for it with a one hundred regular with a dragon hunter crossbow. I forgot to charge my DCB as well. Yes. Forgetting to charge the DCB there. Obviously, that charged by... Uh, actually, don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> 157 on kill number four for Kirby. And really not getting the RNG here. Another Ruby popping off, though, for a 76. So the Acid Phase coming in, and we are going to see another pretty slow time here for Kirby. A 135 running average for these Vorkarth girls. See so a 68 bolt. 181 hit points left on Vorkarth. Surprising not to see him switch over to the Lance here. I have not run the calculations, but potentially the Dragon Diamond Bolt's better DPS? I'm not too sure. The Spawn almost hitting him again. The Claws, 0, 0, 0, 0. And once again, going to be another very slow kill. Oh my god, Kirby. The RNG for this man. You have to feel for him here. Losing Zolra, and here comes the Acid Phase again. Losing Zolra to some pretty bad RNG and getting some even worse RNG here at Vorkath. I forgot to charge my claws as well, says Kirby, and a 157.0. Uh, Hoodie, do you happen to know how the claws are charged, mate? Uh, you know when you have hemorrhoids and you got to be careful the way you wipe your ass? Okay, Stop it. so moving forward into kill number six for Kirby. Going to see the spellbook swap. Uh, that's a big ruby bolt there. 99 for Kirby. And I'm not talking about one of his skills in RuneScape. A big hit on the boss. Prayer goes off. Let's see the claws here. Better than last time. We'll see a 22, 11, 12. So 45 damage from the claws. Coming into the acid phase. 181 hit points. And we have not seen many fast kills at all here for Kirby. And you really do have to feel for him. A 139.6 rolling average. Going to kill it here with a 23. Let's have a look at this time. A 119.2, so that is going to bring the average down to 136.2. Incoming kill number 7, the Zarai crossbow does go off. We also don't see the armadillo in the inventory for Kirby. Uh, the armadillo going to take the chance of your Zarai crossbow spec hitting from 89% to 91%. He does have the inventory space for it, so not seeing it from him. Taking that 2% chance and saying, fuck the 2% chance and fuck the high level community. Uh, 
uh, sorry, I just see a, a question in the chat. I don't see you in the FOH Discord. I, I left that social skilling clan. I am now in uh, Oblivion. You can refer to me as Oblivhooty from now on, and I think we'll update my name tag on the on the overlay of the webcam scene uh, when I get a chance. Uh, you heard it here first, ladies and gentlemen. Oblivion Hooty Tooty Old School RuneScape. See the spellbook swap coming in again for Kirby. The death charge comes in at the right time, but a 1100 claw. He says 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, question mark. Ladies and gentlemen of the chat, can someone please help Kirby count here? Kill number seven. 125.2 so that is going to bring the average down once again a pretty slow kill but still bringing the average down because the last few kills have not been the best 134.63 average here for kirby see the death charge pop off Have a look at the health for Vorkath here. 440 hit points still coming out of the first special. Some really, really bad RNG here for Kirby, and you really do have to feel for him. The best all-rounder on his team by far, basically carrying Team BDSM on his back, and the RNG just not coming through for him. That being said, we did see him with some insane RNG in the semi-finals. Like I said, potentially using all that RNG up in the semis when he should have saved it for the grand final. See the claws here. Big claws. 31, 15, 16. That's 62 damage. And he takes it down. This is actually a relatively quick time. 115. Gonna bring the average down to 132.18. Is that right? Crossbow spec does go off. We see a 73 from the Dragon Hunter crossbow. And these are the hits we're looking for. These are the hits that Kirby will be looking for here on Vorkarth on kill number nine. Four hundred twenty-nine hit points left on the boss, coming out of the first special, and a zero. See an eighty ruby bolt spec there for Kirby as well. Acid gonna start here very very soon. See him opting for the dragon hunter crossbow. Ooh, take some damage from Vorkas. Uh, AK-47 phase here. And there we go. Vorkas taken down straight after the second special. 107.8 here for Kirby. Doesn't even get his Dragon Claw special off. Coming into the last kill, hits the 110 with the Zarai crossbow. Backs it up with a zero. 129.47 average for Kirby on Vorka. Here comes the zombified spawn. Four hundred and forty hit points left on the boss. About to come into the acid phase. Big ball comes out. A little bit of damage from the acid there. Very nice walking here from Kirby. Got to put some respect on his name. This man knows what he's doing. Slick with the movement.
73 XP in all of his stats there with that hit. And a relatively fast time here to finish it off. If he gets the kill, does get the kill. Let's have a look at the time. That is a 122.8, and it's going to leave him at a 128.8 average. And you've got to say, if you are Kirby, you're not going to be happy. We see him in the chat saying, for reference, I did 22 practice kills right before the 10 real ones, and I averaged a 114. Only one of the real kills were faster than that. So the practice kills faster than the actual kills of Kirby. And you can see, he is absolutely not Happy with a 128 average. Hootie Tootie. Oz Smith were down 4-0 in this competition. And Kevzy with a very, very good chance here to take down Vorka for his team. Yep, it's a it's a, a slow average for Kirby, but you gotta remember a death is three minutes, so that's what Kirby's gonna be praying for. A simple death, you can die quickly in Vorkath, you know? Just one ball to the face or, or a frost spawn, you know, hits you. That's a death. So that's what Kirby's going to be hoping for here for sure. Yeah, exactly. Let's go ahead and not mess around any longer. We're going to go ahead and jump straight on into Kevzy's run of Vorkarth here. Having a look at the inventory, we see the armadillo from Kevzy. So we did see Kirby with the better tech at Zora, but Kevzy with the better tech here at Vorkarth. Like I said, Hard to be perfect at every single boss in the game when you're carrying your entire team on your back. Kirby with the worst tech at Vorkarth. Kevzy with the worst tech at Zora. And a big Ruby Bolt spec here for Kevzy. The RNG coming in. Not the best RNG during the acid phase, but prior to that, looking very good. And we do see Kevzy coming in at 300 hit points with the Dragon Hunter Lance. So we did see Kirby sticking it out with the Diamond Bolts. I'm not too sure why, but Kevzy, after those Ruby Bolts, won't make a difference. Steps out. Ooh, misses a Piety Flick there, unfortunately. And we are going to see the God booking from Kevzy as well. And this is what I was talking about with Kirby saying that he needs to spell book swap during the kill. The God book from Kevzy, very fast kill to start with a 108.4. For those wondering, you see the God book in Kevzy's inventory there. And if you look in the top right, you see special attack bar is going to slowly creep up. Starts at 95%. Now, if you start at 95%, you use the God Book to get down to 75. You wait that extra minute to get back up to 95. So basically starting the kill with instead of 100% spec, essentially starting the kill with 105% special attack energy. And that is going to allow him, even if he doesn't get the death charge off at the start of the kill, that is going to allow him to get the 50% special attack energy back as he comes out of the frozen spawn for the second special. 305 hit points left on Vorkarth coming out of the first acid phase. Once again, do have to mention, we've seen six bosses in this grand final. And not one of them has been Captain Jerry. Here on the seventh boss in the grand final as well. Jerry not running a single boss for his team. You even see the Zamorak Brew in the inventory here for Kevzy. 120 attack at all times. And he's going to take the boss down. Looking at around a 115 second kill here. 122. He's going to bring his running average up to 115.3. Let's see the ZCB spec. Goes off a 110. Looking very good. Doesn't have the spellbook swap at the start of the kill. Opting to cast that death charge inside or just forgetting. Risks it for the biscuit there. And the bomb coming straight afterwards. But does get the spellbook swap off. He is on the regular spellbook. 
521 hit points on the boss going into this acid phase. Not ideal. Certainly not the worst RNG we've seen. A 47. Looking for another Ruby Bolt proc here. See the rapid heal flick keeping the 107 hit points. 370 HP remains on Vorkath going into this spawn. Oh, a nice little 61 here. Doesn't go for the second hit. Potentially could have got one off. Let's see the claw spec coming out. 475 XP drop. That was an 87 claw spec there from Kevzi. Nuclear claws. And Vorkarth gonna go down. Let's have a look. A 119.8. So that is gonna bring the average up. 116.8 for Kevzi. Still 12 seconds ahead of his opponent. See the ZCB spec going off. Hit every single ZCB spec so far. 91% chance to hit that ZCB with the armadillo in the inventory. So we are going to expect him to see him miss one. I believe Kirby did miss two in his runs. Once again, the RNG for Kirby not on point. Kevzi here in the acid phase. Gothic's restoring up. Back to 99 hit points. Chucks the diamond bolts on because he's at 298 hit points left on the boss before he exits acid. And a big hit with a dragon hunter crossbow. 86 with the diamond bolts. Let's have a look at the dragon hunter lance here. 43. A 47. He could kill it here before the spawn even comes out. One more hit. That's all he needs. And he does. He kills it before... The spawn even comes out, and that's a 54.6. A 54.6. Brings his average down to 111.25, and he misses his spec. He misses his spec. So that is the 1 in 10 we're talking about. We are expecting him to miss one of those 10 Zarak crossbow specs. But regardless, a very fast kill, kill time in the last kill. 54.6 seconds. I see a 111.25. Vorkath going down quicker than a slot on a Saturday night. 386 hit points left. Let's see the claws. Doesn't have claws yet. Didn't realize that he doesn't have claws yet. And here comes the spawn. Twenty-five, twelve, six, seven. That's going to be fifty damage from the claws. So pretty good there for Kevzi. Ninety-five hit points left on the boss coming out of the spawn. Let's see some big hits for him here. Probably sat at around 1 minute 10 second right now. One more hit to finish it off before the acid comes. He does finish it off right before acid. And that is going to be a 125.2. So far, every single kill he has done has been faster than Kirby's average. Every single kill so far, faster than Kirby's average. And it is looking very good for Ozmith in this Vorkarth fight. Six hundred and thirty-four hit points left on the boss. Five fifty-three going into acid. Let's have a look at the hits here. Not the fastest kill. Hits a sixty coming out though. We see the Zamorak brew up. Three hundred and sixteen damage left to do. The spawn is going to be coming out very soon. There it is. Stood away from the boss, so he's going to have to time it perfectly here. Can he time it perfectly? He can. Very nice timing there from Kevzi. Let's see the claws. 
35, 9, 8, 17. That's going to be around 70 damage there. 71 damage, I believe, from those claws. Absolutely nuclear claws. Those claws popping off like a frog in a foreskin here for Kevzy. As he comes into the acid phase, relatively slow kill regardless of the claws popping off there. Doesn't have his defender on, ladies and gentlemen. He's missing the defender. Wow, big mistake here for Kevzy. Certainly has cost him a little bit of time in that Vorkart kill. And a 142, finally getting a kill slower than Kirby's average. That brings his average up to 118.7. Zara crossbow does go off. See, Bruder37 in the chat saying, the man has got two sayings, and you have said two things in my Twitch chat, and that will be the last. Enjoy the perm, my guy. Kevzy, after the spawn... Bringing it in, 337 hit points left on the boss. Twenty-six, twenty-seven for the spec. That is a 53 damage claw. Every single claw has been absolutely nuclear here for Kevzy. And you've got to be happy if you're Ozmith watching this. They were down 4-0, currently a 4-2, and looking very, very promising to make it a 4-3. We see a 106.6, so another very, very, very fast time. I see Tasty Life in the chat saying, Hey, EVscape, what's your favorite disease? I think... It would have to be the one that you have, my friend. And that is big, fat, juicy pussy disease. Four hundred HP left on the boss going into the spawn here. Misses one tick on it. I don't think that's going to matter. The RNG here for Kevzy absolutely popping off. 300 HP left on the boss. See what he can do here. Defender is on this time. We see him fully potted up to 120 attack. 31 with the claws. Better than a zero. Unfortunately, not able to kill it before the acid phase. And 200 hit points left. So a spellbook swap coming in. He is going to have to do another spawn. Is he going to have to do another spawn? He is. He misses the hit. Could have killed it before the next spawn came out. Oh, very unfortunate. This is going to end up being a slow kill. Looking at around a 135 to 140. As long as he kills it on this hit. And he does kill it. So... Gonna bring the average down for Kevzy coming into kill number nine, 135.4. He has a 119.28 average. He is popping off. He is absolutely popping off. There is no other way to describe it. He is absolutely killing it here with the RNG. The spawn comes out again as well. Oh my god. He just decides to bolt here. Oh, that's no good. A 49. It's not going to be too bad, but wasting a lot of time on the spawn. Didn't have his spellbook swap set up. I believe he misses the death charge there as well. Going to switch into his melee. Misses the Infernal Cape. Kevzy. Kevzy. Not looking good in this ninth kill. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, if he does die, it's a three-minute time penalty. 
absolutely still a chance for Kirby to win this one if Kevzy does die. Looking a little shaky in this last kill. A 36, 37. That is going to be a 73 claw spec, ladies and gents. And a pretty fast kill. 113.2. And Kevzy is currently up by 10 entire seconds. He would have to... Wait. I think he could die. I think he could die and still win here. I don't think he can lose. He's so far ahead. He needs a 301 to lose here, which means Kevzy. Which is possible if he just really drags this kill on. So it is possible, but at that point, you're better off just dying. But does he know this? He might not. <laughs> so you're saying there's a chance, Hooty Tooty. I'm saying there's a chance. Kirby is still in it. A very slim chance for Kirby, but most likely we are going to see this one go to a 4-3 for Ozmith, ladies and gentlemen. They were down 4-0 to start off this grand final, and they have brought it back. And Kevzy is going to survive. That means Ozmith is definitely taking down this point. It is currently a 4-3. For Ozmith in the grand final of the Speed Run Cup, ladies and gentlemen, it is getting real hot in here. Vorkarth taken down for Ozmith. Kevzi carrying his team on his back right now. And you have to say, this could have already been a victory here for Ozmith. Going down in the Corrupted Gauntlet by only 2.2 seconds. And going down in Nex by 7.8 seconds. This could have already been a 5-2 here for Ozmith. And they're coming, here, they're coming here with a 4-3 with a potential to reverse sweep. Yeah, I mean, just looking at that Vorkath, you know, Kirby... Kirby didn't perform as well, but take nothing away from Kevzy. He did what he needed to do. And I'd actually like to run through one of his kills. That that 54.6 second we saw, which is one of the fastest Vorkaths of the competition. So I've never claimed to be an artist, but this is Vorkath. So as you saw there, the strategy for those unaware is during the acid phase, while ranging, you want to stay in the back tiles of the Vorkath room. And basically what that means is with the crossbow, the range works out that you get dragged in, which means you will uh, avoid the flame balls that are uh, falling on that tile at that tick. So you'll see them going back and forth, hit the boss, walk, hit the boss, walk, hit the boss, walk, hit. You'll then see them finish the kill with a lance and often flinching to deflect from that melee, they're not going to get meleeed by Vorkath, taking more damage than they need to. A fireball will shoot where you'll see as flinching, they will have to move somewhere else for the boss fight. And that's how, ultimately, Kevzy was able to defeat Vorkath in 54.6 seconds. Very, very good explanation here from Hooty Tooty. Sorry, I have something in my eye. Um, must have been chopping some onions. Um... That was a very, very good explanation there from Hootie Tootie as to what happened in that 54.6 second Vorkath kill for Kevzy there. Wow, oh wow, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to be going on to an eighth boss. We are going to be seeing the Fasani's Nightmare being ran by BDSM and Ozmith. In the Fasani's Nightmare, we are going to see three players from each team take on the Fasani's Nightmare, and we will see an average of those three kills. Let's see what Team BDSM has to offer in this eighth boss. And we're going to see Smoke 3000. See the Granite Mall coming for the first hit. We see the Din's Bulwark in the inventory as well. No Torva switch for the Dinny B unnecessary in Fasani's Nightmare we saw the Torva switch for the Dinny B 
in the regular nightmare as we see him change spell books here we will see him do that for the first three phases of the fasani's nightmare going to be changing spell books so that he can have thralls as well as have the uh, Harmonized Nightmare Staff for the pillar phase as we see him switch into... Oh, is he going to take some damage here? Not. He avoids the Grasping Hands. Still has the Thrall up for the pillar phase. 41 seconds on that Thrall. And that's going to last the whole pillar phase. We see the running attack here. The dashing attack, I should say, for the Nightmare. And he is looking very good in this first kill. See the ham joint in the inventory as well. Those unaware, in the Fasani's Nightmare, when the husks come out, you are guaranteed to hit your maximum hit against them. And that means the ham joint will one hit them. The ham joint is a three tick weapon. See the spellbook swap back to the arcades. The death charge going to come off for the sleepwalker here. Seen some very, very, very nice kicks, kicks, clicks here for Smork 3000. The Thrall is summoned. See a big hit to start the second phase. Fasani down to 300 hit points already. See some chins in the inventory as well for Smork. And he is going to get a hit off here. Very nice. Going to miss no ticks on the dashing phase. And that was very good positioning for him in the Fasani's Nightmare. Don't see any husks coming out yet. Nor Parasites. If the Parasites do come out, that's why he does have the Elder Maul in the inventory. See the Spellbook swap coming in. The Thrall being summoned. See the Grasping Hands coming up. 27 hit points left on the boss. A ranged attack coming out. Oh, two hit points left. He's going to use the Ham Joint for the hit. We see the Husks come out. The Ham Joint going to take both of them out in six ticks rather than taking them out in eight ticks with the kicks. Going to use the Ham Joint for the last hit on the Nightmare interesting to see him go for that instead of the scythe and that was because the nightmare was on two hit points the ham joint definitely going to be the best option there the three tick weapon as opposed to the five tick scythe and he's taken absolutely everything he can for the fastest kill here small 3000 with some insane tech here in the fasanis as we come into the mushroom phase going to need to avoid those mushrooms has to tag each one of those mushrooms individually and he's done that he's going to avoid them Avoiding the grasping hands as well. No, he runs into the mushroom. Any yawners in the chat. That is going to turn off his run energy and allow him. Oh my God, the pillar is not down. This is a disaster here for Smork 3000. As he takes a melee, almost off prayer. Not going to have time to spell book swap here because he's in such a rush. That means he doesn't get the death charge off and misses out on 15% special attack energy. And a bit of a rhubarb crumble for Smork 3000 here in this Fasani's Nightmare kill. Losing quite a few ticks there. That mushroom causing him to attack one tick slower. So he brings the Harmonized Nightmare Staff so he can attack with a four tick cycle. Oh, and he takes a 50 from the Grasping Hand. Using the Gothic's Restore to heal up. Only has one Anglerfish in the inventory. Not using a Blood Fury. We'll be using the Torture for the boss. And a big crumble here from Smork 3000 in his Fasani's kill. Taking a lot of damage that he doesn't need to. And potentially a bit shaky here in the grand final of the Speedrun Cup. This is Old School RuneScape's biggest PVM tournament. Over 2 billion GP in the prize pool. And these players are feeling the pressure. Smork 3000, one of the best players in the game and still struggling. Wait a minute. Hang on a minute, ladies and gentlemen. Take a look in the chat box here. Smork 3000, unless he scrolled up, has he done this at the perfect time for his spellbook swaps to come back? We will find out at the end of this pillar phase if he changes back to the Archaea Spellbook. He is going to! Oh my god, ladies and gentlemen. Smork3000 has waited for the exact right time in the RuneScape game for his Spellbook swaps to reset. 
He is going to get 10 Spellbook Swaps in a row. Oh my god, the tech here from Smork3000. This is by far the best tech we have seen. The Mushroom Phase coming up. We see him step underneath the boss at the perfect timing. That is absolutely unbelievable there from Smork3000. Definitely the best tech we have seen for Fasani's Nightmare. And he changes to the regular spell book without missing a hit. And here we go. The last pillar phase here. The husks come out the worst possible time. Oh my god! There's no way! Smork3000 with the Dinny B on the pillar to take out both the husks. No one is gaming harder than this man right here. I said he was feeling the pressure. We saw a couple of crumbles from Smork3000, but he has kept his composure in this second last phase of Fasani's, and he gets a Dinny B spec off on the pillar to waste absolutely no time killing those husks. He is absolutely cracked, my guy. Smork3000 putting on an absolute fucking clinic for the people in the live stream here. Wow. Wow. That is all I can say. The mushrooms come up. We see him change back to the... We don't see him change back to the Archaea Spellbook. He's going to get it after these sleepwalkers. So he misses out on the... Sorry, he misses out on the death charge. But it's not going to come in to be a problem here. He has the Granite Maul. Doesn't change back over to the Archaea. So had those extra changes and doesn't end up using them i see the sleepwalkers go in here 54 hit, hit points left on fasani's 20 four hits to finish off five hits if he had the thrall there it would have gone down instead an extra 2.4 seconds and we're going to see a 718 fasani's there for smoke 3000 Call Dinny because I'm about to b b bust a nut. Very questionable there from Skatizho. And we're going to see Mole Goat Kirby running for Sani's Nightmare for his team. See the Death Charge run out. We'll see him re summon the Thrall. Resummons the Thrall a little early here, you would think. 73 hit points left on the boss. Three hit points left. The Parasite comes out, so we didn't see a Parasite last time for Smork 3000. Kirby missing a few of his switches going into the pillar phase here. Once again, Kirby running every single boss for his team. Does miss a few switches there, but you cannot expect a man to be the best at every single boss. He's done so well for his team here. And uh, missing a few switches on those hits is not going to be the biggest deal. See the flowers come up. We are going to see the grasping hands coming up from the floor. Oh, he misses another hit here. Trying to avoid those grasping hands. Northwest pillar. Is going to be the third. The northeast pillar going to go down. Having a look at the inventory. Very similar to his teammate. In fact, exactly the same. See regular chins there for Kirby. Not wasting money on the black chins. See the spell book swap. The question is... Is he going in with the Smork 3000 tech? Will we see the 10 Spellbook swaps from Kirby? Here come the Husks at the perfect time for 55% spec to come back. And a 33 he manages to hit on the Nightmare there. The Diddy B tech on the Husks. We saw Smork 3000 pull off a very nice Din's Bulwark. On the pillar.
Coming into this third phase here, a harmonized nightmare staff popping off on these pillars. See the mushrooms come up, Kirby does not have them marked and avoids the last mushroom there with one tick to spare. Oh, I thought he was going to get dragged there. He knows exactly where he needs to stand. Very nice gameplay there from Kirby. Thought he was going to get dragged into that mushroom, but he didn't. Mushrooms will cause your attacks to slow down by one tick. That's going to cost him a lot of time, but he manages to avoid it there. And a very nice, very nice sleepwalker phase there from Kirby. Tick perfect. And not going to miss a hit on the dashing phase again. Much like his teammate, Smork3000, getting a very good spawn there with the dashing special attack of Nightmare. Fifty percent special attack energy. Gonna see the spell book swap. Straight after the resummon of the thrall, we see the death charge sat at twenty seconds. Will the parasite come out in the next fifteen? It will. So he will get that fifteen percent recharge. Phases for Sani's. This is a couple of ticks there on his switch. Doesn't have the ancestral pants on. Finally gets them on. So the parasite come out. The death charge. Does go off, back up to 75% special attack. Eighty-five percent special attack now coming into the second last phase, the penultimate phase. Five out of five spellbook swaps. We see four Kirby here. Saw so a 718 for his teammate Smork3000. Big chin for Kirby there. And a very nice sleepwalker phase again. Ninety-five percent special attack energy, the granite mole hitting nothing. Gmall likely the best special attack weapon here at Fasani's Nightmare. You miss no ticks using the special attack. And here we go, 55% special attack again. Let's have a look at 20 with the Dinny B on the boss. I saw a 20 and a 5 there. Does the Din's Bulwark hit big monsters twice? It does! So the Dinny B even better at Fasani's Nightmare than I first thought. It hits the primary target twice. So always going to get two hits off on the Nightmare. That is incredible. I believe they recently buffed the stats of it as well. So you can hit very hard with the Dinny B. Very nice footwork here from Kirby. Avoiding those grasping hands and the mushrooms at the same time. Have to manually tag all these mushrooms, and you see he's only done that with a single one of them. Too much time. The pillar's going to go down here. A very clean kill here from Kirby. No mistakes so far in terms of hit points. The Scythe not taking down the pillar. Has to do another Scythe. Let's see the Sleepwalker phase here. A big chin, a big chin. Blowpipe and a Chelly. Very nice. Once again, a tick perfect Sleepwalker. Coming into the last phase. Praise Mage. Doesn't need to. Chucks the Redemption on. Realizes. Steps out. Finding nice spots here. In between. Grasping hands. Now, his teammate had an extra spec here for the Granite Mole due to that death charge. Thanks to the fact that he had those extra spellbook swaps, but Kirby is going to take Fasani's down in four hits. And we see a 726.4 there for Kirby. And a rolling average of 72.22. Seven minutes, 
22 seconds and two milliseconds for BDSM. The last player we are going to see run here is Hi Yo. Once again, another all rounder for his team. We've joked many a time in this tournament that Team BDSM is a team of five speedrunners and Hi Yo. But we do need to put some respect on his name here. He goes for the Diddy B on the Parasite. Very nice movement there. Taking it out in one hit. Getting some extra damage on the boss. I believe the Din's Bulwark at the same tick rate as the Eldemore. Both six tick weapons. And that 246 gigabytes of anime and hentai that Hayo has stored up on his computer. Not doing too well. Also see the spellbook swap in the inventory. We see the mage cape, but the Sanguinesti staff... He also has a Tome of Fire. This potentially is just straight up. Wait, there's a harm? You'll find that because Fasani's has a lot more phases than regular Nightmare, you just don't have enough spellbook swaps to get it done the right, whole way through. Right, no. To yeah, I just, uh, I just didn't see the harm in the top right-hand corner of his inventory there. So the other player's opting to go for... The first three phases with the harm. Hi Yo opting to go for the last three phases with the harm. That's going to allow him to have extra death charge and extra thralls. Twenty-five hit points left on phase two, and here we go. It's a four-way switch off for the first harm. Four pillars to take down here in this Fasani's kill. Team currently sat on a 722.2 average. The score currently sat at 4-3. Here comes the Dinny B on the pillar. We saw Smork 3000 with it before. And a second time in these Fasani runs. See the Dinny B on the pillar. You have to give it to Team BDSM here. Coming into this Fasani kill with some incredible tech. Not only some of the best PVMers in the game, but also some of the best theory crafters. Hi Yo, one of the parties responsible for the deathless 100 man scaled CM. And he almost takes a grasping hand there. Just manages to avoid it. Almost runs into a mushroom as well. Going to heal up here from that 51 damage he took. See the death charge come in just after the sleepwalkers. Coming into P3. Score sat at 4 3. Ozmith was down 4 0. And they've managed to bring it back here with a potential for the reverse sweep, ladies and gentlemen. But they are going to have their work cut out for them with some very, very nice Fasani's times here from Team BDSM. See the Eldemol coming out for the Parasite. Must say, Hayo has been quite unlucky with the special attacks that Fasani's uses. 
Seeing three of those specials that will slow him down, guaranteed. One husks and two parasites. Done his best to uh, make the most of those, though, with the Dinny B specs. Sometimes in life, you aren't going to get bad RNG. Not just in the video game. You get bad RNG in life. And it's how you act accordingly when you get those bad RNG moments that shows who you are as a person. And hi yo. Absolutely killing it here. Back to the RK spellbook. See the husks come out again. No Dinny B here. For high yo. And he's not even gonna kill them? He's just attacking the boss. Oh, he waits for the Dinny B spec to come out. Oh my god, Hi yo is playing out of his mind right now. Saw that he had a Dinny B spec coming up and decides to wait those two hits out. Absolutely incredible moves there from Hi yo And he is showing exactly why Team BDSM is a team of five speedrunners and Adicon. See the mushrooms come out. See how well the footwork goes here for Io. He's going to avoid the mushroom. He could have avoided the mushroom there. No. Runs into it. As I was saying, Team BDSM, a team of five speedrunners and high yo. And he's going to be slowed down for six attacks here with the harmonized staff. And the husks come out again. Guys, you really have to feel for Hi Yo here. Getting very unlucky with the special attacks from the Nightmare. That is three lots of husks and two parasites that he's had to deal with. Last pillar here for the Fasani's kill. He takes a hit off prayer. That's a 54 to the dome. And he's going to take another one. He has just been... Turbo chance, Omni chance, Giga chance. And that could have been a 10 minute time penalty. Oh my word. Here we go. Coming into the last phase. He needs some nuclear hits here. He has no food left in his inventory and he's going to be completely reliant on those redemptions coming off. He's going to take 15 damage here. He's going to take another 15 damage in just a second. And the redemption will proc. Gets the Blood Fury heal at the clutch moment. This might kill him. No, he is going to survive. Very lucky there at the end. And an 809.6 to bring the average up to 737.8 for Team BDSM here in the Fasani's Nightmare. Very unfortunate for Hayo there taking the 809 at the very end. And you got to say. That a 739 average. Is once again Hootie Tootie. Very beatable here. For Oz Myth. I mean I'd, I'd say. It, you'd say that. But I think it's still a very strong time. That that 716 or whatever it was from Smork initially. Is such a such a quick time. And and I think we saw we saw last round that uh, Ozmith did do Fasani's and they had a death, I believe. Cat died, so I mean, all it takes is one death to bring an average up to to eight or so minutes. But even then, with three completions, you're still going to be somewhat challenged to get that sort of average. A tough time to beat, but still very beatable here for Ozmith. Let's not waste any more time, ladies and gentlemen. Here in the grand final of the Speed Run Cup. What the fuck? Oh my god, I can only apologize to anyone that is watching this at night time. My word. Catch Riel here with the worst plugin I've ever seen in my entire life at the nightmare and running on two frames per second. <laughs> 
<laughs> we see the Dinny B go off, the Thrall come out, the Spellbook swap in the inventory, swap into the regular Spellbook. <laughs> what the fuck am I witnessing right now? <laughs> As we see the first phase go down, very fast P1 there for Catriel. Now, the reason that we see the floor like this is so those grasping hands uh, are able to be visibly seen very easily on the floor. We saw the same thing in the bloat room before. <laughs> this plugin hurts so much. And there we go, the grasping hands. Much easier to see when you have this plug-in. Going to be very hard to know which tiles to stand on to avoid these mushrooms, though. So, helps with the hands. Uh, potentially damaging with the mushrooms. But Catriel, with some very nice footwork here for Ozmith. Cat was the only person to die for Ozmith in the last round at Fasani's. And guys, remember, Fasani's was the pick for Ozmith. Oh, wasting some time there on the Sleepwalker. Doesn't actually have a blowpipe in the inventory. Interesting not to see that, but we do see the Torva and the Dragon Claws. So, a little bit of different tech here for Ozmith, for Catriel. Finding a nice spot on the floor. And uh, we are going to see those Dragon Claw specs come in whenever Cat is at... 100% special attack energy. Obviously going to be saving those Dinny B specs for the husks. And we see the nice footwork. This is exactly why you have this plugin enabled. Obviously, it's not very good for your eyes, but definitely very good to be able to take on the Fasani's Nightmare. And Cat, once again, was the only person to die for Ozmith in the last round. Missing a tick there on the hit. Very unfortunate with the FPS issues here, guys. But you can't expect every RuneScaper to have a computer that is capable of recording high caliber gameplay footage. And we only have RuneScape GP as a prize for the Speedrun Cup. If only there was a game company that made billions of dollars that could potentially sponsor this event so we could get some good computers for these gamers. Unfortunately, I don't think that exists. We see the sleepwalkers go down. The parasite as well, wasting no time with that parasite, is Catriel. So the mushrooms come up. This is going to be a grasping hand phase. Catriel moves the boss one square down. And here we go. Missing no ticks on the attacks. 94 hit points left on the Fasani's Nightmare. Very fast. P3 here for Catriel. We are going to see the last spell book swap come in here. Five out of five. So that is the last thrall that we'll see. The last death charge as well. 60% special attack energy. We will see the claws on the final phase, you would imagine. A big happy birthday to Molgoat Kirby. Who we just saw run for Sarnis for Team BDSM. And what a birthday present it would be for him to see his team take out the grand final in the speed run cup. Catriel, two pillars left here on P3. Oh, that is a melee chance right there. Catriel going to be brewing up. Going into P4, we're going to see the crossbow for all three sleepwalkers, you'd imagine here. While the brews are consumed, see the sand few serums. We're going to need, need to see another divine super combat. Oh, and almost another melee.
the Sarnies. We're going to see a flower phase here. And we're going to see the FPS drop to about two. Very nice footwork here from Catriel. 90% special attack energy as well. So we will see a double claw for the final phase. Two brew doses left in the inventory. We saw other players bringing in Guthix Restores because... Fasanis is a zero damage boss if you do it correctly. Cat deciding to bring in the Bruce. And great choice. That's another melee off prayer. Only for a 16 this time. Cat going to move out of the way of the next melee. And it seems the prayer shuffling has got Cat in a spliff. Coming into the final phase here, we do see the Parasite come out. Almost another melee of prayer. We're going to see the Eldermall come out. Grasping hands. Well moved there. Moving to the next slide. When it registers. And we see the last pillar go down with a scythe as the flowers come up. Need to see the crossbow come out here for the sleepwalkers. We'll see the claw swipe for the last one. And can Cat take down Fasanis in this last phase with two claw specs? Let's have a look. One claw spec coming in. Not good. One, one, zero, zero. Second claw spec, 36, 18, 19. Let's see the scythes here. 15 damage. We need to see the redemption come up here soon for Cat. We need to see the redemption come up here soon for Cat. See the brew come in. And that is going to be a successful kill. We see a 736.6 there for Cat. Okay. So the average slightly better so far for Osmith. And thank God. Kevzy here, saving everyone's eyes. My word. I don't think I could have dealt with another kill with a full white floor. We see a full purple floor here for Kevzy. Purple, the color of sexual frustration, which is quite weird considering how hard he is fucking up this boss. See the Torva in the inventory. No claws though for Kevzy. 56 damage from the Grasping Hand. You must see a lot of purple then, EV. Wrong, Lajona, because I have sex with your mother. Enjoy the perm. Pillar phase for Kevzy here. See the Parasite come out. We do remember last time we saw Kevzy do the Fasanis. We did, in fact, see him running out of spellbook swaps in the middle of the kill. See how he does for the grasping hand phase here. Oh, he's gonna... Oh, man. If that pillar died one tick earlier, he would have taken another grasping hand and been chanced there. See the crossbow go off. No blowpipe in the inventory for either player so far for Ozmith. And that is going to waste a few ticks here on the sleepwalker phase. We see a nice little granite mall spec coming in for Kevzy. Does have the full Torva switch for the Dinny B. No dragon claws though. Mushrooms come up. All the mushrooms are tagged. Really good spawn for Kevzy here. Able to use that corner trick. And he's using it well. New Thrall comes out. 53 damage left on the boss. Going to go for the Spellbook swap there. Three out of five Spellbook swaps. So we will see him swap back to Arceus one more time. Huss coming out at the worst possible time there. Unfortunately, not able to use the Dinny B with the Torva. 
Seems sat on 54 hit points. Needs a lot of concentration here. One mistake can kill him. Big hits here. We see the prayer shuffling. Oh, shaky clicks from Kevzy here. Don't know if he's shaking because he's worried about the fact he's in the grand final of the speedrun cup or he's shaking because he's carried his team so fucking hard in this grand final. He's been up for 15 days and had way too much caffeine. But shaky clicks nonetheless from Kevzy. Having a look at the inventory here. See one full brew. We will see a granite mall spec come in for a zero, unfortunately. Doesn't miss any ticks there on the dash. We see Tony Macaroni coming in and saying Wooks is better. I'm going to have to hard disagree with you there, Tony Macaroni. There was an open sign-up here for the Speedrun Cup. Anybody could have signed up, and Wooks didn't. So I would say probably worse at the video game than Kevzy here. And that's going to be a permanent ban. Okay, Kevzy taking on P3. Seen a pretty fast kill so far from Kevzy here. Just out the way of the dashing attack. Sat on 78 hit points, so not chanceable. Feeling very comfortable is Kevzy. Not going to be able to spellbook swap back here. But he does have the regular spellbook now. See the scythe coming in, losing a few ticks again. You have to say once again, uh, Team BDSM probably with the better tech here at Fasani's Nightmare. But will RNG come in for Ozmith? Didn't see any Torva for BDSM. The Torva may be making the difference. Kevzy is going to lose a little bit of time here. If he played that perfectly, he would have had a perfect dashing phase, losing no ticks. Unfortunately, going to lose two ticks there on the run around. See the husk come out. Not enough special attack energy for the Dinny B. We're going to see the scythe though on the husk. So two extra hits on the boss. And here we go. Into the last pillar phase. 111 hit points here for Kevzy. Wow, perfect pathing there to avoid those grasping hands. He's just going to take the damage. No, he's not. Misses a tick on the hit there. No way, Kevzy. What are you doing, mate? What's the point of having the floor fully purple? And he tanks one of the mushrooms. We do have a yawner. And that is going to cost him five ticks. See the scythe come in for the last hit. Not necessary. We're going to see the crossbow for the final phase. Kevzy moving towards that last sleepwalker. Gets the kill off. 65% special attack energy. So we're going to see a, a granite maul at the start here. See the redemption coming up. Will we see the granite maul? We will. Let's see it here. Steps underneath the boss. Perfect timing. One more hit. Going to take out Fasani. He's very fast. P5 there from Kevzy. Let's have a look at the time. 
A 727.6, guys. So it brings the running average to a 732.1, which means Euless here can get a 745 or so and still win it for his team. You're saying there's a chance. And speaking of people that win big events here in the old school RuneScape section, we have a raid here from Lane. The reigning Battle Royale Rookies Champion. Taking a look at the inventory here for Euless. Pretty much the same inventory as the rest of his teammates. As you'd imagine, all these teams theory crafting together. I believe we did have Tony P running for Sarnies for Oz Myth in the last round as well. And once again, been subbed out for Euless here. Okay, I'm going to see the Spellbook swap come in. Those clicks looking very shaky for Euless here. I can't lie to you guys. No bruise in the inventory either for Euless, so he is feeling confident here. His other teammates ended up using both their brews in their entirety. Both bringing two brews and that extra restore. Euless just going with the Karambuan and two Anglerfish. So feeling very confident. Going to move the boss out the way of the mushroom here. We see why we have the floor completely disappeared. Oh, he takes a 62 anyway. Euless taking a bit of damage here. Not wanting to miss any hits. 36 damage left. Oh, one ticks the melee attack. Gonna have to get out of the way of the dash. Misses the hit as well. So losing a few ticks here is Euless. Big switch though. He does have the Blood Fury on, guys. So missing out on some extra accuracy, potential max hits, and opting for the Blood Fury. And that's why he's not going with the Bruise. 51 hit points though. Can be one hit at any moment. 100% special attack energy as well. Haven't seen that Gmall come out. Here come the Husks. Blood Fury comes on. Will he get a heal? He does get a heal, actually, from the Husks. Two heals from the Husks. The hit point's coming back up. Misclick on the, the uh, Sleepwalker there. 100% special attack energy. We should see the Gmall come in here at some point for Euless. Does he know that he has 100% special attack? He does. Here comes the Gmall. Gmall hits a 34. Very nice. I'm going to see a repot here with the Divine Super Combat. Euless back up to 99 hit points. One ticks the melee attack. 107 damage left on the boss. Summons his next thrall. We're going to see a spellbook swap here to the regular spellbook. Once again, Euless going to need around a 745 here for his team. Big swing there with the Eldemol. Oh, he kicks the pillar. And he takes a hit off prayer as well. Luckily for a zero. But Euless with the big rhubarb crumble. And most certainly feeling the pressure of the grand final of the speedrun cup. Two pillars remain here on P3. 
That'll be the last time we see a thrall for this kill. No more spellbook swaps remain, but the 10 swaps from Smork 3000, definitely the best tech we saw in this tournament. We're going to see the scythe for the final swing. Oh my god, there's so much health left on that pillar. Two scythes, three scythes it took. Definitely a little early on the scythe there for Eulis. Has a 7.45 to beat. Looking relatively slow at the moment, coming into P4. 116 hit points. One Karam one left in the inventory. See the Granite Maul go off and some really nice prayers there from Eulis. Very nice indeed. Big hits. Big swings with the scythe. This is exactly what Eulis needs to see if he's going to get that 745 for his team and move on to the decider. No thrall left. Here we go. The mushroom phase. Let's see how he gets out of this one. We've seen two players yawn so far. Will we see another one? Oh, going to miss a lot of ticks here getting to the next pillar. Doesn't run into a mushroom though. But did already lose four ticks, so might have been better to just run through a mushroom to get that extra hit off. See the melee prayer still above the head for Eulis. 35 prayer points left. Two doses of Sandfew Serum. That is going to be plenty. 75% special attack energy. Move to the pillar! Could have got a Dinny B spec off there. The pillar did die anyway, so it wouldn't have mattered. Under the boss. Gonna have to get out. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen. The final phase of the Fasani's Nightmare. A 7.45 or so to beat. I think it's a 7.43 or less that Eulis needs. And we're going to see a big Granite Maul. Let's have a look here. Side swing. Second side swing into the G Maul. 19, 72 HP left, 22, and a very quick, very quick P5 here, guys. Let's have a look at the time in the chat. We see a uh, 723.4. They've done it, ladies and gentlemen. Eulis with the fastest time. That is a 729.2 average for Ozmith. They were 4-0 down. 4-0 down in the grand final of the Speed Run Cup. And they've brought it back to a 4-4. It is going to the last boss. We are going to see solo challenge mode. Chambers of Zeric for the last boss. Here in the grand final of the speedrun cup. And the reverse sweep is on. Hootie Tootie. It's very possible. They've clawed their way back one boss at a time. After being 4-0 down like you said. And... And uh, it's going to be interesting. We see BDSM recruited Rasterman specifically for his solo CMs. And I believe it's going to be Cat running for Ozmith. So it's going to be a good matchup. And we saw we saw before with Rookie and Divine, 35, around 35 minute submissions, 35 or 36 minute submissions. That's a slow CM because it's just so possible to make so many mistakes and have a slow, a slow Vassar or a slow Tecton or a slow Thieving. Any room could go either way. And uh, it's going to be interesting to see how both of these games' runs go. So, very possible for the reverse sweep to come in here. Guys, we've been live for 10 and a half hours. We are going to get into this last match. But beforehand, I'm going to quickly go to the bathroom, have a stretch. Take a couple minutes, guys. If you have been watching this whole time, have a bit of a stretch. Get some water. And we will jump into this last match in just a moment. A lot of people saying they have work, uh, they have to get up for work soon. Well, luckily for you, it can't go any further than this, uh, than this Cox. We're going to watch two solo CMs. It is possible that we do get a draw. As we saw uh, last night, we saw two uh, nightmares of the same time by BDSM and uh, OzTob to go to a replay. So... Unless we get a, unless we get two joint times with a with a replay, the stream will be will be finished in two solo CMs. 
Haven't seen um haven't seen Jerry at all. Jerry's been MIA. I don't know what coach Jerry is doing, but uh he's sort of just been chilling. Is a can I get a, a a one in the chat if your team BDSM and a two in the chat if you are Ozmith? I'd like to see uh what team both of you are, are rooting for. I'm seeing a lot of ones and twos. A lot of ones and twos. Unfortunately, I can't uh, add them up that quickly. If only there was some sort of way to run a poll in a Twitch chat. But as far as I know, there isn't. So, so we're gonna just have to have to count. Uh, two, 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 one, two, two. Yeah, I can't. I can't add it up. It's it's. We've been live for almost eleven hours now. My brain probably couldn't even do that if I was fresh uh, from asleep. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are just about ready to jump into the last boss of this grand final match. But I have to tell you guys a little something first. For the past four months, I've spent a lot of time focusing on the gym, trying to get my body right. I have been sober, not a drop of alcohol, and I could not think of a better time to break that fast. Ladies and gentlemen... Crack a beer with me in the chat. We are about to watch the last boss of the grand final of the Speed Run Cup 2. We are going to see solo CMs, the first person we're going to be watching from BDSM. Let's get into it. We see Rasta Man coming in here for BDSM with the vulnerability. Let's see if it goes off. I think he splashed the vulnerability, but hits the first hammer. Hits the second hammer as well. So very nice here. And let's have a look how quick this Tecton is going to go. Doesn't take any damage here. Is he even venged? Surely he's venged. He is venged, but opting not to take the venge just yet. Now, Hoodie, am I wrong in saying that these players were able to reset Tecton? Yeah, so one one uh, rule in the solo CMs was that you were allowed to reset until you got two hammer hits. So as soon as those two hammer hits, you've got to do the run. You've got to commit to that run. So yeah, you'll see these these uh, these gamers starting with the double hammers because we know how much that, that Tecton resetting is a part of, of solo CM speedrunning. Yeah, absolutely. And the last thing we would want to see from these gamers is, uh, you know, one player losing because they hit zero hammers on Tecton and uh, spent 15 minutes in the first room. So allowed to restart Tecton as many times as possible to get those double hammers. We're going to see a tick perfect crab room here from the Rasta man, provided he makes no many uh, no mistakes. Let's have a look here. Smashes the crab, gets the sang stuff off. Perfect crabs here from the rust man. Grabs the second crab over in the corner there. And we're going to see him using his sanguinesti stuff up against the crab that he doesn't need in order to get some heals back. Back up to 44 hit points here. And as many sang stuff hits as he can. Here we go. He's even going to get one more on the way out. No heal, unfortunately. 47 hit points. Going to be seeing him eat those purple sweets all the way through the run. Every hit point matters here in the solo CM speed run. And he's going to pop the overload now as he walks up towards the ice demon room. What is going on here? Tries to get a hit off on the scavenger and it stalls him quite a bit. All right, moving on to the first bank here. Deposits all from the inventory immediately. We're going to see him get two inventories of kindling here. V 
Very fast is Rasaman, the 54.6 second crabs. He's getting some really bad RNG on the chopping here. Is he 99? Is he 99 woodcutting? The lower your woodcutting level here in the Ice Demon room, the worse RNG you're going to have with those kindling. I'd imagine he would be 99. He's getting some really, really bad RNG here on the kindling, and that's going to cost him a lot of time in this first room. Oh, he literally has a max cape in his inventory, guys. You sat here. I obviously knew that, but the chat was asking what his woodcutting level was. He's got a max cape in his inventory, guys. Come on. I would never ask a question so stupid. All right, we see the withdraw. He's already pre-overloaded here. We're going to see him take some runes out of his Sanguinesti stuff. And that's going to allow him to cast Thralls after his Spellbook swaps from Ice Demon. Oh, he got a lockpick from... Wait, did he get it from the Scavenger? Or did he bring the lockpick in? He got it from the Scav. Oh my god. And that's going to be a huge time save there. That is massive for the thieving room. And we see the fire surge going in. See, Blindstad in the chat say huge. Five seconds, Kappa. Blindstad, three times in this tournament, we have seen one tick be the difference between winning and losing. Five seconds is massive. And five seconds is not how long you're going to be banned for. It's going to be permanent. Enjoy the perm. We see a big LOL here from Rosterman. Has something happened? He must have been so happy about that ban. Laughing at the perm in game is Russell, man. He thought that was very funny. Of course, these CMs done live. They're currently in the raids right now. World 532, if you want to wait for them outside at the Cox Bank. And while you're there, ladies and gentlemen, we are still collecting donations for the prize pool. Hooty Tooty will be there. You can talk to him in game. That's a joke. Hooty Tooty will not be there. Message him on Twitter. If you would like to donate to the prize pool of the speedrun cup, Hooty underscore OSRS. Because you know there's some guy in the chat that has changed his name to H00TI and it's just stood at 532 at Chambers of Zeric right now, trying to get people's money. Russell Man with a seven minute first floor. So we're going to keep track of these splits for whoever is going to run the solo CM for Osmith. See a question from Buana in the chat. He says, no prep. Absolutely, my friend. This will be a no prep raid. And that is what you'd expect from gamers of this caliber. We see the scythe on accurate here, guys, because the, the Vanguard, the ranged Vanguard, has such high defense. The accurate style is going to be better. See, the tile that he stood on here is going to allow him to safe spot the melee and not take any damage.
All right. Getting some bad RNG on the Mage Vanguard here. Remembering he has no food in the inventory. We're seeing flicking to Augury for the Mage defense up against the Mage here. 119 on the Melee Vanguard. See, 138 on the range. Are we going to see a Claw come in here? We are going to see a Claw. How big is it? See, a 22, 11, 12. That's going to be 43 damage. No, 45 damage. Apologies. See, one more hit. We're going to see a Way Downtown Tebow. 116 hit points left on the Melee Vanguard. And once again, it's going to be Corner Trapped. By Rusterman here. Now, is he able to get the Tebow off from here on the mage? He's not. But he is able to keep the melee trapped as it moves towards him. 63 from way downtown. And enough health gone on those vanguards for him to be able to finish them off. That's a big hit. That should finish off the mage. It's not going to quite. One more Tebow hit. Let's see what he gets. Two Xerix aids. So, going to be happy with those two Bruce. But he is going to look to see a restore on the ground by at least one of these vanguards. Be very unlucky not to see one. We only see one brew from this vanguard. And it's not going to be looking good for him if he doesn't see a restore on the ground. Let's have a look here. One more hit. No restore from Vanguards here for Rusterman. And he's going to be completely reliant on that Prayer Enhance for Vassa. Coming into the Thieving Room. Does have the lock pick as well. Drops it before he opens the bank. Hits the deposit all. Did I say Vassa? I meant Vespula. My apologies. We see here it was Vicon Lopu RS, the first person to correct me. And even though you were correct, mate, doesn't matter if I'm wrong. Don't try and backseat cast me. Enjoy the perm. Everyone else, you got lucky. The lockpick coming in clutch here. Unfortunately, getting some pretty bad RNG on the Grubs. 19 to go. He has 22 so far. Needs 30 to finish off this Scavenger. Six more. Thieving level obviously going to affect how well you do in the Thieving Room. Not sure if he has 99 Thieving or not. Unfortunately, can't see the skills tab. Getting some pretty bad RNG again. Oh my god. Look at this RNG on the grubs. That is really bad there for Rasaman. And he clicks on the trough at the same time as it runs out of grubs. Let's see the bank here. Pretty fast banking. He's going to go through to Vespula. Should see him brew up here, I'd imagine. Because he isn't going in with restores. Might see him brew up all the way to full health. No, he's not going to. Oh, the overload wears out. Okay, there it is. So he is on full health going into the Vespula room. Does have that Twisted Potion in the inventory. Let's have a look at this Vespula. Getting some very nice hits to start with. Going to be completely reliant on that prayer enhance here. And he's going to use a dose to get one prayer point back. The prayer enhance not only restoring one prayer point every six ticks, also going to restore one prayer point when you take the dose. 43% left on the Abyssal Portal. He has to wait here for his prayer to restore. 
And this is exactly why it is bad not to pick up a restore from the Vanguards. He would have been able to use that here in the Vespula room. And there we go, Vespula Portal is taken down. We see the Phoenix Necklace in the inventory. For those that are unaware, he is going to be going for the Kirby skip. Coined by Molgoat Kirby, a BDSM team member. And he's going to try and get himself up to 51, 52, or 53 hit points before he goes across here. He's on 52 hit points. So we're going to see a two hit point skip here. Let's have a look as he goes across. Pause, champ. I believe a 1 in 50-ish chance he dies here. See the ticket in the Phoenix Necklace. Gets it on in time. And a successful Kirby skip, ladies and gentlemen. No death here. And just like that, the rope room is done. Very nice movement here from the Ruster Man. He's going to tag the third floor at 14.23. So absolutely pacing going into the third floor here. We are currently watching the final boss of the grand final of the Speedrun Cup 2. BDSM versus Ozmith. We're seeing Ruster Man run through the solo CM here in the Guardian's room. Not only does your strength level affect how high you hit, so does your mining level. Once again, not sure if he's 99 mining here. Wasn't sure if he was 99 woodcutting at the start. Getting some very decent hits on the Guardians. Takes a 26 though. Is on Thrall, so not going to be able to avenge Vassar. See, Sour Patch say, damn, joke's so old it had supper with Jesus, and you are going to be able to have supper with every other person that's been banned in this live stream during this event. Enjoy the perm. Hundred percent special attack energy here for Rasta Man. Have to say a big shout out to everyone watching in the live stream right now. This will be on YouTube afterwards. We have 3,200 viewers currently. And Twitch Prime gives you a free subscription to your favorite live streamer. As we see Rasta Man coming in to Vasa here. Hundred and twenty stats takes a nineteen. See the rigor and the range prayer come on. Gets a couple of nice hits. One more hit before the crystal. We're gonna see a double claw here. Let's have a look at the RNG on the claws. Three hundred sixteen XP drop. That's half health and a three twelve. That should take it down. Not quite. Oh, he uses the pickaxe. Misses and he's gonna take it down with the Inquisitor's mace. Chucking on the Infernal Cape, as we learned earlier today, the Infernal Cape has a plus one ranged accuracy. The Max Cape has no offensive stats whatsoever. Big Tebow there. Unfortunately, going into the second crystal is Rasta Man. Oh, and a slow crystal at that. Got potential to kill it in one hit here. Doesn't. Second hit, no good either. Five prayer points left. Has to use a dose of restore. Oh, he's getting some really bad hits here. Even a potential for a third crystal. Oh, no, guys. 
He needs the accurate bow to go in, and it doesn't. A third crystal for Rasaman, and that is some seriously bad RNG. And you have to say, his RNG in this solo CM so far has been absolutely abysmal. Hits another zero after the crystal. 405 XP drop for the 69. A zero again. Very unfortunate RNG. He's going to pick up two brews here. Has only the two doses of restore. We're going to see him go through to the Mystics. Not very good hits there at all in Vassar. Not sure if he has 99 range. See the salve amulet go on. Pretty decent hits here on the Mystics. Seventy three. On the green mystic, we're going to see him run around here and trap an 82. Hang on a minute. He's just, oh my God. I thought he was going to three hit that mystic. He ends up two, uh, sorry, four hitting the mystic. Nuclear hits. Another 72 to start this one. He's got a very fast mystics here. That's an 81. This might be the fastest mystics we have seen in the speed run cup. Oh, any noodles, any noodles. Oh, and he noodles. And he noodles. Oh my god. And he noodles. Oh, what is happening? Finally dies there. Misses so many hits. As he runs into the Mudadal room. See someone in the chat say, could have used that plus one range there. And that is correct. He had the max cape on for that entire Mystics room. That plus one range accuracy might have made all the difference. We see him here in the Mudadile room, chopping the tree. Once again, wood cutting level going to affect how quickly you chop down the meat tree. Not sure if he's 99 wood cutting. The fifth time during this raid, I've told that joke and I still see seven people in the chat say he's got a max cape in his inventory. Five times I told that joke. Still saw seven people say something. Takes down the mini mutt. Let's see the RNG on the mama dial here. We see him switching into his staff and his arcane in between his hits to get that extra mage defense. And here we go. We're going to see a time of 21.13. Rustaman exit the Mudadal room. Hydration reminder says novice. I got myself a beer right here, my friend. Thank you very much. All right. The Ulm Bank there. Not the fastest. Definitely not the slowest. 
An average Thrall Ohm would put this run at about 3230 if he gets average RNG here. Okay, so we're expecting to see a 3230. Keeping that in mind, we see a 2251 tag of the bottom floor, and we see a hammer. We see a hammer from the roster man getting his first Dragon Warhammer spec off. Unique says, my wife's boyfriend loves the cup. Thanks for streaming. Oh, don't worry, mate. I already knew Prison Joe liked the uh, tournament. But thanks for letting me know. Seen some really nice RNG on this mage hand from Rusterman. And he's taking it down very quickly. Misses another mage hit. The Thrall also misses. Oh my god. He's going to die. Oh my word. Very unlucky there. To get caught up in the flame wall. And also have the spikes at the same time. Turbo chanced. Holy. The Armadil go on in between hits. Uh, I don't see a Thrall up at the moment. We spoke earlier about how the average run here with Thralls will put him at a 32-30. And he doesn't have a, a Thrall spawned. Still has three doses of restore, guys. High caliber of gamer we're seeing here. And he should be able to summon those thralls and still keep his prayer up. He has that prayer enhanced in his inventory. Maybe he hasn't done the quest yet. Now that is something I hadn't considered. Ignoble solid there, ladies and gentlemen. That was a big scythe. Absolutely Fucking nuclear. Taking out 20% of the melee hand with just the hammer and a singular scythe. Getting some really nice RNG here is Rust the man. All of the bad RNG he got throughout the raid seems to be making up in the arm room. See a big LOL in the chat. He knows he's getting some good RNG here. And here comes the Thrall. See the Armadillo come on in between the hits. Going to see him hit twice here and then get into the 4-1. to one. Taking a lot of damage from home. We see the question mark in the chat as well. Rusterman spending a lot of time typing. Wow, he is absolutely going nuclear on this melee hand right now. <laughs> we see a L open bracket, close bracket L from the big roster man. And a 150 for P2. Another hammer. 
In the words of the great DJ Khaled, another one. He's hit three hammers for three phases here. Scythe going nuclear. He's got another spec. He is going to go for the Warhammer. Let's see it. Oh, he misses. Misses the next hammer. And there's going to be a 45 to the dome. Choosing to tank it. Just eating the brew at the perfect time. So his stats stay at 120. Oh, a 40. Rasta getting absolutely spliffed by Om. And we see a 4 0. Here comes the Mage Thrall. Look at the clicks on this man. Look at the clicks on this man. Beautiful eight way switches. Hits the Thrall. Gets the boot takeoff as well. The primordial boots stay on during sex, but come off during the mage hand. And Rustaman putting on a clinic for the live stream here. RNG slowing down. See, so Spooky asks, why Slayer Helm? He has a Crawling Hands task. We see here the Max Cape coming out with a Stamina Boost. Hang on a minute. He's got a Max Cape in his inventory. So he was 99 in all those stats. The whole time. See, the Melee Hand go down here for Rasta Man. Splashes on the mage hand. We see 30 minutes something on the clock. Gets caught with the poison as he comes in a head phase. Three doses of brew in the inventory. Chucks on the infernal cape for that plus one accuracy. Getting some pretty nice hits to start with the head phase. Oh, a 38 there from Om. He's not going to brew because he wants to keep his stats at 120. He's going to have to tick eight Om's hit here and avoid that crystal. And he does. Runs into another crystal. Decides to go for the brew. 37 hit points remain. No brew left. If he does get an attack by Om, he's going to have to tick eight here. Doesn't go for the tick eight. That was a chance. Still alive. And another hit. A 31! He could go down here, avoids the crystal, only one damage from the poison, and he takes down the boss and gets a purple, the ancestral road bottom, but a 3107.8 for Rasta Man. Wow. Survives with one hit point, and that death surely would have cost him another 30 seconds. So a 3107 turbo chanced right at the end there. And we will have to see how Oz Myth. Goes up against that 31.07 time there. Hootie Tootie was saying that the average kill time with Thralls there would be a 33.20. And he beats that by over two minutes. Rasta has just stepped his foot down and said, no fucking more. Osmith win four in a row and Rasta says no more. An 816.8 Ohm, which I believe is the third ever fastest recorded Ohm. And wow, that is a quick, quick Ohm. Uh, a sub 32 as well. That is a time Coxie could only dream of. Two months of practice to get to a 34 PB and he could only dream of such a quick time. And Rasta has just pulled it off in his attempt for the speedrun cup in the grand final. Amazing. And what a time to pull the clutch out for his team, Team BDSM. And they are going to be going up against Oz Myth. Here it is, ladies and gentlemen. The last perspective we are going to watch for the speedrun cup. Let's see some pause champs in the chat. We are going to see Catriel running the solo CM for Ozmith 
to potentially take this one down in a reverse sweep. So we will see the two hammer specs at the start here. Like we said, players able to reset until they got two hammer specs. We see the scythe coming in here. And a nice movement there. Another scythe. Let's see another scythe. 281. Oh, and the zero is coming in for Catriel there. Not ideal. Now, I just want to mention here, this is the last footage that we are going to watch, ladies and gentlemen, which means that is confirmed. Jerry made this team brought together five other gamers and has not run a single boss. The captain for Ozmith has not run a single boss. Just brought the team together and didn't play. We're going to see a three anvil here for Catriel. Has a 3107 to beat. Oh, it is not looking good here. We're going to need to see a big hit. Finish off Tecton before the fourth anvil. Catriel does get the kill. 1 minute 50 on the timer so far. Are we going to see a tick perfect crabs? I think one tick wasted there on the orb being reset. But a clean crabs so far from Catriel. Doesn't have the other crab here to be able to get those uh, Sang staffs off. And here we go. Smashed the crab. Finally gets the other one. And this is going to be an almost tick perfect crabs, I believe. One tick off. Yeah, 55.8. That was actually three ticks. Slower than the perfect crab room. Coming in to Ice Demon is Catriel. 43,000 sweets in the inventory. Perfect deposit. The one tick deposit there. Let's have a look at the RNG on the chop. Oh, much better RNG here for Catriel in this solo CM. Most certainly seeing 99 woodcutting. See people saying woodcutting level in the chat. Do you not see the max cape on the back? Come on, guys. Don't be so stupid. Two inventories here in Ice Demon. Quick withdraw. Wonder if we're going to see a lock pick here for Cat. No lockpick. We do see one hammer. And we will see a spellbook swap two thralls after Ice Demon. But we do see the harmonized staff as well. Something we didn't see for Rusterman in the last run.
Congratulations to Anu Bai on getting a steel full helm from a clue. All right, running into the shaman's room is Catriel. Gonna see the spellbook swap come off. See the thralls come out. So the infernal max cape on the back for that plus one. And a pretty fast shaman's there for Catriel. We see the lizard man shaman task. Getting that extra accuracy and damage bonus. Absolutely insane that we have come this far in this grand final. It was a 4-0, almost a clean sweep for Team BDSM and Ozmith have brought it back. I want to say how good of a job Hootie Tootie has done at keeping all of the results a secret for me. I have no idea who's going to win this. And the other day, Hootie said to me, hey, just letting you know, regardless of the result, we're going to play every single boss in that grand final. And when it was a 4-0, I just thought automatically it was going to be a 5-0. I thought there's no way that we are going to see a 4-4 and go to that CM. Hootie Tootie, if you didn't know, organized this entire event behind the scenes. Did all of the graphics, did all of the officiating, organized all of the players together, did absolutely everything for this tournament. And it would not be on without him. So let's see a big clap in the chat for Hootie Tootie. As we see Catriel in this Vanguard's room, not getting the best RNG. Some uh, keen eye noticed the Dragon Arrows Poison Plus Plus used for, I believe, one room specifically that you can poison NPCs, and I believe that is Mystics. Wow. The tech here, ladies and gentlemen. Poison plus plus arrows. Taking absolutely every advantage possible is Catriel. And I mentioned this yesterday, but it is something we'll probably see here. The shaman task uh, for the shamans in the first room. And uh, a keen eye would have seen that that task finished as soon as Cat finished off that last shaman. And we'll see him using the NPC contact spell on the Lunar Spellbook in this raid to contact Turiel to pick up a skeleton task. And we'll see that Slayer Helm used in the Mystics room. Three Xerix aids on the ground and a revite. Leaving one brew on the ground is Catriel and getting much better RNG on the drops there than his opponent. No lockpick for Catriel. We see a 634 going into floor two, by the way, guys. Catriel's opponent, Rust the Man, had a seven minute going into floor two. So 30 seconds quicker 
Come on into that second floor. See someone in the chat asking if this was filmed before or after the cheat client ban. Another thing that Hootie Tootie did absolutely incredibly in this tournament. These were recorded in between the client ban. So the quarterfinals and semifinals happened before the client ban and the grand final happened after the client ban. And Hootie Tootie made sure Every single run was done on Runelight. No one was allowed to use a cheat client and everyone was screened to make sure they were using Runelight or the regular client. Hootie's done an incredible job of officiating this tournament and making sure all rules were followed. And here we go. Cat going to be running into the Vespula room. We do see the Phoenix necklace in the inventory, ladies and gentlemen. So we will be seeing the Kirby skip going into rope. And here we go. Running into Vespula. See the Twisted Potion in the inventory. 316 XP drop for the first hit. That's a 79. Cat getting some really good RNG to start off this Vespula. See a 72 coming in as well. That's another big hit here for Cat. Ninety-two damage left on the abyssal portal, using up all of that prayer enhance. Oh, getting some bad RNG at the end here. See a brew into the twisted potion rather than using the restore. Oh my God, zeros! Once again, a brew into the twisted potion. 27 damage left on the portal. And Cat is going to take it down. Not the fastest Vespula in the world. But let's have a look at this Kirby skip here, ladies and gentlemen. Not too sure what the hit points are saying. Have a look based on the gear. That does look like a one hit point, potentially a two. Let's have a look. Pause champ on the Kirby skip. A one hit point Kirby skip here. Phoenix necklace goes on. The ticket with the purple suite and it looks like a perfect Kirby skip there. And there we go, two perfect Kirby skips in the grand final, as you would expect. As you would expect from these gamers. And we see a 1355 tag of floor two. Rusterman coming in at a 1423. So, Cat, 30 seconds ahead of his opponent right now. Going into floor he's gonna, three. He's going to want some sort of lead because that that ulm that Rasta had was just, it is hard to beat. That is a very, very strong ulm. So the splits up into that point, he's going to want either be joint and get the same RNG or maybe have a slight advantage going into ulm. Going to need to see some good RNG at some point in this raid. You've got to remember, guys, Rasta had a very, very bad Vassa. So we will see if the RNG comes in for Cat in the Vassa room. Rasta also not the best Mystics. Got some decent RNG at the start. And then six or seven zeros right at the end for that last Mystic. And we see the Crystal Pickaxe in the inventory. Once again, guys, the Guardians. Damage you put out on the Guardians. Not only your strength and attack levels, but also your mining level. 
Be interesting to know if Cat has a 99 mining here. We can only assume so. See, someone in the chat asking if we can get confirmation if Jerry was taking a two-week holiday. I have no idea, my friend. All we know is Jerry was not part of this tournament. I wonder if he is going to be okay with his team splitting the prize pool five ways. That being said, he might not have performed any of the bosses, but behind every good team is a mastermind of a coach, and he most certainly did all of their boss bans and picks. And it has managed to get him and his team into the grand final. We see a 222.2 there for Guardians. <gasps> Cat! Oh my word. Almost a death there in the Vassa room. Let's see the claws. Double claw. Going to take it down. No Inquisitor's Mace. That's all it takes. And let's have a look. 120 stats. Goes down to 104. With 10 seconds left to proc on the overload. No Twisted Potion in the inventory. So attacking at 104 range here is Catriel. 180 XP drop. We're going to see a second crystal. We did see a third crystal. For Rasta, man. Oh, and a slow crystal as well. Not looking good here for Catriel in this Vasa room. See, 194 hit points, 207 for Vasa. Here we go. 156 HP. Can he avoid the three crystal Vasa? He's going to need some nice hits here. 90 hit points left. Is sat at 120 range. He's got three or four hits left here. 28, that's all he needs to do. Accurate for the Tebow. That should do it there. And he's going to take Vasa down before the third crystal. And here we go. Running into the Mystics room is Catriel with a 149.8 Vasa. As we see Soup in the chat, ladies and gentlemen, we do have a celebrity in our midst. Don't forget... The new season of Gillenor Games coming very, very soon. Big hits here for Catriel in the Mystics room. Finishes off the first Mystic in five hits. And this is exactly what we were saying. We need to see some RNG at some point in the raid. And these Mystics are popping off like a frog in a foreskin. An 82 into the 41. This is going to be another four hit Mystic. Oh, a zero. He's going to be a five hit, however. Let's see the other Mystic. Only a couple hits left. See a massive hit there. And that is probably the quickest Mystics we have seen in the Speed Run Cup. Not only is that the quickest Mystics we see in the Speed Run Cup, but I believe a 112.6 is the joint world record for Mystics. We have seen another world record here in the Speed Run Cup. That is the second time we have seen the world record broken or tied here in the Speed Run Cup on this final day. The other world record was by Turbo PVM breaking the top threes overall time with a 17.36. And we see Catriel here getting a 112.6 Mystics to tie the world record. Here on the Muddadal tree, the woodcutting level is going to play a factor as to how quick you chop that tree. And we see the max cape 
on the back for Catriel, meaning 99 wood cutting. See, 20 minutes and 21 seconds on the clock so far. The floor three tag time for Russman was 22.51. So two minutes here to get down to the Ulm room to tie the time and then needs the RNG for Ulm. Here we go. So overload on the ground, a prayer enhance. They're going to be left there. You have to wonder if the RNG is good enough for Catriel here. 21 minutes on the clock. A 31 minute, 7.8 second to beat. Big hits on the mama dial here. Taking it down. Ooh, only a 68 for the last hit. And has to ticket that last hit there. Picks up all the potions. Here we go. Running into the Ulm room. 21.30 on the clock. As I said, Rusterman went down into the final room at a 22.51. But had an absolute... What the fuck are we seeing here? I've just seen a Max Cape hit the deck. I've seen a Crystal Pickaxe hit the deck. Catriel. Wasting no time. Oh my god. You get one chance, one shot, one opportunity here in the speed run cup. We see a crystal pickaxe hit the ground. We see the max cape hit the ground just so he can bank quicker. Absolutely unreal. We see a hammer come in. Big scythe as well. And Catriel. Tags the bottom floor at a 21.51. Comes into Ulm exactly one minute faster than his opponent. Has a 31.07 to beat. Here in the grand final of the Speed Run Cup. This is the last boss we will see. It is 4-4 between BDSM and Ozmith. And this Ulm will decide who is going to take out that 2.2 billion GP prize pool. Oh my word. The RNG here on the mage hand, not looking the best for Catriel. Every tick matters here, guys. Two times throughout this competition, we've seen a team win by a singular tick. One time, even seeing a draw, we had to do a rerun in the semifinals for BDSM to even get here. Decent RNG on the mage hand as well for Catriel. Going to take it out. No. Oh, my God. Four extra hits. Five extra hits than necessary here. Easily could have killed it. And let's see the melee hand. We see the Sara Doman Scythe in the inventory. I don't care who you are or what you say. The Sara Doman Scythe is the superior Scythe. Bit of a Sara Scythe enthusiast myself. I would have a Sara Scythe myself. However, I did get the Sanguine Kit from Hard Mode Tob and one Holy Kit. And I said, fuck Hard Mode Tob and fuck the high level community. So I do have the Sanguine on the Scythe and the Holy Kit on my Sang Staff. All right, a 216 P1 there for Catriel. Let's see the hammer. And the scythe. Not bad at all. We see the walk on here, saving the energy. Uh, 
Oh, not the best RNG here for Catria on this mage hand. Has a very fast ohm time to beat. 3107.8 is the overall time. 25 minutes, 20 seconds on the clock. Six minutes to complete this ohm to win. So a really fast time from Catriel in the Fasani's Nightmare in the last boss. Very high caliber of gamer. Hundred and ten hit points remaining. So we see the melee hand coming up. Gonna need to see a ticket here. No, we don't. Okay, two more hits at the hand. Ooh, okay, a splash there from Ohm. Forty six, some pretty large hits from Cat. Fifty one damage remaining, can easily one hit and not getting the RNG. Let's see the acid walk here, the scythe coming in to finish it off. We see a two sixteen again. Pretty decent times. GZ to shortcut on the Avernic. Coming into the last phase, ladies and gentlemen. 27, 25 on the clock. And a hammer. Will we see a second hammer? Oh, a zero for the second hammer. Exactly the same as his opponent. 27.30 on the clock, has a 31.07 to beat, four minutes, three and a half minutes to take down this Ohm, and you have to imagine this one is going to go down to the wire, we've seen two, two minute, 15 second phases, plus the head phase, it's going to be very close. We see no stamina in the inventory as well. The max cape being dropped. So not going to be able to use the stamina regen ability of the max cape. We're going to need to see Cat conserving some energy here during the mage run. It was used at Vespula. Never mind. Doesn't even have it anyway. The portals here. Not what you want to see right next to the bomb. Does avoid all damage though. Incredible footwork from Cat. And let's see. Not on the best tick here. Saving the energy though. Slow walk. Back to the other side. 300 hit points to go, 29 minutes on the clock, has 2 minutes to finish off this Ohm. It is going to come down to the wire, my heart is beating so fast right now. Speed Run Cup 2, currently 4-4. Ozmith versus BDSM and Catriel here, trying to win it for his team. 105 hit points left on the Mage Hand. See the two-way switch. Mage hand going to go down. Melee hand going to go down. 29 minutes, 38 seconds on the clock. One and a half minutes to finish off this head phase. 33 run energy though. It is absolutely going to come down to the wire. We see the brew come in. 680 hit points left. Picks the last brew up. My heart is beating so fast. I think it's about to come out of my chest. 20 run energy left. 
625 hit points left on the boss. Seeing 84 big hits, 30 minutes, 15 seconds, one minute, less than one minute here to kill the boss. 11 run energy. It is going to come absolutely down to the wire. Just deciding to tank a couple hits here is Catriel. Full hit points. Moves out of the way in case there's a flame wall. 132 hit points. 30 minutes, 40 seconds on the clock. 118 hit points left on the boss. Four run energy. A zero again. 30 minutes, 47 seconds. And that's it! Catriel with a 30 minute, 49 second. And Ozmith with the reverse sweep. We have our champions of the Speed Run Cup, Oz Myth, taking down reigning champions, Team BDSM, in a 5 4. Oh my god. Winning by 20 seconds there, 18 seconds. What an incredibly close. Grand final matchup. That was absolutely unreal. Oz Myth going into the grand final as the distinct underdogs by a lot. And they are going to take it out. Absolutely unreal scenes there for Oz Myth. Your new Speed Run Cup champions, ladies and gentlemen. Can we see a couple of claps in the chat? That was absolutely unreal. Hootie Tootie. Oh what my god. What a performance. Uh you know, you gotta you gotta congratulate uh BDSM for, for you know, they, they did so well to get here. A three two win against Crocs under Marsh and Mushrooms and they performed well there and a, and a four three win against against Oz Tob and you know every every match for them coming down to the wire and and big performances by by Smork and by Kirby and, and the whole team but uh in in the grand final they just weren't able to pull it off Ozmith were just too powerful and too strong for them I just have absolutely no words speed run cup 2 champions Ozmith consisting of Jerry Euless Catriel Slinky Kevzy and Tony P, absolutely insane scenes here. I just, what do you even say? This is the second time we've had a speed run cup and both times it has come down to the wire. Last year, we had BDSM winning against Puggins team, the Glancers. And this year, Ozmith taking down Team BDSM to become Speed Run Cup champions. Hootie Tootie. Mm -hmm. 2.2 .2 billion GP prize pool. Yep, that is correct. We are currently up to 2.25 bill, thanks to the, the generous donators. That, uh, that's, that whole donation, uh, the whole prize pool, sorry, has been funded by the viewers and the people that we put out uh, requests to. And yeah, 2.25 bill is a... Is a lot of money coming up to raids three. Maybe they'll uh, go into their funds, but uh, yeah, it's a, it's a. I think more than the GP is is the award of being the speed run cup two champions for sure for most of these players. I'd assume it's a, it's a strong title. There was much much thicker and much better competition this time around. You you just couldn't choose a a, a weak team in this tournament. Every single team had the ability to do it and. And I think Ozmith definitely one of the the bigger underdogs out of the eight teams, and and my God, they put on a show and they they managed to come through and, and win uh, enough bosses to to get crowned the title of a uh, speedrun cup two champions. Yeah, absolutely insane seas, and what a clinic was put on by Ozmith, and I mean, you got to give it to Kevzy. Hootie carrying his entire team on his back. Let's take a look at some t statistics here. Run us through these stats here. The MVP winner, Kevzy. Yeah, MVP winner, Kevzy. I don't even think it was up for debate in the end. 
winning 13 bosses from from the start of the quarterfinals through to the grand final won 13 bosses with a win percentage of 68.4 in bosses he participated in and and kirby comes second i mean kirby did wonderful for his team coming in second at eight you know that's such a gap from first to to second and then cat coming in at third and and then uh Euless in sixth and you just see a drop off after that i mean you've got uh members doing their role that slinky brought in for the for the next and for the gauntlet and it, and he did his role and, and you see that all the way through but it just it just puts into perspective how amazing and how crucial kev was for his team with 13 boss wins that is absolutely insane 13 the nearest competitor was kirby with that eight and we have talked throughout this competition about how kevzy was the most well-rounded for his team and you've got to say absolutely carried osmith on his back you see right down there in 12th place is jerry zero boss yeah. wins we got the two the two team leaders who it turns out maybe the the role of leader wasn't to to speed run but it was to assemble their teams and and i mean fair play to both of them they they did what they needed to do and they assembled the strongest possible teams to obviously make it to the grand final that's a that's a a, a win in itself but yeah it seemed that jerry wasn't necessary coach jerry they call him uh, doing what he did, and, and Kevzy and Cad and Euless and Slinky and Tony, the whole squad, you know, powerful, powerful team. Some absolutely unreal moments in this speed run cup as well. We saw two times the difference being one singular tick in a boss. We had an exact tie for Nightmare yesterday, and now we see probably the biggest underdogs in the competition coming out and winning it. What were they seeded at, Hootie Tooty? Just... Uh, uh let me just double check. I believe Osmith was seeded at, uh, they were seeded seed six. There you go. So definitely, definitely underdogs here. Coming in at seed six out of eight and taking down the entire competition. What an event, Hootie Tootie. And I got to yeah, say, I am. Incredible so, viewing. I'm so glad it's over. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you can see the sun's come up for both of us. We, we started last night at, well, like 10 p.m. And, and the sun's up and I guess we're just going to sleep the rest of the day away as soon as we're done here. I don't think I'm going to be able to sleep after that one, mate. That was way too exciting. Uh, guys, yeah. a few thank yous before we end the stream. Big thank you to Crusader Talent, Mason and Brooke over there and the rest of the team would not be able to put this event on without them. A big thank you to everyone in the chat for being here. You guys are the reason that we do this love putting on a show for the audience and especially a massive massive thank you to hootie tootie he is the reason this entire event has run okay i know this is on my twitch channel but i am quite simply just the face of this tournament this would not have happened if it wasn't for hootie tootie he hit me up and said let's do another speed run cup and after the last one, the amount of work I had to put into it, I said, no fucking chance. And he said, I'll run the whole thing. You don't have to worry about anything. So not only has he done all of the graphics, he's also done all of the admin behind the scenes, getting all of the teams together, making sure all of their runs were done on RuneLight, making sure everyone played within the rules of the tournament. He watched every single run that you guys have seen over this weekend by himself making sure it all ran smoothly. He also kept every single result from me a secret right up until the last moment of the grand final. So I got to enjoy the speed run cup just as much as you guys at home. Hootie Tootie, you are an absolute legend, my friend. And I think everyone is very appreciative of the work that you've put into this. Yeah, thank you. It was a, it was a, it was an honor to put it together and, and all the competitors were so easy to work with. I mean, each and every single person that's almost a sentence we'll let it slide uh that all the competitors were just so so helpful and and you know they were very uh they were very aware of the times i was waking up trying to trying to fit me into their schedules and you know setting alarms at 3 a.m or trying to accommodate more for that australian time zone but in the end i didn't have a time zone but yeah they all they all had deadlines for when the rounds needed to be completed and they all managed to to finish their runs within that time and and yeah it was it was a uh, a lot of work and it's i'm glad it turned out the way it did i didn't leak any results i don't believe no leaks from me during 
had to be uh, quite careful with what I said and uh, yeah, a lot of work and, and that in mind, uh, I don't think I don't think I'll be hosting the Speedrun Cup 3. So we pass the baton on to a third host, whoever that may be. Yeah. But yeah, if anyone. <laughs> that is the question. I tell you what, I will host a Speedrun Cup 3. I'll say that right now in front of however many people are watching. I will run a Speedrun Cup 3 with the caveat that Jagex sponsor it. That is the only way a Speedrun Cup 3 will happen. So if you want to see another Speedrun Cup, you're going to have to get onto them because I don't think that's going to happen. I think that's fair. Yeah. <laughs> I'm down. I'll be right there with you. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. You heard it here first. Anything left to say, Hootie Tootie? Uh, uh, yeah. Fuck the high level community. <laughs> Fuck the lot of them. Fuck the high level community. Thank you all so much for being here. And that is the grand final of the Speed Run Cup done and dusted. Peace out.